The story begins with the introduction of mainland imperial martial art, which transmits a legend of the catalog of nine in-cave recipes written by the ancient magic emperor, who recorded all the excellent studies of his life. The ancient devil king is the strongest on this continent. All of his knowledge was passed down in a book that was scattered throughout the world. This book is called the Book of Nine Secrets. It is magical and holds extraordinary power. By practicing this book, one can reach the world of heaven and earth that is in the palm of their hand. Now, this book is in the hands of the magic emperor, named Zhuifan. He sits proudly on a royal chair, holding this powerful book. He looks at the book with dedication and a shine in his eyes. However, this information is leaked, and now he is the target of all martial arts experts because of the book he possesses. Everyone wants to hold this book. His house is now surrounded by attackers. He is in danger, but he believes he can defeat anyone with his power. A boy, Zhao Chen, comes to him, screaming with fear that the mountain troops are surrounded by enemies and have killed everyone. Zhao Ching is Shui Yifun's disciple, and he looks younger than Yifun. He informs Yifun that the seven emperors will soon be here. Shui Yifun remains calm and proud, advising Zhao Ching not to panic, as no one can defeat him. He stands up and goes outside, saying that the seven emperors cannot even defeat him. He is shocked that they defeated his troops. Now, he stands on the top of a mountain cliff, and a group of enemies armed with weapons are ready to fight for the Book of Nine Secrets. Yi Fun is still proud and not afraid of these insects at all. The fight begins. Yi Fun attacks them, killing each one by one. While he fights with all his power, someone calls out to him, saying they will never let him go. Yi Fun laughs at them and faces them without fear. They are the seven emperors. They offer him a deal, give them the book, and they will spare his life. Zhui Yifun tells them that he is the leader of all eight royals recognized by the sanctuary. None of them can defeat him. He is in full power. He taunts them, asking why they bother looking at their death's point. One of the elder emperors replies, asking if Yi Fun knows his situation. He is the enemy of the whole sanctuary, and there are powerful individuals beyond him. Then the younger emperor speaks up, addressing him and saying, that book is a relic of the ancient emperor in the name of the Holy Land. Zhuiqing comes up behind Zhui Yifun, saying, This is no good. That is the strongest emperor of the Holy Land. Yifun replies with pride that they are the enemies of the Holy Land. He declares loudly that, even being a villain, he will destroy them all. Suddenly, a sword crosses the chest of Zhui Yifun, causing him to freeze with pain. All seven emperors witness this and declare to Yifun that it is his time to die. Unbelievably, he realizes that it was Zhao Qing who betrayed him, leaking all the information about the book and the mountain troops. He is fully shocked. All seven emperors now fly in the sky with pride. Cheng remains on Yifun's back as he asks him why he betrayed him after teaching him since he was young. Qing exposes the reason for his betrayal stating that he didn't want to allow Yi Fun to use the book alone. With joy, he says that he always stopped him from reading the book, treating him like a thief. Magic Emperor Zhu Yi Fun is shocked by this revelation. Cheng removes his sword from Yi Fun's body, pretending not to care about what Yi Fun thinks of him. He proudly declares that Yi Fun will not escape him and reminds him that he was the one who taught him about this. Yi Fun slowly smiles and tells Cheng that he taught him since he was a child but he betrayed him. Now, no one in the world can trust him. Blood flows from Yifun's mouth as he becomes miserable and is about to die. He falls down, smiling towards Ching in air. Then, he decides to destroy the book along with himself, so that no one can get it, and he means it. Everyone becomes tense and starts running, knowing that Shui Yifun is about to self-destruct. A huge burst of light surrounds him as he destroys everything including the book and himself. His lifeless body glows like a shining star before falling to the earth. In a dark forest, during the night, a few dead bodies lay on the ground, blood staining the earth, including that of a young boy dressed in gold and red clothing. It appears that a fierce battle has taken place, resulting in their tragic demise that a light shines upon the boy's head, and he abruptly opens his eyes. He gazes in astonishment at his own lifeless body questioning this unexpected turn of events. Standing up, 
he scans his surroundings, taking in the eerie atmosphere of the forest. Suddenly, he hears the sound of wolves nearby, their snarls echoing through the night. Unfazed by their presence, the boy locks eyes with them, causing the creatures to retreat in fear. It becomes clear that there is something different about him, commanding an unseen power. I in the distance. A voice calls out his name, Zhuafan, pleading for help. Thinking that the person might be familiar with the body he now inhabits, the boy approaches cautiously. As he reaches the source of the voice, he contemplates absorbing the individual's energy, harnessing it for his own gain. Placing his hand on the man's forehead, the boy's actions startle the stranger. He realizes that the boy is not Shuafan but someone entirely different. Even so, the boy continues to absorb the man's power, revealing his true identity as the magic emperor, Shui Yifan. Utilizing the forbidden drain touch technique from the Book of Nine Secrets, he absorbs the man's life force, reducing him to a mere skeleton. As dawn breaks and the sun rises, the boy feels the newly acquired power surging within him. He reflects on the fact that the draining process lasted the entire night, surprising him with its duration. Fully aware of his transformation into the magic emperor within Zhuafan's body, he played with his magical powers. With a gesture of his hand, he conjures a brilliant light, destroying a large stone in his path. Delighted by the display of his immense strength, he contemplates his next move. He recalls to seek revenge against Switching for his betrayal and vows to bring destruction to the Holy Land upon his return. He is ready for his mission and will destroy the Holy Land. Jumping from tree to tree, the boy marvels at the complete restoration of his body, which has now reached the fifth level of power. However, he acknowledges that the journey back to the Holy Land will require significant time and effort. Lost in his thoughts, he is abruptly interrupted by the sound of something happening nearby. He sees a group of people with swords, ready to fight. Among them are a man and a girl holding swords. The man angrily accuses the Sun family of being traitors and deceivers. He introduces himself as Peng Tongling, head guardian of the Luo family. On the other side, an older man with a few guards warns Peng Tongling to stay out of affairs that do not concern him. This man is Sun Guanjia a servant of the Luo family. The girl, accompanied by a young boy, boldly declares that the Hui Long Zhang martial arts technique belongs to the Luo family, and she will not surrender it, even in the face of death. The young boy, showing determination, asserts that he will kill their opponents and tells his sister not to stop him. Magic Emperor Zhuafan watches this scene unfold and realizes that the Luo family is in trouble, dealing with bandits. Suddenly, he feels a strange sensation in his heart, shocked by the unexpected connection he feels towards the Luo family. Confused by these feelings, he decides to leave the area. As he takes flight, a sharp pain shoots through his chest, leaving him perplexed. He raises his sword into the air, trying to make sense of the turmoil within him. His heart is feeling a strange pain. He falls down, wondering what is happening and if it's due to his training. His face turns black with pain, and he questions whether his body is suitable for magic. He sits in a yoga position, realizing that his body is good for him and his breathing is normal. However, he is still in pain and wonders what exactly is happening to him. Suddenly, he hears a voice again and flies towards it. Now he is sure that his pain disappears after seeing the expression of Luo's family. He ponders deeply, realizing that if he leaves, he will experience chest pain again. He understands that it is the magic of his heart. For practitioners, being exposed to magic is like a curse. They cannot act freely according to their desires. If they break the curse, they will die. Magic Emperor Zhuafan comes to this realization and decides to combine his memories with the boy Zhuafan to understand how heart magic works. In a past memory, there is a house where Zhuafan's father dies protecting Luo's family. Now, Luo's family takes care of him as if he were their own. Xuefan is just a kid, and a lady is protecting him from a man named Uncle Pang, who means no harm. Uncle Pang loves Fan and tells him he is still weak to protect Luo's family, but he will teach him basic fighting skills. Fan looks happy and is determined to work hard. He wants to protect Miss and Luo's family. A fight breaks out between Luo's family and bandits, and fire engulfs the surroundings. Screams can be heard, 
urging everyone to protect the young master and lady. Luo's parents are killed, and the bandits spare no one. They destroy everything. The air is filled with war and blood. Shuafan is injured and about to die at the hands of Mississippi. She holds him, but he worries about her and asks her to go with the young master to save her life. Shuafan cries helplessly, hating his own weakness for being unable to protect Luo's family. These are the life and death struggles of young Zhuafan. Magic Emperor Zhui Yifun is now aware of all the memories of his new body. He realizes that he has to protect Luo's family and cannot resist it, or else his body will be in pain. He stands aggressively, knowing that he is the Magic Emperor, and he now has to serve that small family for the rest of his life. He admits that killing people is much better, but he has no choice. He gives a hard punch to a tree in a fit of rage. Luo's family is still in danger, and due to the sound of his punch, everyone notices. One of the guards yells, asking who is there. Miss Lady thinks that perhaps someone is here to help them, but she has little hope that anyone can come quickly enough to save the magic Emperor Shuafan steps forward. Everyone is looking at him as he suggests handing over the spiritual martial arts to them to save their lives. He tries to convey that he doesn't want to lose the lives of Luo's family. The lady and the young kid with her are shocked at his appearance. The Miss Lady looks at him in disbelief, as if he were dead in the fight. He tells her that it's a miracle he is still alive. He thinks that the weakest among the bandits is in the sixth layer. The bandits look at him and gossip, daring to talk about it because he has been a slave in Luo's family. They laugh at him while Magic Emperor Zhuafan considers the large chi between them and his current strength. It will be a battle of life and death. The Miss Lady and Master Pang look at him strangely. Pang calls him stupid, and the young kid of Luo's family wants to punish him for his actions. Everyone is angry with his opinion. Magic Emperor Zhuafan explains further about giving the martial arts to them because the family is already on the edge, and they don't have to defend it. It's the only thing he can do for them. The Miss Lady shouts and tells him to leave them and stop talking nonsense. Sun Guanjia, enjoying the scene, tells the Miss Lady how she still wants to save Xiao Fan. The Miss Lady addresses Guanjia, asking him to let him go. But Sun Guanjia orders his guards to kill Magic Emperor Zhuo Fan and then kill them all until they surrender. He gives the go-ahead to his guards, and they run towards Fan to kill him. Magic Emperor Zhuafan is ready to use his sixth layer and has to defeat him. The guard raises his sword, warning Magic Emperor Zhuafan that it's his last chance. He approaches his head and whispers that he's going to die. Magic Emperor Zhuafan smiles at his foe and attacks him, holding true to his words and killing him with a single hit. Blood spills from the guard's body, shocking everyone who witnesses his power. He quickly turns around focused on what he needs to do next. He runs towards the Miss Lady, swiftly taking her and the kid with him, surprising everyone there. His aim is to protect their lives. Uncle Pang looks on in shock. Everyone on the ground remains in their positions, wanting to chase them, but Uncle Pang and his minions stop them from doing so. Sun Guanjia looks angry as Magic Emperor Zhuafan ruins all his plans. He aims to crush his bones once he catches Zhuafan. Magic Emperor Zhuafan runs as fast as he can to save Luo's family. The sun is setting, and the lady screams, pleading for Magic Emperor Zhuafan to let her go. She wants to go back and save the guards of Luo's family. She calls him a dog slave for his actions. Magic Emperor Zhuafan stops and forcefully places the lady under a tree. She still insists on going back, as she doesn't want the guards to lose their lives for Luo's family. Magic Emperor Zhuafan replies that she can go, but she can't defeat them. He tells her that the enemy is chasing them, and if they go back, they will be killed. The young kid shouts angrily at Magic Emperor Zhuafan, daring to talk to his master in such a way. He orders him to bring them back. Magic Emperor Zhuafan warns him that he will spank him if he continues misbehaving. The kid becomes more aggressive and yells. Now Magic Emperor Zhuafan aims to punish him and gives him a few slaps. The kid looks shocked at his actions and runs towards his sister. Miss Lady is also shocked at what Zhuafan has done. He calmly explains that it is a small punishment 
and suggests that it would be better if this young master dies at the hands of the bandits. He then asks about a nearby hiding place. The Miss Lady informs him that there is a foggy forest to the west with several farms in the square, but no hiding place. She mentions the Black Wind Mountain. Even the bandits might know about it. Magic Emperor Joafan asks them to go there, instructing her to hold his brother in front. She looks at him aggressively and asks him to stay until she comes out of the situation, expressing her desire to punish him. It is now nighttime, and they are under the cover of darkness and fog. Miss Lady tells him that they are in the misty forest, where the mist has been around for years, making it difficult for people to enter or leave. They are standing in front of a cliff in the forest. She continues, saying that for decades, both sides haven't done anything. Her father told her that the chief of Black Wind Mountain is strong and no worse than him. Suddenly, the bandits attack them. She feels sad while recounting this. Magic Emperor Joafan smiles and shows interest in this place. The lady asks Magic Emperor Joafan to go with the kid, and she will divert the bandits. However, he refuses and asks her to go with them as he is not familiar with the terrain. He adds that if she doesn't come, he won't take care of the kid, and furthermore, he threatens to kill the kid. The kid yells at him angrily, while the lady holds him. She cleverly reminds Magic Emperor Joafan that her life is valuable to him. He tells her that he will destroy the bandits and Sun Guanjia there. The lady is shocked at his intentions. Miss Lady yells at him, saying that he can't defeat Sun Guanjia, who is full of chi power, along with four other powerful individuals. The kid yells again, calling him a slave dog with anger. Magic Emperor Zhuafan walks calmly. The lady tries to tell him that even with Tongling Pang, he can't defeat them. She asks him what he can do for now. Magic Emperor Zhuafan replies confidently that he can. He declares that she has said enough against him, and now she has to listen to him. He asks her to give him the spiritual stone, stating that the last hope rests in her hands and she can't fight. He smiles cunningly. The Miss Lady looks at him aggressively. She takes off her ring and throws it towards him, telling him that it is her family treasure. Magic Emperor Zhuafan catches the ring, and Miss Lady warns him not to lie, threatening not to allow him to go. Magic Emperor Zhuafan tells her to stay put and wait there. He moves ahead in the forest. Miss Lady thinks that he has become very arrogant. The kid asks his sister to teach him a lesson. Then the lady taps the kid's head, calling him Yunhai, and tells him that the slave may not respect them, but he is helping them. She believes that he is better than those who do nothing for them and remain silent. In her thoughts, she realizes that something has happened to Zhuafan as he has changed a lot. There are tall trees in the forest, and the sky is empty. There is a large natural array. Magic Emperor Zhuafan comments that it's a pity that normal people can't do that. This time, he will turn it into a second Tian Mountain. He stares at it. Nine remote ghost gates open. He holds the ring in his hand, and it shines as the evil spirit quartet approaches. He activates it and places the ring on the ground. Light bursts forth. Miss Lady and the kid, standing far away, are shocked as the entire cliff and forest are illuminated by purple light waves. She notices that the array is disappearing. Magic Emperor Shuafan returns. The lady yells at him, asking what happened there and how he did that. Magic Emperor Shuafan calmly replies that there's no need to fuss about it. She asks to follow him. She says that he will teach her the magic shackles and other spells so she can kill them. The lady and the kid are shocked to learn how he plans to defeat them. Magic Emperor Shuafan explains that the array method is something more valuable than techniques and martial arts in this world. He reveals that this first-level array used is the mystery of the Zongmin family. As they walk together, she is lost in thought. She realizes that even the first-level array has hundreds of thousands of lingji, which cannot be measured in price. She wonders how Shuafan was able to do it when he was just a normal slave. She asks him how he did it, placing her hand on his back. Magic Emperor Shuafan asks her not to worry, as he will teach her everything but she needs to wait until the bandits die. The lady looks at him in disbelief. The moon shines brightly in the night sky. He tells them that the lady and Zhuafan continues towards the foggy forest. 
Pang, who is still under the control of Sun Guanjia, asks him to kill him or else he will seek revenge for those who died. Sun Guanjia smiles and informs Pang that he is taking him as a hostage. He promises to fulfill Pang's request in his name. Sun Guanjiao then instructs Pang to lead the way to the foggy forest, emphasizing the importance of observing the loyalty of the lady towards him, knowing that she cannot leave Pang behind. Pang protests, stating that he should not be used as a means to threaten this lady. Suddenly, their attention is drawn to someone sitting under a tree. They are taken aback when they realize it's Fan, who appears much bigger and more powerful. Zhuo Fan calmly states that he has been waiting for them for a long time. Sun Guanjia acknowledges Zhuo Fan's power for standing in front of him and immediately orders his guard to kill him. A guard charges towards Zhuo Fan with a sword, while Zhuo Fan remains seated under the tree, seemingly unaffected by the coming threat. The guard raises his sword, ready to strike and kill Magic Emperor Zhuo Fan. Zhuo Fan remains motionless calmly stating that the lady and the kid have been paralyzed and are now under his control. Sun Guanjia is shocked and commands the guard to wait, stopping the sword from touching Zhuo Fan's neck. He asks Zhuo Fan if what he said is true or just a lie, questioning whether they are truly paralyzed and under Zhuo Fan's control. Magic Emperor Zhuo Fan proposes a deal, and he stands up. Sun Guanjia, intrigued, asks him about the details of the deal. Zhuo Fan asks for a guarantee of his future and states that he will hold them in his hands. Sun Guanjiao approaches him and asks why Zhuo Fan is betraying Luo's family. Zhuo Fan responds with a laugh, asking Sun Guanjiao the same question and expressing his curiosity. Sun Guanjia doesn't appreciate his answer. Zhuo Fan continues, emphasizing that people cannot continue to destroy themselves. With the defeat of the Luo family, he can't rebuild a family with the strength of just one person. He walks away, stating that exchanging their lives for his better future is common sense, and he wonders why Sun Guanjia seeks death. He holds a red rope in his hand, explaining that the lady and the kid are on the other end of the rope, but there are many turns in between. He uses the rope as a guide to navigate through the forest. He gives the rope to Sun Guanjia, urging him to be safe and follow its guidance to reach them. Sun Guanjia finds the idea interesting and believes it could be a good way to reach the lady and the kid and cross the forest. They both smile at each other. Sun Guanjia considers Zhuo Fan's plan and makes a deal with him. However, he is still somewhat confused. Zhuo Fan reassures him that he is being honest, admitting in front of everyone that Sun Guanjia doesn't trust Zhuo Fan, and they both laugh at the situation. They begin to walk towards the forest but doubts start to arise about Chua Fan betraying them all. Pang's voice can be heard in the air, aggressively accusing Chua Fan of tricking Luo's family and labeling him as a dog's slave. Pang warns him that he will curse him even if he dies. Chua Fan suddenly stops, causing Sun Guanjia to inquire about the reason. Chua Fan reveals to him that he has brought him to Huang Quan Road, a place where he will meet his death. He says this with a gleam of revenge in his eyes. Sun Guanjia becomes furious and tries to attack Shuo Fan, but he disappears among the trees. Sun Guanjia is shocked and instructs his companions to find a way back. He realizes that the red rope has been cut and Pang has also disappeared. Realizing that he has been tricked, Sun Guanjia delivers a powerful punch to the ground in frustration. He is filled with anger at how he fell for Shuo Fan's deception. He firmly believes that the mystery forest cannot trap him and shouts in the air, determined to kill Zhuo Fan once he captures him. Suddenly, a voice emerges, proclaiming that you can't kill me, which shocks everyone present. They witness the fog transforming into a red hue. Sun Guanjia guides his companions to stay alert and look around, but to their surprise there is no one to be found. It's as if they have vanished, as though they never existed. Sun Guanjia is startled realizing that they have fallen into an array method. The magic is happening there with the array method. Miss Lady and Zhuo Fan are standing together. Lady asks that they have all disappeared one by one, and even Pang has been saved. Miss Lady asks him about his next step, curious to know what he plans to do next. Then he comes closer to her, saying that his next step is to help her. He holds her hand, which shakes slightly. She is unaware of his act. 
Shua Fan asks her not to move and holds her from behind, which makes her feel uncomfortable and shy. He advises her to stay focused and places her hand under the golden ring on the earth. She feels an extraordinary power emanating from it. They both focus their energy. He asks her to kill their enemies. They unleash their attack, causing a burst of light that shocks everyone. A dark, strong shadow covers the sky, and intense green lights surround everything. The guards there are shocked by the display. A green shadow attacks one of the guards, resulting in his death. Both of them are struck down instantly by the attack. Sun Guanjia, witnessing this in fear, tries to retaliate. However, the green shadow attacks him as well, and he falls to the ground, blood pouring from his body. Injured, he asks Shua Fan who he truly is. Shua Fan, standing in the darkness, calmly replies for him to go to hell and to inform the king of hell about him. Story moves with the question after all who is Shua Fan. Shua Fan is performing his magic. He says, worldly things return to worldly things, soil returns to soil. The ghost kill in cave returns to him. He repeats loudly, return. There is a burst of light. Miss Lady can't see in the bright light and worries. She thinks about tactical disposition and believes he loses array control. Shua Fan is in his full power, waving in the air with joy to gain more power. He transforms the great decisive heresy. He gains the seventh level. He warms up and advances to the eighth level, then the ninth level of power. He gains the spectacularly powerful level and enjoys this moment a lot. He reaches the dreamed level of power. Voices of enjoyment roar in the air. The original magic brought by the assassination has been exhausted. His power is now priceless. But the more breakout times like this one, the more valuable the achievements become. He stands in the explosion of his own energies. He is now in full form with all his powers. He gathers all power levels and calmly comes out of it. He walks and thinks that this time he breaks through it. Compared to the last time, the pulse widens, and the energy located in acupuncture points is three times more than the normal gathered strength level. Now the sun comes out, and the day begins. He faces the sunlight on his face. Now he thinks that he has made a breakthrough and now needs to practice some martial arts. The lady master, her brother, and Pang come and address him. They come closer to him and ask where he has been and how the array suddenly goes out of control. They inquire about the fog that has disappeared. They are all curious about it. Magic Emperor Zhuafan tells them that it's probably because the Lin is too small, so the array becomes defective and goes out of control. He also explains that he just went to see if Sun Guanjia and the others are dead or not, and fortunately, no one escaped. Then Tongling Pang comes closer to him. Miss is thinking about it. Zhuafan becomes nervous as to why he is coming closer to him. Then Pang sits down on his knees, surprising everyone in front of Magic Emperor Zhuafan, and says that earlier he used to curse him because of his actions, but he didn't know that he was setting a trap for them. He asks Zhuafan to scold him or do whatever he wants to do. He even offers to take his head if he wants, which surprises Zhuafan. At this moment, Magic Emperor Zhuafan thinks that Pang is loyal. This reminds him of the loyalty of Zhuaqing. He decides not to fall into this situation again. He respectfully raises Pang from his knees. He tells him that Pang is the head guard of the Luo family, and he is only a servant, so he doesn't dare to punish Pang at all. Furthermore, he explains that this time they defeated them with Miss's help. Pang becomes happy to hear this, while Miss is thinking about how she helped in this situation. She slightly accepts the appreciation, and Pang happily roars in the air, saying, God bless Miss Luo's family, and now we have the power of Brother Zhuo. He believes that the rise of the Luo family is near. Now Zhuo Fan asks Miss what her new plan is since they have more threats waiting for them. Then Peng contributes by saying that initially they plan to protect Miss as she goes to Feng Kai family city. Moreover, he explains that the son of the Kai family leader will marry Our Lady. Then Zhuo Fan inquires that the Kai family is in Feng city and he thinks that if they can give Miss Luo's family to them, maybe the will and the magic of the heart will disappear. Then he will be free. He decides to go to the Kai family along with them. He aims to come back. 
The story moves inside a castle with flickering fire candles. A man is sitting on a chair while another man bows in front of him. The man on the chair asks about Sun Guanjia, and the other man replies that Sun Guanjia apparently failed and now they are in Feng City. The man sitting on the chair smiles and instructs the other man to monitor them. The man happily agrees and stands up, walking away. He enters a room where his master, a man lying on a bed, is present. He addresses him, expressing certainty that his master's old friend is already there waiting for him. He continues, stating that until they have the palm of returning dragon, he will send the master and his brothers to reunite. He laughs loudly in the air Dachua Fan and his companions arrive at Feng City, and Lin Hai points out something in the distance. They notice Brother Zhuafan, who reveals that this is his first time visiting Feng City. He shares that it doesn't seem much different from a small village. As they discuss their next move, they realize they cannot go directly to the Kai family. Zhuafan and Yahai decide to go ahead and meet them first, promising to pick up the others later. Despite some initial resistance, they agree to rely on the Kai family's assistance. They ponder the potential repercussions of going directly to the Kai family fearing criticism for their perceived impoliteness. They opt to rest at an inn nearby. While the rest of the group goes ahead, Shua Fan expresses his desire to explore the city before joining them later. Upon arriving at the inn, Shua Fan sees someone who claims that Jade is real with a lady who is claiming that Jade is fake. The lady was beautiful soul dresses aesthetically. However, the Shua Fan starts to talk with seller. A dispute arises over the authenticity of a Jade piece with Xuefan confidently declaring it to be fake. Amidst the dispute, Xuefan boldly proclaimed that now know that the jade is fake and the salesperson laughs. He says to him that he be only seen it once, and you dare to claim that you can distinguish a real from a fake. He addresses everyone to listen and says what kind of ridiculousness is this. Confidently, Xuefan asserted, says he truly have this ability. Urgently, he advised Miss to hurry up and get out of here. Deflecting any further interference, Zhuo Fan dismissed. The person says to him not to bother with his business. With conviction, he declared that the jade is fake. Taken aback, the others expressed their surprise unfazed. Zhuo Fan confidently proclaimed, he have a way to prove it's fake. Zhuo Fan confidently states that the jade is fake and agrees with what Miss said. The seller looks puzzled and challenges Zhuo Fan to prove it. Fan remains determined and confronts the seller, asking where he comes from and why he claims the jade is fake. The lady stands nearby, witnessing the heated argument. The seller man gets angry and starts verbally attacking Fan, calling his words nonsense. Fan persists, wanting to uncover the truth. He proposes a demonstration to prove his point, gathering a crowd to witness it. Fan shows them a liquid containing sulfur and sediment, easily found in the area. He explains that if the fake jade is soaked in the liquid, it will reveal whether it's real or fake. Reluctantly, the seller man agrees and puts the jade in the liquid. To everyone's surprise, the jade immediately turns red upon contact with the liquid. The seller is shocked by this unexpected outcome. The crowd is left amazed by what they have witnessed. Chuafan explains that the jade was a clone piece, which is why it reacted that way. He asks the seller to acknowledge the truth and accept that the lady was right. The seller, feeling embarrassed, realizes his deception has been exposed. The lady confirms that this fake jade is equivalent to three spiritual stones. Suddenly, a jade hits the seller on the head, causing him pain and anger. He demands to know who threw it. In the midst of the chaos, people from the crowd start throwing back the jades they bought from the seller, demanding a refund and accusing him of lying. Amidst the commotion, the seller directs his anger towards Zhuafan, vowing not to let him go unpunished. The lady approaches Zhuafan, acknowledging his skill and admitting she knew the jade was fake but didn't know how to prove it. Zhuafan responds, mentioning his experience in such matters. He asks the lady if she wanted to buy the jade earlier, despite its then fan works into a house cost of three spiritual stones. The lady softly replies that she only wanted to reveal the truth and had no intention of purchasing it. She walks away, leaving Zhuafan and Pang intrigued by her mysterious presence. Zhuafan realizes the lady's eyes hold a potent gaze. He feels fortunate to have experience in such situations. 
he instructs Pang to return to the inn and lend him ten spiritual stones. Unwantedly, Pang gives them to him. Then Fan enters a house and finds the seller of the jade there. The seller aggressively asks him why he is there. Fan explains that he was looking for him. The seller retorts aggressively, questioning why Fan is looking for him. Fan replies that his family needs jades for a small business venture, and he wants to buy them from the seller. He offers ten spiritual stones in exchange. The seller questions why Fan wants to buy the jades if he knows they are fake. Fan explains that even though the jade is fake, it still holds value for him as he can sell it at a higher price. The seller understands Fan's intention but remembers the loss he suffered because of Fan. He declares that ten spiritual stones are too little to compensate for the loss. Fan asks how much the seller wants instead. The seller aggressively responds that he wants Fan's life. Suddenly, two men appear with swords, ready to attack Fan. Fan quickly realizes that the seller intends to kill him and prepares for the fight. The men rush toward Fan, but they are shocked by his strength. Fan tells the seller that he is not qualified to kill him and proceeds to defeat all the attackers, taking the jade from the seller. He then leaves the house. It is the house of Luo family inside the house. Fan instructs Pang to close the door and prevent anyone from entering. Pang obeys and closes the door securely. Now, Shua Fan stands in front of the jade, examining it closely. He holds it in his hands and notices that it suddenly glows and emits a radiant light. Shua Fan realizes that this jade is extraordinary. It contains the accumulated blood of thousands of creatures, absorbing the essence of the sun and moon over thousands of years. It possesses a perfect balance of yin and yang, making it a precious item for magic cultivators. According to the Nine Secret Books of Fairies, the blood within the jade can create a powerful bloody baby. This baby has the ability to kill people with malignant blood and can even cultivate sacred blood with practitioners. Even imperial-level powers would hesitate to face it Fan places the jade on his wrist and senses its power flowing into his veins. He realizes that the holy land is nothing compared to the power he now possesses. He feels incredibly fortunate and happy, knowing that he has encountered a stroke of luck this time. As evening sets in, Zhuo Fan continues his process with the jade. However, the process grows more powerful, draining his strength. He speaks to himself, contemplating the need to infuse fresh blood into the jade for practicing the bloody baby technique. He realizes that his own spirit must be as strong as the blood within the jade. As the jade surges with more energy, Zhuo Fan becomes confused, realizing he doesn't have much blood and that losing too much could be dangerous. Dizziness overtakes him, causing him to question whether he should continue or not. He ponders if he can use the fairy blood for the bloody baby and wonders if this is his only chance. The jade remains on the table before him, and he questions what would happen if he were to give up. He understands that once he has started, he must see it through. Suddenly, a significant amount of blood spews from his mouth, leaving him feeling unwell. He contemplates the danger of continuing and questions whether he should truly give up. If his soul is a pair with the jade, what does this very blood signify? A voice enters his mind, reminding him of the magic emperor Zhu Yifun and their dialogue regarding the nine secret books. The face of the young emperor and the words from the holy book resonate within him. He questions whether they are truly villains who only seek personal gain, and the face of the traitor Zhu Qing comes to his mind. In the midst of this internal struggle, Zhuo Fan declares that they all want him dead but emphasizes that he is still alive. He dismisses the concept of defense and questions the meaning of holiness. He wonders who he truly is. Motivating himself, Zhuo Fan claims to be the magic emperor demon emperor. He grasps the jade with all his power, contemplating what is missing from him and realizing he must retrieve it. He acknowledges that he must destroy the jade. As the jade shines, he is surprised to finally hold it, achieving his goal. He holds the jade in the air, proclaiming himself as the heavenly demon hero, exuding pride and energy. His eyes turn red as he appreciates his accomplishment, and acknowledges that this is the beginning of the life of the bloody baby. He reflects on how unexpectedly easy it was for him to implant a bloody baby, knowing that he possesses one. 
He decides on the martial arts he will use and develop next, having made his decision. The following morning, Zhuo Fan emerges from his room and meets Pang. He asks how Pang's business went. Kai Fu arrives to remind them of their duties. Zhuo Fan asks Pang why he guarded the door for ten days. Pang replies that he did so to prevent anyone from disturbing Zhuo Fan. Zhuo Fan thanks Pang for his hard work, and Pang is happy to receive the appreciation. Pang offers further assistance, suggesting they hurry as they cannot keep the young lady and master waiting. Zhuo Fan questions why Pang doesn't wonder what he was doing inside for ten days. Pang thinks that it is Zhuo Fan's own business, and assures him that he will share the information when the time is right. He urges Zhuo Fan to quickly join the young lady and master, as they have been waiting. Zhuo Fan reflects on the unconditional trust he has never experienced before. Now, they stand in front of a magnificent house in Fang City. However, they are stopped by guards with swords who warn them not to approach the Kai Fu family's residence. Peng introduces himself as a guardian of the Luo family and introduces Zhuo Fan as the family's housekeeper for the young lady. Internally, Zhuo Fan notes that he is not truly a household servant of the Luo family. Peng whispers to Zhuo Fan that Kai Jialai had introduced him as such a few days ago. Zhuo Fan congratulates Peng but ponders how a demon magic expert like himself could become a housekeeper for a small family. Nevertheless, Zhuo Fan perceives the unfriendly attitude of the guards and doubts that the Kai Fu family is a place to be trusted. He worries about how they treat the young lady and master with such cruelty. Peng aggressively comments that they don't even extend the lightest hospitality. Zhuo Fan thinks that they don't see the young lady and master as human beings and challenges Peng to take a closer look. They find the young master sitting alone on a sofa in a room. Upon opening the door, Zhuo Fan apologizes for being late and asks about his sister. The young master explains that his sister went to meet her fiancé, and the head of the Kai family asked her to return and cancel the marriage contract. Zhuo Fan becomes agitated, believing that this is a personal insult. He holds the young master's hand and urges him to leave, expressing his disdain for the Kai family. The young master, in a solemn state, reveals that there is a lake where Miss Luo is standing. Her fiancé, Xiao Tingge, is with another girl, engaged in a playful interaction. Xiao Tingge addresses Miss Luo aggressively, urging her not to bother him. He makes it clear that there is nothing between them anymore and emphasizes that only Yu Fei is in his eyes. The girl speaks up, asserting that the Xiao Tingge is no longer interested in Miss Luo and that she is his beloved. Miss Luo speaks up, reminding him that she did not expect him to cancel the marriage. She asks him to consider the memories of their two families growing up together. Xiao Tingge, however, maintains his stance, stating that he has nothing for her now. Miss Luo addresses him by his name, realizing that they have indeed grown up together. She pleads with him to help her family, but the girl intervenes and slaps Miss Luo, warning her to stay away from Xiao Tingge because he belongs to her. She aggressively advises Xiao Tingge to distance himself from Miss Luo in the future. Xiao Tingge tries to calm the situation down, confessing that his heart belongs only to Miss Luo. Miss Luo becomes depressed, worrying the future of her family. She cries and pleads with everyone, expressing her concerns about her family. Xuefan Fan approaches her, launching an attack on both Xiao Tingge and his girlfriend. They question him, asking who he is. Xuefan Fan addresses them as a couple of bitch individuals and asks them for daring to cross paths with his lady. Miss Luo looks on, shocked and unsure. They all demand to know who Xuefan Fan is. Xiao Tingge realizes that Xuefan's Fan's speed is incredible and considers him a genius comparable to himself. The young master and Pang Tongling also arrive at the scene. Zhuo Fan holds his face, astonished by his own reaction and how he hurt Luo despite knowing all the suffering in the world. He questions why he was affected by the bullying of a little girl. I in his heart. Zhuo Fan realizes that there is no reason for him to hold on to pain. He understands that it can always be attributed to the former owner of this body. He feels a strange sensation in his heart and decides that he will spend some time dealing with the Luo family on his own. He grabs Luo's hand and suggests they leave. However, Yufei, the girl, intervenes and warns them not to leave so easily after striking them. 
Luo questions what Yu Fei wants from them. Yu Fei demands that Xue Fan kneel before her and Kao Dao three times, specifically targeting him. Luo thinks that this is asking too much. Xiao Ting asks Luo not to feel embarrassed. Yu Fei warns them that she will not allow them to leave and warns Luo not to risk her brother's life by defying her demands. This shocks Xue Fan, and Pang shouts in protest. Luo believes that they should kneel down. While Xiao and Yufei become pleased with the situation, Dodge Fan once again attacks them, running toward them with incredible speed. He pushes them backward, slapping them so they fall to the ground. Now they are kneeling before Xu Fan. Yufei angrily shouts that if they all beg her, she will not let them go. In response, Xu Fan kicks Xiao Tingge in the face, sending him flying through the air. The young master, Uncle Pang, and Luo look on in astonishment. Fan scoffs, believing that they do not deserve to kneel before him. Then, a man in a blue costume emerges, asking who is disturbing the Kai family. He is Xiao Ting Ji's father and the head of the Kai family. Xiao Ting Gu points toward Fan, revealing that Fan struck him and now his father stands before him. Fan realizes that the man is at the eighth fond realm of cultivation. Xiao Ting Ji's father is surprised that Xu Fan can determine his cultivation level with just a glance. He acknowledges Xu Fan as the butler of the Luo family, Xu Fan himself. Xiao Ting Ji's father had heard that the Luo family was recruiting a new butler but didn't expect him to be so young and mysterious. He concludes that there is an external force supporting Xu Fan now, and he no longer needs to be afraid. Why Yu Fei's face is badly injured and she pleads with Uncle Kai to punish them. Uncle Kai addresses Luo, stating that he has been kind enough to her and her brother. He warns that if she doesn't pay the price for this incident, it will cause trouble for him. Xue Fan taunts Uncle Kai, remarking that the head of the Kai family is getting older and bullying a little girl Fan steps forward in front of Luo and asks the head of the Kai family to have a discussion without pretending to be good. He reminds him not to forget the issue of the marriage contract. Uncle Kai responds that he will not show any mercy and will explain everything to Fan today. He asserts that he holds the power over all their lives and presents two choices, fight or die. He promises to show Fan his strength. Uncle Peng shouts out, revealing that Uncle Kai possesses the power of the eighth layer and that they are all in grave danger. Luo begs Uncle Kai for the life of her brother, Yahai. The magic emperor Zhuo Fan initiates the fight and revels in it. He charges towards Uncle Kai and launches an attack. Uncle Kai retaliates furiously with his full power, but to his surprise it is challenging for him to gather his chi power, and Fan manages to survive his powerful strikes. Uncle Kai exclaims that Fan is lucky, but Fan does not believe in luck. He only believes in strength. Suddenly, there is blood on Xiao Ting's hand, and Fan draws Uncle Kai's attention to it. Blood is coming out of Xiao Ting's mouth. Uncle Kai angrily demands to know what Fan has done to his son. Fan reveals that he simply wanted to show him his power and that he can take his son's life at any moment. Fan advises Uncle Kai to be careful around him. Uncle Kai pleads with him to stop, stating that he believes in him. Fan smiles proudly and leaves with his companions. As they walk away, Fan warns the leader of the Kai family that if he disregards his warning, he will finish him. He laughs loudly. Yu Fei asks Uncle Kai if he will allow them to leave. Uncle Kai replies that in the past, the old man was too lazy to receive them, but now he will let them go back to the mountain. He explains that Fan needs to be eliminated as soon as possible to avoid future threats to his family. He plans to make arrangements swiftly. Yu Fei is furious, thinking that if Uncle Kai is afraid to touch Fan, the elders of her family will seek revenge. She is angry at the thought of Fan daring to strike her pretty face and vows to make him suffer the consequences for offending the members of the Seven Imperial Family. They arrive back home, and Zhuo Fan approaches Miss Luo, asking if she knows about the Seven Empire Families. This question surprises Miss Luo, and she asks how he knows about them. Uncle Pang also expresses curiosity about the Seven Empire Families. Miss Luo begins to explain that in the past, they had no connection with the Guanyin and the Seven Empire families. However, now that they live in the city, if they were to encounter any of the Seven Empire families, they should quickly avoid them, 
even if it means avoiding a dog from one of those families. Uncle Pang listens attentively and realizes that Miss Luo is always composed, even when facing the Kai family, who are considered the number one family in the city of Frank. He never expected her to be affected like this. Miss Luo continues, stating that regardless of the Luo family or the Kai family, no matter how strong they may be, they are just secular families. However, in the Tianyu Empire, during its early foundation, there were seven ministers who received special consent from the imperial family and became known as the Seven Empire Families. They possess authority and power surpassing that of other families. Going against them is akin to going against the empire itself. Miss Luo concludes her explanation, and Uncle Pang comments that there is no comparison to the power of the empire family in the land. Miss Luo affirms that the seven empire families are untouchable, and everyone is aware of it. Fen then asks about the Sun family's inclusion in the seven empire families. This surprises Miss Luo, and she questions why he is asking. Uncle Pang adds that if that woman were indeed a member of one of the seven empire families, Miss Luo would have stopped him from hitting her. Miss Luo feels embarrassed, and Fan confirms that he heard the woman shouting about making them feel the strength of the seven empire families. Miss Luo and Uncle Pang are shocked to realize that they have actually offended a member of one of the seven families. Miss Luo holds Fan's hand and asks him to accompany her to apologize to Miss Sunday. However, Fan releases his hand and tells her it's useless. If they go, they will die. Miss Luo becomes worried, and Uncle Pang asks Fan for his thoughts on what they should do. Yahai happily looks at Fan, calling him his brother. Fan asks him why he calls him brother instead of a slave dog. Yahai respectfully explains that it's a term of honor because Fan saved them. Yahai expresses his desire for Fan to become his brother-in-law and save them once again. This angers Luo and Uncle Pang, and Luo tells Yahai to be quiet. Fan asks Luo if there is anyone from the Seven Empire families. She reveals that the Qianlong Pavilion is one of them, known for its vast treasures and great strength. Fan places his hand on Yunhai's face and tells them to return. He explains that they will visit the Qianlong Pavilion tomorrow. Luo questions why they should go there, and Fan responds that it's to form an alliance. She asks for clarification, while guards stand nearby, holding swords. One of the guards notices someone approaching, and they all turn to see Fan, Luo, and Pang. Fan thinks to himself that it's impressive, just as he expected. Even the guards are strong. One of the guards orders them to stop and questions their purpose in coming to the Qianlong Pavilion. Fan asks them to inform Miss Yinzhuang about their presence, and that they wish to meet her. The guards find it amusing that Fan speaks to them without looking into their eyes, and they laugh, stating they have never heard of the Luo family. They demand that they leave the premises. Luo appears fearful, but Fan insists that the guards speak with their master as they don't have the right to make decisions. This angers the guards further. Fan criticizes the Qianlong Pavilion for treating their guests in such a disappointing manner. Suddenly, a young and beautiful lady emerges and instructs the guards to stop. The guards immediately kneel before her and inform her that these guests are causing trouble. Pang and Zhuo Fan are shocked to see her. The young lady advises the guards not to be rude to their guests. She turns to Pang and remarks that they meet again. Fan realizes that this is a great opportunity, as he didn't expect Miss Long Nui to be from the Qianlong Pavilion. Miss Long Nui introduces herself and explains that she has some tasks to attend to. She asks how she can assist them. Fan introduces himself as a butler of the Luo family and presents the idea that he accompanied this young lady to sell something, mentioning that he heard the Qianlong Pavilion is known as the number one treasure house in the Tianyu Empire. Miss Long Nui expresses interest in seeing the item. The guards speculate that Fan might be the young lady's boyfriend or close friend, or perhaps it's just a coincidence. They plan to teach him a lesson, especially given his luck in having a handsome face. They laugh among themselves. They all sit down, and Fan thinks to himself that the young lady may not be cunning, but she is clever. He believes the crucial thing is to tempt her into deciding on a business negotiation strategy. He also realizes that although this young girl is an elite, she is nothing compared to him. Fan presents a piece of paper in front of her, intriguing the young lady. 
Pang and Luo whisper to each other, wondering what Fan wrote on the paper and why the young lady is taking it so seriously. The young lady stands up and asks Fan for his price. Fan suggests that she makes a good offer. The young lady proposes 100,000 spiritual stones. This surprises everyone. Shua Fan says that she is not offering a good price and decides not to sell it. Fan realizes that Miss Long is not sincere in her business dealings. He asks her to stop the negotiations, stating that he only provided her with a sketch of a first-level formation array, which should be worth around 10,000 spiritual stones. He accuses her of lying and quickly demands that she return the sketch to him. Miss Long counters, offering to pay 300,000 spiritual stones for it. Fan remains unconvinced, believing that she is still not sincere. However, Miss Long argues that the sketch represents a first-level formation array, but there are many other images she has never seen before. She insists that even if she loses a substantial amount of money, she must obtain this information. Luo interjects, stating that to her, this information is worth more than 300,000 stones. Miss Long becomes agitated and reveals that within the Tianyu Empire, only they can purchase this information, and it cannot be obtained elsewhere. She approaches Miss Luo and proposes a lucrative business opportunity with their pavilion, offering VIP treatment and open access in the future. Miss Luo is surprised by this unexpected offer, questioning if it's genuine. She looks to Fan, hoping for his guidance, but he tells her to be quiet. Fan explains to Miss Long that he is the butler of the Luo family and handles all their affairs. He demands that she return the sketch to him. Miss Long insists that her offer is fair, considering the reputation and prestige of the Qianlong Pavilion, and that 300,000 spiritual stones is a reasonable price. Fan retorts that Miss Long has been playing games with them and doesn't truly want the sketch. He inquires about meeting the master of the Qianlong Pavilion, to which Miss Long becomes helpless and asks them to wait in the room. Luo expresses concern over their actions potentially offending the Qianlong Pavilion day an old man dressed in golden robes enters the room, introducing himself as Xinyan Longjiu, the master of the Qianlong Pavilion in the city. Fan thanks him acknowledging that he is strong as he expected. Fan observes that the cultivation level of this person is much higher than that of the head of the Kai family, and the power difference is significant, making it impossible for him to discern the master's cultivation level. Miss Luo greets the master, and he asks Fan if he is the new butler of the Luo family. The master mentions that as long as he is not an imposter, he can be the butler. He admits that he had doubts about Miss Long's identity and questions Fan about it. Fan confirms the master's suspicion. The master chuckles, acknowledging that Miss Long has a short career but possesses a unique aura, which makes her certain about herself. However, he still harbors doubts and decides to investigate further. Fan places the sketch in front of the master, shocking him. Miss Long remarks that the first level formation array alone is worth 300,000 stones. The master expresses surprise, stating that he did not expect the Luo family to possess something like this. He offers 1.8 million stones for the sketch, which shocks everyone, including Miss Long Fan still believes the offer is too low, but the master insists that 1.8 million is his final offer. Miss Luo decides to sell it, but Fan angrily slams his hand on the table, threatening to cancel the transaction if he doesn't get a good price. This enrages the old master and he attacks Fan. However, Fan calmly explains that the Qianlong Pavilion is a business family within the empire, and if he behaves in such a manner, it will tarnish the family's reputation. He calls himself a bad boy, but he will bet that the master won't disclose their negotiation to anyone, as it goes against the reputation of an official family. The master laughs loudly, surprising everyone once again. He states that if the Luo family has Fan's support, they need not worry about the race of their family. He addresses Fan, mentioning that he knows Fan is not just selling the array and asks about his conditions. Fan offers a price of 10 million stones, proposing to pay 1 million now and the rest later. He hands over the sketch to the master, who assures Fan that he will assist him as much as possible. The master orders Miss Long to pay Fan 1 million stones. Miss Long questions why the first-level formation array is valued at 10 million stones 
and why she has never seen such a formation before. The master asks her to carefully examine the sketches, as he is afraid they might be the only array in the Tianyu Empire. Miss Long is shocked to realize that it is an ancient array formation. The master reveals that the methods of formation cultivation and what can be gleaned from books are valuable treasures. Miss Long acknowledges that it is an invaluable treasure and is worth more than ten million stones. The master instructs her to find four or five people to protect the Luo family, as they have offended the Sun family the previous day. The lady questions why they should protect the Luo family. Master responds, saying that she doesn't understand their intentions. He explains that this is a way for us to pay the debt. Shuafan smiles. Shuafan stands in his room, lost in deep thought. He hears the sound of someone approaching, and Pang enters the room. Pang expresses concern, wondering why Shuafan is so calm. Shuafan asks him to bring Miss Luo and Uncle Master to him. Pang is amazed by Shuafan's talent and bravery. Outside the Luo house, a group of people is gathered, led by Sun Lady. The doors open, and Zhuafan, Miss Luo, Pang, and the young master step outside to see what the problem is. Sun Lady says they don't need to know the reason and reminds Zhuafan of what he did to her and the Kai family yesterday. She warns them that today, they will destroy the Luo family. Miss Luo looks at Zhuafan, realizing that as long as he remains calm, everything will be okay. Luo addresses Sun Lady, stating that her family has lived in Linchan for four hundred years, and it's not easy to destroy them. Sun Lady counters, saying that the Sun family has only been in Fong City for a few decades and warns Luo to choose her words carefully. Sun Lady holds a magical light in her hands and prepares to attack. She charges towards them, but Uncle Pang steps in front of Miss Luo to protect her. Someone else intervenes, stopping Sun Lady. It is her cousin, who apologizes to Miss Luo and asks for forgiveness on behalf of his cousin. He explains that they are only here for the butler of the Luo family, and seek justice for her cousin. He promises not to hurt anyone as long as she hands over the butler. Sun Lady interrupts, reminding him that this is not their deal, and they should destroy them all. Her cousin tells her to be quiet and realizes the opportunity to create a better future for themselves. Miss Luo responds, stating that going after Zhuo Fan means going after their entire family, as he is the pillar of their family and of great importance. The cousin advises Miss Luo not to engage in a fight, as he knows Zhuo Fan's true identity, and Sun Lady would not dare to fight him. He introduces himself as Xia, a disciple of the Yuming family. Sun Lady mocks Miss Luo, seeing her fear. The Sun family's connection to one of the seven empire families explains why even the head of the Kai family shows respect to Miss Luo. Sun Lady pushes Zhuafan, but he steps forward and introduces himself. He challenges them, asking how they want to finish the fight. Xia responds according to Sun Lady's wishes, saying that if he were to lose to someone like Zhuafan, it would bring shame to the Yuming Valley. Xia moves forward and strikes Zhuafan in the air causing him to get injured. Xiaoxia comments that Zhuo Fan could have dodged the attack, but the qi pressure is six times heavier, and Zhuo Fan is a devil monk. Miss Luo worries about Zhuo Fan, while Zhuo Fan finds the situation interesting. Xiaoxia senses that Zhuo Fan is not afraid but rather enjoying the fight. He wonders who Zhuo Fan really is. Zhuo Fan runs towards Xiaoxia, surprising him with his speed. Xiaoxia tries to stop him, and they engage in a fierce battle of powers and lights. Xiaoxia pushes Zhuafan backward. Sun Lady advises Xiaoxia to be careful, as even Uncle Kai was hurt by Zhuafan. She notices blood on her hand and realizes she didn't expect to encounter someone who could harm her here. She wishes she had known earlier. Xiaoxia believes Zhuafan to be a demon cultivator, someone who seeks power by any means and disregards rules and discipline. He prepares to finish the fight quickly. Luo wonders what is happening as Xiaoxia flies in the air and moves towards Zhuafan. Zhuafan is shocked by Xiaoxia's speed. Xiaoxia tries to strike him, but Zhuafan counters with his blood shadow palm technique. Xiaoxia is surprised by Zhuafan's ability to use martial arts skills despite his chief flow being sealed. Zhuafan strikes him, and Xiaoxia is sent flying through the air. The young master is amazed by Zhuafan's abilities and expresses his admiration. 
However, Fan falls to the ground, blood coming out of his mouth, causing everyone to worry. It is evident that using a martial arts skill while his chief flow was sealed means he will die soon, as revealed by Zaishia. Lu is shocked by this revelation. Zaishia acknowledges that if he and Fan were evenly matched in power, he might have used his full strength, but considering Fan's current condition, he decides to finish him off easily. Just as Zaishia is about to strike Fan, Lu steps in front of him, and Zaishia smiles, stating that he will not kill her. Peng also intervenes, coming to Fan's aid. Zaishia shouts die at Fan, but suddenly a loud voice resounds, saying no. A deep voice echoes of drop dead. He puts his hand on Fan's head, but someone holds his hand. A man with long hair steps forward, introducing himself as Long Jie. Lady Sun is shocked to see a member of Qianlong Pavilion. Long Jie says Yu Quan, causing trouble everywhere, isn't it enough? Xia aggressively tells Long Jie that it's none of his business and not to interfere. Long Jie reveals that he was ordered by Uncle Jio to save the Luo family, and if he wants to harm them, he will have to go through him. Xia is shocked at Qianlong Pavilion's involvement. He reminds Jio that they have the same power, and he can't protect these people. Long Jia points out that Xia is injured and can't defeat him. Xia understands what he means. Long Jia continues, saying that despite their power, if they were to fight, it would result in a big battle and he would not bear the consequences. Xia ponders for a moment, realizing that Yuming Valley and Qianlong Pavilion have their own problems and that a war between them is inevitable, but not now. He wants to disrupt the plans of both families first. He understands and shouts, leaving everyone shocked. Blood drips down, and Fan says, Your master didn't teach you how devil cultivators fight. If you provoke them, you will die, addressing Zaishia. Zaishia is surprised by his courage. He wonders where this man gets his power from and how he became faster than before. Perhaps he fell into his trap, and not just him, but Long Jie as well. Zaishia calls for help, but Fan says, Die doubt he kills him, and Zaishia falls to the ground. Sun Lady screams and loses consciousness. Long Jie is afraid. Fan asks Long Jie if he was ordered by Uncle Jio to protect him, and thanks him. He tells them that they don't need to send anyone else to protect them, as it is night time. Uncle Jio aggressively questions Long Jie, wondering how a kid could cause trouble and disrupt his family's plans. Sun Lady says Xiao Nui won't understand why Zhuo Fan is causing trouble and killing Yu Quan, and what the connection is with Qianlong Pavilion. Uncle Jio shouts and tells her that at that time, Long Jie was there, and everyone saw what happened. The kid killed Yu Quan in front of Long Jie, and everyone witnessed it. Sun Lady thinks that the Luo family will be held responsible for this. However, Long Jie tells her that no one from a small family can do this killing a disciple of the seven families. Sun Lady feels sad, realizing that no one will believe what happened, and they will be blamed. Young Lady now understands and worries about the consequences. She wonders why they will be blamed for the Luo family's deeds. Uncle Jio feels unlucky and reveals that all of this was planned by the kid. According to Long Jie, that boy is almost out of breath. Even if Yu Quan wanted to attack, he would not be able to move his body. But after Long Jie arrived, he took the opportunity to recover and counterattack. His strength is much greater than before. Uncle Jio believes that he planned all of this from the beginning. Sun Lady is surprised by his plan and thinks that he planned it for Yu Quan. Uncle Jio tells her that he didn't plan it for Yu Quan, he planned it for Qianlong Pavilion and Yu Ming Valley. He reveals that when two big families are fighting, he can convince the Luo family to escape. Sun Lady is shocked and wonders why he is not afraid to confront big families. Uncle Jio believes that he had thought about it at that time when he sold the array formation. He already knew how much Uncle Jio appreciates the owner of his family. So, if they don't do anything and ignore the Luo family, it will damage the honor of Qianlong Pavilion. They will ensure the family's safety until the end. He continues to walk. In the beginning, he thought that guy was the most dangerous person he ever met, Uncle Jio reveals. In Zhuo Fan's room, he asks Lu and Peng to leave. He sits in a yoga position with bandages over his body 
meditating. He realizes that he is too weak. He always believed that in his eyes, he could use all his strength and carefully win against that rash, but in reality, he can't win. He always dies by their hands. He is too weak to avoid the Kai family and Sun family. He got caught up in the fight of the seven families. The enemy he will be facing is the seven families. With his current power, it is impossible to protect himself and his family. He has to become stronger. He will become stronger in a short time. He puts his hand in front of him, and a red light emits from it as he focuses on his meditation. Xiao Ting is standing there, blood coming out of his mouth. He falls down, and blood moves straight in the air. He will not kill him yet. A red baby shadow flies in the air and declares that he wants them to see the Kai family being destroyed. He is flying in the air. A guard is walking and thinking about what is happening and where the patrols are. It's time to change shifts. He stops as he hears a noise and asks who is there. He walks further, realizing that it is the residents of the Kai family, and wonders who would dare to come here. He feels something again and stops. The bloody baby in the air thinks that this is the fiftieth person. Shua Fan realizes that his bloody baby and his great perception are a great combination, capable of killing a practitioner in an instant. He knows his wounds are not yet healed, and he needs blood to heal his chi. He sees a master devil cultivator, and the bloody baby sees a master among them. He wonders why everyone has gathered here and finds it more interesting. He notices Elder Jane among them, and Kai's head greets him asking why they have come with Sun Jiaju. He inquires if there is a problem. An old man with authority responds that he should know the reason. He reveals that today, their disciple was killed by Qianlong Pavilion. He says that the Luo family is responsible for this. The old man questions how they dare to do such a thing. One of them mentions that Yuming Valley and Qianlong Pavilion have been hostile towards each other but no party has dared to start a conflict and break the balance among the seven families of the empire. This time, Qianlong Pavilion killed their disciple with the permission of the Luo family. The Red Shadows listen to their conversation, realizing that the seven families of the empire have always dominated, and opposing their dignity and authority is considered arrogance. They would rather believe this is a conspiracy than accept the truth in front of them. This also applies to Qianlong Pavilion. Kai's head asks about their arrival, and the old man laughs, stating that he wants to help Kai. He suggests that Kai just needs to watch what Qianlong Pavilion will do. Holding a cup of tea, the old man implies that if Kai acts rashly, there will be a big conflict. Elder Jane, the old man, is asked how they offended Qianlong Pavilion and why he should involve himself in the dispute between the seven families. The old man responds that it is true the Kai family cannot offend Qianlong Pavilion directly, but by dealing with the Luo family, they can see their reaction. Kai is confused, but the old man clarifies that he knows Luo family is supported by Qianlong Pavilion, so if he offends Luo family, it is equivalent to offending Qianlong Pavilion. Another man mentions that Kai's granddaughter is close to Yuming Valley and asks why Kai wouldn't cause trouble for the Luo family just as his younger daughter caused trouble today. When Kai found out that the Luo family is supported by Qianlong Pavilion, wasn't it natural for him to dare to cause trouble? Kai replies that he knows Fan is the person he hates the most right now because a few days ago, he made his son vomit blood for several days with some unknown skill. Even now, his child has not fully recovered. If he goes and provokes Fan again, he's afraid that his son will be killed. Shua Fan listens to their conversation and thinks that it's just an excuse for Kai's family to inject the bloody baby into his son. Even though they used the bloody baby to torture him today, they didn't expect him to avoid their trap. The elder man replies, telling Kai not to make excuses. He believes that the head of the Sun family is wise and competent, and if he leaves this task to him, he will surely fulfill their trust. Another person becomes aggressive and questions what he means. The older man becomes even more aggressive and states that he doesn't need anyone to help him. He then asks Kai if he has prepared the spiritual martial art book. Kai confirms that he has done so and gives it to him. The elder man says he will accept it and reveals that it is a medium flame finger spiritual martial art, 
which is better than the low-level evil spiritual martial art Kai used. It is an exchange of a low-level skill for an intermediate spiritual skill. The bloody baby watches from the window, thinking about what he will do with the elder man watching them. One of them asks the elder man who he will choose to deal with the Luo family. The elder man replies, asking if they are afraid to take on this task and assures them not to worry, as the person who will handle it is a member of Yuming Valley. The man questions if it means that Yuming Valley is going to attack. The elder man responds that he is a chess piece he has arranged for a long time and is located on the Mountain of Black Wind. Zhuo Fan is shocked at the mention of the Mountain of Black Wind. The elder man notices someone at the window and gives a hand signal to the bloody baby, who quickly runs away. The elder man flies after the bloody baby, trying to catch it. He is incredibly fast, shocking everyone present. The bloody baby stands in front of the elder man, and suddenly there is a destructive force. Kai looks at this creature and asks about it. The elder man replies that he doesn't know much about it but believes it must be related to Zhuafan, the devil cultivator. The bloody baby returns to Zhuafan's body. Zhuafan thinks that he didn't expect to encounter such a strong man in the Kai residence. Since the creation of the bloody baby, his heart has been set. He realizes that if a clone of the bloody baby is destroyed, the bloody baby in his body will also die, and he himself will die. He believes that he needs to increase his strength because the state of Yuming Valley and Qianlong Pavilion remains stable for now. He suddenly thinks that someone from the Mountain of Black Wind will come soon, and the Luo family will be in danger. He uses magic with his bonds and tries to heal himself, sitting in a fiery magic circle. He believes that with the current power of the bloody baby, his strength will easily increase. He thinks with the current bloody baby power his strength will easily increase even less than ten days after he has broken through the QI collection his speed has increased double. He thinks about the mountain of black wind and smiles and says if he is not afraid of dying just come to him. It is morning and someone knocks on Fan's door. He opens it and Miss Luo falls down. He asks her why she was there and realizes how careless he has been. If there had been an enemy, he would have been in serious danger. Miss explains that she was waiting for him outside because she was worried about his injuries, but now that he seems fine, she's leaving. Fan asks if she waited the whole night, and Miss becomes confused. Peng arrives and asks if Fan is okay, while Miss runs away. Peng tells Fan that they were all worried about his wounds and mentions how Miss stayed up all night out of concern for him. Peng calls for Miss Luo, but she is already gone. Fan thinks about the strange feeling in his heart and is surprised that the demon's magic emperor like him could be moved by such treatment from a woman. He holds his heart, feeling its faster beats, and realizes it must be the lingering effects of the boy's body from the Luo family. He walks away, leaving Pang to wonder what is happening to him. Fan asks Pang to accompany him to the Qianlong Pavilion. Pang expresses concern about Miss and the young master, but Fan assures him that no one will touch them after the incident tomorrow. Even the seven families won't be able to harm them. Pang happily slaps Fan on the back and expresses his trust in him, saying that Fan has shouldered a great responsibility. Fan humbly states that he is not that person. They arrive at the Qianlong Pavilion, where the guards warmly welcome them. Fan questions why they suddenly show respect when just a few days ago, they didn't. The guards explain that at that time, they didn't know who he was. They clarify that he is a VIP guest now, and they cannot stop him. Fan walks past them, remarking that they are useless trash who look down on people. Inside, they see Lady Long, who moves away. Peng whispers to Fan about the potential offense they may have caused her. Fan addresses Miss Long and questions why they aren't being treated as friendly guests. Lady Long laughs and asks why they would think they are guests here. Dodge Fan pokes at Long Lady calling her an innocent girl. This angers her, and she questions how he dares to talk like that. Zhuo Fan responds that it's the truth, Miss Long. Whether it's about business or the seven families of the empire, everything depends on interests. How can they survive in this world if they are so easily angered? He mentions that her friend, Long Jia, is more mature than she is. Without saying much, he leaves, thinking to himself that Long Jie is clever and quick in taking action. 
The ability to think fast and acknowledge defeat is a powerful trait. Letting emotions get in the way won't benefit them. He suggests they forget about personal problems and focus on business. Long Lady agrees, and then Uncle Jia arrives with his disciple, Long Jio. Long Jio is surprised to see that Uncle Jia's wounds have completely healed overnight. Zhuo Fan addresses Uncle Jia and asks if he doesn't want to give the young generation the opportunity to do business. Uncle Jia smiles and states that this old man wouldn't hand over a business that could harm the honor of the Qianlong Pavilion and its young generation. Uncle Jia remarks that Zhuo Fan must have some requests to make. Zhuo Fan playfully asks what Uncle Jia is planning, but Uncle Jia counters, saying that Zhuo Fan may be good at making plans, but he shouldn't think he's smarter than Uncle Jia. Zhuo Fan respectfully responds that he wants a new residence for the Luo family. Uncle Jia questions why he would want to help them. Zhuo Fan replies that it's because they owe them, and it would be easier for them to monitor the Luo family that way. This surprises Uncle Jia, who realizes that the boy can read people's thoughts. Since Qianlong Pavilion has yet to take action, Uncle Jia doesn't know when they will deal with the Yuming Valley. If the Luo family doesn't have a residence, it could potentially lead to a war between the two families. So, monitoring the Luo family is necessary, but then this guy suddenly appears. Shua Fan wonders what Uncle Jia is thinking, realizing that the old man has lived for almost a hundred years but is being controlled by the boy. It doesn't sit well with him, and he becomes aggressive. Shua Fan asks Uncle Jia to share some information. Long Lady also asks what information he has. Zhuo Fan reveals that he knows the influence of the Qianlong Pavilion extends throughout the plain of the empire. He explains the information he has, and everyone listens attentively. Uncle Jia wants to hear it first. Zhuo Fan reveals that the Yuming Valley will soon attack them. This statement causes the old master to shout angrily. Long Jio adds that they cannot be certain and need to keep an eye on their actions. Long Lady believes Zhuo Fan is trying to fool them and asks for evidence. Unfortunately, Zhuo Fan doesn't have any evidence. He only knows the appearance of the old person, who is called Elder Jane by Kai Rong and the others. This revelation shocks the master, and he becomes furious. He shouts loudly, and Zhuo Fan senses his strong killing intent. Zhuo Fan asks the master if he has any relationship with Elder Jane. Long Jiu informs Zhuo Fan that Elder Jane was the one who destroyed the master's right eye. Shua Fan apologizes for not knowing this before. The master says that because Shua Fan has provided a description of the old man, he will trust him. He also informs Shua Fan that there is a residence located 100 meters away that they can occupy. Both Pang and Shua Fan express their gratitude and prepare to leave. The master asks where Shua Fan saw that old man, and Shua Fan replies that he saw him at the Kai family. However, he's not entirely sure if it was indeed the Kai family. The master aggressively orders Long Jia to send a message and call more elders. He doesn't want Elder Jane to leave the city alive. He is angry and seeks revenge for his damaged eye. Shua Fan looks happy at the prospect. Strong guards stand in a row as Miss Luo and the young master enter happily. Shua Fan offers Pang the position of leader of the guards, but Pang thinks that every guard is much better than him, so he can only be a guard and not a leader. Zhuo Fan reassures him, saying that one day he will be a good leader, and Peng appreciates the encouragement. Miss Long and Long Jiu come in behind them, and Miss Long accuses Zhuo Fan of not only fooling people but also influencing those around him. She calls him a liar and believes that Peng's qualifications can only reach the sixth layer, comparing him to her own guards. This statement angers everyone. Long Lady suggests that they should not dream of becoming a big family. Shua Fan interrupts her, stating that they should not bully the weak just because they can and advises her not to be outrageous. Long Lady retorts that they are deluding themselves and dreaming during the daytime just to entertain themselves. She adds that a big and strong family can only be built through the efforts of hundreds of generations. She questions whether using their limited intelligence for Qianlong Pavilion will make them great. She insults Shua Fan, calling him a frog in the well who doesn't know how big the world is. Luo Miss worries about the situation, while Shua Fan smiles. Long Jiu politely asks Miss Long to stop, and Shua Fan asks Miss Long to use Lingxue, which are spiritual stones. 
Shua Fan then runs and flies over the roof of the building. Lady Young shouts at him, asking if he has no manners and telling him to come down. Shua Fan states that he is forming a level 3 defensive formation called the Panglong Formation, a formation that can only be created by Uncle Jia. Shua Fan descends from the air with full power, creating magic in his hands and illuminating the floor. Miss Long is surprised by his actions, and Shua Fan holds his hand out in front of him, performing a magic spell. This shocks everyone. A golden dragon emerges from the magic towards Shua Fan. Elder Jane, in a yoga position, is shocked, wondering who activated this array. He realizes that he doesn't have the ability to do so and finds it impossible. On the other side, Uncle Jia also comes out and sees the dragon. He looks at it and remarks that his own dragon is not as strong as this one. The entire city is filled with light. Another man stands there, thinking about what is happening. He believes that the plan has been executed, but Uncle Jane is not acting recklessly. He wonders what is going on, as Shua Fan is still in the process of performing his full magic. Lady Long and Long Jio ask Shua Fan what he is doing Shua Fan ignores Long Miss, which infuriates her. He explains that he is afraid the current level of protection will not be enough to fully protect her, so he advises increasing it to level 5, the Jiotian Panlong Array. However, this requires a large number of Lingshir, which shocks both Long Miss and Long Jio. In the entire empire, only a few people possess the talent to create a level 5 formation array, and even within the seven families, such talent is scarce. Despite this, Zhuo Fan is confident that he can create the level 5 formation array. Long Jiu deeply ponders whether Zhuo Fan can truly create a level 5 formation array. Luo Miss mentions that he used a significant number of Lingshu without her permission, and she would normally punish him for it. However, because he used them for their benefit, she forgives him. She asks them to leave, and they walk away. With the formation array set up, Zhuo Fan reveals his original power and the area is now protected by the formation array. Long Miss finds it unexpected that he possesses a level 5 array formation. She wonders how a small family like theirs can have such a talented individual. Uncle Jio approaches them and asks who created the array. Long Miss informs him that it was Zhuo Fan. Uncle Jio is shocked, as not just anyone can create such an array. It takes at least 10 years to learn such skills. He wonders how Zhuo Fan at such a young age, was able to accomplish this. He asks them to call Zhuo Fan to meet him. Long Miss and Long Jio call Zhuo Fan brother and request him to meet Master Jio. Zhuo Fan asks what he wants. Uncle Jio enters, and Zhuo Fan addresses him as Jio Ge, acknowledging him as his elder brother. Master Jio replies, calling him Xiao Fan and expressing no concern about the formality. Uncle Jio asks Zhuo Fan how he managed to set up a level 5 array and why he is serving the Luo family with such abilities. He offers Zhuo Fan the opportunity to join Qianlong Pavilion. Zhuo Fan asks how he can do so. Uncle Jio offers Zhuo Fan a position in Qianlong Pavilion, promising him better treatment and the opportunity to become a great elder. Zhuo Fan is interested, but Long Lady shouts her disapproval thinking he is too young and inexperienced for such a high position. Zhuo Fan had anticipated this reaction when he started his conflict with the Sun family and Yu Ming Valley. He believes that with his talent for setting up level 5 array formations, anyone would want him, even the emperor would treat him respectfully. Uncle Jiu asks for Zhuo Fan's thoughts, and he states that he has some conditions. Master Jiu asks him to state his conditions, and Zhuo Fan jokingly requests that Long Lady bring him tea, wash his feet, and warm his bed. The Long Lady shouts at him, but Master calms her down. Zhuo Fan clarifies that he only wants to bring Miss Luo and Pang back to the Luo family, and he shocks everyone with his conditions. Master promises that Luo's family will be safe during Zhuo Fan's stay at Qianlong Pavilion. He also assures Zhuo Fan that he will become an elder in the pavilion and take him to the family headquarters in three days. Zhuo Fan asks them to wait and clarifies that he never promised to become an elder in Xianlong Pavilion. Master Jiu shouts in rejection, thinking that Zhuo Fan is playing with him. Zhuo Fan explains that he would have agreed if the offer had come half an hour earlier, but he points to Long Nui's previous words as his reason for changing his decision. 
he stands up and boldly proclaims that he will make the Luo family as prominent as the seven families within the next ten years. After finishing his tea, he leaves. Master Jiu asks Long Jiu what he said to Zhuofan, and he replies that he told Zhuofan that his aspirations were unrealistic. However, Master Jiu believes that with Zhuofan's level 5 array mastery, the Luo family will surpass the other families and suggests inviting him as a great elder. Zhuofan walks away, realizing that it was a great opportunity to protect the Luo family but feeling triggered by Long Miss's words. He becomes furious and decides that if he can't dream, he will rely on heaven. He plans to use the demon technique to challenge his fate against the heavens, determined to help the Luo family not only break free from the magic heart, but also cultivate their potential. He firmly believes that nothing is impossible for Zhu Yifan. The magic emperor Dua Fan finds Miss Luo and Pang in the house, and they ask about Master Jiu's intentions. He informs them that the master wants him to join Qianlong Pavilion. Miss Luo congratulates him on the opportunity for a better future, but Zhuo Fan shocks them by revealing that he has rejected the offer. Pang and Miss Luo ask for the reason, but Zhuo Fan simply states that he has no reason for his rejection. He tells Miss Luo that he understands his own benefits and doesn't want to interfere with his plans. Miss Luo is shocked by his response. Zhuo Fan proudly declares that he will make the Luo family a prominent force within the next ten years. At night. The bloody baby is on another spy mission. It notices that many people are missing, causing fear in Kairong. The bloody baby observes a girl sitting on the roof, an audacious act considering the Qianlong Pavilion's security. The girl jumps down, and the bloody baby follows her as she enters a room where others are present. The bloody baby is shocked to see a powerful girl. She asks someone to bring paper and a pencil and starts sketching the Qianlong Pavilion residence. She informs her team that there are guards and martial art experts present. Her team expresses concern about attacking the pavilion, but she assures them not to worry. She plans for some of her brothers from the Yuming Valley to distract the guards while they move quickly. She instructs her team to kill all Luo family members and bring Miss Luo. The bloody baby is shocked upon hearing about Miss Luo's impending danger. The guards ask the girl about her relationship with Xiao Zhai and the Yuming Valley. They inquire if the people from the Yuming Valley will listen to her, and if they will help after the attack. The bloody baby is shocked by the mention of Xiao Zhai's name. The guards express concern about their own survival if the Yuming Valley doesn't assist them. The girl warns them about Mr. Lao Zhai and reminds them to heal him. She orders them to prepare for the plan without objections, and they obediently comply. Meanwhile, Xua Fan believes it's his turn to take action. The girl enters the room where another girl cheers her up, mentioning her demeanor as the leader of Black Wind Mountain. The young girl humbly replies that her adoptive father would be even better than her, and that no one dares to offend him. The other girl praises her, stating that her father still believes in her. However, the young girl tells Xiao Chui not to please her, and says that she will bring Hui Long Zhang to cure her father. Hui Long Zhang is a treasure of the Luo family. Xiao Chui encourages her. Assuring her that her dream will come true, a fan enters the room through the window and tells them that obligations and filial piety are different things. He questions how Hui Long Zhang can cure her father. His sudden appearance surprises both girls, and the young girl asks him who he is. Zhuo Fan tells her not to panic and invites her to come with him to explain some things. The young girl protects her sister and demands to know his identity. Xua Fan introduces himself as a butler of the Luo family. The girls are shocked to learn that he is from the Luo family. They attack him, believing that if he is from the Luo family, he must die. Xua Fan remarks that the young girl is using the Nian Heavy Qi Lingjia martial art technique, which is only effective against someone at the bone forging stage. He uses the power of the bloody baby to paralyze her, stopping her in her tracks. Xua Fan tells her that he has immobilized her and asks her to go with him. The other girl protests, but Zhuo Fan grabs hold of her too and flies away with them. He brings them to his place, where the guards appreciate him for his actions. Long Miss stands there, thinking that all men are the same. Zhuo Fan sets the girls down, and the little girl wonders where they are. Miss Luo is unable to move, and Xiao Nui is worried about her. The young girl grabs a knife and tries to attack Zhuo Fan 
but he holds her hand and assures her that he has no evil intentions. He explains that he only wants to ask her some questions and will let her go afterward. He proposes checking her clothes for anything dangerous hidden there, which angers her. Fan gets closer to her and asks what she is doing in the city and who she is. She refuses to reply. Fan tears her shirt from the shoulder, and the little girl steps in to defend her. Fan also tears her shirt. Fan moves closer to her once again and insists on knowing her identity. She continues to refuse. Fan tears off her remaining clothes, leaving only her camisole behind. The girl becomes shy, and Fan tells her that she is beautiful. He threatens to remove all her clothes if she doesn't answer his questions properly, mentioning that he could give her to other men outside. The girl becomes furious, but Fan gives her a final chance, counting to three. When he reaches three, he places his hand on the girl's chest to remove her camisole, but she pushes him away and loudly refuses. The other little girl cries, telling Fan that everything related to the Yuming Valley is handled by Mr. Yang. The young miss asks her not to tell, but Fan puts his finger to her mouth to silence her. The little girl reveals that Mr. Yang's full name is Yang Mingang, and he is the disciple of the master of Black Wind Mountain and also the fiancé of the young miss. She explains that one day, the master was attacked by Luo Jinan, the leader of the Luo family, and was left paralyzed and unable to speak. Fan asks about their plan to sneak into the Luo family, but the little girl hesitates to reply. Fan gestures toward her sister's shirt, prompting the little girl to quickly reveal that they cannot fight with the Luo family guards, and Yang has made a deal with Sun Guanjia to defeat the Luo family. However, Luo Jinan escaped and came to this city. She informs Fan that recently Yang made a contract with the Yuming Valley for their help. Fan asks how they knew that the head of the Luo family attacked the master of Black Wind Mountain. The little girl tells him that Mr. Yang witnessed it. He then asks how they know that Luo Jinan can heal the master. Suddenly, Miss Luo enters the room and asks Fan if he has time to go shopping with her. She is shocked to see everything that has happened in the room and angrily states that this is the residence of Qianlong Pavilion, questioning how he can do such things there. Fan explains that he did it all for the Luo family. Miss Luo becomes furious and continues to blame him. Fan wonders why she always gets angry about such things. He tells her that they are from Black Wind Mountain, and he is taking them with him for the sake of the Luo family. Fan advises Miss Luo on how to deal with women. Miss Luo is shocked, and she angrily approaches the girls, asking them to return her father's life. Fan calms her down and states that something is wrong between the two families, and the Yuming Valley is involved. This shocks everyone. Fan wonders why they are doing this when both the Luo family and Black Wind Mountain are seen as insignificant by the seven families. He asks Miss Lei to bring him to Black Wind Mountain with her to uncover the truth. Miss Lei shouts that it's impossible. Fan asks Miss Luo to give Hui Long on to him, and she hands it over. Fan then gives it to Miss Lei, stating that it won't cure her father, and that they should bring him to Black Wind Mountain to see the truth. He suggests that Yang Mingang may be lying and planning to destroy the seven families. The girl disagrees and insists that Yang is good. Fan clarifies that Yang Mingang could easily manipulate a butler of the Luo family for this purpose. He taunts Miss Lei, asking if she truly knows her fiancé. Miss Lei agrees to bring him to Black Wind Mountain. Fan advises Miss Lei to wear something before they go, but she covers her body and shouts at him to leave. Fan ponders his interest in Black Wind Mountain. They arrive at Black Wind Mountain and Miss Lei instructs Fan to behave and not have any ill intentions towards Black Wind Mountain. Fan changes his appearance to that of an old man, pretending to be a grandfather seeking the truth. Miss Lei warns him not to harm Xiao Chui, and he assures her of her safety. He tells her that he is doing something good for her, which shocks her. As they enter Black Wind Mountain, a guard approaches and demands to know who Fan is. However, when he recognizes Miss Lei, he welcomes her and asks why she is not in the city of Fong. She explains that she is there for a particular purpose, and they continue moving forward. Fan asks Miss Lei if the guard is a subordinate of Yang Ming. 
He questions how an ordinary guard knows everything about her secret mission, which unsettles her. They notice someone behind a tree, a boy who addresses Miss Lei as Sister Yuding and questions why she has returned when she should be in Feng City. Shua Fan wonders if he is Yang Ming. The boy inquires why Miss Lei has returned and questions why she is not on her mission. Shua Fan whispers in her ear, telling her that he has already reported their arrival. Miss Lei explains that provoking the Qianlong Pavilion is not easy, and the people of Yao Ming Valley are not reliable. She informs him that she feels the mission is risky, so she assigns them to observe first. The boy appears somewhat angry and reminds her how their master treated them like family. He emphasizes how their master sacrificed his life for them, and questions how they can live comfortably while he is suffering. Additionally, he mentions that they have not sought revenge for their master's plight. Miss Lei tries to clarify her position and states that she will take her brother to give her a shot call, pointing towards Swafan as she introduces him as the second alchemist master she found to cure their master. Swafan, still in the guise of an old man, laughs and claims that he can cure diseases by crossing oceans and mountains. He assures them that he will cure their master. The boy taunts him, questioning why he is in their presence if he is so talented. He addresses Miss Lei as his sister and claims that only Hui Long Zhang can cure someone who was injured by it. He questions why she does not trust him to a fan steps forward and tries to convince the boy to give him a chance. However, the boy slaps him and tells him to stay away. Shua Fan falls, remarking how he is too old to receive such a blow. He turns to Miss Lei, saying that it seems difficult to do business with mountain bandits. The boy prepares to attack Shua Fan once again at that moment. The girl steps forward and tells the boy that if he wants to hit Shua Fan, he will have to hit her first. The boy warns Shua Fan that if he cannot cure their master, he will not let him go. He addresses Shua Fan, commenting on how her brother cares for their father, and questioning why he would harm him. He advises Shua Fan to judge someone not by their words, but by their actions. He explains that he did not allow Shua Fan to cure their father earlier because he did not know his strength. After testing him, he realized that Shua Fan posed no threat and granted permission for him to cure their father. He asks Miss Lei to consider if he is a good or bad person and whether what he said is true. Miss Lei contemplates his words deeply, and they move forward to see her father's condition. She tells Shua Fan that he is just a fake alchemist and that this is all an act, questioning why he insists on continuing. Shua Fan replies that he has many doubts in his mind and they need to find out the truth about whether Yang Ming is good or evil. He explains that this drama is not yet finished. As they enter the room, they find Miss Lei's brother sitting behind the old man, playing on the bed and attempting to feed him something. He puts down the bowl and warns Shua Fan that if anything happens to their master, he will kill him. Shua Fan assures him that everything will be fine. Shua Fan thinks to himself that it has turned out this way realizing there are no wounds on the old man's body. Miss Lei asks what Shua Fan has discovered, and he reveals that her father's illness is caused by a foreign object. This shocks the old man and her brother, and her brother hits Shua Fan hard. Miss Lei asks what is wrong with him, and her brother questions Yuding if she is hiding something from him. Yuding becomes confused and denies it. He asks about their maid, Xiao Chui. Yuding replies that Xiao Chui said she had something to do. Her brother pushes her backward from her stomach, and she exits the room. He locks the door and addresses Shua Fan, stating that he cannot escape now. He attacks Shua Fan and pushes him outside, while Miss Lei questions what he means by calling him Yang Ming. He takes them to an underground room and asserts that he cannot be fooled by a child. He laughs while standing upside down, revealing that when Miss Lei returned, he sensed that something was wrong. He never intended to deal with her, but he did not expect her to find an alchemist to ruin his plan. Miss Lei is shocked upon learning Yang Ming's true intentions. Zhuo Fan tells her that she should blame herself for not realizing it sooner, and that he had to continue the drama until the end. He addresses Yang Ming and pleads with him, saying that if he has a problem, he should deal with Zhuo Fan alone and that Zhuo Fan has done nothing wrong. However, Yang Ming dismisses his pleas and asserts that now they are in his hands. He questions Zhuo Fan, asking how he knew the reason the old man couldn't move. 
Shua Fan explains that the old man's immobility is due to an excessive amount of toxins in his body, which he diagnosed using his own samples. This revelation surprises Yang Ming, who realizes that he needs to act quickly and handle the situation alone. Yang Ming exits the room and declares that he will kill both of them once he completes his mission. He instructs his guards to prevent anyone from entering the underground room. From underground, Zhuo Fan continues to question why Yang Ming doesn't want him to diagnose his father and pleads for his release. He then addresses Miss Lei, remarking that she and he are very similar and that she can prevent such situations from happening again in the future. Miss Lei replies, pondering whether they can escape and how to face this kind of situation. Zhuo Fan states that everything is going according to plan and that they can escape at night. He adds that if she wants to give up, she can commit suicide as she holds no value now. Miss Lei is shocked by his statement, and vows that even if she dies, she will take him with her. As night falls, Yuding is sleeping, while Shua Fan prepares to perform magic. He calls upon his bloody baby and embraces it, preparing to kill them all. The bloody baby embarks on its mission. The guard who witnessed the bloody baby entering the body of another guard alerts him that something is inside him. The guard falls to the ground in pain and urgently asks the other guard to open the mechanism in the room to let them out. The guard questions if he heard a voice coming from the guard's body, and both guards are startled. The possessed guard pushes the other guard aside and escapes, experiencing intense pain. He urges the guard to quickly open the underground room, as their lives are at stake. They open the room, and Fan wakes up Miss Lei, urging her to follow him. She expresses fear that they will die if they leave, but Zhuo Fan doesn't pay heed and insists on going. They both make their way out of the underground room. The guard pleads with Miss Lei to let him go and confesses that he joined Xiao Zhai under Yang Ming's coercion. Miss Lei tells him to be quiet. Zhuo Fan approaches the old man and assures him that he can cure him but asks him to listen carefully. Miss Lei is shocked to hear that Zhuo Fan can truly cure her father, and the old man is taken aback. Zhuo Fan asks the old man to remain calm and introduces himself as a butler of the Luo family, requesting his assistance because they share the same enemies and have no allies. The old man agrees to a fan and transfers the bloody baby from the guard's body to the old man's body. Miss Lei asks him what he is doing, and Zhuo Fan explains that he is curing him. She questions what object he put in her father's body to cure him. Zhuo Fan reveals that he placed a demon insect explaining that cultivators in the demon kingdom often sacrifice and refine these demon insects for various purposes. He emphasizes the importance of demon insects and reminds Miss Lei of when he mentioned the foreign object inside her father's body. He further explains that Yang Ming acted strangely and immediately trapped them because he knew Zhuo Fan had discovered the real problem with her father. The reason her father couldn't speak was due to the presence of the demon insect inside his body. Zhuo Fan intends to use his own demon power to extract and remove the demon insect. Miss Lei wonders how his demon can cure her father. At that moment, the bloody baby emerges from the old man's body, and he calls out to Tinga with a broken voice. She feels relieved and happy upon hearing her father's voice. An insect emerges from the old man's body, and the girl attempts to attack it, but Zhuo Fan stops her, warning her of its danger. He holds the insect and acknowledges its significance. It is a snow silkworm, a rare creature with extraordinary abilities that can only be found in extremely cold areas. Zhuo Fan explains that the snow silkworm can transfer from one host to another upon the death of its current host. However, the bloody baby used a technique to trick the larvae into thinking its host's vitality was depleted, causing it to exit the old man's body and become an ordinary insect. Now, Zhuo Fan holds it in his hand. He urges her to bring her father quickly and suggests returning to Fengling City. Zhuo Fan intends to refine the snow silkworm and turn it into a formidable weapon. As they prepare to leave, they realize that all the guards have been killed. She questions what happened to everyone, and a guard rises and explains that they are all dead. Zhuo Fan approaches the guard, thanks him for releasing them from the room, and then swiftly kills him. He clarifies that leaving the guard alive would risk him escaping and revealing their presence, endangering not only them but also their friends in Fengling City. Her father agrees with Shuo Fan's decision and expresses gratitude towards him. 
She contemplates whether her choice to align with him is right or wrong, but she acknowledges that becoming his enemy would lead to certain death. Ten days later, they arrive in the city. The little girl bursts into tears and embraces Yuding, asking about her treatment here. Yuding reassures her that everyone in the Luo family is kind, except for Butler Xuefan. Xuefan stands in the background alongside Miss Luo and Pang, reminding Yuding not to speak ill of others. Young Master Yunhai jokes with his brother that Xuefan enjoys hitting butts and threatens to kick Yuding's if she offends him. The little girl seeks refuge behind Yuding while Xuefan feels embarrassed. Miss Luo and Pang laugh. The old man addresses Yunchang, catching Yuding's attention. He points to Luo, expressing gratitude for the safety and health of Jinan's children. Miss Luo, unaware of the grandfather's identity, asks for clarification. Xuefan reveals that he is the master of Black Wind Mountain and leader of the bandits who attacked Guyun's Wei. Miss Luo reacts angrily. Yuding intervenes, defending her father. Yuhai permits Miss Luo to express her anger and takes a seat. He assumes responsibility for the incident that occurred in the Luo household and invites Miss Luo to kill him if she desires. Miss Yuding and the little girl are taken aback. The old man lowers his head to the floor, recognizing his debt to the Luo family and offering himself as a target. Miss Luo refuses to blame him, considering him a victim. The old man expresses remorse for his carelessness and foolishness, acknowledging that his actions caused the death of Jinan, his friend. He feels sorry for keeping their friendship a secret due to the Luo family's reputation. Miss Luo questions why her father never mentioned this. Yuhai proudly explains that their fathers swore loyalty to the Lei and Kai families, willing to live and die for them. Miss Luo is surprised by this revelation. Xuefan contemplates how the ancestral rule has been passed down for generations. The old man confirms the rule's existence but regrets not having children to pass it on. Xuefan ponders the family's martial art, and the old man reveals that he possessed a low-level art called Lingjiai, which he passed on to Tinger due to his lack of offspring. However, Yang Ming stole it. Xuefan digests this information, realizing the significance of their search. He prepares to depart advising them to wait until his return. The family contemplates his departure. Later, Fan and Brother Jio arrive at Qianlong Pavilion to meet the master. Fan addresses him as Brother Jio, but Miss Long Lady dismisses him, assuming he is not there to speak with Uncle Jio. Fan insists that he has something important to discuss and requests Miss Long Lady step aside. She becomes angry and warns him not to be arrogant. Long Jia joins in, emphasizing that Uncle Jio is unavailable for conversation. Xuefan asks if they know his whereabouts. Miss Long Lady mentions he was with two women and suggests he might be at a brothel. Xuefan laughs, considering their lack of composure given the current situation. He reveals his visit to Yuming Valley to gather intelligence on their plans to attack Qianlong Pavilion. He asks them not to blame him for withholding this information. Miss Long Lady finds it hard to believe that he knows about Yuming Valley's existence, but Xuefan confidently assures her that Uncle Jio will bring the Luo family to safety, keeping them out of harm's way. Miss Long Lady becomes even more enraged, threatening to curse him. Someone interrupts their conversation, requesting Xuefan's presence. Xuefan decides to go alone, which angers Miss Long Lady. She wonders why Xuefan is being treated with such respect solely due to his status as a level 5 array master. She reflects on the saying, The grapes are sour when you can't eat them. Long Jia contemplates how proud Uncle Jio would be if Xiao Nui were a level 5 array master. Xuefan sits before Uncle Jio, who demands the information he has obtained. Xuefan assures him that if he deems the information useless, he will not be forgiven. Xuefan reveals that Yuming Valley will soon launch an attack on Qianlong Pavilion, leaving Uncle Jio concerned. Suddenly, a yellow dragon appears, and three individuals take their seats in front of Xuefan, leaving him bewildered and curious about their presence. The people sitting on chairs look at him, shocking him. One man introduces himself as the pressure master of fire magic, while the other is the body of a golden dragon. Their power is not far from the god vision stage, making them one of the best in the land. 
Xue Fan didn't expect such strong individuals to be present at Qianlong Pavilion. The man in the yellow costume praises Uncle Jiu greatly. Xue Fan greets him, and the man asks if he knows that Xue Fan is a level 5 array master. Xue Fan responds modestly, acknowledging that it may be true but is considered garbage in the eyes of the elders. The man assures him that even if another array master were to come to Qianlong Pavilion, they would be respected, but joining them would bring even more respect. The man in the red costume remarks that when he heard from Jiu about Chua Fan's ambition to make a small family the strongest among the seven families within ten years, he thought Chua Fan was crazy. However, after meeting him, he wonders why Chua Fan appears so humble. Chua Fan explains that he has met Brother Jiu many times, and he has become accustomed to his straightforwardness. Chua Fan humorously mentions that meeting someone with a sharp mind would only result in seeking death but it was not arrogance, rather foolishness. The men praise Shua Fan's understanding and compliment his ability to read people. The man in the red clothes laughs and states that he likes Shua Fan, while the other man says that if he knew Shua Fan would be like this, he would have welcomed him at the gate. Shua Fan believes that as a demon magic emperor, it is impossible for him to lose in the world. He plans to praise these men since he has yet to encounter a god-level expert. The man in yellow asks how Xue Fan knows that Yuming Valley will attack soon. Xue Fan reveals that over half a month ago, he spotted them in the son's family. Apart from Elder Jane, there were two individuals with strong chi aura. However, he didn't have time to monitor them further due to other obligations. The man angrily places his hand on the chair and vows to kill them one by one, regardless of their numbers. Uncle Jio interjects, urging him to calm down. The other man asks Xue Fan how he obtained this information. Xue Fan cryptically responds that just as a cat has a way to catch a rat, he also has his own methods. Uncle Jiu asks Xue Fan to share the controlled information. Xue Fan explains that Elder Jane recently visited the Kai family in Fengling City, unbeknownst to his scouts. Xue Fan informed Uncle Jiu, confirming the truth. Master San expresses surprise and asks about Xue Fan's master. Xue Fan reveals that his master is the ruler of the nine underworlds. This revelation shocks everyone present, as the name holds dominance but is unknown in this land. Xue Fan explains that while the name may be associated with a demon magic emperor and hell in the holy land, the people in this land are too far to have heard such stories. Master San praises Xue Fan's master and acknowledges his ability to train a young man to become a level 5 array master. Xue Fan asks Uncle Jiu if he has any recovery pills. Uncle Jiu inquires if someone from the Luo family is injured, and Xue Fan raises his hand, requesting third-level recovery pills. Xue Fan expresses his gratitude and prepares to leave. Uncle Jiu becomes agitated, warning Xue Fan not to interfere with their meeting again. As he walks away, he mentions that Yuming Valley is expected to attack in two or three days, urging them to prepare themselves. Master San addresses Lao Jiu and Lao Wui, praising Xue Fan's sharpness and remarking on his extraordinary skills at a young age. He suggests establishing a good relationship with Xue Fan in the future. Xue Fan returns home and gives recovery pills to the old man to regain his strength. Yuding is surprised by the value of the third-level recovery pills, which cost over 110,000 spiritual stones. She wonders how the Luo family can afford such generosity. Miss Luo reassures her, explaining that Qianlong Pavilion owes them ten million, so they shouldn't worry. Yuding is shocked to learn that Qianlong Pavilion owes them such a large sum and wonders if they have a treasure trove in Gianzhuang. She contemplates how the Luo family became so wealthy and questions whether they were robbed by others. Zhuo Fan remarks that all women are the same, even when compared to each other. In another room, Elder Jane of the Sun family is accompanied by a black shadow. Yu Ming is present to meet him, and Elder Jane commends him for hiding in Black Mountain for the past ten years and doing a good job. Elder Jane informs Yu Ming that this is a small mission that he can handle, while Yu Ming sits before them. It is evening, and Zhuo Fan is lost in deep thoughts. He contemplates how to break through to the next stage and reach the Qi Gathering Realm. However, he is currently stuck at the fourth Qi Gathering Realm and cannot progress further. 
He considers absorbing more energy from the people of Black Wind Mountain but deems it too risky to summon the bloody baby recklessly. He decides to remain patient and wait for the right time to fight. Suddenly, he senses a terrifying aura nearby. Long Jio and others are flying in the air, all at the Tian Xin stage. Xuefan realizes that the two leaders have prepared an ambush. Uncle Jio believes that Elder Jane can no longer escape and that Qianlong Pavilion has made the decision to fight against Yuming Valley, regardless of the outcome. He thinks this will leave no room for reconciliation, and Luo family will be completely safe. Miss Luo approaches Xuefan, concerned about the situation. Xuefan urges everyone to go inside, as it is dangerous. Oanji and Luo ask him to stay safe. The sky turns red as Elder Jane arrives. Master Jio confronts him, questioning how he dares to cause trouble in his place. Elder Jane accuses someone from Qianlong Pavilion of killing his disciple and demands justice. Master Jio retorts, asking if the people of Yuming Valley know the meaning of justice. He reminds Elder Jane of the trap he set up in Luoya City and accuses him of destroying his golden purple lightning eye. Zhuafan is shocked to hear about the eye as it is said to be a precious treasure belonging to one of the three strongest beings in ancient times. He realizes that Long Jio's hatred towards Elder Jane is due to this grudge. Zhuo Fan finds it interesting and plans to seize the opportunity to steal or incorporate the eye into his plans. Elder Jane laughs and mocks Zhuo Fan, calling him stupid and stating that he is now nothing without the golden purple lightning eye. Master Jio, furious, attacks Elder Jane with his dragon. Elder Jane retaliates with his chain-like power, grabbing hold of the dragon. He taunts Master Jio, saying that the dragon is nothing without the eye. Master Jio strikes Elder Jane's arm, but Elder Jane claims that this won't be enough to kill him. Master Jio responds that he doesn't want to kill him and pushes him back. At that moment, the other two elders arrive, and Elder Jane believes they are attempting to ambush him. He finds it amusing that they are serious about killing him and orders his subordinates to kill them. Two black shadows follow Master Jean, and Brother San urges Master Jio to stay safe. Master Jio assures him that as long as he can kill Jane, his death will not be in vain. He prepares to strike with his sword, unleashing a powerful burst of light. Everyone is amazed by his level 3 spirit treasure dragon sword. In the air, Master Jio calls out to Brother Wu urging him to kill Jane, while Master San moves towards Jane to attack. However, a burst of light appears, and Master San is pushed back, blood coming out of his mouth. Everyone is shocked. Elder Jane laughs with pride, standing amidst the purple clouds in his full power. Master Jio is taken aback as he realizes that it is the golden purple lightning eye. He is surprised to see that Elder Jane didn't destroy it. Elder Jane addresses Jio in a powerful voice, expressing his astonishment that the golden purple lightning eye is in Jio's possession. A black bird perches on Elder Jane's shoulder, and he challenges Jio to defeat the divine eye before attempting to kill him. The black bird swiftly moves towards Master Jio, attacking him and causing him to fall, blood dripping from his wounds. Brother San urgently warns Brother Wu to take down Jane before the crow poses a threat. The two brothers move towards Jane with determination, but Jane raises his finger and commands the crow to attack. The crow emits a blinding light from its eyes, incapacitating both Jio and Wu. Zhuo Fan watches the intense confrontation, realizing the gravity of the situation. The power of the golden purple lightning eye is immense, capable of overpowering three Tian Xian stage masters simultaneously. Recognizing the danger, Zhuo Fan summons the bloody baby which ascends to the sky to face off against the crow. Elder Jane laughs triumphantly, undeterred by the presence of the bloody baby. He declares his fearlessness in the face of all three brothers. However, the Jio brothers stand tall, affirming that Jane cannot defeat them. Brother San, seething with anger, orders his brothers to hold their ground, preparing to teach Jane a lesson. San unleashes his dragon's full power, launching a powerful attack on Jane. In response, Jane commands the demon crow to counterattack. The clash between the dragon and the crow ensues, catching Jane off guard as the dragon proves to be a formidable opponent against his crow. Sensing the imminent danger, 
Jane rallies his warriors to join forces and restrain the dragon using their chain magic. To his surprise, Jane realizes that the power of the golden purple lightning eye is not sufficient to turn the tide in his favor. Brother Sand confidently asserts that the combined might of the three brothers is too much for Jane to handle. Jane, however, remains unfazed and reminds them that he still has the ferocious demon crow by his side. With a single command, the crow launches a devastating attack on Brother San, causing Gio and Wu to shout in alarm, urging their brother to stay safe. Jane revels in his perceived victory, proclaiming that he will send San to his doom. Observing the unfolding battle, Zhuo Fan understands the desperation within Jane and his desire for death, but he is determined not to let Qianlong Pavilion suffer defeat. Reacting swiftly, Zhuo Fan summons his bloody baby, which launches a surprise attack on Jane from behind, infiltrating his body. Jane's movements falter, allowing San's dragon to strike him with great force, severing one of his arms. Jane's warriors are taken aback by this sudden turn of events. Brother San stands tall, mocking Jane's arrogance and reveling in his triumph. Realizing that Qianlong Pavilion has launched a successful surprise attack, Jane orders his warriors to retreat, and they quickly withdraw from the battlefield. The Geo brothers pursue them, determined to chase down Jane. As the chaos subsides, Shua Fan retrieves his bloody baby, acknowledging that the deep-seated grudge between the two sides has found resolution. He recognizes that further action is unnecessary, shifting his focus towards obtaining the highly coveted god eye. Aware that there are few things a magic emperor cannot accomplish, Zhuo Fan realizes the significance of the golden purple lightning eye and is determined to acquire it for himself. With resolve in his heart, he stands tall, ready to welcome the imminent arrival of important guests. A few individuals enter the scene, launching an attack. Long Jia arrives and fights against them, urging his allies to press forward. Zhuo Fan stands with his sword, swiftly eliminating one of the assailants stating that they have been waiting for them and that they will face the consequences for opposing Qianlong Pavilion. He orders his comrades to kill them all. The battle intensifies as they fight with all their might. The attackers question their identity, but Long Lady and her warriors appear, causing them to realize that it is an ambush. Sensing danger, the attackers begin to retreat. Long Jie commands his guards to chase and kill them, while Shua Fan observes the chaos from the rooftop reflecting on the capture of his group in the forest. He ponders the immense pride of Yuming Valley, even using the Lei family to target the Luo family. However, he is still unaware of their motives. Yang Ming and his companions arrive on the scene, with Yang Ming demanding the presence of Hui Long Zhang or else the Luo family will face death. Xu Fan steps forward, urging them to stop. Yang Ming looks at him, and Xu Fan bows before him introducing himself as the butler of the Luo family. Yang Ming gazes at him with a piercing stare, realizing that he is not the one he is seeking. He orders one of his guards to attack Shua Fan and kill him for a reward. Shua Fan retaliates, stating that the guard's power is not enough to kill him. Yang Ming is shocked to discover that Shua Fan is a demonic cultivator. He questions Shua Fan's identity, to which Shua Fan responds by calling him an idiot and reminding him of the deceitful nature of the old man. This infuriates Yang Ming, and he regrets not killing Zhuo Fan earlier. Zhuo Fan explains that at the time, Yang Ming did not have Xiao Chui with him, and he had been hiding in Black Wind Mountain for so long, indicating his cautious nature. Yang Ming moves closer, preparing to attack, wondering how the Luo family could possess someone like Zhuo Fan. Zhuo Fan mocks Yang Ming, saying that he seems terrified and questions why he would attack with full force if he is stronger than Yu Quan. Zhuo Fan retaliates, causing Yang Ming to spit blood in shock. Yang Ming demands to know what Zhuo Fan did to him. Zhuo Fan calmly states that while Yang Ming may be stronger than Yu Quan, he is still trash in Zhuo Fan's eyes. He declares that he does not waste time on trash like him and summons his golden dragon. The golden dragon attacks Yang Ming fiercely. Suddenly, Miss Yuting intervenes, asking Zhuo Fan to stop. She uses chains to restrain the dragon. Zhuo Fan gazes at her, and she shouts at him, demanding that he cease his actions. Zhuo Fan responds by stating that all those who attacked him are his enemies, so why should he listen to her, 
Suddenly, a figure dressed in black arrives, capturing their attention. They both turn to look at him. He commands Yang Ming to retreat, causing Yang Ming to shout and address him as Elder Yun. Yang Ming expresses his personal desire to seek revenge against Zhu Fan for his comrade, Yu Quan. Elder Yun slaps Yang Ming harshly, asserting that Yang Ming cannot kill him. Yang asks why, and Elder Yun explains that he has seen Zhu Fan before and recognizes his exceptional talent. He refers to Zhu Fan as a boy. Zhu Fan is taken aback by the use of the word boy. Elder Yun offers Zhu Fan the opportunity to work for Yuming Valley, stating that their grudge will end there. Zhu Fan laughs and questions whether Elder Yun truly believes he is deserving of a fight with him. They stand face to face, Zhu Fan questioning whether Elder Yun thinks he deserves to fight with him. Elder Yun warns him not to be cocky and advises him to know his place, lest he end up like the guards whom he swiftly kills using his chains. The act shocks everyone as Zhu Fan was believed to be an ally of Black Wind Mountain. Elder Yun declares that Zhu Fan is a smart person who likely understands the implications of what has been exposed. He suggests killing them to eliminate any evidence. Zhu Fan expresses surprise and asks what he is talking about. Elder Yun extends an offer for Zhu Fan to join them and learn the truth. Zhu Fan laughs loudly, asserting that Yuming Valley is nothing in his eyes, merely ants. Elder Jane is taken aback by his audacity and questions if he wants to die. Zhu Fan dares him, stating that even if he dies, he will take them down with him. Elder Yun attacks Zhu Fan, aiming to kill him. Zhu Fan uses a golden frame to defend himself. Yang Ming acknowledges Zhu Fan as a genius and considers what he can gain from him. He prepares to strike, but Yuding intervenes, running towards Yang Ming. Zhu Fan urges her to stop and summons his bloody baby. However, someone holds him back, surprising him. Elder Jane addresses him, questioning if Zhu Fan thinks he can go against him. Zhu Fan launches an attack with his power, pushing Elder Yun backward. Elder Yun confesses that for someone his age to control a level 3 Panlong array so well is no easy feat he attacks Zhu Fan in anger, claiming that he will meet his end today. Zhu Fan creates a series of golden frames to defend against the attack. Elder Yun is astonished by the strength of a master at the Tian Xian stage and warns Zhu Fan that he never expected this. Zhu Fan uses level 5 array magic to counterattack, summoning multiple dragons. Elder Yun warns Zhu Fan not to underestimate him and attacks him. Zhu Fan summons more dragons, surprising Elder Yun. Zhu Fan reveals that it is not a level 3 Panlong Array but a level 5 Jutan Panglong Array. He taunts Elder Yun, stating that he can see and feel the power himself. Elder Yun laughs and admits that Zhu Fan's control of a 5th level array at such a young age is impressive. He asks Zhu Fan again if he wants to join their valley, but Zhu Fan rejects the offer, dismissing their valley as trash. Elder Yun declares that since Zhu Fan refuses to join them, he will not let him live. He attacks Zhu Fan, who commands his dragons to retaliate. The dragons strike Elder Yun relentlessly, resulting in a powerful burst of light and sending him flying. Blood spills from his mouth as he falls to the ground. Zhu Fan mocks him, questioning how someone with such limited ability became an elder and one of the seven families. Elder Yun warns Zhu Fan that even if he kneels and begs for forgiveness, he will still kill him. He rushes towards Zhu Fan preparing to launch another attack. He shouts at Elder Yun, declaring that even if he kneels and begs for forgiveness, he will not be spared. With full power, he launches an attack, unleashing a wave of purple strikes. Zhu Fan realizes that Elder Yun is using a magic treasure, and he taunts him for resorting to such measures against a junior. He mocks him, questioning how the other families would view his reliance on a magic treasure. Elder Yun smirks with an evil grin, Confident that Zhu Fan's death will go unnoticed, Zhu Fan, despite feeling confused, intends to provoke Elder Yun in order to prevent him from using the magic treasure. He realizes that Elder Yun is shameless, not one to fight fairly, and he knows that he must not hesitate in battle, or else he will die. Zhu Fan readies himself to strike back. Elder Yun laughs at Zhu Fan's defiance and charges towards him, warning him of his impending doom. He attacks with his magic treasure, and Zhu Fan retaliates with his dragons. However, 
Elder Yun's magic treasure swiftly cuts through the dragons, reaching Zhuo Fan with alarming speed. Concern washes over Zhuo Fan as he realizes that the magic treasure is a formidable third-level weapon. Elder Yun addresses Zhuo Fan, commending him for his keen eyesight. He claims that Zhuo Fan will be the first person in the cultivation stage to die under the power of the level 3 treasure, the Moon Wheel. Zhuo Fan interrupts him, offering to join Yuming Valley. But Elder Yun sees through his ploy and declares it too late. He unleashes his power, ready to kill Zhuo Fan. As Zhuo Fan stands beneath the imminent threat of Elder Yun's magic treasure, he sees death approaching. But suddenly, drops of blood fall to the floor. The old man from the Lei family arrives to defend Zhuo Fan. Elder Yun demands to know who he is. The old man introduces himself as Lei Yuntian, the leader of Black Wind Mountain. He explains that hurting the Luo family is the same as hurting him, making them enemies. Zhuo Fan is shocked and questions if the old man has already recovered his strength. The old man replies, expressing gratitude for the assistance and reveals that he not only recovered but also broke through to the Tian Yuan stage. Zhuo Fan smiles, relieved by the timely rescue De Fan addresses the old man, requesting him to listen to his command. They will join forces to eliminate the members of Yuming Valley. Elder Yun laughs, claiming that he has already dealt with their formation, and asserts that the old man's power is still unstable after breaking through to the Tian Yuan stage. He believes that the old man is unable to fight him. Zhuo Fan confidently disagrees, stating that the situation couldn't be better. He readies himself with his dragons, instructing the old man to attack. Following Zhuo Fan's orders, the old man swiftly delivers a powerful blow to Elder Yun. Elder Yun retaliates, engaging in a fierce battle. Frustrated by Zhuo Fan's defensive array, Elder Yun determines to eliminate it first. He focuses his attacks on the dragons. Meanwhile, Elder Yun directs his anger towards Zhuo Fan, charging at him with the intent to kill. With a forceful strike of his magic treasure's purple light, he warns Zhuo Fan not to escape. Simultaneously, the old man launches an attack on Elder Yun, matching his power. Elder Yun angrily questions if the old man also wants to die. Lei Yuntian, shocked by Zhuo Fan's show of gratitude, witnesses Zhuo Fan ascending into the air, his hands glowing with yellow light. With a burst of power, Zhuo Fan slams his hands onto the ground, summoning a colossal dragon from the east. Elder Yun is shocked by the dragon's appearance, and wonders how he could lose to such a seemingly insignificant opponent. As the dragon's lightning bursts across the land, the overwhelming power causes Elder Yun's demise. A massive yellow light bursts in the sky, creating a powerful explosion that captures everyone's attention. Sanjiu is taken aback, wondering what is happening and speculating if it's a battle between martial arts masters. He realizes something must be amiss at Qianlong Pavilion's residence. They quickly retreat to the residence. Meanwhile, Jane seizes the opportunity to escape. Master Jiu regrets not killing him earlier. Two guards standing nearby discuss what they should do, debating if they should investigate the source of the immense strength displayed. One of them suggests that perhaps a more powerful master is involved. The three elders of Qianlong Pavilion also decide to return. Master Jiu hopes that Zhuo Fan is safe and fears the little demon's potential death. Zhuo Fan addresses the old man, who approaches and pledges his unwavering loyalty. Zhuo Fan instructs him to take care of the Luo family while he goes to find Yuding. The old man promises to protect the Luo family with his life and ensure no harm befalls them. Zhuo Fan believes there are currently no enemies and expects the Qianlong Pavilion elders to arrive soon. He trusts that with the old man by their side, the Luo family is safe. He plans to bring back the foolish shooting without worries, but he also considers his own safety. Deciding to take the level 3 spirit treasure Moon Will with him, he sets off. Yang Ming finds himself in a jungle, badly injured and thinking about Zhuo Fan. Suddenly, Yuding approaches him. He looks at her and realizes that Zhuo Fan is not with her. He taunts her, questioning if she intends to fight him alone. Yuding states that today she will clear her father's name and kill him. Yang Ming laughs, revealing that from the beginning, he was never a part of Black Wind Mountain. He mocks her for calling him a traitor. 
Yuting insists that even if she cannot kill him and ends up being killed by him, she is determined to restore her father's honor. She reminds him of the kindness her father showed them and asks if he ever cared for her. Yang Ming laughs and dismisses the idea, stating that if he were to get married, it would be to someone from the seven families, not someone like her. Furious, Yuting launches an attack, intent on killing him. Yang Ming laughs at her futile attempts and counterattacks to end her life. Suddenly, a red strike swiftly approaches and targets Yang Ming. It's the bloody baby, owned by Zhuifan, coming to their aid. Yuting believes the baby saved her and assumes that Zhuifan sent it to ensure her safety. Yang Ming pleads for mercy from Yuting. She approaches him, questioning if he no longer remembers the beautiful memories they shared and expressing her pain and confusion. However, her reminiscing is interrupted by a purple lightning strike that separates them. Elder Jane has arrived. He questions Yang Ming about the progress of their plan. Yang Ming is confused about the plan and Elder Jane instructs him to return with him later, but first, he wants to kill Yuting. He attacks her with his sharp nails, causing fear to grip Yuting. He moves towards her to attack. Suddenly, a beam of light intercepts him, causing him to stumble. It's Shuifan coming to their rescue, holding the moon wheel. The girl is overjoyed to see him. Elder Jane demands to know who he is and why he has the moon wheel. Shuifan gives him an evil smile and asks him to take a guess. Elder Jane is shocked, unable to comprehend how Shuifan could have killed Elder Yun. He realizes that, Regardless of the situation, the spirit treasure must not fall into the hands of an outsider. Dodge Fan addresses the girl, telling her to listen to him. He advises her to locate the weak spot of the old man's heart, close her eyes, and attack with her thunder clap fingers. He assures her not to worry about what happens later. Yudin considers the immense strength of the old man's body, knowing that people in the Qi gathering realm don't stand a chance against him. She is afraid but looks at Fan realizing that he is someone who will go to any lengths to achieve his goals. Perhaps he saved her only to use her as bait. Despite her negative thoughts, she decides to fight alongside Zhuifan against Elder Jane. Elder Jane stands there, not expecting them to attack first. He knows that the moon wheel is the only thing that can harm him. The girl moves towards him, but he believes she can't hurt him and stands there calmly. Yuting focuses solely on Zhuifan continuously attacking Elder Jane. Shuifan attacks him from behind, but the old man catches his hand. He warns Shuifan that his tricks won't work on him, as he is not easily deceived. Shuifan smiles evilly, informing him that he has been deceived once again. The bloody baby attacks Elder Jane from the other side, causing him intense pain. He realizes it is the same thing that severed his hand, warning Shuifan that once he escapes, he will destroy it. Zhuifan once again reveals that he has been fooled, and Yuting, flying through the air, thrusts her sword into Elder Jane's chest, instantly tearing him apart. Fan addresses him, saying, Elder Jane, your guess was wrong. The main attraction was not me. Do you think only the moon wheel can harm you? Don't forget, you are seriously injured now, and your body is not as strong as before. I have infused some of my chi inside you. Zhuifan explains his plan to him and laughs. Elder Jane is astonished by his plan, realizing he is both injured and in terrible condition. He collapses to the ground. Shuifan sits down, feeling calm, knowing that the old bastard is finally dead. He realizes that to win, he must be willing to sacrifice everything, even his own life, just to kill his enemy. He acknowledges that one wrong decision could cost him his life, but fortunately, everything went according to his plan. Yuting is amazed to realize that Shuifan sacrificed himself to create an opportunity for her to kill the old man. She sits in front of him and apologizes for misjudging him. Shuifan assures her that it's not her fault, and if the bloody baby got hurt, he would have suffered the same fate. She realizes that the bloody baby is somehow connected to his body. She understands that he saved her and was even willing to sacrifice himself to kill the old man. As a result, he was injured. She feels remorseful for her previous thoughts. Zhuifan asks her to take everything they have, as he believes the leader of Yuming Valley must possess valuable stuff. He gathers all the items quickly from his body. 
Yuting thinks him to be a skilled thief of Bandit Mountain. Shua Fan wonders why the girl is acting strangely and seems embarrassed. He thinks to himself that it doesn't matter, as long as he obtains the valuable items from the old man's possession. He holds a ring in his hand and examines it. Inside, he finds low-level martial arts techniques from the Lei and Kai families, as well as the Luo family's martial art. He ponders the significance of these three martial arts and believes there must be a secret behind them, as Yuming Valley has placed great importance on them for ten years. He delves deeper into his thoughts, contemplating the potential secrets they hold. The fan realizes that the storage ring contains not only martial arts techniques, but also some spiritual stones. Yuding offers him the ring, stating that it will be beneficial for the future of the Luo family, as she knows the family has significant wealth. Shuafan dismisses it as trash that holds no value for him. He contemplates discarding it unless she wants it. Yuding stops him, furious, and questions how he could even consider throwing it away. She expresses her disbelief that he doesn't appreciate the value of martial arts and spiritual merit. She doesn't understand how he became the butler of the Luo family. Shuafan explains that if he were to keep such things, no matter how powerful the Luo family is, it would be ruined by his presence. He holds the ring and suggests they return to Qianlong Pavilion, as there should be an explanation from their side after the battle the previous night. He asks her to give him a shoulder to lean on, and she assists him in walking. Suddenly, he realizes that Yang Ming is missing. Yuding angrily informs him that Yang Ming escaped. Fan nonchalantly replies that a small fry like him is not a problem, but if they encounter him again, he will surely kill him. Uncle Jiu San and Wu are standing nearby. Uncle San inquires about the events of the previous night's battle. Miss Long and Long Jie inform them that when they pursued the three elders of Yuming Valley, they encountered several bone forging realm masters. However, they defeated them all, except for a few who managed to escape. Uncle Jiu proudly laughs and praises Xiao Nio and Ajay for their great performance in leading the guards to destroy the enemies. Jiu Wu joins in the laughter and suggests that when Uncle San returns to the main house, he should report the team's outstanding performance to the patriarch. Jiu San recalls the explosion from the previous night and asks for more information. He reveals that the massive explosion surprised everyone at the mall, and they initially thought it was due to their battle with the three elders of Yuming Valley. Elder Jiu suggests asking the Luo family if they know anything, as they were hiding in the backyard and may have witnessed something. As they enter the room, they are shocked to see a master of the Tian Xian stage present. Master Jiu questions who he is and when the Luo family gains such a powerful member. The old man introduces himself as the master of Black Wind Mountain and expresses his pleasure in meeting the renowned elders of Qianlong Pavilion. Luo asks him about the explosion from the previous night. Old man Lei informs them that Butler Shua Fan was badly injured and is still recovering. This revelation shocks Master San, as he realizes they were also attacked. Miss Lady interjects, criticizing Zhuo Fan's uselessness despite his intention to defeat the seven families of the Empire within ten years. Everyone becomes angry with her, and Master Jiu asks her to quiet down. He apologizes for her behavior, explaining that she can't control her mouth. He informs them that they don't know who came to attack them the previous night but even a master of the Tian Xian stage couldn't protect Shua Fan. Old Man Lei clarifies that he feels ashamed to admit that he had just broken through to the Tian Xian stage the day before and didn't have the ability to protect Shua Fan. However, the person who came to take him away was Elder Yun, one of the twelve elders of Yuming Valley, who had been in the Tian Xian stage for decades. But Old Man Lei managed to defeat him shortly after breaking through to the same stage. Old Man Lei explains that it seems the three elders misunderstood the situation, thinking he defeated Elder Yun. This revelation surprises Master Louis once again, and he asks who was responsible and how the Luo family remained safe throughout the night. Old Man Lei states that it was Butler Zhuo Fan who did it. He asserts that without him, he worries that none of them would have survived. Everyone is shocked and unable to believe what they're hearing. Master Jiu is shocked by Old Man Lei's revelation that Chua Fan is the one who killed Yin Qing. He is concerned about the vast gap in their cultivation levels. Master Lei agrees, but questions what happened next and if Chua Fan forced Yin Qing to retreat. 
Old Man Late points out that they are underestimating Shua Fan's capabilities. Confusion fills the room as they realize they had underestimated him all along. Shua Fan's ability to fight against the Tian Xian realm master sets him apart from anyone in the mainland. Old Man Lei confirms that Yun Qing didn't retreat but was killed by Shua Fan without leaving a trace. Everyone is in disbelief, shouting in astonishment and questioning the possibility of a Qi Gathering realm cultivator killing a Qi Xian realm master. Shua Fan enters the room, irritated by the commotion, and Miss Luo looks at him happily, addressing him by name. She asks if he has fully recovered, and Zhuo Fan confidently replies that he has. He reveals that he had been resting all night to recover himself, annoyed by the disturbance caused by everyone. All eyes are on him as he addresses Master Jiu, asking if he wants to know how he got injured. He presents Elder Jane's ring and corpse as evidence, shocking everyone as they recognize the ring belonging to Elder Jane. Curiosity fills the room as they wonder how Zhuo Fan obtained them. Master Jiu questions who killed Elder Jane, and Zhuo Fan boldly admits that he is the one who killed him. He explains that he knows about Master Jiu's grudge and met Elder Jane to exact revenge. He hopes that Master Jiu won't blame him for interfering in his fight. Master Jiu struggles to comprehend the situation, angrily expressing his desire to seek vengeance and reclaim his reputation. However, he acknowledges that blaming Zhuo Fan for assisting him would be unjust and respectfully offers his support, treating him like a brother. He assures Zhuo Fan that he will be there to help whenever needed. Zhuo Fan explains that his victory wasn't solely due to luck but rather bad luck for Elder Jane, who had a broken arm. If not for Zhuo Fan killing Elder Yun, a Tian Xian realm master, he wouldn't have been injured so severely by a broken arm Elder Jane. He taunts Lady Long noting that even if it were her, she wouldn't have been able to kill him, given the excessive number of guards she always has around her. He teases her about her guaranteed safety, which infuriates her. Miss Luo laughs softly, while Master San addresses Master Jiu and orders him to take care of Zhuo Fan, assigning hundreds of guards to his residence. He also instructs Master Wu to inform headquarters about what happened and the urgency of informing the patriarch. Lady Long and Long Jia are shocked by the realization that the three elders considered Zhuo Fan their brother. Zhuo Fan bids farewell to the elders, wishing them well. Master San and Master Wu acknowledge that Master Jiu was correct in his assessment of Zhuo Fan's ability to flatter people. After they leave, Zhuo Fan gathers everyone's attention and signals that he wants to speak with Master Jiu, preparing to begin their conversation. He addresses Master Jiu and tells him that he has a gift for him. Master Jiu is surprised and questions the worth of the gift, considering the current state of the Luo family. Zhuo Fan asks if Master Jiu possesses an ancient array formation. He mentions a price of 10 million for the array formation, assuring Master Jiu that he will appreciate the gift. Zhuo Fan pulls out a golden bag, and a crow emerges from it. Master Jiu is shocked to see the demon crow. Zhuo Fan places the crow on his shoulder and explains that since its previous owner has passed away, Master Jiu can take the crow and train it as a pet or guard. Master Jiu expresses his gratitude and acknowledges Zhuo Fan's generosity. Zhuo Fan asks why Master Jiu is unable to fix his golden eye since he had practiced it before. Master Jiu sadly confesses that he no longer remembers anything about it, as once it is lost, it cannot be regained. He reveals that he acquired the god I accidentally while exploring the world. Zhuo Fan then asks if Master Jiu is familiar with the three dangerous places in the mainland. Zhuo Fan sadly admits that he is unaware of the three places mentioned by Master Jiu. Curious, he asks Master Jiu to enlighten him. Master Jiu reveals that there are three places in the mainland where no one can venture, regardless of their strength. These places are Lole's Canyon, Mount Bingyu and Qianyan Cave. He explains that even if one wishes to go there, it is nearly impossible to find them without incredible luck. Zhuo Fan wonders why this is the case. Master Jiu clarifies that these places appear randomly, shifting from one location to another. He cautions Zhuo Fan that when these places emerge, a powerful tornado accompanies them, making it impossible for anyone to escape. Zhuo Fan speculates that someone with a high cultivation level must have set up these locations, and without knowing the secret, it would be challenging to find their entrance. 
He then asks Master Gio if he is the only one who has discovered one of these places, specifically Lole's Canyon. In the past dot he recounts the moment when he was engulfed by a tornado and witnessed the purple lightning in the sky. He reveals that all the masters around him were exposed and perished, disappearing without a trace. Then, a bolt of purple lightning struck his eye. He explains that his eye is unharmed, but he can still feel a burning sensation when he recalls that incident, causing him to break out in cold sweats. Fan delves into the knowledge he gained from the Book of Nine Secrets in the Ancient Empire. It states that the Emperor of Heaven cultivated the golden purple lightning, which is said to possess the power to destroy everything except for the eye itself. Thus, even when struck by the purple lightning, it does not cause any injuries. This revelation leaves him in awe of the incredible abilities associated with the golden purple lightning eye. Master Jio explains to Zhuofan that during his encounter with the purple lightning, he fought bravely and heard a man's voice reciting a spell. Unconsciously, he repeated the spell and obtained the golden purple lightning eye. Since then, the purple lightning has not struck him again, suggesting a connection between him and the lightning. However, when he lost the eye, he couldn't remember the spell to activate it, and there is no way to refine it again. Dajwa Fan's mind races as he contemplates his quest to find Lole's Canyon, where the treasure left by the Emperor of Heaven is said to be hidden. He envisions the potential cultivation skills and countless treasures that await him there. With the Emperor of Heaven's skills and the Nine Secrets book, or perhaps the Nine Emperors of Hell, he plans to acquire relics from three of the most powerful emperors in ancient times. I and his thoughts, he ponders who his opponents in this world could be, envisioning remnants of master level emperors. He chuckles confidently, believing that they will be no match for him this time. He eagerly anticipates getting revenge on those who betrayed him and sees his rebirth as a stroke of luck that will lead him to victory. Zhuofan arrives in Wind Arrival City at the Luo household. He mentions that he has been in seclusion for almost a month and remarks on the pleasant weather. He reflects on his cultivation progress, noting that both he and the bloody baby have made a breakthrough to the fifth layer of the Qi refining realm. Feeling fit and realizing that sustaining injuries this time wasn't so bad, he contemplates the missed opportunity of absorbing the two profound fundamental talismans from the experts. He wonders if he had managed to obtain them, he might have advanced further to the fifth layer of the Qi gathering realm, or even broken through to the bone forging realm. While lost in his thoughts, a little girl named Chui appears behind him and addresses him as housekeeping Zhao Fan. However, she quickly runs away, leaving Zhuo Fan feeling perplexed. He wonders if it's because of the changes he has undergone since coming out of seclusion, but he reassures himself that he is not a man-eating monster and shouldn't be scary. It suddenly dawns on him that he was too harsh when he grabbed Chui earlier, tearing her master's clothes, which must have left a negative impression on her. He also recalls his previous encounters with Luo Yumhai, realizing that these experiences might have made him seem like a demon in their eyes. Pang approaches him and inquires about his recovery from injuries. As Zhuo Fan greets him, Pang instantly runs away as well, further adding to his confusion. Zhuo Fan muses on his ability to anticipate others' actions and motivations during battles, but he can't fathom why old Pang would be afraid since he has never posed a threat to him. He becomes increasingly perplexed and wonders why such trivial matters are bothering him when, as the great demon emperor, he should not be affected by them. Yuding, with Chui on her back, approaches him, expressing gratitude for saving the girl. Yuding, wearing a lovely dress and holding a basket, offers it to him as a small gesture of thanks. Shua Fan feels bewildered and asks what it is. When he opens the basket, he finds a meal with dumplings inside. Surprised, he asks Yuding if she bought the food and if there is a good restaurant in Wind Arrival City. Chui explains that the food was not bought but was made by the young miss herself, who spent ten hours every day preparing it, eagerly awaiting housekeeping Zhuo's emergence from seclusion. This revelation shocks Shua Fan, and he expresses his gratitude for the gifts. Yuding bashfully advises Zhuo Fan to take care of himself and eat the food while it's still warm, as it has been prepared specifically for him. Zhuo Fan goes inside and contemplates the fact that he hasn't eaten for a month due to his cultivation in the Qi Gathering Realm, and he still feels a slight hunger. Suddenly, Miss Luo and Pang enter the room. 
Miss Luo remarks with surprise that someone has already brought breakfast for Zhuafan, realizing that her worries were unfounded. Zhuafan wonders why the temperament of these girls has changed so drastically today. Miss Luo also brings a basket and informs Zhuafan that the young miss personally made the food for him, hoping that he will take good care of himself. Zhuafan replies that he already received one basket and doesn't need to eat much since his stomach isn't that big. This response saddens Miss Luo. Xuafan changes his mind and decides to eat both meals. He ponders why, for the first time in his life, this seemingly insignificant matter has become an issue, but his sons warned him that his life would be in danger if he refused. He opens the dish and discovers something overcooked and black. Confused, he decides to eat Yuding's meal instead. Miss Luo insists that he eats both, and Yuding feels happy. As he looks at Miss Luo, he resolves to eat all the food. Miss Luo requests that he starts with her meal, and Yuding chimes in, suggesting he begins with hers instead. Zhuafan observes their ongoing argument, wondering how these two, who used to get along fine, became like water and fire in such a short period. He finds himself confused by the situation and ponders who could be responsible for causing this conflict between them. He decides to prioritize Lady Lay's dish and takes a bite. Surprisingly, it is incredibly fragrant, and he compliments her cooking skills. Little Choi steps forward and proudly states that her young miss has been cooking for ten years, and there is nobody in Pangling City who can match her culinary prowess. She praises her cooking and tells Zhuafan that he is lucky to taste such delicious food. Miss Luo expresses her concern and urges Zhuafan to try her dish quickly. However, it tastes bland to him, and he spits it out, exclaiming that even poison tastes better. This saddens Miss Luo but makes Yuding happy. Determined to eat the better meal, Zhuafan decides to try the other dish. Young Master Coaches joins in and remarks that the aroma of good food has reached him. He approaches Zhuafan and teasingly remarks that despite attending a wedding, he still has such a tasty meal all to himself. He playfully asks Zhuafan why he hasn't shared some with him. Zhuafan responds by saying that his sister doesn't know how to cook, and she doesn't even know which direction to face while cooking. This comment deeply upsets Miss Luo, causing her to run away in tears. Young Master Coaches expresses his confusion, wondering if he said something wrong. Zhuafan reassures him that he didn't say anything wrong, some people simply overestimate themselves. He informs them that he is going to visit the Qianlong Pavilion and advises them to stay at the Luo household in case the people from Yuming Valley return. Meanwhile, in the Tianyu Empire Imperial Palace, two individuals, Long Yifei, the master of Qianlong Pavilion, and Wan Shan, the master of Yuming Valley, are sitting facing each other. An old man, the emperor of the Tianyu Empire, enters coughing. He introduces himself and acknowledges the presence of both masters, stating that Qianlong Pavilion and Yuming Valley are pillars of the empire's seven families. He wonders why they have come to see him this time. Wan Shan, the master of Yuming Valley, immediately accuses Qianlong Pavilion of killing two elders from Yuming Valley last month. He claims that Qianlong Pavilion has violated the Pact of the Seven Families and implores the emperor to punish them. The master of Qianlong Pavilion retaliates, arguing that the Yuming Valley elders trespassed into Qianlong Pavilion's territory, and questions how they can interpret that as a violation of the pact. He taunts Long Yifei, suggesting that he is using the recent incident as an excuse to seek revenge for what happened twenty years ago. Long Yifei laughs and dismisses the notion of seeking revenge, countering that two years ago, Yuming Valley trapped Qianlong Pavilion's elder Jiu in Luoya City and damaged his eye. He points out that Long Yifei accused Qianlong Pavilion of breaching the pact back then, but he didn't say anything in return. However, this time, Yuming Valley's elders trespassed into their territory with four people, which he considers an investigation. The head of the seven families intervenes and urges them to stop arguing. The head stands up and announces that in this matter, both parties are at fault. He issues a decree for Qianlong Pavilion to withdraw from Fonglin City, stating that it will no longer be their territory. Long Yifei expresses concern, but the head asserts that neither Qianlong Pavilion nor Yuming Valley should step foot in Fonglin City from now on. Both masters leave, accepting the head's decision. The head of the seven families reflects on the situation, 
realizing that Yuming Valley must have discovered the secret order from a thousand years ago. He contemplates the complexities of the Imperial Palace and its powerful individuals, smiling as he thinks that the project should commence and the pearl will release its radiance, no matter what. Shua Fan enters the palace and sees a fat man standing there. He is surprised to see someone with such a large physique, wondering how a person could grow up to look like that. Despite his appearance, the fat man's cultivation is at the seventh layer of the QI gathering realm. Shua Fan analyzes the situation, thinking that even the gods must favor this man to have such expertise. He speculates that the fat man might be a member of the seven families. The fat man asks Shua Fan to wait and questions if he is from Qianlong Pavilion. Shua Fan responds that he only has a small relationship with them and is not a direct member. The fat man happily remarks that it's still good and allows Shua Fan to enter. He coughs in a dramatic manner and requests Shua Fan to pass on a message to Miss Long Nui. He says that if she doesn't come out to see him within a day, he will sleep there for the entire day and refuse to leave. Inside, Shua Fan realizes that the fat man is actually Long Kui's pursuer. He assures him that he will deliver the message and that Miss Long Nui will come to see him soon. The fat man expresses his gratitude, and Zhuo Fan inwardly thinks that he was fortunate to escape quickly. He considers it not worth dealing with such a powerful person over something like this. Zhuo Fan spots Miss Long and asks how she has been, mentioning that he hasn't seen her in days. Miss Long replies that she is doing very well, but seeing him makes it awful. He asks if Brother Jio is here as he needs to talk to him. Miss Long rudely informs him that he is not there. Shua Fan observes her appearance and concludes that she doesn't seem to be lying. He assumes that Long Jia must be out as well, having gone with Long Jio for work. He thinks that since this is the case, he can postpone his inquiry, but he still needs to deal with the fat man's matter. Trying to conceal his laughter, Shua Fan realizes that the key to receiving the fat man's gratitude and loyalty is by fulfilling his arrogant request to meet Miss Long Nui. He knows that he can't just embarrass her to pass the time. Miss Long Nui asks him what happened, and Zhuo Fan replies that there is a wealthy and handsome guy outside who insists on seeing her. He tells her that if she doesn't go out, he won't leave. He teases her in a joking manner, making her feel shy and angry. She decides to go and confront the fat man, shouting at him and expressing her refusal to marry him. The fat man starts crying, pleading with her and expressing his pain saying that he proposed to her when they were ten years old, and now that they are twenty, he has asked a thousand times if she is not even slightly moved. Dachua Fan intervenes, saying that it's only natural for her to be moved since infatuated youths are hard to come by. He tries to convince Miss Long that the fat man is deeply infatuated and would suffer for her. The fat man becomes happy to hear Zhuo Fan's support. However, Miss Long, in an angry and soft voice, calls out to her big brother Tsong, surprising both Shua Fan and the fat man. She tells him that he has always treated her well since childhood, but her heart now belongs to someone else. The fat man exclaims, asking who that person is. Shua Fan realizes her intentions and thinks that she won't take the blame herself but will likely redirect it towards him. Miss Long points at Shua Fan, and the fat man angrily laughs at him. Shua Fan tries to clear up the misunderstanding. Shua Fan tries to explain to the fat man that there has been a misunderstanding and that it's all a miscommunication. The fat man grabs Shua Fan's collar and asks what's wrong with him, asserting that there's no comparison between them. Shua Fan, with a sarcastic tone, remarks that now he understands why the fat man proposed to Miss Long a thousand times. He mocks Miss Long saying that she is so arrogant and narcissistic but doesn't even know herself. Miss Long addresses the fat man and rudely tells him that if he came to Fonlin City, he must have other matters to attend to, so he should leave and not waste any more time with her. The fat man shouts that he can't possibly leave because she is his future wife whom he is going to marry. He sadly reveals that he specially took this task to see her, not expecting this outcome. He challenges Zhuo Fan to a duel saying that they should settle it that way. Dodge Fan thinks to himself that this is the first time someone didn't call for an expert as reinforcement. He realizes that he needs to be cautious with the fat man and start playing along to diffuse the tension. 
a boy approaches the fat man and suggests that they should teach Shuafan a lesson instead, but the fat man angrily tells them to shut up, stating that he wants to uphold his dignity as a man and challenge Shuafan himself. He worries that if others help him, he will lose face, and Miss Long will look down on him. Shua Fan accepts the challenge and acknowledges that each of the fat man's gods is more powerful than him, but he questions whether they will be able to hold back if their master is beaten. He warns that his followers will be useless when the time comes. The fat man becomes angrier and asks Shua Fan to stay until he returns, threatening to execute anyone who makes a move. He offers Shua Fan the opportunity to choose the location for their one-on-one -on -one fight. Miss Long expresses her concerns about the situation, telling Zhuo Fan that he will surely be defeated and that not even Qianlong Pavilion will be able to save him if he gets injured. Zhuo Fan assures her that the fat man isn't a bad person. The fat man looks at Zhuo Fan and confidently states that he will beat him up for their sake. They head into a nearby forest. Zhuo Fan makes a joke about the fat man's courage to go without any guards. The fat man replies that he always keeps his word and assures Zhuo Fan that his actions are for the sake of his and Miss Long's happiness. He taunts Zhuo Fan, implying that he is looking for reasons to be involved with Miss Long again. Zhuo Fan points out that he is not worried because he has prepared an ambush. The fat man moves around, avoiding the ambush, and tells Zhuo Fan that if he uses such low tactics, how will Miss Long look at him? He declares that even if he gets beaten, he will still win Miss Long's heart. Zhuo Fan bursts into laughter and commends the fat man for his courage, saying that he likes it. He addresses Miss Long, asking why she looks so indifferent. As the fat man looks behind Zhuo Fan, he quickly attacks, landing a powerful punch on Zhuo Fan's face. Zhuo Fan is surprised by the sneak attack, thinking that the fat man appeared upright and straightforward. The fat man smugly asks if Zhuo Fan is scared pointing out that he didn't make a sneak attack as Zhuo Fan claimed. Zhuo Fan realizes that he was fooled by the fat man's outward appearance, acknowledging that appearances can be deceiving. He thinks that even people from the demonic path are like this, willing to cross moral lines to achieve their goals. He finds the fat man's cunning nature quite intriguing and likes him. The fat man taunts Zhuo Fan, questioning his ability to fight for Miss Long. Zhuo Fan laughs and admits that the fat man is right. He addresses Miss Long, jokingly asking why she seems so disappointed. As the fat man looks on, Zhuo Fan swiftly rolls up his collar, ready to face the challenge. Fatty is angry and accuses Zhuo Fan of dishonoring Miss Long. Zhuo Fan retorts that he only said a few careless words and the fatty misunderstood. He questions what the fatty was thinking in his mind and reminds him that he also made disrespectful comments earlier. Fatty starts to realize that Zhuo Fan's words make sense, and he feels ashamed for jumping to conclusions. Zhuo Fan deduces that the Fatty must have had a bad image of him in his mind. Fatty declares that he won't pay attention to their previous squabble and prepares to fight seriously. He lunges at Zhuo Fan, warning him that if he avoids getting hurt, he will inevitably face defeat. Zhuo Fan readies his martial arts technique to counterattack. Fatty shouts at Zhuo Fan, claiming that he is courting death and that he is at a higher cultivation level than him. Zhuo Fan advises Fatty to avoid getting hurt, but Fatty is shocked as Zhuo Fan's attack sends him flying once again. Zhuo Fan delivers a powerful blow to Fatty, surprising him. Fatty wonders how it's possible for him to be defeated so easily, considering his higher cultivation level. Meanwhile, Miss Long observes the battle and reflects on Zhuo Fan's capabilities and power acknowledging that he is the first person in the Qi Gathering realm to kill experts from the Tian Xian realm. She questions why he is struggling to handle the fatty when he possesses such strength. Zhuo Fan addresses fatty, suspecting that he held back during the fight. Fatty responds that going all out against someone of a lower cultivation level wouldn't be fair. Zhuo Fan extends his hand to help fatty up, remarking that their exchange was nothing more than mercy. As they prepare to leave. A yellow light suddenly approaches and targets Fatty. Zhuo Fan quickly saves him from the attack. Fatty expresses gratitude but also expresses surprise that his love rival saved his life. Zhuo Fan replies that it's still too early to thank him. More people arrive, surrounding them from all sides. Miss Long asks Zhuo Fan what they should do. Fatty tells them that the attackers are after him and unrelated to them, suggesting that they let them go. 
one of the attackers wearing a cap comments on Fatty's royal demeanor, noting that unfortunately, they can't leave any witnesses alive. This infuriates Fatty. Dodge fan steps forward, declaring that this group is under his protection, and if they want to harm Fatty, they will have to go through him first. He positions himself to defend Fatty, leaving the Fatty in disbelief. They are surrounded from all sides, and the attackers belittle Zhuifan, calling him an imp in the chi gathering realm for daring to step up. They declare that they will all die and order one of their guards to kill Fatty, stating that their mission is over and they can't afford another mistake. Fatty acknowledges that they are after him and suggests drawing them away while telling Zhuifan to take Miss Long back to Qianlong Pavilion. Zhuifan recognizes that Fatty's speed won't be enough to escape so he contemplates their next move. Fatty asks for his guidance, and Fan decides to make his move, ordering Fatty to distract them while he creates chaos. Fan utilizes his spirit treasure to attack, shocking the attackers and leaving one of them immobilized and bleeding. This surprises both Fatty and the guards who were ready to attack. The guards are determined to kill Fan for causing trouble in their territory and decide to surround him underestimating him due to his reliance on the third-grade spirit treasure. They advance together, but Zhuifan strikes them all down with a single hit from his spirit treasure. This display of power intimidates them, and they question how he can be so formidable as a chi-gathering realm cultivator. Fatty realizes that the imposing aura emanating from Zhuifan is familiar, reminding him of his father, the emperor. However, he quickly corrects himself, realizing that Zhuifan's superior might surpasses even that of his father. It feels as though anyone who opposes Zhuifan will be completely eradicated. Zhuifan stands confidently, his eyes glowing red, instilling fear in everyone present. Zhuifan is attacking the guards with his spirit treasure, but he is shocked to see them being killed instantly by a soul elimination power. Ancestor Fang, introduced as Tianyu's first sword deity, appears playing the flute. Fatty and Miss Long are happy to see him and ask why he has come. Zhuifan recognizes him as one of the five great deity dragons, guardian of the imperial family, and the jade flute's weird deity, Grandmaster Fan Kabai. Uncle Jio approaches and laughs, stating that he had mentioned Zhuifan to the others before, and they recognized him at a glance. Miss Long is delighted to see Uncle Jio and questions why he didn't appear earlier. Uncle Jio replies that they arrived during Zhuifan's competition with the third prince but chose to observe. He praises Zhuifan's courage to face dozens of bone-forging experts alone. Zhuifan expresses his gratitude for the praise, and Fang replies that he doesn't understand why Zhuifan didn't kill that person completely. He warns Zhuifan that cleverness may not always be necessary and that participating in high-level disputes beyond his current strength could be dangerous. Fang acknowledges that Zhuifan has learned his lesson from the incident and decides to take him back to nurture him, as he sees potential in him. This shocks everyone, as Fang rarely accepts disciples. Long Lady reflects on Fang's character, known among the seven families, and how even the imperial family couldn't make him accept disciples due to his tough nature. She never expected Zhuifan to capture his attention so quickly. She accepts that Zhuifan has become the first person to pay respect and enter the sword deity's tutelage, knowing that even the children of the seven families would have to make a detour if they were to meet him. Zhuifan ponders the situation, realizing that if he were to be accepted, Fang would be the first person of imperial-level expertise to become his master. Fang then addresses Long Jiu, stating that the third prince still has official business to attend to, and he will take him back first. They fly away quickly, with Zhuifan thinking that Fang is indeed a soul elimination expert. Master Jiu instructs Zhuifan to follow him to Qianlong Pavilion, as he has something for him. Zhuifan becomes interested and agrees to accompany him. Zhuifan is standing in front of Master, who is giving him something. Zhuifan realizes that it is the letter of alliance agreement between Qianlong Pavilion and the Luo family. He understands that with this agreement, Qianlong Pavilion will not only be a great support for the Luo family but will also provide unconditional help. This means that no one will dare to go against the Luo family, allowing him to focus on increasing his strength without worries. Master senses that Zhuifan already knew this was going to happen. 
Shua Fan admits that he didn't know from the beginning, but everything he has done so far was for the sake of this agreement. He steps aside, intending to deliver it to Miss Luo. However, Master stops him and tells him to sign the agreement first. Shua Fan hesitates, saying he is not the head of the Luo family, only a housekeeper. Master explains that the agreement is specifically made for him alone, not the Luo family. This surprises Shua Fan and Master reveals that this place where they currently stand will be the location where the Qianlong Pavilion and the Luo family will form an alliance, as instructed by their patriarch. Shua Fan realizes that the patriarch of Qianlong Pavilion is a wise man and commends his discernment for recognizing his talents. He smiles, acknowledging the significance of the alliance. It is nighttime, and Shua Fan asks Peng about Miss Luo's whereabouts. He wants to speak with her, Pang informs him that she has been in the kitchen since morning, seeking advice from the chef. He mentions that she has been working hard for a month to prepare a delicious meal for Zhuo Fan as a way to show her gratitude. Pang gives him a piece of the meal, advising him not to hurt Miss Luo's feelings and to pay attention to her efforts. Zhuo Fan takes a bite and instantly spits it out, realizing that Pang was right and that Miss Luo doesn't have a talent for cooking. However, Zhuo Fan reassures Peng that he is fine and hungry at the moment. In the morning, Miss Luo wakes up and notices a cloth around her. She sees that her plates are empty and realizes that Zhuo Fan must have been with her all night, sleeping and staying by her side. She feels shy and blushes to have him around her. She moves closer to his face and try to kiss him. She is about to kiss him while Zhuo Fan is sleeping. Suddenly, someone enters, addressing them both, and she fearfully stops. Zhuo Fan opens his eyes at the sound of the voice it's Peng, who approaches them. Zhuo Fan asks what the problem is, while Miss Luo pretends to be asleep on his shoulder. Peng points at Miss Luo, looking shocked. Zhuo Fan casually replies that she is feeling hot, attributing it to the warm weather outside. He explains that last night he wanted to take her to the room but he was afraid she would wake up, so she guarded him all night. He didn't think she would fall ill. Standing up and holding her, he tells Pang to inform him of any business later. Pang is confused by the situation, but Zhuo Fan insists on taking Miss Luo to the restroom. Pang stops him, revealing that someone important with an imperial gold token wishes to meet her, and they cannot afford to offend him. Zhuo Fan carelessly replies that it doesn't matter if they offend him. Even if he belongs to the Qianlong Pavilion, he won't meet them, and neither will Miss Luo. He looks at her and remarks on her severe illness, as she opens her eyes halfway, her face flushed. Zhuo Fan questions how she can serve a guest in this condition and moves to meet the person later. Pang insists on stopping him, explaining that the man who wishes to meet Miss Luo possesses an imperial gold token. Hearing this, Zhuo Fan is taken aback. Someone with such a token is an imperial guard, and even noble families must show respect. It is a crime to reject or disrespect an imperial order, and in the past, those who offended the guard were executed. Zhuo Fan surmises that this is because of what happened the previous day. He instructs Peng to inform the guests that Miss Luo is unwell and requests a meeting tomorrow instead. Peng is shocked by the imperial order and informs Zhuo Fan that he is expected to come tomorrow. Shua Fan suspects that the order is from Fatty and believes that Fatty, being kind-hearted, wouldn't harm them over this. He instructs Pang to do as he says. Just as they are about to leave, Miss Luo wakes up and shouts for them to wait. She tells Pang to ask the guest to wait a little while. She tries to stand up and says she will prepare herself first. Pang is pleased to see Miss Luo awake, as he mentions the consequences if she had not woken up and they had followed Shua Fan's orders. He comments on how Zhuo Fan, as the housekeeper, is now afraid of heaven. While he will always follow Zhuo Fan's orders, he is still afraid. Zhuo Fan, confused, looks at Miss Luo and wonders how she could wake up so suddenly while being ill. He questions whether she had passed out. Miss Luo angrily addresses Zhuo Fan, asking how he could say something offensive about the empire. She shouts that she can't understand and leaves abruptly, leaving Zhuo Fan bewildered. In the living room, Zhuo Fan arrives and sees a man in a gray costume standing there. The man greets him, 
recognizing him as the housekeeper of the Luo family, Shuafan. He shows his respect and says that his lord has asked them to move to a different residence. Shuafan glances at the golden token and nonchalantly remarks that he is too young to be properly informed about him and the empire. This angers the man, who realizes that Shuafan is referring to his lord. He thinks to himself that no one dares to call his lord fatty in the entire empire. He ponders the relationship between Zhuafan and his lord then quickly bows with respect, stating that his lord will return tomorrow and is doing well. Zhuafan laughs out loud, sarcastically remarking on his lord's self-esteem and why he didn't mention it earlier. He points out the numerous blows and kicks he delivered, asking how his lord could be fine. Zhuafan mocks him, stating that his lord is pretending in front of others so no one can make fun of him. The man feels embarrassed, while Zhuafan asks if he is still angry about the incident with Fang Kabai. The man replies that he doesn't think so. Zhuafan proudly declares that Fang Kabai asked him to be his disciple, revealing that he would rather die than become a disciple of his lord. He further explains that after hearing Fang Kabai's words, he felt enlightened. This leaves the man feeling shocked and a little unsettled, as he realizes that Fang Kabai wants Zhuafan as his disciple. Zhuafan proudly thinks to himself that he dared to play with his lord, but he is not qualified. Zhuafan, Miss Luo, Pang, and the young master are guided by the guest. Zhuafan tells him that this time, the direction of the conversation is up to him. The young master urges Zhuafan to say something, and he responds with intensity, indicating that he understands. Miss Luo tries to address Zhuafan, realizing that after all these months, with her by his side, everyone in the city will come to know that he is the true leader of the Luo family. She believes that the imperial family will acknowledge Shuafan as the legitimate leader. Grateful for his actions, she looks at him and expresses her thanks. They reach a place where Fang Kabai and Fatty are sitting, enjoying tea. Family Lei is also present, along with Miss Yuting and the old master. The family leaders await their arrival. As they approach, Shuafan thinks that this is a meeting of the three family leaders and urges the young master not to let them look down on their family. They are invited inside. Fatty wonders when the imperial guards became so polite, while the other leader wonders why his own family, the first family in the city, was treated poorly. Miss Luo greets the third prince, and they are all greeted respectfully. Fatty invites them to sit down, and Zhuafan offers his hand to Miss Luo to assist her. Fatty contemplates how Zhuafan has become so generous, shedding his arrogance to act as the protector of his master's security and ownership. Fang thinks to himself that Zhuafan is indeed a valuable courtier. Fatty reveals that the third prince has invited the three family leaders today, but in reality, he was ordered by the imperial family to disclose the ancient history and fate of the three families. This surprises everyone at the table. Fatty continues, stating that he believes the family leaders will receive an order from their predecessors, stipulating that none of the three families should be hostile to each other. He emphasizes the need for complementarity and mutual support among the three families, who will never leave Fong Ling City. Everyone listens attentively as Fatty explains that all of this was part of an agreement between the Empire family and the three family leaders before the establishment of the Empire, known as the Mingzhu Secret Order. He reveals that Luo, Kai, and Lei families, like the seven families, are the founders of the empire. Miss Luo ponders why they have fallen to the point of becoming a small family if that is true. Fatty apologizes, attributing it to the debt owed by his Yuan family. He explains that when the Tianyu Empire was established, the foundation was unstable, leading to chaos in the community. At that time, the imperial family appointed seven officials, giving them independent governing rights and allowing them to maintain a parallel existence alongside the imperial family. These officials were from the seven families. However, twenty years later, the seven families grew stronger and began competing for personal interests, leading to internal conflicts. Unable to control the situation, the imperial family had to strengthen their own power to end the war. Eventually, the seven families realized that the fighting brought no benefits and agreed to stop the war. However, the war had already caused significant damage, resulting in a decline in national strength and occasional invasions. 
Shuifan inquires about the relationship between all of this and their three families. Fatty replies honestly, stating that the three families are the founding elders of the central courts. He reveals that if their families were still in power, he is certain they would be on par with the four pillars of the empire. This revelation shocks everyone at the table. He specifically emphasizes that the four pillars of the Tianyu Empire are the source of military power, economics, politics, diplomacy, and much more. There are rumors that suggest the true strength of the four pillars is formidable, making the imperial family fearful. The imperial family, along with the seven families, constitutes the strongest force in the entire empire. These three forces maintain a delicate balance, each controlling and being controlled by the others. If any party loses that balance, the Tianyu Empire will collapse soon. Miss Luo, filled with fear, never imagined that her family and the other two families could be part of the empire's four pillars. However, she wonders why things have turned out this way. Fatty reveals the Pearl Orders, explaining that they are meant to prevent internal conflicts within the families. They have a secret agreement with the ancestors of the three families. He reveals that initially, they brought the three families to Fonlin City for various reasons, allowing them to become ordinary families. Even the seven families resumed their internal conflicts. Interestingly, Fatty reveals that the imperial family plans to elevate the three families to the same status as the seven families, in order to balance their strength and reduce casualties. Miss Luo asks if, even with an eighth family, they can't stop the seven families. Xuefan explains that the purpose of the Eighth Family is not to oppose them, but rather to maintain a balance of power. When one party has an absolute advantage, like a battle of a thousand against eight hundred, it usually doesn't happen. It is easier to resolve conflicts when two strong forces face each other because both parties don't want to lose. Xuefan understands Fatty's explanation, and Fatty commends him, stating that he is truly a genius and it's no wonder the Luo family will rise again in his hands. Xuefan then asks the third prince how they can safely become the eighth family. Fatty replies that as the housekeeper of their family, Xuefan knows the reason. He explains that it's not difficult to rely on the power of the imperial family to elevate a family, but the challenge lies in rising without arousing suspicion. By staying under the protection of the seven families, they can grow without drawing attention. This will show Miss Luo and everyone else how the seven families become stronger while ensuring that they don't surpass them. Fatty adds that the seven families would destroy them before they have the chance to rise if they sensed any threat. The leader recognizes Shua Fan's intelligence and talent, seeing it as a rare occurrence that happens once every thousand years. If he had recognized it earlier, they might have established a good relationship. Fatty explains that when the secret order was created, the most basic and important aspect for strength was considered. He reveals that Qianlong Pavilion has nine elders, all of whom are strong, and Yuming Valley has twelve elders. Each family of the seven families has its own expert, serving as their trump card. The initial agreement was not to interfere with each other. Fatty then reveals that Emperor Taizu confiscated the Luo family's property because they didn't possess a strong martial arts skill. The seven families didn't expect that the Luo family still possessed a low-grade Xuanjia martial art. Xuefan understands this revelation, and Fatty presents a scroll, explaining that it contains a secret method to combine low-grade skills. Individually, they may not hold much value, but when practiced together with their three martial arts, they can be combined into a Xuanjia martial art. Xuefan realizes that it means we long long for the Luo family, Duan Feng Tui for the Kai family and Jing Liji for the Lei family. Only the imperial family possesses the method to combine them. Fatty exclaims in disbelief, admitting that he didn't expect the housekeeper to know about it. Xuefan surmises that the technique of dividing and combining martial arts is rare in the land, but it seems that every sect in the Holy Land knows about it. Fatty tells the three family leaders to submit their ancestral martial arts. The head of the Lei family says that the ancestral martial art has been stolen by the Yuming Valley people. The head of the Kai family confesses that the same has happened to their family. Fatty is shocked and angry at their losses. He angrily exclaims that do you guys even deserve to be leaders of your families? Filled with fury, he shouts, reminding them of their duties to protect the ancestral martial arts, 
even if it costs their lives. The leaders stand before him, pleading for forgiveness. Fatty, looking worried, hears the leader of the Kai family suggesting that the imperial family provide them with Xuanjia martial arts again. Fatty shouts at him, using strong language to express his frustration, emphasizing that the art is not something to be easily obtained. He slaps the leader on the head, emphasizing that taking a Xuanjia martial art would surely attract the attention of the seven families and result in dire consequences. Fatty contemplates the situation, wondering what to do now that the secret order has been completely ruined. Fan realizes that it's his time to act. He brings out the martial arts and reveals that he has recovered them from Yuming Valley. The old man expresses his gratitude to Fan, acknowledging that his family would have been in danger otherwise. Fatty runs towards Fan and embraces him, praising him and expressing his gratitude for helping him complete the task given by his father. Fan humbly mentions that it was also for the Luo family's benefit. Fatty laughs and acknowledges the mutual benefits for both the Luo family and himself. He combines all the martial arts together and declares that they should now combine the three martial arts according to Emperor Taizu's Pearl Order. He explains that when the secret order is revealed to other families, they must adhere to the responsibility of their master and ensure the strongest Xuanjia martial art remains under their protection. The leader of the Kai family stands up, suggesting that his family should join forces with the Luo family and treat the Lei and Luo families as their children. This offends the other families. The Kai family leader proposes that they combine the three families, with his family as the master. The old man from the Lei family intervenes, questioning the basis for becoming the family head solely based on strength. Kai Rong defends his proposition, emphasizing his family's strength. Yuding speaks up, mentioning that she has recruited and called upon the Black Wind Mountain troops, which now consist of at least 500 to 600 people, with the majority of them being in the Qi Gathering realm. She argues that in terms of strength, the Kai family may not be able to compete with them. Mr. Kai dismissively laughs at her, labeling the Black Wind Mountain troops as mere mountain bandits, implying they are inferior to elite families like his. He addresses Fatty suggesting that if he lets the Lei family become the new master, it would become a laughing stock among the seven families, hindering their future rise and rank. Yuding is offended by his remarks and warns him, questioning his disrespect towards the mountain bandits. The Luo family silently observes the interactions, and Fan contemplates how this new family, formed through alliances, has already encountered difficulties and struggles to make any progress. Miss Luo reflects on how the two families only consider their opinions, disregarding the Luo family. Filled with anger, Fatty thinks that they are being looked down upon too much. Suddenly, the young master slams his fist on the table, demanding everyone's attention. He angrily declares that of the three families, only the Luo family is eligible to become the master. This shocks everyone, as they are surprised by the young master's bold claim. The son of Kai questions the young master's qualifications, stating that the Luo family is the weakest among the three families. However, the young master confidently asserts that they are the strongest because they have Zhuofan. He looks at Zhuofan with pride, while Zhuofan thinks to himself that this child has a strong belief in his abilities and is proud of him, but he feels that he cannot reach the same level of confidence. Kai belittles Zhuofan, reminding him that he is just a housekeeper and cannot compare to the support and resources of the Kai family. While Kai is speaking, Fan places a paper in front of them, revealing it to be the alliance agreement between the Luo family and Qianlong Pavilion. This surprises everyone, including Master Fang, who recognizes that Qianlong Pavilion is one of the seven families, and an agreement between the seven families and a smaller family has never occurred before. Master Fan stands up and asks how Xu Fan managed to obtain this agreement. Xu Fan replies that he has been recognized and appreciated as a hero, and he shares his conviction that even without the secret order and the pearl rule, combining the three families into one, the Luo family will inevitably rise in rank and no longer need their help. This confuses everyone, and Xu Fan explains that it is the opposite it will not be troublesome. The Luo family feels a sense of pride. Fatty addresses Zhuofan, expressing his regret that Zhuofan is part of a smaller family, and offers him to join him and receive his assistance. 
This shocks the Kai family, questioning whether Zhuifan is truly strong enough for the imperial family to seek his alliance. Miss Luo is shocked, and Zhuifan asks her to stay calm. Zhuifan explains to the third prince that while he has a good reputation, he will remain in the Luo family and work towards strengthening them to be on par with the seven families, as it is part of the plan designed by the imperial family. Fatty laughs and says that since Zhuifan refuses, they will forget the idea. He announces that the Luo family will be the new master, and the three families will unite as one. The Kai family's son protests, but his father gestures for him to remain quiet. Fatty becomes angry at this, and the Kai family immediately obeys him, stating that they will now follow the Luo family. Fatty also gives a stern look at the Lei family, and they also comply. The old man promises full support for Yunshang and Yuhai, considering it his atonement for the sins he committed that led to the destruction of the Luo family in Gui Yunzhuang. He is willing to be a slave for a lifetime. Fatty becomes delighted, stating that since they do not object to the decision, they can proceed with integration. Everyone agrees and excuses themselves to leave, except Fatty, who asks Xuefan to stay. Xuefan looks at him, awaiting further instructions or conversation. The mysterious man, wearing a mask, arrives at the rooftop and asks the leader of Yuming Valley how things are going. The leader expresses his frustration, stating that the efforts they have made over the past ten years have been in vain. The emperor has ordered Yuming Valley to stay away from Fonglin City and imposed limitations on the other six families. It seems that the emperor has become aware of their actions. The masked man smiles and suggests that there's no need to lose patience. If they fail, they should accept it without making excuses. The man, sitting behind a curtain, asserts that Yuming Valley is one of the seven families, but is unable to deal with the three secular families. He implies that the time will come when Yuming Valley will be replaced by these families. This enrages the Yuming Valley leader, who hits the window and accuses the masked man, Chuga Chang Feng, of being responsible for all of this. Chuga Chang Feng introduces himself, and remains composed despite the leader's anger. Suddenly, two old men wearing masks appear, identified as Yin and Yang. Chuga Chang Feng acknowledges their presence, and praises their ability to recognize him, as they haven't appeared in one hundred years. The leader of Yuming Valley acknowledges Zhuge Cha Feng as the head of the Four Pillars and the wise man of Tianyu. He mentions that even Fang Kabai, one of the five dragon guardians, was not a match for the two old men standing before them. Zhuge humbly denies being worthy of the title of wise man and expresses his reluctance to openly confront the imperial family. The leader of Yuming Valley argues that his power is unmatched in the empire, even when considering the imperial family. Shuga counters, stating that power cannot be judged solely by appearances. He reveals that he is not the first wise man in the Tianyu Empire and hints at someone above him. The leader of Yuming Valley assumes it must be the foolish emperor, but Shuga smiles and asserts that he has been the prime minister for forty years and still cannot fathom the emperor's true intentions. He implies that the emperor's intelligence should not be underestimated. Zhuge advises the leader of Yuming Valley to retreat for now and not create any problems. He warns him to be cautious around the old man present, as losing everything due to carelessness would be a great loss. Zhuge moves away, his gaze shifting towards the sky. He ponders the plan and the contents of the order. He gazes at the Black Wind Mountain's foggy forest, where a small pond with red water lies. Xuefan pours some water from the pond and comments that it has been three months without any silkworms being cultivated in Handan. He suggests renaming Handan to Blood Silkworm. Xuefan stands with red eyes, declaring that it is time to leave. Xuefan returns and meets the young miss, who is happy to see him. He asks her to come with him, which surprises her. As they walk together, she wonders why he closed the doors and windows. Suddenly, she realizes something is wrong and shouts, asking what he wants. Xuefan reveals that he is leaving, shocking her. She pleads with him, questioning why he would leave when their family is growing and becoming the number one family in Fonglin City. Xuefan explains that while their family is currently safe, it is only for the short term. He reminds her that they made a promise to the imperial family to carry out the secret order, the contents of which she is unaware of. He also mentions that they have offended Yuming Valley, 
one of the seven families. He explains that if they can become a family equal to the seven families, Qianlong Pavilion will not let them go. The young miss begins to cry, expressing her need for him to stay. Shua Fan wipes her tears and recalls something Fatty said about the importance of power for a family. He explains that he will travel to recruit strong individuals who can protect their family and ensure their safety in the future. He hands her a golden slab and tells her that if the Luo family encounters any problems while he is gone, she can activate the array on the slab. He assures her that she will be safe for a short period of time. She asks him while crying how long he will be gone, and he admits that he doesn't know, but he promises to return as soon as possible. He asks her to go and call Yanhai and Pang. As she leaves, she suddenly turns back and gives him a kiss, tearfully urging him to come back soon before running off to find Yanhai and Pang. The young master overhears their conversation and starts crying. Shua Fan consoles him, telling him that he is the only man in the Luo family and will have to take care of his sister. He encourages him to support the family as if he were already its leader. Shua Fan then addresses Pang, reminding him of Long Nui's words about his capabilities being limited to the Qi gathering realm. He presents Pang with a golden slab and tells him that there is a way for him to be reborn and achieve a higher realm. Pang is shocked by the proposition and Zhuo Fan admits that the process may be frightening and painful. He asks Pang if he is willing to go through with it, leaving Pang to contemplate his decision. Zhuo Fan explains to Pang that he is giving him an intermediate-level Xuanjia demonic skill, a body-forging skill that doesn't have any cultivation requirements. He warns Pang that once he starts practicing the skill, he cannot stop, as it could destroy his spirit and soul. Pang bravely accepts the skill acknowledging that he is willing to endure any pain to become stronger. Zhuo Fan mentions that the power obtained from practicing this skill can be comparable to an advanced Xuanjia skill, but the process is extremely painful and dangerous. Pang understands the risks involved and declares that his only pain in life was witnessing the death of the Luo family's leader. He is determined to protect the young master and young miss, expressing gratitude to Zhuo Fan for giving him this opportunity. Zhuo Fan hopes to see Pang become a powerful man when he returns, and Pang promises that he won't die easily, assuring Zhuo Fan that he can come back soon. Zhuo Fan turns to Yuding and asks about the task he assigned to her. Yuding informs him that she has found 600 children around the age of 10, all of whom are of top quality, waiting for him to train them. Zhuo Fan questions how she knew about his intention to train the children and Yuding deduces that he must have a kind heart to help orphans. Zhuo Fan reflects on Zhuo Cheng's betrayal, causing him to question his own kindness. He then addresses Lei Ting, presenting him with an intermediate-scale skill called the Secret Shadow Skill. He instructs Lei Ting to form a team called the Eyeshadow Team, consisting of trusted individuals who will protect the family in the shadows. Zhuo Fan hands Lei Ting a golden slab, and Yuding observes their interaction. Shuo Fan tells Yuding to train the 600 children and explains that the least capable individuals should serve as daily guards, while the best ones should be handed over to Lao Peng for secret training. Yuding is surprised and asks why Zhuo Fan doesn't do it himself. He reveals that he is leaving, leaving Yuding shocked. She asks why, and he explains his reasons. Yuding then gives him a kiss and says she will wait for his return before running off. Zhuo Fan ponders his interactions with women and wonders why such situations keep happening, feeling confused about the effect he has on them. Spirit beasts are the external means to increase cultivator strength. This is very important. Orthodox cultivators tame them as pets, while demonic cultivators tame them to create demon monsters. If one wants to go to Mount Beast for spirit beasts, they must pass through the area of Yuming Valley. Someone arrives in a brown shawl covering. The two guards stop him and say, Show your entry permit token. He shows them the token, and they allow him to enter. It is Zhuo Fan, finally here. He thinks about how he obtained that token by killing two people outside who had it. Well, this region of Yuming Valley has people who are different and fearless. Who cares if he is a bit brave or above the Tian Xian realm experts? He questions himself. Suddenly, he notices someone behind him dot a little girl who comes and hugs him, requesting him not to say anything. The guards behind him run and ask if he has found her. They frantically search for her. 
If they can't find her, he is warned to prepare to be beheaded. The girl comes out of his shadow and says, I am scared to death. I don't think I can run away. Shuafan moves away from her. The girl asks him to wait. She wants to thank him. She says that if she doesn't come to him, she won't be safe. She asks him if he is leaving the city and pleads for him to take her with him, calling him brother. Shuafan replies, if you want to get out, you can go alone. You don't need permission to leave this city. She clings to his shawl and says, brother, actually, I stored some things there. If I get caught, they will not let me go. Please take me. She cries. Shuafan notices that she is only fifteen years old and already in the fourth layer of Qi Gathering Realm. He finds it hard to believe that a beggar could reach such a level at her age. This confuses him, and he says, Even if what you say is true, why should I help you? It will only offend the heroes here. She looks at him with confusion in her eyes. Fan turns to leave, stating, I really can't think of a reason for me to help you. She asks him if he is going to Mount Beast. He replies that people who come here might go to Mount Beast or Yuming Valley's grave. The girl thinks that this man must have cursed Yuming Valley and wonders if he doesn't want to live anymore. She then reveals that if he wants to go to Mount Beast, he will have to wait for three months. During these days, no one is allowed to enter. Shuafan stops and asks why. She approaches him and says, I will tell you. Diamond Quick Stand will come out of Mount Beast. Yuming Valley has been blocking the entrance for three months, and no one else is allowed to enter. Fan ponders the significance of Diamond Quick Stand, also known as the Blood of the Earth. It is a rare and difficult-to-find material for a level 5 spirit weapon. But most importantly, it suits his blood baby the best. The girl offers him a deal. If he is willing to help her get out of this city, she will guide him to Mount Beast. They can still snatch a bit of Diamond Quick Stand when it comes out and they are not ready. Fan questions how Yuming Valley could let such an important item be stolen so easily. However, there are some people who know the hidden path, so it's worth a try. He agrees, and the girl laughs, expressing her relief that someone can finally take her away from this terrible place. She introduces herself as Xiao Ning and asks for his name. Fan looks at her, a mix of determination and curiosity in his eyes. Fan walks away with a little girl toward their destination. A man addresses her as Ninger, causing them to stop. The man, accompanied by guards, approaches them and warns Fan that he has caused a big trouble and it's time to go back. The little girl becomes worried and hides behind Fan, asking him to save her. The guard addresses Fan, mentioning that this is a problem with the Shua family. He warns Fan that if he wants to avoid trouble, he should let the girl go. Fan ponders about the Shui family, considering them as a second-class family in Shi Ming City. He realizes that unexpectedly this child has provoked the Shui family. Fan hugs the little girl, and the man angrily shouts, questioning what he is doing. Fan claims that from now on, she is his family. He challenges them, stating that if they want to take her, they will have to pass through him first. This makes the man furious and he asks Fan if he is crazy. He questions why Fan didn't inquire about the Shui family before coming to Qingming City. The man shouts, expressing disbelief that Fan dares to mess with the Shui family. Fan smiles and confidently replies that he did, indeed, inquire. He dismissively remarks that the Shui family is merely a dog tied to Qingming City by the Yuming Valley. Fan continues, saying that he has come to the mountain beast to search for a rare spirit beast, so why should he pay attention to dogs? The little girl shouts at him, expressing her disbelief that he would say such things to the Shui family. This slightly shocks Shui Fan. Angrily, he looks at her and says that he did all this for her, and now she is getting angry at him. The man becomes even more furious and is ready to attack Shui Fan as he wishes. He orders all his guards to attack him. They run toward Fan, intending to kill him. Fan, as always, remains unfazed and prepares his magic attack. He delivers a single powerful blow, causing them all to be thrown into the air, ultimately leading to their deaths. This shocks the man, who exclaims that Fan is impressive. He acknowledges that with his strength, Fan dares to speak boldly. The little girl, standing behind, 
is shocked to witness the reality of Xuefan's strength. She thought he was strong, but she didn't expect him to be this powerful. The man is ready to fight Xuefan and introduces himself as Xue Gang. He challenges Xuefan, asking what he can do now. Xuefan asks if he is the eldest son of the Xue family. The man shouts back, addressing Xuefan and questioning if he is afraid now. Xuefan replies calmly, stating that it's just a troublesome situation. He uses his red magic to fly through the air and tells the man that if he offends him here, he worries that he will have countless problems in Qi Ming City. He swiftly flies through the air toward the man, saying that perhaps it's best if everyone here remains silent forever, allowing his ears to stay clean. He launches an attack on him. Shui Gang feels a moment of fear and retaliates with his golden light power. Shui Fan counterattacks, using his bloody body technique on Shui Gang's neck. Shui Gang is shocked to feel his body unable to move. Shui Fan approaches him closely, delivering a final powerful blow, causing him to fall down. Blood spills from Shui Gang's mouth. Shui Fan addresses him, assuring him that after he dies, he will send salves to follow him. He grasps Shui Gang's neck and declares that there will be no survivors from the Shui family within three months. He holds Shui Gang's neck in the air and proclaims that now no one from the Shui family will chase him. Shui Gang is near death. Shui Fan continues his assault, ensuring that this problem becomes a headless case. The little girl cries and shouts, pleading for Shui Fan to stop. He shakes and asks her what she is saying. He tells her that all of these people are his enemies. She cries out, saying that even though they are her enemies, she doesn't want them to be killed. Shui Fan tells her that she should have said that before he started, and now it's too late. She holds onto his hand tightly, and says that now they are not only his enemies but hers as well. He claims that as his enemy, there will only be one outcome in the end is death. There is no mercy in his eyes for Shui Gang. The girl shouts and says that if he doesn't let Shui Gang go, she won't show him the way. Shui Fan listens to her and releases his grip on Shui Gang saying that he doesn't care anymore. He summons his magic and asks what else he should fear in the future. The girl wipes her tears, and Zhuo Fan asks her to show him the way. He comes closer to her, placing his hand on her shoulder, and tells her that he will take her to the city, away from the Shui family. She cries and says that he is a bad person. Zhuo Fan replies, saying that yes, he is a bad person, but in this world, only bad people can survive and good people will die early. They leave the scene while the bodies lie on the ground. An old man arrives at the place and is shocked to see the scene. Shui Gang is sitting fearfully, and the man asks him what happened and who did this to him. Shui Gang continues crying. The old man thinks that Shui Gang is by no means an ordinary person. Instead, he is extremely brave to make an eight chi gathering scared in such a short time. He wonders how terrible that master is. He holds Shui Gang and thinks that no matter who the offender is, anyone who offends the Shui family in Qi Ming City won't have a good end. He shouts to the sky. As Shui Fan and the little girl hide behind the bushes, they see many guards on the way. Shui Fan realizes that the guards here are all strong in the bone forging realm. He assesses the situation, considering the guards' strength and the third grade spirit weapons. He believes that with his will combination and bloody body techniques, it won't be difficult to break through. However, the question is how to pass through quietly, as otherwise it won't work. He addresses the little girl and asks her where the secret path she mentioned is. She kindly replies, Follow me. Shui Fan thinks to himself that this child's courage is smaller than a mouse. He walks behind her, thinking about how she has been crying since the incident. He realizes that those who have been injured or any school chasing after them are not her family. He wonders why she is crying. He doesn't care as long as he keeps his promise to her. However, he also contemplates that after taking her to the mountain ferocious spirit beast, he is afraid that her ears won't be able to bear the sounds of those beasts. They arrive at a place, and she points out a cave. She tells him that when she was little, she used to hide from her father and play with her brother in that cave. Zhuo Fan thinks that the place is very secluded and that if it weren't for the locals leading the way, outsiders wouldn't be able to find the entrance at all. He pushes Xiao Ning forward and tells her to go first while he follows. 
The little girl is shocked, and as she enters the cave, someone addresses her and tells her to stop. They both turn to look and see the old man from the Shua family standing there. Shua Fan is shocked to see the man's cultivation level in the bone forging realm. He addresses them and composes himself. Shua Fan looks at him and asks if he is Shui Yanlong, the head of the Shua family. The old man replies, acknowledging his sharp observation. Shua Fan asks if he is the one who hurt his son's friend, and he confirms it, stating that he wanted to take his people away. Shua Fan asserts that he showed mercy by not taking his life. The old man asks who Shua Fan's people are, and the little girl steps out from behind Shua Fan. A boy runs up behind the old man, addressing him as father. He arrives laughing and says that he was right, Ningam must be hiding there. He runs towards her, asking his father to let him help bring her back. Shua Fan thinks to himself that this boy is too naive, unaware of his own strength. Shua Fan stops him by holding his neck. The old man shouts, demanding to know what Shua Fan intends to do. Shua Fan responds calmly, stating that he is at the fifth layer of the Qi gathering realm. Holding the boy's neck, Shua Fan reveals that he might be Shua Lin, the second son. The old man shouts, demanding that Shua Fan let him go. Shua Fan retorts, saying that even if he does let him go, the old man's friends will still not let him go. Shua Fan addresses him asserting that no matter what problem he has with the girl, she is one of his people now. This shocks the old man, and Zhuo Fan continues, expressing his hope that the old man can stop here. If not, he will have to make a choice between his child and his own life. The little girl again pleads for Zhuo Fan to stop. She stands between him and the old man. Zhuo Fan angrily thinks to himself that there is a problem with this child's thinking. Why is she acting like this towards her enemy? The old man asks Shua Fan for his name, and he replies confidently, I am Shua Fan. The old man addresses him angrily, asking if Shua Fan is going to protect her no matter what. Shua Fan replies with unwavering determination, stating that she is his person, and he will naturally protect her until the end. The old man proposes a bet, suggesting that Shua Fan release his child first, and then fight him. If the old man cannot win after ten moves, he will no longer pursue Shua Fan. Shua Fan thinks about it and agrees to the bet. Shua Fan hands over the boy's bag to the old man. The old man exclaims, Good, but aren't you afraid that I won't keep my promise? Shua Fan confidently responds, Even if I wanted to kill him, you couldn't stop me. The old man charges towards Shua Fan to attack. Shua Fan evades his moves and counters with his own attacks in the air. Shua Fan uses his magical wheel weapon to strike at the old man, surprising him. The old man realizes that it is a third-grade spirit weapon. Shua Fan continues his assault, bringing out his bloody blade, which heads towards the old man. Shua Fan flies through the air, delivering a successful strike, declaring it as a victory. As Bloody Baby tries to enter the old man's body, he resists it with his power. This shocks Shua Fan, realizing that his hit didn't affect the old man. The old man reveals a golden aura and a mark on his chest indicating a second-grade defensive spirit treasure. Shua Fan is surprised to see that the old man possesses such a high-level treasure, and his bloody blade, which is in the Qi Gathering Realm, proves ineffective. Shua Fan understands that in the next fight, he can only rely on his moon will. He stands with his magical will while the old man contemplates Shua Fan's strength, acknowledging that despite being in the fifth layer of the Qi Gathering Realm, Shua Fan is remarkably powerful. If it weren't for the defensive spirit treasure, Shua Fan could have severed his head. The old man admires Shua Fan's power and realizes he must leave the fight to prevent this child from standing before him. The old man moves once more, and Shua Fan rushes towards him. They engage in another round of fighting, with Shua Fan delivering a powerful hit using his magical wheel. The old man falls off from the impact. Shua Fan understands that his moon will is the only real threat to the old man and he focuses on using it for the remaining ten moves. They continue battling, and Zhuo Fan strikes the old man with his magical wheel again, causing a massive explosion in the jungle. The old man contemplates who has the upper hand in this battle. Meanwhile, the old man's son wakes up and is shocked to see his father. He recalls their earlier conversation about his father needing to make ten moves on Zhuo Fan, not the other way around. 
The son urgently tells his father to hurry up and kill Fan. The old man thinks to himself that his son is foolish and doesn't need to speak anymore. He also realizes that his son fails to see the short blade in Fan's hand and foolishly wants him to fight and become a laughingstock. Fan charges towards the old man once more, launching another attack with his magical wheel. This time, the old man staggers backward. Fan relentlessly continues his assault, running towards the old man from three different directions in the air. This confuses the old man greatly. Fan swiftly moves behind him and utters, low-level spiritual martial arts, closed phantom step. The old man finally realizes that he has lost the battle. They stand in front of each other, prepared to fight. The old man realizes that he has lost. His son shouts, exclaiming that it's impossible. He runs towards his father and urges him to let Shua Fan go. Shua Fan, feeling embarrassed, replies that Mr. Shua didn't give his best in each move and had no intention to kill. The son retorts, claiming that if it weren't for his father's mercy, Shua Fan would have been dead from the beginning. Shua Fan apologizes, stating that he misread his father's intentions, but if he had truly tried his best, Shua Fan would have severed his head. This statement infuriates the son. Shua Fan thinks to himself that compared to a bone forging realm master, his speed surpasses that of someone at the Tian Xian realm. With the help of his moon will, his speed becomes comparable to a bone forging realm master. He realizes that by creating illusions and dividing shadows, he confuses his enemies, creating opportunities to kill. He thinks about how Shua Yanlong was drawn into his illusion unaware of Shua Fan appearing behind him. Shua Fan contemplates that if it weren't for his intentions, he would have beheaded Shui Yanlong. At this point, Shui Yanlong understands the outcome and admits his defeat. The old man addresses Shua Fan by name, acknowledging him as the most reliable young man he has ever met. He tells Shua Fan that he will leave Ninger in his care and instructs him never to lose her in the future. This shocks Shua Fan, and he wonders what the old man means. The old man approaches the little girl, hugs her, and tells her that she can go now and not to return or think about the days she wants to leave. The little girl cries and calls him father, leaving Zhuo Fan completely stunned. He thinks to himself if she is Shui Yanlong's third child. Zhuo Fan stops the old man and says, Wait, are you the young miss of the Shui family? The old man places his hand on Zhuo Fan's shoulder and replies, Boy, I know you're smart. Just as you said, she is yours. I entrust her to you. He moves away and warns Shua Fan that if he ever finds out that Shua Fan mistreats her, he will come after him. Shua Fan shouts back, denying mistreatment and realizing that everything that has happened makes sense. He recalls fighting with Shua Yanlong and his son, almost killing their entire family. He looks at the little girl crying and says, No wonder every time she looks at me, it's with hate. The old man, along with his son, walks away and the son asks his father how they can explain this to the people of Yuming Valley if they can't bring her. The father tells him to shut up and assures him that they have a way. Shua Fan addresses Xuaning Xin, giving her a gentle tap on her head, causing her hair to fly in the air. The girl starts crying. Shua Fan asks Miss Shua what game she is playing, as he fought her father and brother multiple times. Angered, he questions why he feels so angry on her behalf, even though they have no relation. The girl politely replies, Brother, don't be angry. All I wanted was to leave this city, and you wanted to go to the mountain beast. Now the problem is solved, and you didn't get hurt. Shua Fan is shocked, realizing that as long as their goals align, it doesn't matter whether they are family or enemies. He calmly thinks to himself that a demon emperor like him shouldn't be angry because she lied to him. However, this sudden realization has nothing to do with his current situation. He says aloud, Since when have I become so emotional? The Luo family this month made me think more about the people around me. He realizes that this is not how a true demonic cultivator should be and regrets his behavior. Shua Fan addresses Xuaning Xian once again and tells her to hurry up and go into the cave. He assures her that after he finishes his business in the mountain beast, he will take her out, and their agreement will be over. Xuaning Xian listens to him still confused by the situation. This is the mountain beast. A small rabbit comes out and looks at them. It shouts, seeing the little girl coming out all dusty, 
telling her to get out quickly. Shuafan asks the rabbit if there is a river nearby where he can wash. The little girl angrily responds to him, saying that he is a very mean man. She led him, and he still keeps pushing her. He casually replies, admitting that he is a bad person. He stands and looks around, asking if there's a river nearby. The little girl angrily points out the river and tells him to look there. Dachua Fan takes off his clothes and jumps into the water immediately, embarrassing the little girl. She shouts at him, asking what he is doing. Shua Fan, while bathing in the river, simply replies that he is taking a bath. The little girl turns her head away in frustration. Shua Fan teases her, suggesting that they can take a bath together. The girl becomes shy and calls him a jerk, stating that she doesn't want to take a bath with him. She calls him shameless. Shua Fan thinks to himself about how demonic cultivators have no shame but wonders where the right path cultivators go. They are standing at the peak of the mountain, overlooking the sea. There is a fountain, and many people are walking around them. Zhuafan observes an old man with green hair sitting there, and thinks that he must be an expert in the Tianxian realm. The girl confirms that he is the seventh elder of Yuming Valley and has been stationed in Qiming City. She adds that he didn't like staying here before. But since the eruption of the tides of flowing gold last month, many diamond quick stands have appeared. She explains that fifty bone forging realm experts guard the area. Shuafan realizes that every time the tides of flowing gold occur, diamond quick stands appear in large quantities, and they have come here in advance to secure most of them and prevent others from stealing them. He understands that with his current strength, he cannot fight so many guards for the diamond quick stands unless he devises a clever plan. Shua Fan holds the girl's arm and asks her to trust him, saying that he has a solution. She looks at him in shock. The old man notices them, and Shua Fan quickly tells the girl to let go. They both descend from the peak. Shua Fan thinks to himself that it's just him, or if someone is watching them. They arrive at the residence of the Shua family, where the old man shouts, asking how Ninger is doing. He also asks about the person who injured Shui Gang. The head of the Shui family reveals that he let them go, stating that Shui Fan is a good person and Ninger can be entrusted to him. The old man expresses confusion, questioning why he would let them go. The Shui family head explains that as for Shui Gang's injuries, those who don't know the truth are not guilty, and as long as Shui Fan treats Ninger well, he doesn't care. The old man angrily slams his hand on the table, saying it doesn't make sense. He shouts, Wan Long, no matter who that kid is, we don't care if he injured Shui Gang, but he can't take away Ninger. He asks if they are not aware of what it means for Ninger to leave the Shui family, leaving his sentence unfinished. Wan Long, confused, thinks to himself that this is something he needs to bear. The old man yells at him, questioning if he can protect the whole family. He asks, I know you love your daughter, but doesn't this old man love his granddaughter too? But our Shui family. He angrily asks where they have gone, and Wan Long replies, Beast Mountain. This response infuriates the old man Da Shui Fan and Ninger are walking together, and she asks him what he is looking for. He shows her a red material and says he found it. She asks what it is and where it can be used. Shui Fan replies, Sweet Potato. This is the favorite food of the first her spirit beast, Mountain Drill Rat. She claps happily and says it's a good idea. She asks if he wants to use the Mountain Drill Rat to create a tunnel and steal their diamond quick stands. Shua Fan replies, who knows? She thinks to herself, confused about his plans and unable to guess his intentions. They are cooking the sweet potato in the middle of the jungle when suddenly, a red creature appears and smashes it, catching the sweet potato. Shua Fan and the girl watch from behind the bushes and are happy to see that. Shua Fan holds the rat and smiles, asking if it still wants to run. The girl takes the rat from him and scolds him, asking why he is so cruel and what if he had hurt the creature. Shua Fan explains that spirit beasts are not easily injured and they are in a hurry. He adds that if they can't tame it soon, it will be too late. She angrily retorts that he doesn't need to be rude and mentions that she has raised some little speed beasts in her family who have never been tamed before, but now they listen to her. She hugs the rat and asks if it's okay. Shua Fan sees that the little creature is quite annoying, 
but an idea pops into his mind that he tells her not to worry and that he doesn't want to do anything to the little guy. He brings out a silk worm on his finger and explains that he just wants the rat to eat something. The girl is disgusted by the silk worm and asks what it is. Fan briefly explains that there are only two ways to tame the rat quickly, either give it to him for a day or let it eat the silk worm. Reluctantly, she gives the rat to him and tells it to eat the silk worm, even though it's disgusting, because it's better than falling into Fan's hands. Fan gives the silk worm to the rat. Suddenly, a blue light attacks them. Fan pushes the girl and shouts for her to watch out. The silk worm gets cut into pieces, and both the rat and the girl fall to the ground. The rat sits on a man's shoulder, and the man angrily asks them how dare they touch his spirit pet. The man is standing on the cliff of the mountain, and Fan realizes that the mountain drill rat already has an owner. The girl apologizes, but Fan tells her to stop and says that regardless of whether the rat has an owner or not, they have to take it today. He demands the rat from the man. The boy with blue hair smiles and comments on their audacity, mentioning that a fifth stage and fourth stage she gathering realm dare to pick a fight with him, calling himself Gonzi. He challenges Shuafan and says that he will finish them off today. Shuafan runs towards him and replies that it's not confirmed who will be finished. He attacks the boy with his magic wheel, shocking him as he realizes it is a third-grade spirit treasure. The boy brings out his golden sword and attacks Shuafan. Fan is surprised to see the Jinkongshu, which is a net clearance style. They exchange attacks, showcasing their martial arts skills. The boy is at the seventh layer of the bone forging realm and possesses a fourth grade Xuanjia martial art. Fan realizes that this person must be a core disciple, or even an heir, and offending him today will bring trouble in the future. The boy takes a step back, and Fan tries to trick him with the shadow phantom step technique confusing the boy. The boy wonders why Fan is showing such a strong killing intent and thinks that Fan still believes he can kill him. Fan's body splits into different shadows, attacking the boy. The boy addresses Fan, complimenting his sword technique but calling him arrogant. Fan stands on his back and says it's a good sword technique, but unfortunately he has met him. He quickly strikes back, intending to attack the boy with his sword and Fan thinks that if one of them is heavily injured, someone will die, and it will be worth it. Fan attacks the Gongzi with his magic wheel, but the Gongzi resists it. Fan realizes that the Gongzi also has a protective armor on his body, making it difficult to break through his defense. The Gongzi continuously attacks Fan with his sword, putting their powers at full extent. Suddenly, Fan's magic wheel breaks into pieces, and he moves backward while the Gongzi is still in the air. Launching attacks. Fan observes the Gongzi and thinks to himself that not many elders of Yuming Valley possess spirit treasures. He didn't expect this kid to be so formidable, with a spirit weapon and spirit armor. He realizes that breaking through the Gongzi's defense will be challenging since he is going all out and doesn't show any weakness. Fan questions how he should fight this battle. While standing in front of the Gongzi, Fan reflects on his own abilities and achievements, feeling frustrated that he was almost killed by someone at a lower realm. He realizes that the Gonzi's spirit armor saved him and questions how he, a future heir of his family, could face such a defeat. The Gonzi interrupts his thoughts and asks for his name. Fan introduces himself as Fan. The Gonzi walks away, saying that he will remember Fan and they will meet again to compete. Fan stops him and asks if he is also here for the diamond quick stand. This confuses the Gongzi, who says it's none of Fan's business. Fan suggests that if the Gongzi is not here for the diamond quick stand, they should part ways. But if he is, they can cooperate. The Gongzi questions how they can cooperate when even the three of them together can't steal the diamond quick stand. Fan replies that they don't need to fight directly. He looks at the mountain drill rat and asks if the Gongzi can lend it to him. As he has a plan to obtain the diamond quick stand, the Gongzi finds Fan's plan interesting and asks for more details. The little girl, Ninger, begins to explain their plan, involving using the mountain drill rat to dig a tunnel and stealing a small amount of the diamond quick stand when it appears. The Gongzi and Zhuafan laugh, which angers Ninger. 
She asks why they are laughing and if she is wrong. The Gongzi replies that the other side is guarded by a Tian Xian realm expert, making it difficult for them to succeed. He says that if they try, they will be caught before they even start. Da Fan puts his hand on Ninger's head and says that his sister has proposed another solution. He asks for the Gongzi's opinion. The Gongzi explains his plan, which involves diverting the diamond quickstand's flow by creating a tributary using the mountain drill rat. This way, a portion of the diamond quick stand will flow towards him. Ninger happily comments that this plan would only get a small amount, while the Gongzi intends to take it all. This surprises the Gongzi, and he asks Ninger what she just said. Zhuo Fan and Zhe Tianyang agree to cooperate, and Zhe Tianyang agrees to trust Zhuo Fan's plan. Zhuo Fan asks for Zhe Tianyang's name, and he introduces himself as Zhe Tianyang. Zhuo Fan then asks if he is from the seventh family which surprises both Ninger and Zhe Tianyang. Ninger realizes that the seventh family is a second-class family that shelters other families in Qiming City, and she has never met someone from the seventh family before. Aside from the Yuming Valley, Da Fan addresses Zhe Tianyang and asks which family he belongs to. Zhe Tianyang starts to think and realizes that with Zhuo Fan's strength at the seventh layer of Qi Gathering Realm, it's unlikely that he belongs to any family that can accommodate such a powerful cultivator. He reveals that his origins are not significant, and that he is just a housekeeper in the Luo family of Fonlin City. This surprises both Shuo Fan and Ninger, as they have never heard of the Luo family before. Shuo Fan explains that the Luo family is a small, third class family that is not well known or ranked highly. Se Tianyang comes closer to Shuo Fan and suggests that if his family is indeed small, he can take refuge in their Jianho mansion. However, Shuo Fan rejects the offer stating that he has already formed an alliance agreement with Qianlong Pavilion. He adds that if Jianho Mansion wants to ally with them, he welcomes them. This revelation shocks everyone, as it's surprising that a small family like Zhuo Fan's could sign an alliance agreement with Qianlong Pavilion. Zhe Tianyang looks at Zhuo Fan in confusion and wonders why he would create such a ridiculous lie if he doesn't want to reveal his true identity. Ninger shouts at Zhe Tianyang, saying that they have already told him about their family, and it's not fair that he is withholding the truth about his own family. Shua Fan explains that since they are traveling, there's no need to reveal all the details about their families at this moment. Zhe Tianyang agrees, saying that they may separate after their cooperation, and it's uncertain if they will meet again in the future. He suggests focusing on Shua Fan's plan. Ninger suggests that they can all be friends and that there are no real friends or enemies on the continent only those guided by profit. Shua Fan writes something on a paper, shocking Zhe Tianyang. He recognizes it as a first-level array formation and realizes that Shua Fan is knowledgeable about array diagrams, similar to Long Nui. However, he has never seen this particular array before, as it appears to be an unknown initiation array. Zhe Tianyang concludes that Shua Fan must be from one of the seven families or even a royal. Zhuo Fan reiterates that they can believe it or not, but for now, they need to focus on their cooperation. He asks them to come with him. Beast Mountain is divided into three danger zones. The first area, known as the safe area, is home to low-level spirit beasts. It is suitable for practitioners in the body foundation and qi gathering realms who ride spiritual pets. Flowing Ocean Spring is located in this area, between two rocks. The second area is the treasure hunting zone, where third and fourth level spirit beasts can be found. Venturing into this area without being in the bone forging realm is courting death. However, it is the main location for strong individuals to gain spiritual favor. The third area is the most dangerous, inhabited by terrifying monsters above the fifth level. Even gods face the risk of death in this treacherous region. Fan arrives and stands by the river, confirming their location. Zhe Tianyang questions their position, but Fan interrupts and asks Zhe to let his mountain drill rat create holes from their current spot to the flowing golden spring. Fan presents a map, explaining that the arrays need to be set up there, which requires over 1,000 spirit stones. Fan clarifies that the exact number is 3,222, and the rat would need to make countless trips to complete the task. Zhe expresses concern about exhausting the rat questioning the necessity of their actions. 
Fan assures him that it is possible to lay the arrays without detection and emphasizes the importance of obtaining the diamond quick stand. Zay reluctantly agrees, knowing the rat may develop resentment towards him as its master. With time running out, Fan urges them to act quickly. Ninger comments on the rat's exhaustion, but Fan explains the need to utilize the spirit beast's abilities for their own benefit. He activates the array, causing the earth to split and light to explode. The master sitting on the rock is shocked, feeling an uneasiness he can't explain. Fan reveals that they must seize the opportunity when the diamond quick stand appears, surprising the elder of Yuming Valley. With a confident smile, Fan is determined to succeed. Zay Tianyang looks at Ninger and Zhuo Fan, contemplating the mysterious nature of this man. Despite his humble background, Zhuo Fan possesses extraordinary talent and is a genius rarely seen in the entire kingdom of Tainyu. Zay finds it hard to believe that someone so stable and gifted could come from a small family. Lost in his thoughts, he is suddenly interrupted as Fan opens his eyes and reveals that he has reached the sixth stage of the Qi Gathering Realm. Zay is shocked and feels ashamed that he cannot keep up with such rapid progress. Something catches their attention on the mountain cliff, and Fan declares that they should go. They approach the leader of Yuming Valley, who is sitting there, eagerly awaiting the arrival of something. He laughs with excitement, proclaiming that he has been waiting for two months. A godlike figure appears, and they prepare the golden nets to capture the diamond quick stand. Fan asks Zay if he has prepared the nets, and Zay assures him that they are ready. Fan throws the golden net onto the river, and Zay asks what they should do next. Fan tells him to look as he performs his magical techniques, causing the Qiankun array to activate. The mountain and rivers undergo a transformation as the yin and yang elements swap places. The leader of Yuming Valley is perplexed and drenched in cold water. Realizing that someone is playing tricks on them, he flies towards the source of the light and scolds them for their audacity. However, he discovers a hole in the river, from which the diamond quick stand emerges. Delighted, he praises Fan's genius and questions how the diamond quick stand suddenly appeared. Fan explains that the array he used is called the Qiankun Moved Array, a first-level formation that can reverse the flow of nature and manipulate mountains and rivers. Zay Tianyang is astonished by this revelation and finds it hard to comprehend the power behind such a profound technique. Zay Tianyang is astounded by the Qiankun turned upside down move, realizing that such powerful magic can only be achieved by a level 6 array, most of which have been lost. He wonders who Zhuo Fan really is and asks if he has any intention of joining Jianho Mansion. Surprised, the little girl questions his bragging. Zhuo Fan reveals that Qianlong Pavilion has already made the offer, but he refused, so they changed their approach and asked him to be their ally. The little girl teases him, and Zhe Tianyang agrees to send an alliance contract to the Luo family in Fenglin City. Zhuo Fan expresses his intention to wait for Zhe Tianyang's return and sign the contract based on his abilities. Zhe Tianyang emphasizes that if Zhuo Fan is no longer part of the Luo family, it will be his loss. The little girl ponders the unpredictability of the people from Jianho Mansion and the significance of signing an alliance contract with an individual rather than a whole family. As the diamond quick stand fully emerges, Shua Fan orders them to close the net immediately. Zhe Tianyang questions his haste, but Shua Fan reassures him that they would risk their lives if they didn't act quickly. He knows that the people in Yuming Valley are not oblivious and will soon come for them. Zhe Tianyang anxiously asks what they should do now. Zhuo Fan points to the second area and suggests hiding there. However, Zhuo Fan surprises them by stating his intention to go to the third area, the most dangerous zone. They are shocked and consider it a reckless decision, as going to the third area without sufficient strength is a sure path to death. Zhuo Fan asserts that he knows what he came for. The sixth level spirit beast thunder skylark. He instructs them to first divide the diamond quick stand and then discuss their escape plan later. The little girl thinks about Zhuo Fan, realizing that since they met him, he has always led the way and they have always trusted him because he always finds a solution. Zhe Tianyang asks Zhuo Fan to wait, expressing their joy at the sight of the diamond quick stand. Zhe Tianyang happily remarks that they can add as much as they want during the refining process ecstatic about their abundant harvest. Shua Fan, however, 
observes that Se Tianyang's discipleship in Jianhe Mansion has made him inexperienced in the ways of the world. He takes out a golden ring from the diamond quick stand and states that he has already taken his share according to their agreement. He urges them not to be too greedy and now asks for their plan to escape. Shua Fan holds a small bottle and confidently declares that it's simple. He asks them to eat what's inside. Pen eats one pill and gives two more to Zay Tianyang and the little girl. Zay Tianyang asks if they are satisfied and demands to know what kind of elixir it is. Shua Fan holds up the bottle and reveals that it is the panacea Yinshi pill, capable of concealing their breath for a day. He explains that as long as they don't directly encounter any spirit beasts in the second and third areas, they won't be detected. Zay Tianyang expresses his amazement and asks where Shua Fan obtained such a remarkable elixir. Shua Fan proudly replies that he made it himself. Zay Tianyang exclaims in disbelief, questioning how Shua Fan could also possess the ability to create elixirs. The little girl asks Zay Tianyang why he's yelling so loudly. Shua Fan retorts, asking if he wants to learn. He contemplates the mysterious nature of Zay Tianyang, with cultivation at the qi gathering realm but strength comparable to the seventh stage of the bone forging realm. Not only that, Zay Tianyang possesses knowledge of arrays and alchemy, with his array and elixir skills unparalleled in the world. Shua Fan realizes that Zay Tianyang's presence makes the geniuses of the seven families of the empire feel inadequate, and he himself feels humbled in comparison. He acknowledges that he will never again proclaim himself a genius in front of Zay Tianyang. They set off, with Shua Fan and Ningam moving forward while Zay Tianyang and the little girl hesitate, wondering about Shua Fan's sudden change in demeanor. They eventually decide to follow him and catch up. Meanwhile, the leader of Yuming Valley arrives at the river and sees the traces of the diamond quick stand. Angry, he realizes that the person who obtained it hasn't gone far and intends to catch them before they escape. He flies to the second area, and the three of them notice stars following their path. Shua Fan stops and they ask what's happening. Shua Fan is puzzled, wondering how the elder of Yuming Valley could have chased them directly to the second area. Se Tianyang is shocked and asks what they should do, as the elders are closing and rapidly dodge Shua Fan admits he doesn't know, as his original plan was to deceive the leader and make him waste time searching in the first area. He explains that the second area is known as a dangerous place, and the leader shouldn't have immediately assumed they would head there. Shua Fan speculates that by the time the leader realizes their true destination and attempts to chase them, it will be at least three hours later. During that time, they can hide in the third area. Se Tianyang and the little girl are confused by the plan. Shua Fan adds that in the third area, they will be like prey for the powerful spirit beasts, and the leader may not have enough courage to chase them there. However, they are perplexed as to why the leader chased them to the second area from the start. Se Tianyang asks if Shua Fan has heard the nickname of the seven families. Shua Fan admits that he only knew there was an elder from Yuming Valley Station there but wasn't aware of anything special about him. Zay Tianyang reveals that the elder is known as the most treacherous and ruthless elder of Yuming Valley. As the leader of Yuming Valley arrives in the air, he proclaims the presence of the seven ghosts. The seventh ghost, respected in Yuming Valley, is known for his treachery and cunning. Many important plans in the valley are discussed with him. Wanshan, the patriarch of Yuming Valley, holds him in high regard. Zay Tianyang reveals that the seventh ghost is a manipulative and speculative individual, earning him the nickname Genius Devil. Fan asks if he is strong, and Zay Tianyang explains that many elders from the seventh family have fallen into his schemes. The ninth elder of Qianlong Pavilion, in particular, had his golden purple lightning array destroyed by the seventh ghost. This has created hatred among many members of the seven families, but most fear him. Fan realizes that his plan failed because the seventh ghost is skilled at evasion. He contemplates that there is no way to reverse the situation and can only wait for the seventh ghost to arrive. Zay Tianyang suggests leaving the girl behind to distract the seventh ghost and ensure their safe escape. However, the girl holds Fan's hand and reminds him of his promise to take her out of the town. Se Tianyang agrees with Fan's decision, believing in him as leader run through the forest, a dangerous wild animal attacks on him. He swiftly tears him off D and continues on. 
he stops to see a leaf and call three little rabbits and playfully calls them out. Fan surprises how he is determining their location. The leader of Yuming Valley approaches and acknowledges Fan's recent breakthrough to the sixth stage of the Qi Gathering Realm. Fan ponders the difficulty of dealing with the seventh ghost, realizing his intelligence surpasses his initial expectations. He suggests making a deal dot offering a piece of the diamond quick stand in exchange for their freedom. The leader laughs and dismisses the proposition, claiming ownership of the diamond quick stand and expressing his intention to take Fan's life. A battle ensues as the leader launches an attack, and Fan confidently stands his ground, inviting him to come forward. The leader smiles and mocks Fan, remarking that even though he had a good year, Fan still dared to negotiate with him. He lunges towards Fan, intending to kill him, and taunts him for seeking death. However, Fan remains calm and confident, revealing a large yellow fire bird. The leader of Yuming Valley is shocked by this sight. Zhuo Fan commands the bird to attack, releasing a powerful blast of fire towards the leader. The leader falls under the unexpected and formidable attack, realizing it's an array. Zhuo Fan stands with his powerful bird, showcasing his prowess as an array master. The leader acknowledges that he underestimated Fan, thinking of him as just a kid in the sixth stage of Qi Gathering Realm, unaware of his skills as an array master. The leader transforms into a blue fire animal monster, ready to fight Shua Fan. Fan ponders if this is the martial art inheritance of Yuming Valley, impressed by the monster's formidable magic skills. The monster charges at Fan, but he counters with the bird's flight. Meanwhile, Ninger follows Fan's instruction, joining her hands and releasing a blow of magical blue light that combines with Fan's attack, strengthening it against the monster. The leader realizes that others can also use the array. Zhuo Fan then addresses Zhe Tianyang, indicating it's his turn. Zhe Tianyang laughs and releases a powerful blue thunder attack, confidently declaring his readiness for this moment. The leader of Yuming Valley is shocked by Zhe Tianyang's display of power and his ability to threaten a Tian Xian realm expert. The leader's blue monster is overwhelmed by the combined blows of Fan and Zhe Tianyang, moving closer to defeat. Suddenly, the leader retaliates with his purple long-range magic. Zhuo Fan is surprised to recognize it as a fourth-grade magic treasure. The leader stands tall and commends Fan, admitting that he didn't expect to be pushed to this extent by three little ghosts. He proposes a truce, suggesting that if Fan shares a portion of the diamond quick stand, he will cease his pursuit. This surprises the little girl and Zhe Tianyang. After a moment of consideration, Shua Fan agrees to settle on this compromise. He agrees to the offer and says, All right, then let's have a truce. He holds a small bag and says, Here is the emery flowing sand. We shall now be in agreement. The leader of Yuming Valley replies with a smile, That's right. As long as you obediently hand me the emery flowing sand, I guarantee that I will let you all go. However, Shua Fan suddenly withdraws his hand and says, Ass off. This offends the leader of Yuming Valley, and he shouts, Kill him. Die, brat. The fourth-level magical wheel pressure runs towards them with the intent to kill. The three of them use their powers to counter the attack. The leader shouts, You damned brat. I should never have believed you. Fan smiles and says, We are both demonic cultivators, and you know how we are. Say Tianyang thinks to himself, Just what kind of people are these? one more cunning than the other. These two are wicked and untrustworthy. He realizes that from the beginning, both parties had plans to deceive each other, and the idea of a truce was never considered. But luckily, the more wicked one on their side is even more sinister, or else they would all be dead by now. The leader of Yuming Valley thinks to himself, so, such a man exists. I must remain calm. As long as these three work together to operate the array, I won't be able to take advantage. He looks at Ninger and asks, You are the young lady of the Shue family. Last time when I met you was five years ago. You were just a mere child. You've grown into such a fine young lady in these years. Ninger is shocked by this encounter. Fan addresses him, saying, Either ghost Chi, just talk whatever you want with me. Leave the lady out of this. He turns to Ninger and says, For what reason do you want to oppose me? Thinking back, 
Your family is one of the subordinate families of our human cave and family. Quite well, but what you did today will cause the death of every member of the Shui family. Ninger becomes fearful at his threat. The leader of Yuming Valley gives a blow and says it's opening. Fan warns them to watch out as he attacks. Say Tianyang attacks the leader with Fan while Ninger stands still. The leader counterattacks with his power, laughing and saying, that's right. He addresses Ninger and says, what are you doing? It's not right. These two brats can cut their ties afterward. But your family cannot get away from this easily. Dachua Fan addresses Ninger and says, Don't listen to that old geezer. He has already recognized you, so after we return, he will surely destroy your family. The only way to save your family is by finishing him off here. Do you still remember what I told you earlier? That this Gale Thunder Flame Array is a level 5 array. Three people have to work as one. He continues, As long as the three of us are in sync, even a Tian fighter won't be able to get away from it easily. If we let this old geezer run away, Ninger cries and thinks, I can't let him leave here. He must die. He must die. She summons her magical tiger with great power, shocking the leader. He thinks, did she not exert her full strength earlier? Shua Fan happily addresses them, saying, Come. The three of them attack the leader with Sei Tianyang using the thunder array, the little girl using gallant fury and Fan using the flame array. The leader of Yuming Valley shouts at this development, and they all continue their onslaught, resulting in a massive explosion in the jungle. The leader of Yuming Valley is unable to oppose them and shouts, Bastards. A huge explosion occurs, and he falls to the ground, blood coming out of his mouth. He realizes that the thunder flame attack has injured his lungs, and if they do it again, he will die. He looks at the little girl and thinks, that girl went crazy. The power of her possession has increased to such an extent that even I cannot withstand it a few times. Fan realizes that the old man cannot endure any more attacks. He tells Ninger and Zay Tianyang to get ready and deliver another blow. However, Fan is shocked to see that Ninger is losing control. The leader of Yuming Valley counterattacks and says, this is an opportunity. Fan shouts, not good. Go help her. The leader of Yuming Valley attacks them, resulting in a massive explosion. The leader approaches the girl and grabs her by the neck. He says, crazy girl, this old man almost died at your hands. I should have killed you, but you're still useful. Say Tianyang shouts in anger. The leader addresses them and asks, what's your name? He says, after a while, this old man will naturally deal with you. They both worry and look at each other. He tightens his grip on her neck, and she cries out, Kill him quickly. Don't let him go back and hurt my father. The leader laughs and says, You are such a filial daughter, still thinking about your father. But unfortunately, these two are not enough to kill this old man. When the soldiers return, I will annihilate your family. He threatens her. Zay Tianyang angrily shouts and confronts him, saying, You are an elder of Yuming Valley, and you are bullying a powerless little girl. Don't you feel ashamed? The leader looks at him and says, Such shameful words are common in our demonic path. Little devil, you are good at it. With this old man's temperament, a few words can ignite this girl's fighting spirit. If only you were not my enemy, this old man would definitely take you as a disciple. Shua Fan angrily looks at him and says, You hurt my friend. I must kill you. Ninger cries and pleads, Kill me, please. Zhuo addresses Zay Tianyang and says, Get ready to attack. Zay Tianyang shouts, but Ninger interrupts, saying, This is the ending that Ninger hopes for. Zay Tianyang launches an attack at the leader with anger, while Zhuo Fan attacks with the flame bird. The old man looks at them and says, This old man understands that without the help of wind, no matter how powerful the two elements are, they cannot hurt this old man. Fan replies, Who says we have no wind? The old man is shocked to see that Ninger is unleashing her power once again, creating a thunderstorm. Zay Tianyang is amazed by the appearance of the windstorm and wonders how it is possible. Shua Fan replies, of course, it's because I lied to you. He smiles. Shua Fan says, in the beginning, I told you that the fifth level emery cannot be controlled by myself. I had to trick the three of you. Otherwise, with the shrewdness of the seventh elder, he would surely see through us, so I lied to you. 
Zay Tianang is shocked and asks, You lied to us. Fan explains that the seventh ghost is cunning and wise in the Yuming Valley. If he were to fight him alone, there would be no chance of winning. So, he negotiated with them to join forces. However, this alliance has a fatal weakness, which is that the three of them must work together for maximum efficiency. With the wisdom of the seventh ghost, this weakness would surely be discovered, and he would target the weakest among them. Fan reveals that Ninga was exactly the bait he laid for the seventh ghost. Zay Tianyang is shocked and asks if he planned to sacrifice her from the beginning. Fan tells him that it was Ninger's choice, and he didn't force her. He explains that he gave her the option to sacrifice herself and save her family. He reminds Zay Tianyang of his earlier desire to leave her and run away alone, but he used Ninger as bait. Zay Tianyang sadly asks about his promise to Ninger and expresses his disappointment in Fan's ruthlessness. Fan smiles and says taking her body out of the town is the same. Zay Tianyang is shocked by this revelation. He thinks, after spending more than a month together, I thought I knew Zhuo Fan, but looking at him now, I feel so strange and terrified. He is even more frightening than the hands of gods. They are shocked by someone's laughter. The leader of Yuming Valley emerges from the explosion and says, Boy, you truly fit the description of selfish, merciless, and ruthless. Even sacrificing one's life without hesitation, you acted like it. Even this old man is a little bit afraid of you. Ninger's body falls down. Fan realizes that she has lost consciousness and is out of breath. He addresses the leader and asks if he still has a fourth-grade magic treasure. The old man replies, this old man only has this one. This fourth-grade magic treasure, Yin and Yang twins, are originally one. I usually use Yang to attack the enemy, and Yin only when I am in danger to save my life. Today, I actually let you see it in advance. It can be considered your ability. Fan remarks that other people, even experts in the Tianxian realm, can only see the true features of these treasures moments before their death. Fan says it really deserves to be called a genius devil. You can truly tolerate it. You would rather take the full force of the three of us and get seriously injured before exposing your own card. The leader replies, of course, the world is full of conspiracy and deceit. The old man always keeps the last trump card. That's why I used him this time. How did someone like you make me take it out? He runs towards Fan to attack and says, but this time, it was unexpected. It's a pity that everything you've done was all in vain before this old man. Fan replies, who said that? He brings out his bloody baby, which attacks the leader from behind. The leader wonders if this is Fan's trump card, but Fan says, it's over, seventh elder. This deceitful battle is still mine. While he was speaking, a sudden explosion hits his chest, causing him a severe injury. He falls and thinks, how is this possible? His blood fell down on floor he thinks how it is possible. The leader kids the bloody baby with a rote on his elbow. He uses third grade magic treasure Yu Chang's CI. The bloody baby fall Duan. Shua Fan fall Duan and blood calms out of his mouth. Leaders say it was clearly winning. Shua Fan thinks I am the one who is going to lose. Say Tianyang shouts at Shua Fan. He angrily attack on leader. The leader of Yuming Valley gives him a blow, and he fall down. The leaders say I am known as the genius devil how can someone outsmart me you are good very good I am even afraid of your skimming if you are given more time you will surely become a great demon hero. He is standing in front of Fan and say even the first wise man Zhuge Chengfeng wouldn't be able to match you. Unfortunately that will not happen because this old man is a period that you will continue to grow stronger you are the first person to give me this feeling even though I am going to kill you now that should haven't lost. He brings out his hand to attack and say you are skimming was excellent however I am just better than you. Shua Fan is badly injured and say losing is losing whether it's in skimming or in strength the person who dies is always loser. He tries to motivate himself and say I am not going to accept this situation I still have many things to do in my life the leader standing there say in the face of absolute strength nothing else matter everything else is in vain he attacks on him. He addressed Fan as loser and say has no power to resist or do anything else. 
Suddenly blue explosion comes towards him which shows the leader he turns around and say why is this monster coming to second region. The leader immediately runs away and a blue bird is crossing the sky which cause a large explosion. All of them three are laying miserable on the floor. Ninga wake up and see how did this happen was this caused by the battle with the seven thunder where is everyone. She looks at Chuafan who is laying in earth marvelous. She comes to him, an address get up please wake up she religious that he is injured badly she found blood on her hand by touching him. She continues calling out his name, desperately trying to wake him up. Shua Fan, in his unconscious state, mistakenly believes she is Shua Ningxian. He hears her crying and urging him to wake up. Finally, Shua Fan opens his eyes in pain, realizing the severity of his injuries. Ninga wipes away her tears and expresses relief that he has regained consciousness. Shuafan points towards the injured baby covered in blood, prompting Ninga to ask if he wants her to bring it over. She carefully places the bloody baby on his chest, and miraculously, the baby's blood merges with Shuafan's body. I in his pain, Shuafan requests some blood. Ninga quickly understands his need and cuts her wrist to provide him with blood. She places her bleeding wrist near Zhuafan's mouth, and he immediately opens his eyes and drinks her blood. Ninger feels a mixture of pain and confusion about his actions, but Zhuafan thanks her nonetheless. Ninger welcomes him back with gratitude. Zhuafan unexpectedly realizes that he had treated her similarly in the past and regrets his actions. He acknowledges that demon cultivators act according to their own desires. While reflecting, he addresses her and gives her a third-grade Hushin pill. He asks her to feed him one and take one for herself, and then check on Zhe Tianyang to see if he is alive. Ninga goes to Zhe Tianyang, who is also injured, and gives him a pill. Zhe Tianyang questions why she didn't take the pill herself since she is injured. She responds that her injuries are minor, and that she considers the valuable pills more useful to him. Zhuo Fan chuckles and tells her that the Qianlong Pavilion gave those pills to him. Zhe Tianyang, addressing Ninger, tells her to take the pill since it is Zhuo Fan's way of repaying his debt to her. He reveals that she doesn't yet know that Zhuo Fan had planned to sacrifice her and use her as bait. Ninger is shocked to hear this revelation. Zhe Tianyang explains that Zhuo Fan had planned everything from the beginning, and thus he owes her a great deal. Zhuo Fan, confused by this revelation, asks her to say something. Ninger, while crying, responds that there's no need for her to say anything, as she understands that Zhuo Fan is intelligent and must have his own reasons for doing things. She believes it must be a misunderstanding. Ninger runs off to gather some branches to make two stands, stating that they cannot stay in the current location for a long time. Zhe Tianyang confronts her, questioning if she intends to let Zhuo Fan go without seeking revenge. He reminds her that Zhuo Fan is seriously injured and unable to move, and she has the opportunity to take revenge. Zhuo Fan angrily tells Zhe Tianyang to shut up and threatens to fulfill his desire for death. Zhe Tianyang retorts that Zhuo Fan's injuries are more severe than his own and that he wouldn't be able to kill him in his current state. Zhuo Fan thinks to himself that although they lost the battle, Zhuo Fan showed his ability to handle a devil genius causing headaches for the elders of the seven families despite having low cultivation. Zhe Tianyang admits to hating and fearing Zhuo Fan, but he also deeply admires him for his loyalty and talent. There is a huge thunderstorm raging in the forest. Ninger, despite being injured, bravely drags both Zhe Tianyang and Zhuo Fan with a rope through the pouring rain. Suddenly, Ninger stumbles but quickly gets back up, determined to continue their journey. Gripping the ropes tightly, she resumes dragging them towards their destination. Meanwhile, Zhe Tianyang stands on the side, reflecting on how he had considered Ninga the weakest from the start. He admits to himself that he had even contemplated leaving her behind to die. Shua Fan, on the other hand, displays even more shameless behavior, suggesting to use the little girl as bait while pretending to be righteous. Deep down, Zhe Tianyang realizes that despite considering her a burden, Ninger never abandoned them or left them to die. He acknowledges the immense strength and character she possesses. Wondering how he could ever repay her in this lifetime, Ninger continues walking. She spots a rat emerging from the surroundings. Her face lights up with happiness as the rat approaches her. The rat gestures for her to follow, 
and she understands its signal. Trusting the rat's guidance, she leads Zhe Tianyang and Zhuafan to a nearby cave, where they can take shelter from the relentless rain. Zhuafan opens his eyes and immediately insists that they cannot stay in the cave. He points towards the purple grass growing inside and identifies it as Jiayu grass. Zhe Tianyang interjects, mentioning that the grass can help relieve fatigue and considers it a good thing. Confused, Ninger asks what the problem is. Zhuo Fan then explains that the grass only has beneficial effects for spirit beasts and not for humans. Moreover, the grass attracts spirit beasts and could potentially lead them into a trap. He reveals that the marmot they encountered earlier was likely luring them into danger. Zhe Tianyang erupts in anger, accusing Zhuo Fan of being able to dig his way out and escape on his own, leaving them behind. He laments their predicament and expresses his frustration. Ninger holds the rat in her lap and asks what they should do now. Se Tianyang suggests the only option is to run away. Zhuafan asks about the time, and Ninger responds that approximately a day has passed. Angrily, Zhuafan curses, realizing that the effects of the pills they took have worn off and the beasts have likely detected their presence. He warns that the creatures are likely on their way to the cave in groups. This revelation shocks Se Tianyang, who questions Zhuafan's statement. Zhuo Fan explains that powerful spirit beasts wouldn't resort to such sneaky tricks, as they typically act individually. It is the lower-level spirit beasts that set traps and operate in groups. Suddenly, a large pack of wild wolves appears near the cave, roaring menacingly. The group is taken aback by the sight of the dangerous wolves with their sharp claws, sprinting towards the cave. The wild wolves are roaring, ready to attack as a group. Zhuafan observes them and realizes that even though they are second-level spirit beasts, they come in packs. He explains that the Wolf King is a third-level spirit beast, and even a fourth-level spirit beast wouldn't dare to provoke them. The wild wolves charge at them with full speed. Zhe Tianyang sadly remarks that despite praying to God, he ends up dying in a place like this and admits his jealousy towards Zhuafan's talent. Ninga looks on with a sad expression. Shua Fan addresses Zhe Tianyang and instructs him to take out his sword and give it to Ninga. Zhe Tianyang is shocked but obeys, acknowledging that even though his Yao Xing sword is a fourth grade treasure, Ninga only possesses a small amount of qi and wouldn't be able to defeat the wolves even with four times her strength. Shua Fan adds that Zhe Tianyang, with the power of a sixth player qi warrior, is a monster who can compete with a Tianxian master. Zhuo Fan tells Ninger to take the sword and emphasizes that she doesn't have to fight too hard, as long as she can break out. He takes out a bottle of hidden dan and gives it to her, instructing her to drink it after breaking out and leave the beast mountain. However, instead of returning home, he tells her to go straight to town. Zhe Tianyang acknowledges that they both owe Ninger a great debt and that she doesn't have to die, nor should they drag her down. He takes out his sword and hands it to her as well. Ninger holds the sword and steps forward. Zhe Tianyang says that in this way, their debts of kindness have been repaid, and even if they die, they don't have to worry about it. Zhuo Fan responds by saying that he doesn't care if he dies now, he just feels uncomfortable and doesn't want Ninger to do anything more for him. Zhe Tianyang comments that Zhuo Fan is ruthless. A wild wolf roars and approaches them. Ninger stands in front of them, holding the sword. The wolf lunges at her and she forcefully uses the sword to fight back. Shuafan shouts, questioning her actions. She explains that as long as she blocks their way, they won't be able to enter. Shuafan shouts back, calling her an idiot and clarifying that the wolves were merely cannon fodder. The wolf king doesn't care about the lives of its subordinates, but they will drag her to her death. Ninga replies that the wolf king may not care. But both Shua Fan and Zhe Tianyang were there for her when she was in trouble, and they are her best friends. Determined, she holds her sword and continues to attack the wolves, declaring that she won't let them both die. Although she gets injured in the process, she fights on and tears the wolves apart. The day is about to begin, but the rain continues to fall. The dead bodies of the wolves fall to the ground as Ninga stands there, still holding the sword. Suddenly, another wild wolf attacks her. Shuafan looks at her and tries to stand up, but he is unable to move. 
He watches as she fights against the wolves and thinks to himself that he and Zay Tianyang are both assholes. Ninger is exhausted from the relentless fight, but she refuses to give up. The group of wild wolves continues to attack her, leaving her to face them alone. A particularly vicious wolf bites her arm, causing her to fall. The wolf ruthlessly drags her, biting her with relentless force. Ninger cries out in pain, helpless against the ferocious assault. Zhao Fan and Zhe Tianyang can only watch helplessly, unable to move. The wolf pack tears at Ninger's body as she lies there in pain and despair. Suddenly, the king wolf arrives and approaches her. Ninger gazes at the wolf, accepting that this is the end for her. The wolf opens its mouth, ready to deliver a final attack. Zhao Fan and Zhe Tianyang, both crying, close their eyes, unable to bear witness to her fate. Unexpectedly, a bird swoops down and flies towards them. It kills all the attacking wolves and tears them apart, leaving only the king wolf standing. A massive explosion of blue light engulfs the area, illuminating the forest. The king wolf falls dead, defeated by the powerful explosion. The blue light expands throughout the forest. Ninger lies unconscious on the ground, while Xiao Fan and Zhe Tianyang sit in the cave, stunned. A magical blue snow falls gently upon Zhao Fan's face. He closes his eyes and when he opens them again, he finds himself in a strange world, wondering where he is. To his surprise, he realizes that he can walk and move without any pain. He examines his body, questioning how he is suddenly healed that a bright blue light approaches him, taking the form of a person. The person addresses him, mentioning that his name is Zhuo Fan, expressing dislike for the way others address him. Zhuo Fan asks who the person is, and the blue light responds that he doesn't need to know, as this is the person's domain, and he is the one who will be asking the questions. The person asks why Zhuo Fan is in the Beast Mountain. Zhuo Fan replies that he is there to capture a Thunder Skylark, a sixth-level spirit beast. The magical person inquires about his intentions with the beast, to which Zhuo Fan responds that he plans to use it to enhance his strength. Suddenly, Zhuo Fan experiences a sharp pain in his head. The magical person laughs and informs him that he can easily detect lies within the conscious mind. Zhuo Fan realizes that this person has the ability to intrude into the conscious minds of others, a power that surpasses the god vision realm and the worldly order. He asks if the person is someone from the divine land. The person smiles and confirms that they are indeed from the divine land. Zhuo Fan asks the magical person if they are from the sanctuary. The person responds that Zhuo Fan doesn't seem like an ordinary person since he is aware of the sanctuary. They state that Zhuo Fan's ability to use initiation formations and blood babies sets him apart. Zhuo Fan recognizes the mention of blood babies and recalls that they have a long history, even in the sanctuary. However, the ancient records about blood babies would be difficult to comprehend, even for someone like him with access to the nine secret records as a grand emperor. Confused, Zhuo Fan asks the person who they truly are. The magical person becomes furious and asserts that Zhuo Fan doesn't have the right to ask questions. They demand to know why Zhuo Fan is seeking the Thunder Skylark. Zhuo Fan reveals his intention to go to Luo Le Canyon and find the ruins of the emperor. He explains that he needs the Thunder Skylark to help him stop the Purple Thunder. The magical person bursts into laughter expressing approval and commenting that the ruins are a good place. They lean closer to Zhuo Fan's face and state that he should go. The person places their finger on Zhuo Fan's head and leaves him with a small gift. They reveal that this gift connects someone with Zhuo Fan, expressing hope that it will aid him in the future. They mention that the Thunder Skylark is located 3,000 miles into the third area and fade away laughing and implying that catching it will depend on Zhuo Fan's abilities. Zhuo Fan opens his eyes, surprised to find himself in perfect condition. He moves his hand and realizes that he still feels weak, but most of his injuries have healed. He senses that the previously silent bloody baby will soon awaken. He reflects on the fact that the person who invaded his consciousness last night was undoubtedly from the sanctuary, as they possessed such immense magical power. He wonders about the person's purpose for coaching him and leaving something in his body. However, given his current situation, it is impossible for him to detect it. Zhuo Fan decides to let go of his suspicions, 
acknowledging that the person saved his life. He believes that he will uncover their purpose in the future and questions which master would care about him in his current state. As Xuefan walks through the cave, he suddenly discovers Xuaning Xian lying injured nearby. He rushes to her side, urging her to wake up, and realizes the extent of her injuries. He gives her a heart pill to aid her recovery, knowing that she will survive. He reassures himself that fortunately, her injuries are superficial and not severe. He acknowledges her efforts against the wolves, which exhausted her powers. He decides to let her rest, as the Jayu grass in the area is the best for relieving fatigue and promoting healing. He looks around and contemplates his next steps. Shua Fan approaches Zetianyan and kicks him, urging him to wake up. The sound of his groaning echoes through the forest, causing the animals to stir. Shua Fan kicks Zay Tianyang on his backside, causing him to ponder why he is suffering even after death. Shua Fan retorts that getting kicked is considered torture, and reminds Zay Tianyang that he has never truly experienced torture. He looks at Pen, questioning why he kicked him when they were supposed to die together. Shua Fan explains that if they were dead, all living beings would be dead too, but unfortunately, they are still alive. This realization shocks Zay Tianyang. Zay Tianyang bursts into laughter, realizing that they are indeed alive. However, blood seeps from his body, indicating that he is still injured. He questions how Zhuo Fan recovered so quickly, considering they both took the same medicine, and Zhuo Fan was initially more severely wounded. He looks at Zhuo Fan in disbelief. Zhuo Fan reassures him that he is human and merely possesses slightly better abilities than the average person. He steps out of the cave and performs a magic technique, creating a hidden array to ensure their peaceful recovery. Point three months pass, and Zay Tianyang is fully recovered, displaying his prowess with the sword. He swings his sword at a large rock, breaking it into two parts. He eagerly asks Ninga how it looks, and she exclaims that it is amazing. Zhuo Fan joins them and estimates that after his injuries heal completely, Zay Tianyang will be able to break through to the bone forging realm. Zay Tianyang looks around and asks Zhuo Fan if he has made any progress in breaking through to the seventh QI gathering level. Ninger greets him, and Zay Tianyang angrily points at Zhuo Fan, questioning how his eyesight is so sharp. He admits that he himself didn't even know he was about to break through. Ninga wonders why they have been arguing so much in the past few months, as they never acted that way before. Zay Tianyang explains that he was furious when he found out Zhuo Fan had used her as bait expressing frustration. Shua Fan counters, reminding Zay Tianyang that he was the first one to suggest leaving her behind and questioning his sudden infatuation with her. Zay Tianyang vehemently denies being infatuated, stating that if he had known how good Ninga was, he would never have suggested leaving her. Ninga interrupts, telling them to stop arguing as it is all in the past, and she no longer minds. She asks them to let go of the grudges and be friends. She extends her hands to both of them, suggesting that they leave the past behind. The rat sits on her head. Zhuo Fan hears her words and realizes the significance of their bond. He thinks to himself that life and death are intertwined, and from now on, the three of them will live or die together. He reflects on the difficulty of finding such friends again in life but acknowledges that he still has many things to accomplish. He unties his hands and suggests that they go their separate ways since they have all made amends. However, Ninger asks him to wait, wanting to say something more. Shua Fan apologizes for his earlier unclear statement, and clarifies that he is leaving. He explains that Ninger asked him to take her out of the city, but he is afraid he cannot do it alone, so he asks for their help. Ninger asks where he plans to go, and Shua Fan reveals that he is heading to the third area, shocking both Ninger and Zai Tianyang. Zay Tianyang questions why Zhuo Fan wants to go there now when they originally intended to head toward the seventh ghost. Zhuo Fan explains that the third area was always his destination, and when he asked them to come along, he intended to use them as bait. Zay Tianyang is taken aback, realizing that Zhuo Fan wanted to use him as bait. Zhuo Fan tells Zay Tianyang that if he doesn't want to die, he should leave and stay as far away from him as possible. However, Ninga holds Zhuo Fan's arm asking him not to consider her a burden and to take her with him, even if it means using her as bait. This statement shocks Zhuo Fan. Zetian Yang speaks up, warning Ninga that Zhuo Fan is unreliable. 
but Ninger insists that no one in Xinning City was willing to help her, and they only survived their encounters with the seventh ghost because of Xue Fan's array formations and strategies. She reminds them of their promise to always be together. Zai Tianyang joins hands with them, indicating that he is also coming along. Xue Fan asks if Zai Tianyang trusts him, and Zai Tianyang replies that it's not to help Xue Fan but to prevent him from using Ninger as bait again. Ninger smiles softly, and Zhu Fan remarks that depending on his mood, he might even use Zhe Tianyang as bait, causing shock and anger in Zhe Tianyang. Zhu Fan quickly clarifies that it was just a joke, but Zhe Tianyang states that he will never trust Zhu Fan, emphasizing that in life and death situations, he cannot ask for anything else. They arrive at the third area of Beast Mountain, which is filled with dense bushes. They crawl on the ground quietly, and Zhe Tianyang expresses his frustration refusing to continue crawling as it is shameful. However, Zhuo Fan shouts at him to get down quickly, and Zhe Tianyang questions why they need to crawl when the grass and trees are tall enough to hide them. Suddenly, a growl echoes through the area. A large wild boar, a fifth-level spirit beast called the Raging Storm Boar, approaches them, but before it can attack, a gigantic snake-like monster emerges from the ground and devours the boar. It is a king python, a fifth-level spirit beast of fan warns them to run, calling out that it's a fifth-level spirit beast, the King Python. Zhe Tianyang angrily accuses Zhuo Fan of being an asshole and regrets agreeing to come to such a dangerous place. Zhuo Fan retorts that nobody forced Zhe Tianyang to come along and suggests he crawl back if he wants to. Zhe Tianyang expresses his frustration, stating that after all they have been through together, Zhuo Fan wants him to die now. Zhuo Fan and Ninga smile. Amused by their banter, night falls, and a wild beast prowls through the forest. Its eyes glow with a fiery yellow light. Fan stands up, and Zhe Tianyang sarcastically asks if he can stop crawling now. Fan explains that they crawled before to avoid being detected by lower-level spirit beasts, but now, in the presence of a sixth-level spirit beast, it's better to stand and hide. Zhe Tianyang happily asks if it's safer now and Fan responds that it can be considered safer, but if they encounter a sixth-level spirit beast, they will die faster. Zhe Tianyang questions why Fan is looking for a sixth-level spirit beast if it's so dangerous, suggesting that he wants to tame it as a spirit pet. Fan thinks to himself that since he dared to come here, he must have a way to tame a sixth-level spirit beast. He plans to feed the Thunder Silk Worm to the Thunder Skylark to tame it, but the problem lies in how he will accomplish this. Suddenly, there is a loud explosion in the distance, indicating a battle between spirit beasts. Fan realizes that it must involve a sixth-level spirit beast due to the intensity of the noise. He immediately flies over to the location of the battle. Zhe Tianyan shouts at him, calling him crazy for wanting to get involved in the battle. Fan explains that if one of the spirit beasts involved is the Thunder Skylark, he cannot let this opportunity slip away as it is a great chance for him. Ning approaches Zhuo Fan, and Zhe Tianyang grumbles, deciding to go along with them. They arrive at the site of the explosion, and Zhuo Fan hides behind a rock, observing two powerful birds engaged in a fierce fight. He is shocked to see that one of them is the Thunder Skylark, but the other beast, the Red Flame Lion King, poses a challenge. Zhuo Fan realizes that the person who told him about the Thunder Skylark's presence didn't lie. He understands that the Thunder Skylark is in danger of losing the battle and being killed. He worries that his plan to tame the Thunder Skylark will fail. Suddenly, an explosion occurs, catching Zhuo Fan's attention. He realizes that he needs to find a way to help the Thunder Skylark. Ninger arrives and suggests that they find a way to help the bird as it would rather sacrifice itself than abandon its children and fight for its territory. Zhuo Fan is surprised to learn about the bird's children. The Thunder Skylark falls under the blow of the Red Flame Lion King, and Fan notices the bird's eggs. Ninger expresses sadness over seeing a mother die while protecting her children and asks Fan for help. Zhe Tianyang shouts at her, stating that the battle is between two sixth-level spirit beasts and they shouldn't get involved because their strength is insufficient. He explains that even if humans were to intervene, they wouldn't be able to do anything. Ninger apologizes, realizing that she was being selfish and wanting to help. 
She addresses Zhe Tianyang and Zhuifan, asking them to forgive her. Zhuifan assures her not to worry and promises to find a way to rescue the bird from trouble. Zhe Tianyang angrily confronts Zhuifan, calling him a hypocrite and questioning when he became so kind. Zhuifan responds, You still don't know me. In fact, I am the kindest person. However, I still need your help, as he looks at Zhe Tianyang. Zhe Tianyang retorts, Bullshit dot if you are kind then I must be a saint. Suddenly, realization dawns on him, and he asks, Wait, is your goal to capture this thunder skylark? Shuafan acknowledges that Zhe Tianyang has become smarter by staying with him for so long. Zhe Tianyang shouts, So I've almost been used by you again. If you really want to go, then go on your own and don't ask me. A fan gestures to Ninger, indicating that she should talk to Zhe Tianyang. Ninga goes over and holds Zhe Tianyang's hand, pleading with him to help their friend. She tearfully requests, Please go and assist Shuafan. I am filled with pity for that poor bird and her children. Zhe Tianyang, moved by her words, thanks her for her persuasive efforts. He looks at the ongoing battle and realizes that they could all be wiped out if they don't act. He agrees to go and help, making Ninger happy. Zhe Tianyang angrily addresses Zhuifan, saying, Please take care of me. If you dare to use me, I will never let you go. Zhuifan reassures him, Don't worry, you know who I am. If I wanted to use you, you would be used, and there would be no chance for revenge. This infuriates Zhe Tianyang. Zhuifan places his hand on Zhe Tianyang's shoulder and says, Don't worry, I don't plan to treat you badly. He advises Ninger to hide somewhere so they won't be noticed. Meanwhile, the spirit beasts continue their intense fight, completely absorbed in their battle. Zhuo Fan and Zhe Tianyang cautiously approach them, moving slowly. Zhe Tianyang asks Zhuo Fan about their plan. Zhuo Fan replies, Now that the Thunder Skylark is not paying attention, we will secretly take her eggs and hide them. When she notices they're missing, she will stop fighting and go look for them. With her speed, the lion will not be able to catch her, and her life will be saved. Zhe Tianyang agrees that it's a good plan and suggests they move the nest together. They start making their way towards the nest, with Ninga watching them happily. As the spirit beasts continue their fierce battle, the red flame lion notices Zhuo Fan and Zhe Tianyang. Leaving the fight, the lion beast starts moving towards Zhuo Fan. Zhuo Fan realizes the danger and urgently tells Zhe Tianyang, This is bad, the beast has noticed us. Zhe Tianyang asks about the eggs. And Zhuo Fan, in a desperate move, throws all the eggs away, saying, Forget about the eggs, we need to focus on surviving. The Thunder Skylark notices the falling eggs and realizes that the fire from the battle is about to reach them. The blow hits the ground, causing a massive explosion. Zhuo Fan thinks to himself, This is bad. As the Thunder Skylark continues to defend her eggs from the lion, Zhuo Fan realizes the cunning nature of the lion and admires the Thunder Skylark's determination to protect her offspring, even at the cost of taking the full force of the attack. He knows he needs to save the Thunder Skylark, her life must be preserved. The lion launches another fierce blow towards the Skylark, and Zhe Tianyang urges Zhuo Fan to run away. They both start running, but Zhuo Fan stops to witness the Thunder Skylark fighting against the lion with all her power resulting in lightning and explosions rocking the mountain. Zhuo Fan and Zhe Tianyang reach the cave where Ninga is waiting. Zhuo Fan admits, we tried to help, but it only hastened the defeat of the Thunder Skylark. He grabs Ninger's hand and urges her to leave, emphasizing that if the bird dies, the furious lion will come after them. However, Ninger remains motionless, her gaze fixed on the Thunder Skylark. She recalls memories of her mother, who told her that she couldn't stay protected forever and encouraged her to take care of herself and make good friends. Ninga remembers the promise she made to her mother and her determination to protect her loved ones. Amidst her tears, Ninga pleads, No, she steps forward, positioning herself in front of the Thunder Skylark to defend her from the lion. Seeing Ninga's brave act, Zhe Tianyang joins her, standing by her side to protect her. Zhuo Fan, overwhelmed with conflicting emotions, runs towards them, realizing that despite considering himself a devil, both Ninger and Zhe Tianyang hold a special place in his heart. He decides that he will not give up on them or abandon them. Standing in front of them, 
he declares I may be a devil, but even if I die, I will face my enemies head on. Xuefan stands in front of them as the lion prepares to attack him. Suddenly, a blue light approaches him, shining at the center of his forehead. A sudden blue expression appears, surprising all the animals in the jungle, including turtles and rabbits. The lion halts its attack and fearfully gazes at Fan. Fan looks back at the lion, and blue rays emanate from his head, shocking the lion, causing it to run away in fear. Confused, Fan looks at his forehead, contemplating the unfamiliar sensation. Zetianyang addresses him, his confusion evident, and asks for the truth, questioning if Fan is truly a human. Fan straightens his pant shirt and confidently asserts, of course, I am human. Zetianyang exclaims in astonishment, it's strange that I have never seen anything like this before. How can someone scare a level six squared beast with just a look? Did you see the way that lion fled when it saw you? It was as if it feared being devoured by you. We are brothers. Tell me the truth. He shouts at Fan, demanding to know the secrets he might be hiding. Fan takes a step forward and firmly states, I don't have a brother like you, further enraging Zay Tianyang. Ninger sits alongside the Skylark, suddenly noticing her presence. Fan approaches Ninger and asks, she wants to survive. Can you think of a way to save her? Fan shakes his head earnestly, replying, no Ninger begins to cry, and her tears fall on the Skylark, who then opens her eyes and looks towards her eggs. Ninger realizes that the Skylark desires her eggs, but the burnt remains suggest there is no sign of life. Ninger points out, wait, there should be five eggs. She continues, one of them is missing, right? Maybe there is still hope. Sadly, Fan rejects her suggestion. Ninger sits down on the floor, apologizing, sorry, I couldn't help you, while crying and sitting beside the Skylark. The Skylark opens her feathers and reveals an egg. This provides evidence that she knew she couldn't protect all the eggs and prioritize protecting one. Even if the lion had killed her, the egg would not have been discovered. She sacrificed her own life to safeguard her child. Suddenly, the Skylark cries out to Fan. Pen realizes what she wants and asks, Do you want me to take care of that egg? The Skylark moves her head, nodding. Fan takes hold of the egg and remarks, The egg was burnt by the flames. Even if it hatches, it won't survive for long, unless... He approaches the Skylark, placing his hand on her head. The Skylark nods in agreement. Eventually, the Skylark falls to the ground, closing her eyes. Ninger is saddened and cries over her death, while Fan cradles the shining egg in his hands. They stand beside the lifeless body of the Skylark. Zay Tianyang ponders, it's been half an hour before Fan thinks to himself, who would have thought that Ninger would mourn for such a long time over an unrelated spirit beast? Such love. He gazes at her and considers, at most, we should show respect for the Skylark, but she is truly saddened to such a degree. He addresses her, saying, we can resurrect the dead. Try not to be sad. Zetianyang adds, yes, by chance, you and this thunder Skylark had crossed paths for a while. It was merely a coincidence. Ninger misunderstands and explains, I am not sad because of her. I am just feeling homesick, remembering how she protected her children. It reminded me a lot of my father, how he always desperately protected me and took care of me. Fan realizes that she is just deeply moved, and no wonder she didn't spare any effort to save the Thunder Skylark, who is also a mother. He addresses her, attempting to cheer her up, if that's the case, try to cheer up. I'm going to take the Thunder Skylark's body. Zay Tianyang exclaims in shock, are you planning to keep the corpse of a level 6 spirit beast for yourself? Fan responds, you saw that she entrusted her egg to me, right? That means her body is mine too. He takes flight into the air and says, take care of Ninger. I will try to return as soon as possible. Zay Tianyang thinks, outrageous. I really want to go and see what he's up to, but forget it. It's too dangerous to leave this girl alone. He looks at Ninger. Shua Fan reaches a specific location, placing the egg on the ground. He surveys the area and remarks, this place looks suitable. He takes out a ring and places it on the Skylark's body. Gazing at the egg, he puts his hand where a faint yellow light is emanating and conjures a fireball. 
he thinks, fine mustard stones from the royal family and the Qianlong Pavilion, and a spirit beast corpse nurtured by heaven and earth he holds the fireball and gently places it on the ground, causing a sudden explosion. The corpse can be refined using the stone's aura. Rocks shatter in the explosion, and Fan observes the outcome. The egg is severely damaged, so it must be nurtured with the Thunder Skylark's large spirit period, otherwise it will be stillborn. If I want to nurture something with aura, it must be able to be filled with aura and spirit. He thinks, now that the Thunder Skylark is dead, I must hatch this egg and become its master to receive help in entering the heavenly tomb. A large explosion occurs in the air, with black and yellow smoke filling the sky. As I have explained to the Thunder Skylark before she died, she knew that her corpse could keep her child alive. That's why she agreed to my proposal. He sadly thinks, this is motherly love. Whether she agreed or not, I would have still done this he stands in front of the magic and thinks, my goal will be accomplished soon. It is nighttime, and Ninga looks at the sky. Say Tianyang sits beside her, trying to hold her from the back but hesitates. Suddenly, Zhuafan arrives, interrupting the moment, while Ninger is happy to see Zhuafan back. Say Tianyang angrily asks him, What did you do with the Thunder Skylark's body? Zhuafan replies, I cut it into eight pieces. Ninger is shocked. Say Tianyang addresses her and says, It's right. Most spirit beast corpses end up like that. He continues, I just don't know what he got out of it. Fan responds, If you can guess what it is, I will give it to you offering a challenge. He shouts, yes, it's right. And you will leave it. Don't joke. I am the future head of the seventh family, the son of the magnificent swordsman Zay Tianyang. He angrily states, I don't need your stuff. I will tell you, I will not thank you even in death. Even if I die here in the mouth of a beast, I will never accept a thing from you. He addresses Shuafan angrily. Zhuafan moves and says, Thank you, master, for your kindness. This makes him even more furious, and he says, Don't talk when other people are talking. Hey, do you know today is Ninger's sixteenth birthday? That's why she is so emotional, he explains to Zhuafan. When she saw the thunder skylark protecting its egg, that's why she became sad. Zhuafan looks at her at this revelation and says, It turns out today is Ninger's birthday. Then, as your elder brother... I have to give a decent gift but he holds her hand and gives her a purple ring. He reveals that it is a storage ring made from the Thunder Skylark's body, and it can also store living things. He is also wearing one and says, this ring is different from other storage rings. Not only are the refining techniques complicated, but you won't also find these anywhere. He tells her that most importantly, if Reiki is poured into it, it can be stored. They both extend their hands and come closer and the rings start interacting with each other. These two rings are the same. As long as the ring responds, you will know that I am nearby. Zay Tianyang thinks, one for her and one for him. Love tokens that he angrily addresses Fan and says, give me one too Zhuo Fan replies, no, that's not your birthday. Zay Tianyang shouts and says, no, you must give me one ring, otherwise you two have a pair of rings. I don't care, give me one, or I will grab it. Zhuafan gives him a ring and says, Three of us, or we suffer together. How can I not make one for you? Zay Tianyang feels a bit embarrassed and says, I will accept it since you are sincere. He addresses Ninger and says, Let's go then. Zhuafan addresses Zay and says, Just now, who said that they didn't want my stuff, even in death? Zay Tianyang shouts and says, What's wrong, can't you see? Whatever it is, the three of us must share our stuff. Zhuafan taunts and says, Yes, yes, master. He moves his head and says, My pleasure. Say Tianyang addresses him and says, Face and talk, you are heartless. Ninga looks at her ring and says, I really want time to stop so that the three of us can be together forever, she happily says, and carefree doubt a man is standing over the cliff and smiles. He disappears from the cliff. A bright blue shadow bird is flying in the sky. It is more than one month later. Shuafan says, now we are finally back to the forest area. Next, as long as you can walk out of Qiming City completely, you will be completely safe. He thinks, although I failed to conquer the Thunder Skylark this time, I got its egg. I also gained life and death friends. Ninger addresses him and says, but if you send it, 
the seventh elder, won't he try to catch us, Shuafan says, probably not. At that time, he didn't give us any time to make up for it. He thought it was an extremely dangerous thing and panicked, running away. That scared him. He also thinks that he has already been killed by that thing, so he won't catch us anymore. Zai Tianyang asks, that thing Zhuifan replies, how would I know? Zai Tianyang angrily says, what did you say you don't know? Zhuifan says, but Ninger, where do you plan to go after you leave the city? Ninger asks, what confusedly? Zai Tianyang shouts and says, I will go with you, wherever you go. Zhuifan thinks for a moment. Zai Tianyang addresses Ninger and says, why don't you follow me to the Jianhou mansion? Over there, even if your family catches up, even if people from the Yuming Valley come, they cannot take you. Ninger happily says, okay. I have never seen what the seventh family looks like. Zai Tianyang addresses Pan and says, look at her face. I will also know that you two visit my house together. Shua Fan refuses and says, I have other things to do. If there is a chance in the future, I will see you again. Shua Fan moves forward while Ninger and Zai Tianyang stand there sadly. Zai Tianyang says, I will still welcome you to my house. If you are my brother, give me face. Shua Fan looks back a bit and says, I said earlier, I don't have a brother. Zai Tianyang furiously says, you damn. Suddenly, a light appears in their way, and someone says, the three of you cannot leave. There is a huge explosion and smoke in front of them. Shua Fan looks at it and says, you are. Shua Fan looks at him. An old man appears and says, you three over there, don't expect to get out of here alive now. Hair stands on end as he addresses them, champions of the heavens. Shua Fan asks Zai Tianyang if he is the elder of the Yuming Valley. Zai Tianyang replies, how should I know I have never seen him before? Shua Fan thinks, but what I know for sure is the way this old man is looking at us, as if he would devour us at any moment. He carefully observes the old man and thinks, there is no doubt that he is our enemy. Ninger shouts at her grandfather and runs towards the old man. Shua Fan shouts and says, wait, are you the champion of the heavens from the Shua family? Shua Ding Tain the old man hugs Ninger and says, Ninger, where did you run off to all these months your grandfather climbed mountains and traveled wild lands just to search for you? Ninger is crying and says, I am so sorry for worrying you, grandfather. He angrily looks at Shua Fan and Zai Tianyang and says, so during these past few months, what did you do with her? They didn't do anything to you, right? Ninger says, grandfather. What are you saying? The old man replies, as long as they didn't do anything to you, now as for you, who hurt Shui Gang, he asks about his elder grandson. Zai Tianyang points at Fan and states, it was him. It wasn't until much later that I met Ninger. I have never even seen you, my grandson, before. Shua Fan respectfully addresses the old man and says, at that time, I wasn't aware that he is Ninger's brother. So please forgive my actions. The old man angrily asks, Then it was you who eloped with Ninger Zai Tianyang shouts and says, What eloped he grabs Shua Fan angrily and says, Explain this to me now, since when did you have that kind of relationship with her Ninger is blushing to see that. The old man asks, What relationship do you have with that kid? Why is he even more alarmed than I was when I heard the news Ninger shamefully thinks? Grandfather is such an idiot. How can he just openly say things like this? Shua Fan slaps Zai Tianyang lightly and says, don't misunderstand. I only asked her to be our guide. There is nothing else to it. The old man replies, all right, if that is the case, because you two took care of my granddaughter for so long, I will let you off the hook. He holds Ninger's hand and asks her to go back home. Shua Fan asks him to hold on. The old man looks at him and says, you little sneak, what else do you want? Shua Fan addresses him and says, you cannot take her back home. In fact, I recommend that you don't go back either. The old man asks, What do you mean by that? Shua Fan replies and says, I am not afraid to tell you that the three of us have angered the seventh ghost. Ninga was also seen by him, so the elder is probably heading to the Shua family already. He reveals that if you go back with her, you will be heading straight to your death. The old man is shocked. He looks at Ninga and falls with attention. She holds her grandfather and says, what is wrong? She is crying and says, I am sorry, grandfather. The old man sadly says, it's because of you guys. 
The Shwe family will be wiped out. He angrily says, As if I kill you all here, the seventh elder will forgive us for our sins. He moves towards Shwe Fan to attack him. Fan explains to him that even if he catches them and hands them over, he can't be sure if they will be accepted. And even if they are accepted, the Jianho mansion will investigate, and then who will be the scapegoat? This confuses the old man, and he bows in front of Fan. He says, To masters, this old man was reckless. I didn't know the identity of the young master. Please forgive us. He begs for forgiveness. Shua Fan addresses Zay Tianyang and says, If you want to save Ninger, just do as I say. Ninger runs towards her grandfather and says, You guys. Shua Fan addresses the old man and says, Do you know his position in the Jianho mansion but today, you injured him. Our Jianho mansion will not let go of this. The old man backs off and says, Yes, I didn't know. I hope you forgive my misdeed. Shua Fan replies, We will take Ninga first. If you want to take her, whether it's your Shua family or Yuming Valley, go to the Jianho mansion. Shua Fan moves forward, but the old man holds his leg and says, It doesn't matter if she offends the seventh elder. Don't take her away. He shouts and says, Otherwise, this will really bring disaster to our family. This master, even this old man, has two young masters of the Jianho mansion that I would not agree to. Shua Fan thinks, it's okay to offend the seventh elder. Does Yuming Valley have something else would it be Ninger? He stops thinking. Shua Fan holds Zai Tianyang's sword and points it at the old man. He says, you are crazy. Zai Tianyang addresses Fan and says, I thought you were just trying to scare him. I didn't expect you to be serious. He is Ninger's grandfather. Shua Fan asks him to shut up and listen. He addresses Shui Ding Tian and asks, What are you going to do? The old man replies, I know that both young masters like my granddaughter, but she was already engaged to the young master of the Yuming Valley. He reveals that on her sixteenth birthday, she will be sent for marriage. For this reason, no matter how many times she runs away, this old man will take her. Shua Fan thinks about it. The old man shouts, Now that the time limit has passed, if she doesn't go, our whole family will suffer. Say Tianyang asks Ninger, Is this your reason for running away? The old man says, I beg you, let her go with me. She really cannot go with you. Shua Fan thinks, It doesn't look like he is lying. Shua Fan says, You don't know. If it's just a marriage, but unfortunately. Say Tianyang shouts and says, Unfortunately, how can she casually meet and get married to people from the Yuming Valley? Shua Fan replies to Zay, This marriage is fake. If it were Yuming Valley affairs, it should have been done a long time ago. Have you ever seen a girl who has been married in the past coming back alive? This shocks the grandfather. Ninga holds her grandfather's hand and says, Yuming Valley is one of the seven families. They have many rules. We are a second grade family. How can we ask for other conditions? The grandfather replies, This girl belongs to someone else, so we will not ask anymore. Shua Fan smiles and says, So you will just follow their orders. He asks the grandfather, If I said all the girls who have been married in the past were all that he stops and questions the grandfather. Ninga shouts and says, All right, you both stop fighting. She addresses Shua Fan and says, Brother, I know that your analysis always makes sense. Tell me honestly, if I go back and use my identity as a furnace to bargain with the seventh elder, Will he spare my life? Zay Tianyang shouts and says, You can't. Shua Fan reveals that as the elder of Yuming Valley, he could not practice that martial art, and it is clear that there is a lack of furnaces in Yuming Valley. He says that her method might be feasible, but it's okay if it's like that as long as it can be. Ninger sadly addresses Shua Fan and Zay Tianyang and says, Thank you for caring for me these past months. Let's go our separate ways. I give up and have never been able to get out of the city alone until now. It's a pity that I wasn't able to go to the Jianho mansion. The old man holds her head and says, If it is not as the young master, then Grandpa will definitely look for you again. At that time, don't blame Grandpa for forcing you to marry again. The old man flies away, leaving them alone. Ninger shouts and cries, saying, Grandfather, don't go. Ninger asks Shua Fan and says, My Grandpa won't be in danger if I go back. Right, Shua Fan sadly says, I'm sorry, but if that old man didn't go back, your family might have had more time to live. But once he returns, your family will definitely not live anymore. 
Se Tianyang shouts and says, You are not in the belly of the seventh elder. What makes you say that her whole family will die when her grandpa gets back? He is a master in the Tianxian realm. He can definitely fight that seventh elder. Xuefan replies, That's where you are wrong. Even though I am not in the Go Seven's belly, we are not the same. I can probably figure out one or two things about what he is thinking. First, we are friends. And he had already concluded that the Shue family betrayed Yuming Valley, so he will go back and incriminate them. But at that time, the old man came to find Ninger. Ninger is crying. Dajua Fan says, It wasn't easy to find a Tian Xian realm master. He will let the others live for them to lead the grandpa, but once your grandpa returns, he will not hesitate. Ninger is crying. Say Tian Yang shouts at Fan, saying, That's bullshit. A Tian Xian realm master even an elder in the seven families. I cannot believe the seventh elder has the courage to destroy a family with a Tianxian realm master. Xue Fan says because the Xue family was a master, so he had to wait for Xue Ding Tian to return before he cuts the grass to the doors. Also, you made a mistake. He shakes his head and says, a Tianxian realm master is not powerful. He comes closer to Zai Tianyang and says, if the Tianxian realm is really scary, then why is a Tianxian realm master afraid of us? What he was afraid of was not you, but me. He was afraid of the Jianhou mansion house behind you. If you were just an ordinary young master, do you think he would have spared us? Zai Tianyang is confused. Ninger shouts and says, All right, you both stop fighting. She says to Fan, Brother, I know that your analysis always makes sense. Tell me honestly, if I go back and use my identity as a furnace to bargain with the seventh elder, Will he spare my life? Zai Tianyang shouts to say, Ninger, you can't. Fan reveals that as the elder of Yuming Valley, he could not practice that martial art, and it is clear that there is a lack of furnaces in Yuming Valley. He says that her method might be feasible, but it's okay if it's like that as long as it can be. They both address her and say, Thank you for your care in the past months. Let's go our separate ways. I've grown up and have never been able to get out of the city until now. So be it, goodbye. She moves away. Zai Tianyang shouts, Ninger, she shouts and says, You don't have to use force on me. I know that I cannot beat the two of you, but I will hate you all my life. I will never talk to you again. Zai Tianyang cries as she is leaving. Ninger is running, crying, and says, Sorry, I'm too willful. Zai Tianyang is sad. Ninger is crying and thinks, I don't have any chance to repay your kindness in this life. We'll meet again in another life, if there is an afterlife. Goodbye, Brother Xuefan. Zai Tianyang is sitting and crying, while Xuefan moves away. Zai Tianyang addresses him and asks, Ninger has already left. Can she really save her family? Xuefan replies, for now, when she dies as a sacrifice, all members of the Xue family will die at the same time. Zai angrily asks, then why did you let her go? Fan replies, at least when she dies, she will think that her family has been saved. Say Tianyang slaps Fan and says, you jerk. You use Ninger again. Fan falls back, and Zay Tianyang moves ahead. Fan asks him, what are you going to do? He shouts, I will save her. Fan asks, just you, you are at the eighth layer of the bone forging realm, and you want to fight a Tian Xian realm master. As you have seen, there is a big difference between the bone forging realm and the Tianxian realm. Tianxian realm masters can not only fly in the sky, but their speed is also incomparable to the bone forging realm. Say Tianyang replies, So what it's better than you, who didn't do anything last time? We clearly had a chance to defeat the seventh elder. Xuefan says I did fight last time. It was an ambush. I bushed him and the arrival set off very well. No matter how fast the Tianxian realm master is, they can't follow. It was under his eyes, and I asked him to fight again. Say Tianyang looks back at him and thinks, it's unacceptable. I clearly understand what he said, however, he is not doing anything. It's unacceptable. Say Tianyang addresses Fan and says, I always knew that we couldn't trust you. Ninger, who lives and dies with us, and now she'll kill for her family. However, as a man, no matter how good or bad, you should always fulfill your promise. Then what you're saying is that the three of us will die you promise to bring her out of the city. He shouts and moves, if you cannot do it, then you are not a man. 
No matter what, I can't stand you anymore. Fan replies, even if you go there, you can only watch and cannot do anything. Zay Tianyang says, even so, I would rather die than be a coward. Fan moves forward, but he is thinking about it. He says, who said that I will not do anything? He enters a cave and starts setting up an array there. He works with the array and the feathers of the skylark. He says, I never thought that one day I would be forced to resort to cultivating this dangerous method, but now it's the only way to increase my strength in a short time to fight against the old demon, who is so cunning. And if my strength is not stronger than his, the odds of winning are not 100%. He sits inside the array and starts performing the dangerous method. Golden explosions appear, and he thinks about the heavenly demon. He performs body purification to increase his strength. Shua Fan is standing in the cave, performing the dangerous method of body refining. With this method, refining materials are used to transform the body into an undefeated form. However, the process is extremely painful. The materials used for refining magic treasure merge into the body, feeling like thousands of swords piercing the skin. A slight mistake during the process can lead to permanent damage. Despite the excruciating pain, Zhuo Fan endures it, driven by his determination to save Ninger. He reaches the first level of the method, reconstructing the muscles. Golden rays penetrate his body, causing him to scream in agony. He thinks about how this refining method destroys and rebuilds the entire body, replacing everything with a diamond like substance. The pain remains unbearable, but he perseveres, motivated by his love for Ninger. The golden rays flow out of his body as he moves to the second level, reconstructing the bones. The direct attack on his bones intensifies the pain, and he grits his teeth, pushing through the excruciating ordeal. As he progresses, he realizes that if he fails to bear the pain, he will die. He questions the cruelty of such a method and wonders if even the nine demonic emperors have attempted it. In his suffering, one of his bones breaks, and blood spills from his mouth. It is a grueling and painful process. However, he refuses to give up, determined to reach the final step of the body refining method. Reaching the third level, he focuses on reconstructing the organs. The golden rays now target his heart and other organs, causing intense pain. He is relieved that he has survived thus far, but he knows that the next step involves the soul. Destruction of the soul would result in the annihilation of all forms, leaving no place for rebirth. He feels the slow erosion of his soul and the blurring of his vision. I in his agony, he realizes that he unintentionally caused the demise of the demonic emperor. Lying on the ground, he finds the situation absurd. Closing his eyes, he reminisces about his past, from his rise in the magic path to his betrayal by his apprentice and his subsequent downfall in the Luo family. Say Tianyang and Ninger appear in his thoughts, urging him forward. With the belief that he practiced this exceptional method to save Ninger, he calls out her name. Suddenly, he opens his eyes, realizing that the reason behind his pursuit of this method was his love for her. He shouts into the air, and a blue light crosses his path, entering his forehead. Standing in the middle of the blue light, an explosion of blue radiance ensues. In the morning, the old man finds that something is amiss at the Shwe family residence. The yard is in ruins and the guards are nowhere to be found. He begins to fear that the seventh elder has arrived at their doorstep. As he enters the residence, he sees the seven elders sitting in front of him. The old man approaches and apologizes for not coming to greet him earlier. The seven elder acknowledges their long-standing relationship and the protection offered to the Shwe family by Yuming Valley for the past one hundred years. The old man expresses his loyalty and gratitude towards Yuming Valley stating that their family wouldn't be where they are today without their support. The seven elder stands up and mocks him, accusing the Shwe family of plotting with outsiders to steal the Jin Gang's sand from Yuming Valley. The old man vehemently denies these allegations, asserting their loyalty and emphasizing that none of them would ever dare to commit such an act. The seven elder claims that the Shwe family has become ungrateful and has taken advantage of their kindness in the past. The seven elder then demands to know the whereabouts of the old man's granddaughter, Ninger. Before the old man can respond, the seven elder slams his hand on the table and loudly announces that Ninger, 
along with two others, stole his Jean Gang's sand and perished in the Wanshou mountain range. The news shocks the old man, who refuses to believe that Ninger is dead. The Seven Elder explains that even though he didn't personally finish them off, their severe injuries make it impossible for them to have survived. He taunts the old man, stating that Ninger's usefulness has ended, and as a result, he has lost both the Jean Gang's sand and the Lu Ding furnace. The Seven Elder looks at the injured members of the Shue family who were brought before him by his guards. Enraged, the old man confronts the Seven Elder, reminding him of their loyalty and dedication to Yuming Valley for the past one hundred years. He questions whether this is how Yuming Valley treats its subsidiary families. The Seven Elder laughs, dismissing the old man's concerns. He belittles the Shue family, labeling them as a second-grade family and referring to them as mere guard dogs. He asserts that Yuming Valley can demand anything from them, as they are disposable and easily controlled. Mocking the old man's audacity to bargain and demand credit, the seven elder proclaims that it is time to find a new guard dog, as the old one has become rebellious. The old man's fury grows, and he angrily questions the seven elder about Ninger's wedding, asking if she was always meant to be used as a Lu Ding furnace. The seven elder bursts into laughter, admitting that they had indeed planned to use Ninger as a furnace for quite some time. He praises the old man's intelligence in finally realizing their secret, attributing his rebellion to his affection for that lowly peasant girl. This infuriates the old man, who shouts that he will take the seven elder down here and now. I in a fit of rage, the old man charges towards the seven elder, prepared to attack. However, the seven elder remains calm, looking at him with a composed demeanor. Everyone is standing in front of each other. The seven elder looks furious and he calls the monster to Zhuo Fan. While Zhuo Fan is standing, the seven elder ties Zhuo Fan with his magic wheel treasure. He taunts, You didn't expect this, did you, little brat? I already predicted that you would show up here, so I prepared a special gift just for you. Jian Sui Feng fearfully thinks, This is bad. He's bound by the fourth demonic pressure. If he manages to endure it for one day, he's still done for. He can't believe how shameless the Seven Elder is, attacking a novice in the bone forging realm while everyone is watching. Shua Fan addresses the Seven Elder. If you use such underhanded tactics against a novice like me right from the start, won't you be dirtying the prestige of the Yuming Valley? The Elder Leader replies, You are quite perceptive to know exactly what I am thinking right now. In the entire Tianyang Empire, there are only a few people who can do that. He says you are quite extraordinary and he really can't afford to get ahead of himself. Fan laughs, and he says I am Fan, very impressed by how cautious and calculating the seventh elder is. Either way, this time around, I didn't plan any underhanded tricks and traps. I only want to score a decisive victory against you. This makes the elder furious, and he says he would never have expected that you would be so careful. He angrily shouts and says you still dare to be so impudent I will destroy you to the point that your corpse can't be found. Shuafan retorts, am I wrong? Based on your personality, you believe that the sooner your enemies are eradicated, the better. However, when I came here, not only were you slow to make your move, but you also sent your disciple to attack me to test the waters. The seven elder is pulling him tightly, Yu Ming is shivering with fear. Zhou Fan say, however, that the kid was so traumatized by me that he would not even obey your orders. He says so you could only use the excuse of getting rid of your disciples' fear to send that idiot over to his demise if he want that all is well, but if he lost you could take advantage of my moment of awareness to catch me of guard and capture me. Just like what happened right now. The seventh elder looks so surprised and angry. Jian Sui Feng realizes that Zhuo Fan is seeing through the Seven Elders' scheme and is almost on par with him. He thinks, the Seventh Elder is very devious. He was able to come up with such an elaborate plan in such a short time. He truly is frightening. He is looking at him and thinks even when fighting against someone inferior to him he still considers all possibilities to produce a full roof plan how unnerving he truly lives up to his name as the stage who is quick-witted at all counts. He scarcely thought he was able to see through the seventh elder scheme at once glance. This person is very shrewd as well. I would go as to say he is almost if not already so on par with seventh elder. 
The seventh elder gave a laugh and say, So what if you managed to see through my plan in the end were not you still and caught by my trap? The seven elder furiously says, I will break you into ten thousand pieces and be done with you. There will be nothing left to bury. Fan laughs, you were so clever before. How did you suddenly become so dumb? If I was able to see through your trick, did you really think I would be caught so easily? This shocks the elder. Suddenly, a purple explosion appears in place of Fan, and he unties himself from the elder's grasp. The seven elder is shocked to see that Fan is using the sixth flying demonic pressure. It turns out that the equipment earlier wasn't just a one-time use flying equipment. Fan says, with the flying money treasure, my speed will indeed be on par with the master of the heavenly realm. However, the point where a master of the heavenly realm is superior to someone from the bone-forging realm is not only the speed. The seven elder attacks Fan with his demonic snakes. But Fan remains calm and says, He says, of course, I know this. Something else that makes people from the heavenly realm feared would be their next dexterity. He tells the elder that this is something that not even the flying demonic pressure can make up for. He flies up in the air with his magic. The seven elder is shocked to see that Fan is changing shapes and evading his attacks. He says how it is possible. He thinks demonic treasures are not living creatures. How did it change shape at his will? Fan smiles and says, who said that it was a demonic treasure? The seven elders say little brat, and furiously attack him. He says you damned monster dot, but Fan stands his ground. He remarks, so this is the dexterity of a master of the heavenly realm. There is a huge explosion that causes the seven elders to fall away. Say Tianyang and eight elder is looking at him surprisingly. Fan standing calmly, his feathers large and strong. He looked around and realized the elder was attacking him from behind. Two snakes coming to him to attack. The seven elder was holding his sword, ready to strike. He laughs, taunting, you little brat. Let's see what tricks you have left up your sleeves. Fan smiles and says lost phantom step. The elder is surprised to see that Fan wasn't there. It is just his reflection. Fan moved forward swiftly. He is attacking the seven elder and putting his sword to his forehead. He held the elder's arms with his treasure and said, Dot, how does it feel to have someone surprise you from behind? If I had one of the three demonic treasures and stabbed you right now, you would die instantly. But even though you've been given this chance, I am still alive. He looks evil and seven elder is helpless now looking at him. The seven elder regretted his actions. Fan continued to attack him with power and say do not get too full of yourself. The elder shouted with fear and pain. Joe Fan is beating him so hard. The elder is also ready to attack with his sword. He says I will kill you. Shua Fan retaliates with his own power, flying through the air. The seven elder furiously attacked back, but Shua Fan seemed to be enjoying it. He says using the same move again is running and hiding all you can do he shouts. Shua Fan say what's the rush? Isn't the fun part just getting started? Shua Fan used his power and magic to attack the elder's demonic treasures, causing a huge explosion in the air. Say Tianyang and Jian Sui Feng watch in awe and confusion as the intense battle unfolded. The sky is full of red and green lights that cause huge explosions and are intense all round. Say Tianyang shout, What is this speed? I cannot follow their movements at all. He asked the elder, What is happening now? The elder replied, Doubt your friend is truly extraordinary. In my entire lifetime, I have never seen the seventh push to this extent. He is already forced to use his full power, yet your friend matches him not only with speed but also by countering his attacks. Say Tianyang asks his elder about it. He tells him that seventh as powerful as he get pushed to this extent it is clear that he is already forced to use his full power yet your friend is able to match him with his using only his speed but your friend is not using his speed only to deal with seventh rather while battling with seven he is also taking out his underlings. He says right in the face of seventh, say Tianyang asking why. The elder give a laughter and say the reason is exactly what makes your friend frightening he is doing it to mock and attack that old devil's pride seventh is known as for being extremely cunning and skill but today he is like a mouse being tired with by a cat playing right into the hands of a kid from the bone forging realm. 
What pride can he have when he cannot do anything at all against his opponent? Jian Sui Feng continued, and what's even more frightening is that Fan and the Seventh have similar personalities. Provoking with someone like them is no laughing matter. Not only will they take their revenge by killing you, but they will also strip you of everything that is important to you. They will send you to the grave without any of your honor or dignity left. Zhuo Fan and the seven elders continued their fierce battle. While they are commenting the Zhuo Fan and elder are in serious moves, Zhuo Fan held the elder's sword and addressed him, saying, So this is all a master of the heavenly realm is able to do. He taunted the elder, putting him on edge. Eight elder run towards him to attack. Zhuo Fan's hand delivers a powerful blow, causing the elder to fall backward. The seven elder realized that this young brat's strength had completely surprised him, and his cleverness was on par with his own. He thinks judging from the exchange just now this was the first time he had encountered an opponent like this. While he is thinking Jian Sui Feng chimed in, saying, Seems like you're reaping what you sowed, seventh elder. You've done many evil acts throughout your whole life, and today, another little devil is tormenting you just as you tormented others. It's a truly satisfying sight for everybody watching. He laughed again. This infuriated the elder, who thinks, No, I cannot let it drag on like this. If this keeps up, I will only be tired to death by this brat. I need to finish this with one more attack. He thinks even though I don't know if this will work on him, or not right now I simply have no other choice it is all or nothing. Joe Fan addresses him and says don't waste your energy this stupid move will not work on me anymore. He moved towards Zhuo Fan, but suddenly changed his attack direction towards Ninger. Zhuo Fan noticed this and instantly ran towards Ninger to save her. He stood in front of her and bore the elder's attack. The seven elder taunted Zhuo Fan, saying ah I see now. I see how it is, my dear little Fan. I have finally found your weakness. Earlier, when we were still at the Wancho mountain range, your ruthless and selfish nature truly frightened me. So when you came here today, I kept thinking that you were here to exact revenge, but only now did I figure out that you were here for her. He pointed at Ninger Dajo Fan reply, that may be the case, but will that change the result of what will happen here today, no matter what, you are going to die. The seven elder retorted, if you were as ruthless as you were on that day, I would still fear you, but now dot he jumps towards Ninger and Ninger is hiding behind Joe Fan. He says I kept thinking that you were here to exact revenge on me but now I figure it out that you were here for her sake he points towards her. Joe Fan say that may be the case but how will that change the result of what will happen here today no matter what you are going to die. He tries to threaten him. The elder reply if you were so ruthless as you were on that day I would still be somewhat afraid of you but now you have grown soft because of this little girl so instead victory is already within my grasp. He laughed maniacally, preparing to perform the arcane arts of the Yuming Valley, the demonic mask seal. Jian Sui Feng warned, not good. This is the demonic mask seal of the Yuming Valley. He explained that this technique targeted the opponent's life force and was almost impossible to block for cultivators below the godly realm. The demonic mask is different from normal techniques since it targets the open and life and it cannot be blocked. If it hit, it would render the target unconscious at the very least, and at worst, annihilate their body and soul. The seven elder threatened Zhuofan, saying that if he tried to dodge the attack, the demonic mask seal would fall upon Ninger. He says I bad that there is no way you can run away fast enough from my demonic mask while carrying another person. Ninger pleading with her brother not to worry about her and to save their family. She was willing to sacrifice herself if it meant their safety. She says as long as you save my family even if I die I will still be grateful for you. But Fan stood firm, vowing to protect her. He say and as long as I am here you will not be able to harm her he comes in front of the seventh elder give a laughter and say then you will be the one who will be harmed. The seven elder launched his attack on Zhuofan and Ninger cried out calling him brother. Ninger tries to come in front of him but he gives her a push away. Say Tianyang and eight elders surprising and worried. The eight elder look helpless. The seventh elders you little bart this is the consequence of your lust that's why the path of us demons is merciless because you grow to compensate for it became your undoing. Look toward the ninger and say little girl this kid was done because of you. 
Ni Jerry S. crying for Joe Fan. She sadly says I am sorry it is all my fault. The black shadow addresses her and says little girl don't cry in front of that old geyser the more you suffer the happier he becomes. Everyone looks shocked to hear this. The seven elders say impossible every life SS should have been devoured until nothing is left. However, to their shock, when the smoke cleared, Joafan emerged completely unharmed, a blue light shining on his forehead. He confidently said, to think that you can kill me with such an insipid technique, you're way too naive. Joafan approached the elder, his blue light gleaming, and said, Sage who is quick-witted on all counts. Joafan stands before the elder, gripping a red thunder in his hand. He proclaims, the amalgamation of heaven and hell. He clenches his fist and says, If you don't have anything else up your sleeves, and this is the extent of your abilities, I am going to get serious now. He makes a fist. He looks at the elder and says, I am going to get serious now. He looks full of evil. The elder hovers in the air, laughing, and retorts, Serious. Quit boasting. Are you telling me that you were not using all your strength the whole time? Zhuo Fan chuckles in response, Seven Elder. I don't know whether or not you still remember the words you said to me at the Wancho mountain range a few months ago. When faced with absolute power, no matter what tricks or schemes you come up with, it will all be futile. This statement shocks the seven elder. Shuafan asserts that today, he is going to say those exact same words to him. He raises his finger and declares, one move. I only need to use one move, and I will have your head. This statement terrifies the seven elder and he exclaims, bullshit. He thinks this brat since the moment, he showed up everything that he did was to have me also experience what it is like to face absolute power. He realizes that everything Fan says he is in full power, and he is scary. He feels completely helpless against him. He fearfully thinks all my knowledge is just a male joke even if I use all my wits I am unable to do half as much as him. He is flying in the year looking at Fan and thinking to make me the sag who is quick within on all accounts feel completely helpless. The reason he came here today was for revenge. He thinks that saving Ninger just happened to be convenient. He came here mainly for revenge if you fully think to beat me at scheming my biggest strength so it makes it that I cannot even rest in peace. Jian Sui Feng also acknowledges that Zhuo Fan is much more evil than the Seven Elder. Compared to the Seventh Elder he is much more evil. He says he is afraid that it will become someone more terrifying than the Seventh Thunder or even Zhu Guiliang in future. Shua Fan warns the Seven Elder to prepare himself and says, You are going to experience absolute power. He sprints toward the Elder at full speed, while the Elder launches an attack at him. They again start to fight in the sky. Shua Fan assures him that the same tricks will not work on him anymore. The Seventh Elders fell for it. He laughed and say you never expected this right. I have a third in young Gemini. He attacks the fan with all his power. Joe Fan ran towards Cement Se even if that is the case so what before my absolute power all of your tricks were meaningless which include your final last ditch effort he ran towards him. He brings out his bloody baby which breaks the seven elder in young Gemini into pieces. The seventh elder shouts and screams with fear. Fan moves towards him and addresses the seventh elder. The seventh elder is also attacking him and says, Do you really think you can kill me even if I must die here? I will not let myself be killed by just moving. He says, Even if I am going to die, if I cannot be in one more, I just need to block that one punch. The seven elder is determined not to be defeated in one move, even if he has to die. Zhuo Fan breaks his sword with a powerful punch, leaving the elder in shock. The huge destruction is appearing. As the battle rages on, there is a massive red explosion in the sky. Everyone is looking at him shockingly. Blood spurts from the seven elders' mouth, and he can't believe the extent of Shuafan's power. He thinks to himself, Just what kind of freaking freak are you? My body is as strong as the fifth demonic pressure, and your third demonic pressure doesn't even scratch me. Zhou Fan attacks him and drags him to the earth ruthlessly from the sky. The elder's body is severely injured, lying on the floor, thanks to Zhuo Fan's relentless attacks. Zhou Fan is standing and saying not that thanks to you. Zhuo Fan stands amidst the aftermath of the sky battle. Se Tianyang and Jian Sui Feng are shocked to realize that it really only takes one move to defeat the top sage of the Yuming Valley, 
the seventh elder. The eight elder think of the top sage Yuming Valley who struck fear into almost every family. The sage who is quick-witted on all counts the seventh elder was killed. Fear grips everyone on the ground as they witness Shuafan's terrifying power. They urge each other to run away from the monstrous scene. Jian Sui watches him in shock and says, What a terrifying monster Shuafan watches them. Everyone is running and saying you monsters, hurry up and run. Zhou Fan arrives and he remarks, Yuming Valley really is an expert at running away. He managed to escape from me once again. He mentions his disciple who ran away. He suddenly moves forward in the air. He flies down and goes to Ninger, standing there and watching her. Shua Fan smiles and holds her in his lap as he prepares to leave. Se Tianyang shouts at him, asking where he is taking her. Shua Fan flies away without answering their questions. Se Tianyang shouts, Where are you taking Ninger? and watches them go. Jian Sui Feng approaches the corpse of the seventh elder remarking that the seven elder once regarded top figure of the kingdom. He meets his end in such a lamentable way. Who expected you to end up like this? He turned towards Zhe Tianyang. Zhe Tianyang in anger saying that bastard Zhou Fan just killing seven elder would have been enough. Why would he also take Ninger away? He questions in anger. Point eight elder then orders Zhe Tianyang to bring them down and prepare to take them back to Jianhua Fu for medical treatment. He mentions that from now on, the Shua family will be a subsidiary of Jianhu Fu. Ze Tianyan happily agrees and says that I was thinking as well who knew that we would have the same train of thoughts. It's only natural that I would risk myself to save them. But the eight elder scolds him, stating that who the hell have the same thought of train like you. He say you also saw that little freak was just now. He will become stronger in the future. He states that he came here to save those people we might as well do him a favor. That way later on it will be easier for us to make friends with him. He tries to make it clear that they are not saving the Shua family for his sake. He warns him to say if we ever become enemies we can also take that kid advantage to defeat them. He explains that instead, they are doing it for strategic reasons to build a connection with Shua Fan. Say Tianyang feels angries. He thinks so because we are saving them for the sake of bastard Shua Fan but not for Ninger and her family. He is thinking about how this could affect his image in Ninger's eyes. Who do you think is the core disciple of Jianhu Mansion? He thinks if Ninger finds it out how will he face her again. The boy is sitting in a corner shivering with fear. He is cursed under the Zhou Fan. He says this is the third time. Wherever I go, wherever you kill. He is in a scary condition. He asks himself what he has against me. He thinks the last time he killed two elders. This time he even killed my master. He calls Shua Fan a blasted monster. Meanwhile, Shua Fan and Ninger arrive at their destination outside the city. Zhou Fan say as earlier we had an agreement that if you become my GUID I will bring you out of the city. He says I just fulfilled my promise on my part. Ninger is ecstatic to be outside for the first time and thanks Shua Fan. She says she is watching this for the first time. She happily says she finally left the city. She thanks him. Zhou Fan says no problem, this was our agreement at all. Zhou Fan inform her that this is the time to say goodbye to each other. She is shocked to hear this. She asks if he is leaving, and Zhou Fan confirms, saying there are still many things he needs to do. Ninger becomes sad and asks if she can go with him. He says judging from your current strength that would be too dangerous for her. He reassures her that she still has her family to care for. He holds her head with love and care and says that she seeks refuge under Tian Xian's influence in Jianhua Fu to protect the Shui family. He tells her that you just offended Yuming Valley so you should be careful. You need a powerful backer now. He say if you go with Jianhao Mansion then there will be no problems at all. He moves and says it's time to leave. She is sad to see him leaving. Ninger tearfully asks if they will meet again. He replies that they will when the thunder ring shines again. As Ninger stands there crying, she thinks to herself that the moment when the thunder ring shines again will be the moment they meet once more. And with that, season one comes to an end. One month later, in the Tianyu Empire's imperial palace's back garden, someone runs and shouts, Father Emperor. They are in the middle of a chess game. Fatty rushes in while shouting, Father Emperor, we have a problem. We have a big problem. 
Father Emperor, still focused on the chessboard, slaps his face and says, Song Air, didn't I already tell you? You need to approach problems with a cool head. Moreover, don't you see that I am playing a game with the Minister of War? Fatty, realizing his mistake, says, Understood, understood, the young prince understands his mistake. Then go ahead and speak. What happened? Father Emperor watches Long Ji and Fatty and says, I am here to inform you, Father Emperor, that we have a big problem. The seventh elder of Yuming Valley was killed one month ago. Long Ji drops his chess pieces in shock and asks, Who did it? Fatty replies, It's the butler from the Luo family, who I mentioned before, Zhuo Fan. One month ago, we don't know what got into him, but he killed the seventh elder while the entirety of Yuming Valley was watching him. On top of that, Two Yuming Valley elders who were killed at Fenlin City, they were also killed by him. Qian Long Gu was simply just a scapegoat. Long Ji angrily says, What? That little devil killed three elders of Yuming Valley, including their treasured seventh elder. He sure has guts. Your Majesty, how should we deal with this matter? Long Ji says, If this were a grudge between the seven noble families, things would have been a little more complicated. However, regarding this matter, Yuan Shan is too embarrassed to come and complain about what happened. We'll just let them be. However, as for your men in the Luo family area, instruct them to never lay a finger on the Luo family. Prime Minister Zhuge Changfeng says, What? The seventh elder is dead. Humph, it seems like the balance between the seven families has been offset. I should make every effort to prepare myself. After all, you are my opponent. Your Majesty. He reads in a letter that the seventh elder was killed. In Ji Sifu capital, an old man stands there and says, Mars is located near Antares. Political unrest is inevitable. Just a single spark will start the entire blaze. Ah, uh, it looks like the owner of this world is about to change. Hopefully, this won't plunge everybody into misery and suffering. At the same moment, in Qian Longa headquarters, Lord Yen smiles and says, Recently, both Little Jiet and Little Kuei have been doing pretty well. I think we should send them over to Big Elder to strengthen their cultivation further, then they can start to cultivate our family's secret martial arts. They both come inside, and the old master says, Indeed, these two improved by quite a bit. However, compared to the genius disciples of the other six families, they can only be considered above average. Lord Yen adds, What? Third Elder, don't think too lowly of us. We've almost broken into the bone-forging realm already. Third Elder responds, The Third Elder is correct. I heard Tian Yang from Jian Ho Fu was already a bone-forging realm master three years ago. Compared to them, we are very far behind. Long Ji says, Hey, even though little Jie is rather arrogant right now, she will certainly have many accomplishments of her own in the future. As long as the two of you little devils have half the talent of that brother Zhuo, you will be able to cultivate the secret martial arts of our Qian Longa family. She says, Humph, ninth uncle, why did you bring him up again? That brat is so full of himself. He wouldn't even join the Qian Longa family. Even if he is a little talented, he won't be able to do anything in the future, and we will be able to surpass him. Someone comes running and shouts, reporting in. Master, you have an urgent report. The old master watches him and gets shocked. Long Ji stands and says, Is something wrong, third brother? What happened? The old master gives him the letter and says, Ninth elder, take a look for yourself. Long Ji gets shocked after reading the letter and says, This, this is. My good brother, you owe me more favor now. He then shouts, The seventh elder of the Yuming Valley was killed by Zhuo Fan in Qingning City. Lord Yen says, What? Well done. Looks like the family head's judgment was correct. That kid truly is a giant among men. Pass along my orders. Immediately increase our aid to the Luo family. At the same time, send more men to protect them as well. Are we all in agreement? Longji says, good kid, good kid. He thinks, after this, the name Zhuofan will be known throughout the lands. The elder of Yuming Valley is looking at Yuming, who is fearful of Zhou Fan. The elder shouts, asking if it is true that three elders of Yuming Valley were all killed by Zhou Fan. Yuming cries with fear and explains that he wouldn't dare to trick the head of the valley, Elder Jian, 
Elder Yun, as well as my master, the Seven Elder. Yu Ming fearfully punches at the floor and says they all fell by the hands of Zhou Fan, the butler of the Luo family. The elder angrily slams his hand on the table and berates Yu Ming for not reporting this sooner. Yu Ming pleads for mercy, saying that Sundermaster didn't let him, as his master found this situation too strange, and he believed no one would believe him if he reported it. Amidst the tension, a man with a strange get-up enters and suggests they need to focus on solving the problem. He warns them that all the Nobel families of the Tianyu Empire are watching, and if they let Zhou Fan get away with it, they will be the laughing stock of the entire empire, and small subsidy families might abandon them. The head of the valley agrees that they cannot let Zhou Fan live after this, but the second elder advises against confronting the Luo family directly. He reminds them of an imperial order from about a year ago that forbade them from stepping foot into Fonglin City, and disobeying it would only invite trouble from higher authorities. The other elder concurs, mentioning that both the imperial and the Qianlong masters are currently in Fonglin City, making it unwise to challenge them directly. The elder reveals his concern that if they go after Zhou Fan, the imperial and Qianlong masters might team up against them. Frustrated, he wonders if it would have been this complicated if the seventh elder were still alive, angrily vowing to catch Shou Fan and punish him severely for ruining their plans. Yu Ming interrupts, seeking forgiveness for speaking out of turn, but he has a plan. Though the head of the elder initially dismisses him, the others convince him to listen. Yu Ming suggests leaving the Luo family alone and focusing on taking down Zhou Fan instead. He explains that Zhou Fan is not in Fonglin City so they need not worry about the city and can concentrate on finding and ambushing him. The head of the valley asks for their plan to locate Zhou Fan. Yu Ming proposes issuing a false lead, making Zhou Fan think they know where he will run in the empire. Then, when the time comes, they will ambush and kill him right before he enters Fonglin City. The head of the valley approves of the plan and orders a kill order throughout the entire empire under their family's name. Anyone providing information leading to Zhou Fan will be allowed to join Yuming Valley as a subsidiary family. Whoever brings them his head will become the number one subsidiary family. Yuming is determined to see Zhou Fan hunted down, thinking of him as a freak who is about to be pursued by the entire empire. The elder contemplates Yuming's desire for revenge, realizing that Zhou Fan is now the enemy of the entire Yuming Valley. However, the elder also worries that even with the kill order, the smaller families may not be able to handle Zhou Fan. He believes they must be the ones to end him once and for all. He remembers Minger's description of Zhou Fan's strength and suggests that only the fifth elder, a demonic power cultivator with an unbreakable Jing Gang, might be a perfect match to take him down. A man with red hair sitting on a chair looks into a mirror and says not to ask him to do something as he is about to participate in the Bedian meeting at the Flower Rain Tower. He replies that he doesn't have time to go and hunt down that little bastard. The elder shouts at him, calling him Hamut, and questions whether a meeting with a bunch of women cultivating is more important than seeking revenge for his family. Another elder intervenes, telling Hamut not to speak in such a way, and explains that the Flower Rain Tower is one of the seven noble families and holds prestige. He suggests that they might be interested in Hamut's red demonic fire and might want to cultivate new types of pills. The head of the valley notes that it's surprising for a group of women to gain prominence among the seven noble families, and he declares that there will be a day when he takes over their territory. He then looks at Yu Ming and expresses his desire for Yu Ming to join and take part in their meeting of the elders in place of the seventh elder. The head of the valley agrees, and Yu Ming becomes happy, thanking the head of the valley and the great elder. The head announces that Yu Ming is now a successor of the seventh elder and laughs. Meanwhile, on Black Mountain, behind the residence of the Luo family, someone is sitting in a cave performing a magic or power act. He remarks that the stealth technique is becoming more impressive, as he wasn't able to detect Miss Shua standing right in all front of him. Shua questions him about the kind of evil technique he is cultivating, addressing him as Commander Pang. She addresses him and says, It's only been a year. Yet you have already broken into the bone-forging realm by cultivating the demonic technique. You would make so many geniuses jealous. Peng smiles and says, Brother Zhou Fan's technique is amazing. He looks at her and asks, By the way, out of the twenty kids you sent over, only one barely managed to pass. 
help me find more. She shouts at him, saying, out of the twenty cultivators, only one is alive, and you are still looking for more to me, old pangs say that's already a pretty high turnover. In the past three years, there were fifty cultivators, and none of them survived, but for the Luo family it is worth it all. She tells him that he and his brother both work hard and hands him a paper, asking him to look at what his brother has done. Old Pang getting shocked. She reveals that Zhou Fan killed the seventh elder of the Yuming Valley, and now the Yuming Valley has issued a hit out for him. Pang gives a laughter and says Brother Fan is a worthy man capable of great deeds. He is amazing wherever he goes. He advises her not to worry, as with Brother Fan's skills, the assassins of Yuming Valley won't be able to hurt him. She angrily responds, Who the hell is talking about him all the time? He messed with the Yuming Valley for a girl. Since when has he been so righteous? Pang looks at her and says, Ah, so that's why you are here. In fact, sometimes brothers with Japan who can't help but fight for justice. She angrily turns around and says that the asshole is fighting for justice. You think she doesn't know him. Hump dot old Pang shockingly watching her and say what, and shoutly say don't tell miss about this, especially the latter part. Old Pang standing there watching her and saying now women. Meanwhile, Zhou Fan is sneezing and stands up, thinking, who is talking about me behind my back dot suddenly, he realizes that someone is attacking him using the devil's first technique. He counters the attack with the demonic dragon rush, causing a purple explosion and rock destruction. It is a sudden attack he was not expecting that he then performs the devil's second technique, the ghost dragon claw, tearing the rocks into pieces. This caused a high destruction there. Finally, he performs the devil's third technique, the biggest one, the phantom ghost giant. This causes the whole forest to be illuminated with red light, and the birds in the sky fall down. Joe Fan thinks, after refining my body and spirit, not only would my Yuan energy be greatly strengthened, but even with the help of the blue flame, he didn't expect that he would exhaust all my energy by using these three techniques. He is puzzling. He realizes that since he killed the seventh elder, his enemies in the future are likely to be stronger, which is why he needs to cultivate some life-saving martial arts. He decides that he should only use these three techniques in a life-threatening situation, otherwise, he may end up dying in the process, even if he kills his enemy. He will probably die in the process. In the evening, Zhou Fan sits in the middle of the forest and takes out the egg of the skylark. He thinks, it's been over a month since he came here to cultivate this. He was able to survive in the spirit ring with the help of the thunder skylark aura. But this is just preservation. In order for it to hatch, its vitality must be restored. The usual medicine won't work. Only treasures that bring back the dead can help it hatch again. He deeply contemplates, just where can he find such a treasure? As he ponders, he suddenly hears a voice from afar, someone demanding, Song Yu, hand over that body forging pill, or else. Zhou Fan thinks, Who are these assholes daring to disturb my peace? If not, then don't blame us for what happens next in your dreams. I in the distance, he witnesses a confrontation between a few people an old man, a lady, and a person in a blue costume with a sword. They are about to fight. The man is warning them that the body forging pill is a treasure of the Song family, and they need to take it to the pill festival. He refuses to hand it over to them. Zhou Fan is shocked to hear the mention of the blood forging pill and the pill festival. He realizes that this is no ordinary situation and thinks, You have brought this upon yourselves. They look helpless but not ready to lose. Zhou Fan is looking at them and thinking what to do. The old man smiles and says, Song Yu. Song Qian, both of you are at the bone forging realm at such a young age, isn't it thanks to this pill? But for a third rate family such as yours, to have the secret recipe for a fourth grade pill, it's really blasphemous, so you better hand it over. He angrily pulls out his sword and says, Humph, we're not giving it to you. They both angrily run towards him. The old man hits both of them, and they fall away. He starts laughing and says, Miss Song Qian, why go through this? Just hand over the pills and the recipe for it. Would you like me to search your bodies, at such an old age? Miss Song Qian says, brother, are you scared? Song Yu angrily says, I'm not, sister. Miss Song Qian says, all right, let's die together. 
They again pull out their swords and angrily say, Our family's secret recipe must not fall into the hands of this old man. Someone comes and pulls the sword towards Song Qian. The old man angrily turns around and shouts, Who? He says, It's just a fourth grade pill. They all watch him. It's Zhou Fan who says, Why do you have to kill them? The old man starts laughing and says, I was wondering who was being so brave. It turned out to be a little brat who had just broken through the bone forging realm. The old man continues, Kid, you're a demonic cultivator, right? If we're talking about cruelty, aren't you guys the worst? You actually dare to talk to me about being merciful. Joe Fan smiles and says, I'm not talking about being merciful. I'm talking about strength. I'm planning to let them live. You can't kill them. The old man angrily says, Huh, just you. Song Qian stands up and shouts, Brother, run quickly. You're no match for him. Don't die in vain to save us. The old man smiles and says, Run? It's too late to escape. He angrily attacks Zhou Fan while shouting, Brat, if you need someone to blame, blame yourself for not minding your own business. Zhou Fan stands there calmly. Song Qian and Song Yu both watch him in shock. Zhou Fan hits the old man very hard, and he falls down. They run away while shouting, Monster. Ah! Zhou Fan starts going, but Song Qian and Song Yu run towards him and shout, Wait! Zhou Fan turns around and says, What is it? Song Qian blushes and says, She doesn't know little brother's name. You saved our lives. The Song family will definitely repay you for this. Zhou Fan turns around and says, Unnecessary. Song Qian gets shocked and thinks, Is he considered a beauty in my family? What kind of man wouldn't fall for me? Yet he's ignored me as if I was heir. Damn it. What else do you want to say? She stands in front of him and stops his way. Zhou Fan says, What else do you want to say? Song Qian smiles and thinks, This idiot. And says, Little brother, where are you going? Zhou Fan turns around and says, It doesn't concern you. Song Qian angrily says, We are going to the Hundred Pills Festival in Huayu City. Are you also going to the same place? Zhou Fan says, Huayu City? Zhou Fan smiles and thinks, This is it. And says, The Seventh Royal Family? Are they located in the main building in Huayu City? Song Yu comes to her while running and happily says, That's right. Every ten years, the Huayu House hosts the Hundred Pills Festival. Every family that has a skilled alchemist or if they have inherited a secret alchemist technique, they would compete against each other. If you're lucky enough to get noticed by the Huayu House, you would be accepted into its affiliated family and also receive blessings from the seventh family. Zhou Fan smiles and thinks, Hundred Pills Festival, they'll definitely have lots of rare herbs. That's where I'll probably find a treasure to revitalize the egg. He can also be affiliated with the seventh royal family. He says, after hearing about this from you, and thinking again, the best way to fulfill my goals is. Zhou Fan says again, he wants to go see this Hundred Pills Festival. Song Qian smiles and says, that's good to hear. Let's go. Half a month later, they are heading towards the Huayu house. Song Yu smiles and says, Brother Luo Fan, sister, we're here. Zhuo Fan watches and angrily says, finally. Huh. Are you trying to trick me? This is not Huayu City. Song Yu smiles and explains, Brother Luo Fan, don't worry. My father's friend stays in Lanling City. Let's visit the city first to buy some herbs and then head to the Hundred Pills Festival. Only then will we be able to win and get favored by the Huayu house. Zhuo Fan watches him angrily and thinks, Ugh, he has to continue my suffering. That Song Qian girl, I don't know if she's sick or if she's an nymphomaniac. She's been staring at me all throughout the journey, always laughing and blushing. It made it hard to concentrate on cultivation. Song Qian asks, Brother Luo, do you hate being with me? Zhuo Fan nervously watches her. Song Yu smiles and says, Brother Luo, he knows what you're thinking about. It's the same here. He also wants to hurry and get to the Huayu house. He heard there are fifteen landlords of the Huayu house, and that they're all very beautiful. Especially the head building's landlord, Miss Chu Qingqin, who's the most beautiful, also known as the first heavenly beauty. She's a rare beauty just like my sister. But, how could I give up just one tree just for Miss Qingqin? 
Shua Fan gets angry, and Song Qian says, Little you, what did you say? Shua Fan angrily turns around and thinks, These siblings are truly idiotic and perverted. Song Qian angrily grabs him by the neck and says, What did you say? Song Yu apologizes, saying, Sister, he is sorry. Shua Fan thinks, I need to get away from them fast, or I'll start getting dumber. Someone comes and says, Jianer? They all watch him, and Song Qian says, Brother. Brother Tian Lei. And moves closer to him. Song Yu tells Shua Fan, He's Chi Tian Lei, of the first young master ranked Chi family in Lanling City. Our families have been friends for generations, however, they're a second-rate family while we are a third-rate family. They always look down on us because of that. He adds angrily, but Chi Tian Lei always lusts after my sister. Shua Fan watches and thinks, this Song family is pretty similar to the Luo family. If he wasn't with the Luo family, they'd still be a third-rate family. Similar families, but very different. Tian Lei asks Song Qian, who's he? She turns around and Zhuo Fan watches them. Song Yu smiles and says, This is Brother Luo Fan, he's a friend of ours. Anyway, Tian Lei, you know why we're here. Tian Lei replies, I received a letter from Uncle Song and guessed when you would arrive. He then asks Zhuo Fan, Hey, what's your relation with Qianer? Song Yu smiles and says, Brother Qi, he's my friend. Tian Lei punches him in the face and says, I wasn't talking to you. Zhuo Fan watches him. Tian Lei approaches Zhuo Fan again and says, Tell me, what's your relationship with her? Zhuo Fan watches him and angrily smiles, saying, Throughout this journey, Chienner and I ate and slept together. We never got out of the wagon. What do you think our relationship is? Tian Lei gets angry and shouts, He's going to kill you. Zhuo Fan stands there calmly. They both watch him. Zhuo Fan just dodges his punch and angrily says, Don't try to show off in front of me. I will slaughter you. Tian Lei falls down, and Zhuo Fan walks away. Tian Lei fearfully says, Chi, Chi of the heavenly. This killing intent. Zhuo Fan turns around and says, You died, you are. A heavenly profound realm expert. They both watch him, and he is writhing in pain. Zhuo Fan and they all watch him. The old man arrives while flying and shouts, Liar. Liar. What's wrong with you? What's going on? He takes Tian Lei in his hand, angrily turns around, and says, Who did this? Song Qian comes to him and says, I'm sorry, uncle, it's all because of me. You mustn't blame anyone else. He angrily asks, Other? Zhuo Fan is standing there, watching him shockingly, and takes Tian Lei on his shoulder, smiles, and says, So it's Qian Er. I wondered why this brat is at the city gates so early in the morning. Surely there was a distinguished guest visiting. Misunderstanding. Everything is a misunderstanding. They both watch him. He continues, Come on, let's go home with Uncle. It's not easy for you to come to Lanling City. Uncle must do his best to help you. Zhuo Fan says, Who said the Chi family despises you? You two were siblings lying to me. Song Qian says, No, he's the head of the Chi family, and he, Chi Tianle, has never looked kindly at Song Yu. He responds, but what's wrong today? It's as if he's a different person. That Chi Tianlei was his only son, and he viewed him as more important than anything else. Something happened to him today. I can't believe they're not even investigating. There must be something wrong here. Zhuo Fan smiles and says, yeah, there's definitely something fishy. Song Qian says, what the hell could it be? Maybe he's in a mood today, so don't take any wild guesses. Thank goodness he didn't care, or we wouldn't have gotten away with it. Shua Fan says, uh, from him. They all leave, and Song Qian says, she knows you are powerful, but no matter how powerful you are, you're still at the bone-forging realm. How can you be a match for a strong Tian Xian realm? If you piss them off, even Xiao Yu and I won't be able to protect you. Anyway, let's go after them. Chi family courtyard, after three hours, Zhou Fan is sitting there thinking while those two siblings went to catch up with Chi. He can just practice with peace of mind. Suddenly, Zhou Fan looks at the door. Song Qian and Song Yu are coming. Song Qian says, Zhuo. Uh, Brother Luo, the Chi family owner has set up a banquet and wants to give us a reception, so please come with us. 
Joe Fan says, that's what he got for you guys, and I don't know him well enough to go. Song Yu shockingly says, you can't. Zhou Fan watches him, and Song Yu says, don't. Don't get me wrong. This is the Chi family after all. Song Qian smiles and says, yes, yes, it would be too disgraceful if we don't go to a banquet hosted by our hosts. Zhou Fan says, well, let's go then. The host's house is hosting a banquet, even if it's the family banquet, we have to go. They both watch each other. Zhou Fan says, what are you two waiting for? Lead the way. And they all go and arrive at the place. The host stands up, starts laughing, and says, you're here, take a seat. Zhou Fan smiles and thinks, is this to surround me in the middle to facilitate a siege? Yes, couldn't be more obvious. They sit at the table while Zhou Fan is thinking, it doesn't matter, a bunch of ants. Even if they go together, it's just a few more people dying. He smiles and says, little brother is called Luo Fan, I've heard Jenner and the others mention it. Thanks to you for taking care of them on the way here, they could get here safely. Come on, let's have a toast. Cheers from me to you. Master Chi says, wine is a poison that penetrates the intestines, and I've given up drinking for many years. He advises Master Chi to drink less too, lest they get muddled, make bad decisions, mess with the wrong people, and bring ruin to the family. They all shockingly watch him. Master Chi angrily says, what do you mean? How dare you offend the Ghost Valley? Now that Lord Yogu has issued a death warrant for you, the entire empire is hunting you down. Rather than let someone else have it. Master Chi gets angry and says, Why don't you take your head to the Ghost Valley and claim the reward? All elders on command. They all stand up and attack Shuafan. Shuafan stands up calmly. There is a huge explosion. Master Chi and all are shocked. Master Chi watches and says, Where is he? Zhou Fan starts laughing and says, I'm here. First. He holds Master Chi by the head and presses. Zhou Fan smiles and says, First. And he falls to the ground. The person says, It seems the rumors are all true. You really are a monster. No wonder even the seventh elder of the Ghost Valley died at your hands. Everyone is in fear of you. Fan replies, Since you know how powerful I am, why are you still trying to attack me? Even the Ghost Valley cannot kill me, so how can you? The man retorts, the riskier the battle, the greater the reward. He attacks Fan with his tiger-whistling fist, a spiritual-grade intermediate skill. Fan tells him, you don't know what you're doing. A fierce battle ensues, and Fan manages to break the man's hand, causing destruction all around. The man asks, who the hell are you? Your body is so strong, you're not even human. Fan replies, whether I am human or not, it is none of your business. He fights against all of them, and they fall one by one. Fan grabs the man by his neck. The man pleads, I was out of my depth. I apologize and beg you for the sake of Chinner and Xiao Yu, let us go, and we will never be your enemies again. Fan responds, I warned you from the beginning not to make hasty decisions, but now that you have, you must face the consequences. As for these brothers and sisters, if they have betrayed me, what's the point of showing mercy? Gang Lei, you are underestimating me. Song Yu shockingly says, or is it too much for them? Song Qian shockingly says, Lu, uh, no, brother Zhuo, we've been forced to do this too, please. But Fan silences them, saying there's no need for an explanation. The man, Gang Lei, warns Fan not to kill them all, or the Qi family will fight him to the death. Fan replies confidently, I'm looking forward to it. How are you going to die with me? Gang Lei addresses all the elders to come together, but Fan swiftly kills him by holding his neck. Fan then opens his magic purple feathers, causing everyone around him to fall unconscious. Fan retorts, Ha, huh, unable to take even a single hit. Master Chi throws a rock towards Fan and says, You got fooled. That's the real deal. Fan turns around and sees the girl from the Song family approaching him and saves him, saying, Be careful. The rock hits the girl. Fan calls her a stupid woman, but Song Yu runs towards his sister, shouting, Sister. Shua Fan takes her in his hand, and she says, We're sorry, we really didn't mean it. It's just that we're too weak to do anything about it. Gang Lei makes a final attempt to kill Chien'er, 
but Fan uses his feather to kill him and says, There is no longer a living soul. Fan examines her wound and realizes it's a toxic poison from the Chi family. Song Yu tells him he'll get the antidote from the pharmacy to help her. Fan says, Hey, wait a minute, and says, This idiot, this poison can be forced out with Yuan power. There is no need to go to the pharmacy. She says, My brother is reckless, unlike you. Fan says, Sit down, I'll help you force the poison out. She says, Thank you. Shua Fan thinks while helping her force the poison out, What's going on? I can't even find the source of the poison. She can't be poisoned. Is she? No, I believe it's a poison that can evade you on force detection. The Chi family's poison making is no joke. Fan says, it seems my Yuan power can't force your poison out. I have to use the dumbest method. She says, the dumbest way? Don't you want to? Fan says, well, I will help you suck out the poison. She says, I get it, well then, thank you. He moves closer to suck out the poison from her wound, enduring the pain while doing so. Unbeknownst to them, an old man watches the scene from behind the door, finding the whole scene interesting. All of them are killed in the house. Shua Fan throws the poison from his mouth and says, Well, now that most of the poison has been sucked out, it should be fine. She says, Thank you, Mr. Shua. Shua Fan thinks strange, usually poisonous blood, feels tangy in the mouth. He says, Go, go find your brother and get out of here. He thinks, Why is Song Qian's poisoned blood no different from normal blood except for its color? It's really suspicious. This is. Suddenly my body is out of control, could it be? Poisoned. Could it be? Shua Fan suddenly gets shocked and sees them attacking him with a fourth grade defensive spirit weapon. Tian Xian says, you're no better than that. This is my Qi family's fourth grade spirit weapon, the purple golden glazed goblet. Defensive and capturing. I've heard you're a womanizer. Shua Fan thinks, Qi family's Tian Xian. He says, Chien'er, the two of you siblings did very well. Chien'er replies, thank you to the elders for the compliment. Shua Fan watches them angrily. Tian Xian says, are you wondering how you get poisoned? In fact, the shard blade that had been shot at Chien'er earlier had no poison on it at all. It was just a coating of drugs that discolored the blood. And the real poison. It was on that shoulder of Chien'er's, and you must have just sucked on it. They all start laughing. Tian Xian shouts, you're the one who killed my father. I'll tear you apart to avenge my father's death. Shua Fan says, I've seen a lot of shameless people in the world, but I've never seen anyone as shameless as your Chi family before. If I'm not mistaken, then Chi Gang Lei was cannon fodder to lure me in from the start. You guys expected his death and said that I killed him, but you guys simply abandoned him first. He says you? Tian Xian says, well, so what? I've shed my son and my grandson. As long as we get your head, the Chi family will become the first affiliated family of the Ghost Valley. What's a little loss now compared to the future honor of the family? Below one family, above ten thousand. With as many elders as there are afterwards, the Chi family will only grow stronger. What's a little loss now compared to the future honor of the family? Shua Fan says, ruthless, but you're too narrow-minded. All this effort to be the first lapdog of the Ghost Valley. It's useless. If I were you, paying this much, you should at least dominate the continent. Tian Xian shockingly says, that's a mouthful. How can an ordinary person unify the continent? Shua Fan confidently replies, kill me, are you even qualified? The words I gave him when I killed the seven ghosts. And now it's perfectly fine to give it to you as well. In the face of absolute power. All tactics are useless. They got shocked to see his powers. Tian Xian shockingly thinks, How is that possible? This is the Qi family's ancestral divine devouring powder, something that's intractable to even an expert at the illumination realm, and he just removed it. He shockingly shouts, What's that on his forehead? Did that thing cure the poison? Tian Xian shockingly says, Don't worry. That brad is still trapped in my fourth grade spiritual weapon. Shua Fan breaks the fourth grade spiritual weapon and hits him. Song Yu shockingly shouts, Grandpa. They are watching him and say, Monster. Shua Fan takes him from his head. They all are shocked. 
He shouts, young master, go. We both will hold him off. Young master, you're the last hope of the Chi family. You must live. They all are fearfully running outside. Zhuo Fan kills the old man and stands there, smiling, and says, I didn't expect to be the strongest. After refining my body and matching it with a Xian stage martial skill, it's time to cultivate a tougher martial skill. By the way, there are three more that's to clean. Won't let them run away. They are running and shockingly think, I can't die, I can't die, I can't die. But Zhuifan hits Tian Lei, and he dies. They both watch him fearfully. Zhuifan is standing there while opening his wings and says, Running, you were pretty fast. She sits on her knees and says, Brother Zhuo, we're forced to do this out of necessity. After all, our Song family is a small family. We can't afford to provoke the Qi family, and we don't dare to provoke the Ghost Valley. If you have a grudge, kill me, but please let Xiao Yu go. He is the male member of our Song family left. Song Yu shouts, Sister. Zhuo Fan says, The same situation, the same family difficulties, you are just like them. Song Qian says, You mean the Luo family? Zhuo Fan replies, That's right. You guys are so much like them. Makes me not want to do it. They both watch him hopefully. But Zhuo Fan says, Unfortunately, and hits both of them with his power and says, There's something not alike. Zhuo Fan smiles and says, That's it, you two. You are much smarter than them. It's time to go. He is traveling while singing. The spring breeze is blowing on the willow bank and I'm driving my carriage in search of the pills. I don't know the true face of a nobleman, but my dog's eyes are too low. He reaches his place, stops there, and says, Finally, hopefully, I'll find some good medicine to bring the dead back to life here. It's not in vain for me to change my face and come here. The guards come to him and say, Stop. He is watching them jokingly and says, Ghost Valley? Oh, good eye, you know us. By the looks of you, you should also be a son of a noble family, so give me your name. He smiles and says, this is the Flower Rain City. Even if it's a questioning, it should be done by someone from the Flower Rain house. How could? He angrily shouts, cut the bullshit. Hurry up, tell us the truth or don't blame us for being rude. If it weren't for the fact that this is Flower Rain House's territory, with the way you've been dawdling, I'd have killed you already. He replies, Song family of Night Rain City, Song Yu, by order of my father, to come to attend the hundred pill event at the Flower Rain House. He gives him the seal and says, This is my family seal. He takes the seal in his hand and thinks. He takes the letter and gives it to him. He reads the letter and says, Okay, let's go. But if you see this man, let us know immediately. He reads the letter, smiles, and says, Humph, what a bunch of shitty dog eyes. In this letter, there is written ghost hunt order. He throws the letter and says, I'm right in front of you, and you don't even know me. Where else are you going to catch me? He goes to the guest house and says, Boss, are there any rooms available? The old man writes on the paper. He thinks, this lowly dog. He slaps on the table and says, Is there a vacant room or not? Do you think I can't give you a spiritual stone? The old man replies, Young man, the Song family a third-rate family, what's the point of coming here? You. You, straight ahead in that direction, there's a shack three kilometers away. You can live there, without any stones. He angrily says, you. Dong comes and smiles and says, Song Yu. You're such a loon. You don't even know the rules of Flower Rain City, and you dare to come to the Hundred Pill event. Song Yu thinks, someone in this place actually knows Song Yu. That son of a bitch, He's been with me for half a month, but he didn't tell me he had an acquaintance here. I knew it wouldn't be easy to be him. He starts laughing and says, you bastard. Dong smiles and says, just as wimpy as before. No wonder my sister doesn't like you. He smiles and says, well, you're absolutely right. He goes outside and says, I'm sure you don't want to see me, so I'll be going now. Dong says, wait. It's strange. What's wrong with you today? What happened to you, brother? Why are you acting so strange? He fearfully thinks, shit, I'm about to be busted. Once my identity is exposed, the ghost will run after me. Then how can I participate in the hundred pill event? Should I kill him now? 
Dom watches him and thinks and says, oh, right? Are you still blaming Wana for disgracing you by refusing to marry you that day? I didn't know you were so stingy, you're still holding a grudge. He smiles and thinks, here it is. That's an important clue. He turns around and happily says, well, you know, and you still say it. As of today, we're done. Never see each other again from now on. Dong smiles and says, alas, that's your fault. Why should I be involved in what you and my sister are doing? And besides, don't forget we are brother-in-laws. We've carried guns together. He thinks, so it's true friendship this way, it's easier. And says, a good man never mentions his old self, that sort of thing, you're not as good as me. Dong says, what, I'm better than you. Don't forget I'm eight. You're only five. Alas, those three days and nights were a real lingering experience. She gets angry and says, disgusting. Both are standing there and laughing. He thinks, it seems to be hidden now. Looking at the way these two siblings dressed, they were at least from a second-class family. In that case, then, let me start with this cheap brother. He says, we haven't seen each other since then. I'll be your host today. Then let's have a nice chat, shall we? He thinks, let's get all the information. They clink their drinks and say, brother, let's go. Dong says, song you, fuck it. And they raise their glasses, starting to laugh. Xue Fan thinks while drinking, this man's name is Dong Tianba. He is from a first-rate family of a medium-sized city, and when looking at the entire Tianyu Empire, it is considered a second-rate family. Once upon a time, Dong Tianba went to Night Rain City on his father's orders, and he met Song Yu, a bad friend. Song Yu was a desperate man who tried to climb up the ladder, and finally became his best friend. He planned to marry his sister, Dong Xiaowan, to this good brother. But, after all, Dong Xiaowan is the only daughter of the Dong clan, and she's the jewel of the family. With a talent like Song Yu's, it's a shame that he came to propose. And of course, Master Dong kicked him out. He even reprimanded Dong Tianba. As for Dong Xiaowan, she has been blaming her big brother for this. She shouts, I'm your own sister, and you're betrothing me to such a man. Prodigal son. He watches her and thinks, but Song Yu, who was a piece of shit in the eyes of all the Dong family, in Dong Tianba's eyes, he was a rare close friend, a close confidant. Dong hits the glass hard on the table and says, what a prodigal son. It's called authenticity, not hypocrisy like those hypocrites. He thinks, what kind of a strange big brother is this? People just invited him for a few flowery drinks, and he's planning to hand over his sister to someone else. Why don't you marry your sister to the man she likes? I'm really worried about the Dong family's future and his sister's happiness. Even his own elders listened to him speechlessly. It's really a case of oddballs always coming together with oddballs. It really has nothing to do with status. Dong smiles and says, Brother Song, where's your sister? Didn't she follow you? He replies, she gave me a ride, then went home, and the world is full of beautiful women, so why do you need to hang yourself on a crooked neck tree, Brother Dong? My sister is not good enough for you. There are many women in Flower Rain City who are not inferior to her, so why do you bother to go far? Dong says, Alas, you don't know, Brother Song, the women of this Flower Rain City must never be touched. You know, this house of Flower Rain is the only family in the seventh family to be headed by a woman. For thousands of years, we've been recruiting men from large families to marry, and it's been going on ever since. So here, the status of women is quite high. He stands up and says, So what? You can't even pursue the girl of your dreams. Dong replies, Hey, brother, how come I don't recognize you more and more? Don't you know that pursuing and flirting are two different words, but they mean the same thing? He gets shocked and they both shout, Yes, exactly. Brother Dong is really talented. He asks, Right, Brother Dong, what other rules are there here, like in this inn? Dong says, Oh, I almost forgot to tell you. During the Hundred Pill event, there were too many families in attendance, so the Flower Rain House had set up accommodation rules. Third-rate families could only live in remote slums, second-rate families could stay in inns, and a first-class family was entertained by the fifteenth owner of the House of Flower Rain. As for the seven family, 
He interrupts, Wait, is the seven family of the kingdom here too? Dong replies, Of course, the seven families may be at war with each other. But the flower rain house was neutral, and I thought there would be three or two that would come, and the head house master would entertain them personally. At that time, at least, the people from the Ghost Valley were already here. He thinks, no wonder I ran into disciples from the Ghost Valley outside the city gates to inquire about me. They weren't sent to every city to find me. Instead, they followed a master to the Hundred Pill event at the House of Flower Rain. He asks, who are they, from the Ghost Valley? Someone is running and coming, saying, Mr. Dong, something terrible has happened to Miss Dong. Dong stands up in shock and says, what? Take me there now. He watches them and puts his things on the table, saying, Junior, check out. He runs away with them, saying, Get out of the way. They all come to her and see she is fearfully sitting down. Dong picks her up and angrily says, What's going on? Who did this to you? Miss Dong replies, Brother, forget it. Let's go. She shouts, Who let you go? I just told you to slap yourself one hundred times, and now you want to leave after thirty. Miss Dong is sitting in fear, and she says, I don't care who you are. If I find out who you are, your whole family will die a horrible death. She starts crying and slaps herself. Dong grabs her hand and says, Shawan, stop it. What the hell is going on here? Shawan, while crying, says, Brother, it's all my fault. I fell in love with this jewelry and wanted to buy it, but she also. Dong shockingly watches her and angrily turns around, saying, My sister was the one who saw it first. Even if you took it from her, why are you abusing her like this? Mrs. Dong smiles and says I asked her for it, but she didn't give it to me. She only handed it over because the lady was rough. I'm not in the mood anymore. Isn't it right to give her a little discipline? Dong angrily says Shua Fan also watches them. Dong says you are a bitch. Dong angrily says you freaking bitch and moves towards her to punch her, shouting, Bitch! If I don't beat you up today and knock your teeth out all over the place, then I'm not called Dong Tianba. Someone comes from outside, grabs him by the neck, and throws him away. Dong stumbles and falls to the ground. The newcomer smiles and says, Dan Dan, what's going on over here? Zhuo Fan thinks, seventh level of the bone-forging realm. This kind of level, even among the seventh family's current generation, is considered the pride of the family. Dan Dan replies, It's nothing, it's just that a bunch of ignorant dogs have ruined the fun for me. Dong, lying in pain, smiles and says, Dan Dan, he didn't recognize who you were before. He's sorry for offending you. Mississippi Dan Dan gets shocked, smiles, and says, Excuse me, where were you guilty? Didn't you just say that I was the one who took your sister's stuff and humiliated her first? And that it's only right that you stand up for her. But, do you think you have what it takes? Dong gets shocked and slaps himself in the face, saying, You're right, Mississippi. I wasn't thinking right before. I deserve a beating. They all watch him in shock. Dan Dan says, Well, that's stupid. That's ruined the fun in it. How come every man is so useless? No balls at all. Brother Tian Yu, why don't you have some fun with them? Brother Tian Yu smiles and says, Dan Dan, what do you have in mind? She replies, I think this kid treats his sister well, otherwise. You're a fighter, good and quite understanding, so I will let you have them. If you could strip the girl under the protection of those few bone-forging realm experts naked, you can have fun with her, and we won't investigate you for bullying women. Dong gets shocked, and they all are angry. Dong angrily says, what? He thinks, it's not just bullying, this is just plain treating us like animals. Even for the seventh family, such behavior is unacceptable. Brother Tianyu says, Dan Dan, you've misunderstood this, brother. Although our Huolin has the word Hu in it, we are definitely not people who will take advantage of others. You're asking too much from me. She says, oh, come on, look at you, you can't seem to hide the excitement. Plus, if I don't mind, what else do you have to worry about? Next July, I'll be yours anyway and you'll still be part of my Huayu house, so it won't change anything. He smiles and says, since Dan Dan has personally requested this of me, looks like I can't help but comply. But just remember this, it's just a game, you can't settle the score later. 
Dan Dan angrily says to Xing. He comes and says, I am Lin Tianyu of the Wulin family, and next year I will be a member of the Huayu house, a son-in-law to the family. And just as you've heard, it's not me who's lustful and a bully, but it's you who have offended my future wife, so I'm just here to give you a little punishment. She gets shocked, and Dong angrily says, Master Lin, he just heard the lady's rules of the game very clearly. I just don't know if we were lucky enough to stop you once. What should we do? Dan Dan replies, if you can stop him at least once, we'll let this go and never bring it up again. Dong angrily says, well then, we agree we have offended you. Lin Tianyu smiles and says, you're good, but it's a shame, and takes a piece of her shirt. Dong gets even more shocked and shouts, ugh. Lin Tianyu smiles and adds, unfortunately you don't have the strength. Zhuo Fan angrily smiles and thinks, huh? Hmph. This brat has a bone-forging seventh-grade cultivation, but his strength to fight is only bone-forging sixth-grade. It seems that cultivation has gone up to speed bodywork. Yet this is typically putting the cart before the horse in terms of cultivation. No matter how fast you are, you can't hurt anyone without strength in your hands. When his cultivation increases again in the future, this gap would grow wider and wider. This seemingly unrestrained brat is actually already a cultivation invalid. No wonder the seventh bone forging strength was used by the happy forest to make peace with the flower rain house. But Dong Tianba and those three old men alone can't stand it. They all are angry, and Dong angrily says, Elders. Circle the lady. Fan smiles and says, It's no use. With a few of you, you can't see me at all. Dong gets shocked and says, Ah? as he takes a piece of her shirt, saying, ah, it smells good. The second one has already enchanted me so much. I wonder what about the lady's intimate garments. Miss Dong starts crying and shouts, brother. Dong shamefully says, he knows. Brother will protect you. Dan Dan shouts, there's still no end in sight, hurry up. He is watching her and smiling. They all are standing around her for her protection but he moves out from among them and extends his hand towards her. Dong angrily says, Wan Air, I'm sorry, but Big Brother is incapable of protecting you. Zhuo Fan comes and takes his hand. They all are shocked. Zhuo Fan says, Brother Dong, this is the last time. What about adding me? And throws him away. Dan Dan angrily says, What are you? Zhuo Fan smiles and says, I'm her husband. She gets shocked, and they all are shocked and shout, What? Zhuo Fan says, uh, no, yes, she's my wife. They angrily shout, is this any different? Zhuo Fan smiles and says, I went to her house to ask for her hand in marriage, and she turned me down. So, ex-husband. Dan Dan says, it's fine, adding such a bone-forging round fool wouldn't be a problem. Moreover, to have such a love-struck man watch the woman he loves being stripped, it's fun too that he starts to smile and says, since Dan Dan, you don't mind, it's okay with me. No matter how many people come, the result will be the same. Dong says, brother, you shouldn't be involved in this. He smiles and says, brother Dong, you're too. Dong starts crying and says, I was right about you. Brother is really compassionate. Shua Fan smiles and says, don't worry. He won't take a single piece of your clothing again. She is watching him and blushing. Shua Fan says, come on. He watches him shockingly and angrily says, bastard. How dare you? When I'm done with this little bitch, I'm coming to get you. Zhuo Fan is standing there, and Dong and Miss Dong are getting shocked. Zhuo Fan starts laughing and says, Don't be too concerned about a clown, Brother Dong. Dan Dan smiles and says, Brother Tian Yu, you were laughed at by an idiot today. Tian Yu smiles and says, I don't care what a fool says. Just wait until I take that little bitch down and finish him off in passing. He runs towards him to kill him and says, this is the last one. Let this gentleman appreciate the girl. She is standing there, shocked, and tries to save him. Tianyu starts laughing and says, got it. Zhuo Fan says, your wish, and punches him on his face. He falls away, and Dan Dan gets shocked. Zhuo Fan says, what happened? Bitch, you're just not worth it. Dong shockingly says, you? Did you just hit him? Shua Fan, in the form of song, says something did just hit me in the fist. I guess he is the one who shot him off. Shua Fan smiles and says, Ugh, my hand hurts. 
Dong happily says, that's great, man. How the hell did you do that? How come I couldn't see his shadow? Shuafan replies, do you need to see it? That's what he's after, isn't it? Wouldn't it be a good idea to wait for the silly rabbit to crash into a tree? Dong shockingly thinks, so that's it. No matter how fast he was, his ultimate target was only Dong Xiaowan. We have to just keep an eye on her. The old man says, great talent. Mr. Song is really a great talent. No wonder my prince holds you in such high esteem. Dong smiles and says, sister, you see. I told you that Brother Song is a man of many talents. You saw it this time. If it weren't for him, we'd be in big trouble this time. If it weren't for him, we'd be in big trouble this time. Shua Fan says, Brother Dong, can we drop this matter? But it's not up to you. Dong shockingly watches him. Tian Yu in pain and Dandan is standing and watching him. Dong smiles and says, This lady, we people have happened to block Mr. Lin for a time. I don't think the disciples of the Flower Rain House would go back on their word. So let's just leave it at that. I'll take my sister back first, Dandan says, slow down. She won't pursue this matter any further, but unfortunately, Brother Tianyu doesn't seem to want to let you go that easily, ah. Brother Tianyu says, humph, he's never been punched so hard in my entire life. But I won't bully you. It's just that I'm so excited about this game that I can't stop playing it. Then please continue to accompany this gentleman to the end. They all are shocked and say, what? Brother Dong fearfully says he wonders how this game is going to end. Tian Yu angrily smiles and says it will be over when I have played enough. Dong fearfully says, what? And thinks, it's just never-ending. Do you have to strip away the last dignity of our family? What a bully. Looks like there's no need to be polite anymore. Didn't want to make a big deal out of it. But these two bitches are just too much of a bully. Shua Fan smiles and thinks, what a disgrace. And says, this game does seem to be quite fun. Why don't you let me join in too? He used to play a similar game with Brother Dong. Right, Brother Dong. But now you're going to strip my woman naked. It's not fair that I don't have anything to strip naked too. Brother Tianyu smiles and says, you just happened to punch me in the face. You think you can really fight me? You're daydreaming. Shua Fan smiles and says, Mr. Lin, are not confident, still afraid of your wife. Tian Yu angrily says, You? Dandan smiles and says, With the recent emergence of Shua Fan, there are more and more youngsters who dare to challenge the authority of the Seven Family. Do you have the strength that if you could take off one of my shirts in front of Brother Tian Yu today, I'll kick his ass and recruit you into my family? They all are shockingly say, What? Shua Fan smiles and says, Miss Dan, Shua Fan words mustn't be too full. This game is exciting, but don't cry playing it. Dandan replies, she won't even cry if you cry. Tian Yu angrily says, all right, get ready, I'm coming for you. Shua Fan smiles and says, since we agreed to be fair, there can't be so many defenders here, lest you find excuses to cheat again later. That's enough, leave this to me. Dong shockingly says, brother, he will leave my sister in your hands. Shua Fan says, Miss Dong, do you trust me? Miss Dong gets shocked. Shua Fan smiles and says, That's good, watch the show later. Tian Yu comes again and extends his hand towards her while laughing and says, This last garment, I'll take it. Shua Fan again punches him hard. He is bleeding, falls away, and shockingly says, How can you see me? Shua Fan watches him angrily and comes towards Dandan and takes off her clothes. Dandan shockingly watches him. Shua Fan angrily smiles and says, In terms of speed, you are not even close to my level. Dandan got shocked and thinks, How is that possible? A kid who has just broken through the bone forging realm was actually able to surpass Lin Tianyu, who specializes in speed. They got shocked watching him, and Dong thinks, This kid is really amazing, surprisingly surpassed the disciples of the seven families. He's only from a third-rate family. Chua Fan smells her clothes, suddenly smiles, and says, Miss Standen is a worthy disciple of the House of Flower Rain. It is fruitfully distinct from the vulgarities of the world. This body fragrance, I'll never forget it. Danden gets shocked. He angrily says, You? How dare you molest my wife in front of me? You really don't give a damn about my happy forest. He suddenly runs towards Chua Fan and shouts, 
What are you doing, asshole? Zhuo Fan grabs her in his hands and says, Miss Danden, I'm not like your soft-hearted husband, always being very bossy with women. He was a bit rude to you just now. You can hit me and yell at me, but he will never change. Qian Yu angrily says, Bastard, let go of your hand, or he will be rude. Zhuo Fan grabs her again. Tian Yu is getting more angry. Zhuo Fan smiles and says, Since the beginning of time, the winner has everything, nothing to lose and nothing to gain. If Brother Lin had won, then both women would have been yours. If not, he smiles and says, Miss Danden, I won. Brother Lin, what are you doing? So please kick this useless man out, and how about? Zhuo Fan stands with Danden. Tian Yu is bleeding and angrily says, Bastard, you're too much. Zhuo Fan smiles and says, So what? The one who insults others is insulted. Always win against me if you can. Tian Yu angrily comes to hit him and says, Son of a bitch, I'm going to take her clothes off right now. Miss Dong shockingly says, I'll get you again. Zhuo Fan again smashes him on his face. He goes away and falls down. Zhuo Fan stands with Danden, smiles, and says, Miss Danden, your worthless man has lost another game. This time I'm going to have to strip you of your clothes again. Tian Yu is getting angry at him. Zhuo Fan says, Miss Danden, you won't blame me for being rude. Damn, can't you be a little more gentle? I'm just so rude and I can't change that for the rest of my life. Tian Yu angrily says, adulterer. Zhuo Fan again slaps him on his face. He's bleeding again and says, Brother Lin, last chance. If you don't succeed, Miss Danden is going to be mine. Tian Yu angrily says, Damn brat, how dare you insult the seven families. Zhuo Fan comes close to her, kisses her, and says, I'm going to be the son-in-law of Flower Rain House, and I'm not afraid of you, happy forest. Don't you think so, Miss Danden? Tian Yu angrily shouts, What? And angrily runs towards him, saying, Bitch, you motherfuckers. I'll send you to hell right now. He comes with his spirit stage intermediate martial skill. Miss Danden shouts, Lin Tian Yu, you've got a lot of nerve. How dare you use murderous techniques against me in my flower rain house? Tian Yu angrily says, you slut. If I don't kill you both today, I'll be worthless as a man. Shua Fan stands calmly and says, Brother Lin, Tian Yu comes to hit him with his blade kick, but Shua Fan tackles his kick again. There is smoke around Shua Fan and Zhuo Fan smiles and says that was so weak. He is shocked. How is that possible? He asks. Are you a body-refining cultivator? But how can you be so fast? Fan replies, incorporated, but how can you be so fast? Zhuo Fan replies, who said that a person who refines the body can't be fast? Foolish people like you waste their strength for speed. And angrily says, are you ready you waste? Zhuo Fan runs towards him and delivers a heavy hit. He screams in pain. Everyone is shocked. Dong is thinking that a bone-forging level 1 cultivator actually crippled a bone-forging level 7 expert with a single kick, and this expert was also a disciple of the Imperial 7 family, Happy Forest. Fan addresses Miss Danden, You see, I am not only rude to women, I am equally rude to men. Even if your fiancé survives— he will never be human again, believe me. Miss Dan happily says, you are so awesome. Why do I need that loser? Don't worry. After he joins our flower rain house, the happy forest will never trouble you. Fan smiles and says, then I must thank you for taking care of me. It's just that in this case, your fiancé has lost, and I am supposed to take off the last of your clothes. Miss Dong confusedly replies, brother, I will be yours from now on. I only wanted to make a fool of myself in front of so many people. Fan smiles and says, I think you have just hated me, saying that those who insult others will always be insulted. This is not for your creep of a husband to know. He moves his hand towards her, but someone stops him. He looks backward and thinks if it is Tian Xian. He thinks, I cannot reveal my identity yet. Bet on it dot a beautiful lady comes across wearing a mask and puts her finger on Miss Dan's forehead. She shockingly asks, how could I have done such a thing? The beautiful lady says, falling for someone else's trap and still does not know it. She addresses Fan and says, little brother, if you are interested in courting a girl from the flower rain house, you can use your own talent, 
using a means like magic sound soul diversion. Isn't that too dirty? Fan thinks, worthy of being a strong Tianxian a flower rain house, truly seen it all. It is surprisingly easy to distinguish this real magic sound soul diversion at a glance. He addresses the lady and says, what the lady said is true. Unfortunately, I have no intention of using Miss Standen. It was just to teach her a lesson. Miss Stan shouts and says, Master, don't listen to him. He did lay that disciple in public. Obviously, they don't take us at Flower Rain House seriously. The lady shouts, shut up. This simulation is not enough. If I hadn't known your reason, just for daring to use such an evil method of seducing women in the Flower Rain City, I would have brought you to justice. Fan looks at her, and she moves away towards Miss Dom. She says, then this is spoiled by her master. I will punish her severely when I get back. Just please don't worry about it. Miss Dong thanks her and doesn't dare. The lady flies away in the sky. Holding Miss Dan Fan looks towards her and thinks, has my identity been exposed? Dong addresses him, good brother, this time thanks to you, otherwise, our Dong family would be disgraced. Brother Song, thank you so much. The territory of seven families is really not a good place to stay. Fan asks Brother Dong, who is that woman in blue? Dong replies, fortunately, it is a rumor that she is an easygoing and upright person who never oppresses the children of the family. If we had met the pioneer house on hot temper, we would have been in for a rough ride. Fan thinks, but it's Chin Kai Chin. She already knows my identity. Why doesn't she reveal it? Or did she call for help because she could not beat me? Dong is laughing and says, Brother, I really don't recognize you anymore. Fan replies, I am still in a hurry, so I will leave first. We will talk some other time. He moves away and says, I have not properly thanked you yet, and you are leaving like this. Fan moves towards the fifteenth house in a rain of flowers. He thinks, it is interesting. He looks at the cloth the lady gave him. This is the flower rain house main building meeting hall. A beautiful lady is sitting, introduced as Flower Rain Building 13 House Master, Peony. She says, Elder Lin keeps staring at a servant. Is there something dirty on the body of the servant? Lin coughs and says, I am just wondering why the head house master is absent, and why do you want the Peony house master to entertain the guest? Peony replies, You think Peony's hospitality isn't good enough, and you want the head landlord to entertain her personally. Lin laughs and says, Peony, house owner, treats guests well, good, good doubt a person says, Master, I am here for the Bide and Festival. I didn't come to see you to flirt. He is the fifth elder of the Yuming Valley. He continues, if the Bide and Festival isn't held, I have work to do. I will leave you to it. The girl replies, hey, fifth elder of the Ghost Valley, where do you get your anger from? When the festival begins, that's up to the headmaster. The great families have not arrived yet, so how can we start? The old man says, Peony, you don't have to listen to this guy's farts. These days, the ghost valley was being overrun by a brat, killing three elders in a row. With their reputation already tarnished, how can they still be in the mood to participate in the event? At this time, the fifth elder is probably still thinking about when he would be able to kill that kid, otherwise, it's not good to be on your toes always worrying about when your own elder will be killed. Somehow, it's not nice to be on edge. The fifth elder of the Ghost Valley gets furious and says, Lin Zidin, put your bullshit aside. He shouts, if you meet that guy, more elders will die in your happy forest. The old man shouts back, what? You want to fight? The fifth elder angrily says, what did you say? They both stand in front of each other. Someone enters the room and says, so lively. They both shockingly turn around and watch him. He starts laughing and says, If you two elders want to fight, then count me and point two people enter the room. One of them says, Master, you are truly majestic. When you arrived, neither the ghost valley nor the happy forest dared to squeak. This makes both elders furious. The fifth elder Yen Lao says, You shouldn't control your disciples, Elder Yen. There's no discipline at all. He addresses Yen Lao. Shouldn't you control disciples? There is no discipline at all. Junior is how you talk to seniors. Elder Yin smiles and says, Old Five of the Ghost Valley, Why brother with a child you are not a senior like me? 
Yen Fu smiles and says, Yes, you don't even have a senior-like appearance. How can the younger generation respect you as a senior? Elder punches on the table and says, Couldn't have imagined such a little event. It is really exciting that the four of the seven families can gather in one breath, especially with old Yen in attendance. I am sure this grand event will go smoothly. Yen smiles and says, You don't have to go against the Yin and Yang. I know you all don't want to see me, but who named this event Bai Dan? He gives a laugh to say, Without me, how can it be worthy of the name Bai Dan? Lin Zitin gets angry at this. Peony addresses Yen Song and says, I don't think your flower rain house has been invited, your pill palace. Why did you come uninvited? Yen smiles and says, House master, you are still so hot tempered. Within the entire empire, where I am going, who can stop me? He moves forward and says, Coming to your flower rain city today, we want to kick me out. This makes the peony master shout. Lin tries to calm her down and says, I am counting on you for the greater good. Yen Fu smiles and says, The peony house owner is like a little girl. How can you be a master when you can't hold your control? She master asks, Sister, if you have seen that man, why didn't you? She asks, Is he stronger than you? She replies, That's not necessarily true, but you know how I am. I am not going to do anything that's out of my league. Then you tell me the whole story. Dong replies, Yes, master, so that's how it is. His smile is something I don't know what's going on in the empire lately. Ever since there was a Zhao fan, it seems like other families have taken our seventh family majesty much lighter. If we don't curb it, who will still fear us in the future? The elder of the Ghost Valley advises Yang, it is because of your incompetence. It is because you still cannot catch that kid. You have caused the rest of the six families to do space with you. He replies, yes, it is our fault. But wouldn't it be more disgraceful for the seven families if the elder had to step in to settle the conflicts between the disciples that he says, Lin Zitin, it's pretty you didn't bring another disciple, otherwise, having your disciple take revenge would also give the girl then back her face, wouldn't it? Lin Zitin becomes angry. The boy grabs the hand of Dan and says, you come with me. I will avenge you. Damn, this kid is a lowly bastard. How dare you take away my disciples in front of me? Peony shouts, and fifth elder of the Ghost Valley, smiles heavily. Young moves away and smiles, saying, In this world, women still have to keep up with men after all. He adds, Your Huayu Tower won't last long. The fifth elder gets angry and retorts, Hey, even that old man noticed that something is wrong. Peony asks, Why is everyone gone? Lin replies, Qin Kai Qin. She asks, are you sure that the person who has caused a lot of trouble recently is the demon Zhao Fan? Shocked, she asks, what? That person is Zhuo Fan. The lady replies, I'm not sure, but something is abnormal. But we shouldn't go against Master Tian Xian. Lin says, perhaps he is pretending. The vicious medicine king wouldn't help but want to watch the battle and see if that person is really extraordinary. Lin says, he's someone who can kill the seven boosts. With this apparentness gone, there must be a dead man. The lady replies, At that time, Yen Song will definitely take action, but I just don't know if Shua Fan can kill this guy this time, someone far more dangerous than the seven ghosts, the vicious medicine king. Let's have hope in him. As evening approaches, Fan is standing and walking, thinking that it has been quite a while, but there is still no trace of a master chasing him. In the city, people are moving around, and some argue over boundaries. Hey, this is my land boundary. Put your thing away. Don't take my place. The other one asks an old fart. This was my place at the start. When did it become your territory? Get out. Fan thinks it could be. I must be thinking too much. My identity hasn't been revealed yet. Someone said, boy, don't you have eyes? You dare step on the feet of this master. Do you think who this master is? The other one says, Humph, who my son is and whoever you are, who cares about that? If you are a real man, you can still come to this place. Fan thinks that they are a bunch of nobodies. The third rate is indeed the third rate. Mud cannot support the wall. No wonder you are patient in this poor hellhole. He stops and notices that the houses here are better than the ones he passed by earlier. He wonders why no one stayed here. A boy comes up and says, Brother, 
if you need a place to stay, come with me. I can offer you a place, but don't go beyond this point. A female with a strong disease resides there. Even if they had not been in contact with a plague girl, they would all still die within three days. Fan thinks, that's right, even if the locals are poor, they dare not come here. In the past few months during the Beiden event, Huayu City did not have enough space, so we arranged a place to stay here. Fan thinks, no matter how horrible a woman she is, she was the first to come. The foreign doves occupy the magpie's nest without saying you guys want to drive me back home. Maybe someone wants to kill her. Who is more terrifying, that goes without saying. They all are getting shocked, and he asks, brother, are you deaf? Fan thinks, the celestial demon can transform everything in this world, including toxic diseases. Life is really long. Zhuo Fan thinks while going into the street, the further you go in, the lower the temperature gets. This is why no one lives near any sort of poisonous plague. It's a formation. He sees a lady with purple eyes. Fans say, such beautiful eyes. She asks, who are you, and who brought you here? Fan replies, I came to the city to participate in the festival. Since it's a third-grade family, I can only stay here. The girl warns him, go to the front. Are you not afraid of death? Fan moves forward and says, okay, little girl. I believe death is lighter than a feather and heavier than a mountain. Those in front are selfish and ungrateful people, and I don't wish to associate with them. If I could, I would rather die in loneliness, she replies, fool. Don't try to deceive me. Do you think I will believe you? She points towards a room and says, you can sleep here from now on, but remember not to walk around at night, otherwise you might die. Fan thanks her and promises not to wander at night. He thinks to himself, I can't seem to see through this girl's cultivation. Is she already in the realm of board elimination, or is she just an ordinary person? If she's ordinary, how could she have such a momentum? He goes into the broken house and sits at the desk, saying, Since she won't let me go out at night, I need something to do during this time. I should just go give a visit tonight, Lao. It is night time, and Fan wakes up. He thinks to himself, Sure enough. It was the formation. He consumes a pill. His blood baby goes out to investigate the situation. The blood baby has taken a hidden pill, making it undetectable even to powerful individuals in the heavenly profound realm. He thinks there is no such thing as easy to find out IT ventures outside of the city and comes across a girl sitting in a lonely place. She is performing an array of magic for her cultivation. Fan observes that it is a level 3 formation the Enu formation. He shocks to see this. He realizes that those who came before died due to the mooning invading their bodies, leading to the death of those with weak constitutions. He thinks that, however, this girl seems to be merely healing her wounds by absorbing a lot of mooning to suppress the toxin inside her body. Fan contemplates the situation deeply, thinking, he says to himself, doing that is just like drinking poison to quench the thirst. He knows that taking in too much of the Eden she will damage muscles and veins, and in the end, you may even turn into a cripple. Moreover, the poison outbreak will be even more severe than before. He asks though think what will happen even outbreak turns into a dead end. He ponders what kind of poison would require the power of the moon Eden to suppress it in such an extreme manner. He thinks about it deeply. The bloody baby go back after getting all the information. As the sun rises and the day begins. The lady is sitting calmly in her room. She suddenly opens her eyes and sees that Fan has entered her place. Angrily, she asks, Didn't I tell you not to run around? What are you doing here? She shouts on him. Fan is having some fruit. He naively say, But it's already daytime now. You told me not to run around at night. She sternly warns him to stay in the broken house and not move around, even during the day. Fen notices her bad mood and steps back. He is saying, I don't think you are in a good mood. He looks sad. I in an attempt to appease her. He offers her fruits he picked in the morning. He thanks her for accommodating him. The lady looks at the fruits, removes her mask, and starts to eat. She likes them. Fen takes it as a positive sign, thinking, She still ate my fruits. He becomes happy. He thinks, As long as she accepts my treat, that proves that I have a preliminary impression in her heart. 
He plans that the next step is to go further with getting close to her and find out what kind of poison is present inside her body, the medicinal materials that can bring the dead back to life, and the poison that can kill people. They are just a thin line apart, that's it. Fan reflects, anyway, idleness is always laziness, so it's better to start from this plague. Maybe I will get more clues along the way. He smiles and adds, women are the most deceptive creatures, but on the contrary, they are also the easiest to deceive. As the lady sits under a tree in the sun rays, two people enter and start beating Fan, accusing him of collaborating with the girl. She shokes to hear such voices. They are calling him stinky brat and want to kill him. Fan shouts back, defending the girl and insisting that she is a good person. However, the attackers claim that the girl doesn't know how many people have died because of her. Fan say you are not men and you are putting bowl of shit on a girl's head. She is watching this all. They are beating him up. They accuse Fan of being involved with her. Fan is beaten by the group, but he pleads, that girl doesn't deserve this treatment. They kick him and say kill this kid he must not succeed. In his plans, everything that goes around comes around. The attackers continue to assault him, stating that the girl and Fan are probably working together to kill them. They decide to kill Fan before he succeeds. While they are beating him, the plague girl comes out and asks them to stop. They stop to see her and say, it's the plague girl. Careful not to get too close to her. She took his hand and led him away. They all are watching them going. They happily say, finally it's over. They take the money and say, divide it. Divide it. One of them says, man, that's got to be tens of thousands. That brat should be a third-rate family. How could he be carrying so many spirit stones? He says, hey, don't pry into other people's business. If someone is paying for a beating, why do you care? There is a total of 50,000 spirit stones here, the young master said. 1,000 spirit stones per person. No one should take more. The other boy smiles and says, I know. He must want to court the plague girl. But if you want to court someone... You have to court a disciple of the Huayu Tower. Does he have a death wish or something, to try and court the plague? Someone comes and punches him and angrily says, I told you guys before as well, take the money and forget about everything, and no one is allowed to talk about it. If even a single one of you cheeky mouths spreads the news, all of us are going to die. He sees the money and says, it's just a rich young man. What's so scary about that? He slapped him and says, even if he is from a second-rate family, bastard, I told you to stop talking. He pushed back and angrily shouts, you haven't seen it before. That young master, you don't even want to know what the consequences can be. And he thinks, he is a demon in the form of a human. A few disobedient ones were turned to dust by his hand, leaving only me behind. He angrily stands there. There is a house, and she asks Shuafan to eat this. Shuafan turns his face. She says, what is it? Do you think it's poisonous? Shuafan thinks, if I take this healing pill, won't you just turn your head and leave immediately? You told me to get lost. So, why bother saving me? She says, then why did you defend me in front of them? Aren't you afraid of getting beaten to death? Shuafan thinks, of course, it's because I knew that people who have absorbed the power of mooning the night before must stay out in the extreme sun and absorb the scorching air and light to warm their muscles and veins. So, I had already taken the time to spot and find a very sunny place and hired someone to perform a play nearby. When people are disturbed while cultivating, even those with a good temper will go and take a look. It can be said that all of this is according to my plan. Zhuo Fan watches her nervously and thinks to break through her psychological defenses so that she can open her heart and accept herself. Zhuo Fan says while watching her, My mother used to say that the eyes are the windows of the soul, and those with beautiful eyes are not bad in their heart. Sister, your eyes are so beautiful, and you are willing to take me in. You must have a good heart. Those people accuse you of murder, so I will naturally defend your reputation. She turns around and says, You are good at sugarcoating your words. Shuafan smiles and thinks, That's right. The best way for men to break through the psychological defenses of women is not to sweet talk them, but instead to increase their sense of motherhood. He says, Sister, I have known you for a while now, but I still don't know what to call you. Shuafan thinks again, 
that's right, but instead, to increase their sense of motherhood. There are three teachings and nine streams, and all of them can be your teachers. Thank you, Brother Dong. Thank you for your experience at picking up girls. She says, what do you mean by so long? We have only met each other three times. You can call me Sister Chu Chu. Shua Fan smiles and says, okay, Sister Chu Chu. And thinks, acting cute is making me sick to my stomach, but there is no other way. Women just love these kinds of things. I can only endure. She says, now, take this healing pill. Shua Fan smiles and says, Sister Chu Chu, feed me. She comes and feeds him the pill. Suddenly, he grabs her hand. He feels something insane. Shua Fan pushes her back. Shua Fan shockingly thinks, this is something whirring in her body. He is shocked to see inside her body. He stopped to see that inside the body of this girl, there were actually seven different kinds of poison tangled with each other. Each of them can easily kill people, the exact opposite of the medical drug that can bring the dead back to life. He realizes that the seven kinds of poison are used in conjunction with each other, and even an expert of the profound sky realm would definitely die a painful death if exposed to this poison. He shockedly realizes that this poison is so toxic that it cannot be suppressed by the power of Moonin alone. However, inside the body of this girl, there is another substance that can contend with the seven poisons the Bodhi Jade Liquid. With just one drop, you can either live or die. Happily, he thinks, that's right, that is what I was looking for. He becomes happy to see this. The life and death of women is good, but this liquid can restore the vitality of the beast egg. He addresses Sister Chu Chu, thinking that the matter at hand is to find the whereabouts of the Bodhi Jade liquid and a method to extract it from her body. She shockingly asks, What do you think you are doing? This is not going to be easy. Shuafan stands up holding her hands, and says, Sister, your hands are terribly cold, let me warm them. She unties her hand and tells him not to come this way, and then asks why he used you and Lee to detect her just now. He replies, I noticed that your complexion was not looking too good. My family is actually a family of alchemists, so I wanted to see if I could help you. Unexpectedly, my sister still doubts me. The girl replies that her injury is not something that a small third-grade family like his can handle but she thanks him for his help. He shouts, who said that the Song family of Night Rain City has not been cultivating pills for generations. At any rate, my father is a third-grade alchemist, and I have learned everything from him. If you don't believe me, follow me. I will show you my skills, she thinks. I still don't know what went through my head that day. I simply let him pull me away. Maybe I just didn't want to forget the big boy's moment. They reach the guest house, where Dong, along with his sister, is standing and addressing Fan. Miss Dong is shocked to see that Fan is holding a lady's hand. Dong asks brother, who is this? Fan reveals that she is her sister, her new friend. Dong holds his hand and asks him to come. Fan replies, okay brother. You just got here, and you already got a girl. He smiles and says, you are too kind brother. He thinks, if you had not taught me, would I have been able to pull it off? Dong asks about the girl's appearance, and Fan says that he doesn't know since he has never seen her face. Dong exclaims, do you court her without even seeing her? Fan replies confidently, so what? In the end, I am the one who wants her, isn't it? Dong thinks, he has become more like a woman. Is this what true love does to people? When did my brother's sex change? He asks Fan where his carriage is parked, and if it's at the back of the inn. He invites Fan to come with him. They are ready to leave, and Dong thinks, it is so unstable. Where did Sullen and my hot-tempered brother go yesterday? Hey, things like love can really make someone stupid. Brother, you really have fallen. Fan addresses Sister Chu Chu and creates fire from his hands. Dong is shocked to see his precise control at his age. He thinks it's commendable, but just admiration is not enough. They shokes to see him. He wants to see her surprised. Fan is determined to have a better chance at getting the Bodhi Jade liquid if he can surprise her with his alchemy. He is playing with alchemy and fire is blowing in his hands. Dong is asking what are you doing doubt as everyone watches in shock. Fan asks, why did you ruin all the medical ingredients? Dong is shocked and asks Sun Yu, what are you doing? 
I thought you would make progress, so why don't you even know the basic knowledge of alchemy? You gathered all the herbs together, and with the amount of flame you used, you will destroy all the herbs. The girl is thinking that a kid is still a kid after all, and his character is open to questions. How can he practice alchemy? Fan replies that as an alchemist, he wouldn't know if his own pills are ruined or not, so he asks Dong to evaluate it for him. He gives a pill to Dong, who is shocked to see that the pill is refined. He asks, how is that possible? The girl thinks, looking at the color and fragrance of the pill, that although it is a second-grade pill, it is definitely the best of the best. This is the first time she's seeing such an alchemy technique. She thinks that this technique is called the One Palm of Heaven and Earth from the Nine Books of Secret, which is not known even in the Holy Land. How can mere mortals have a look at the secret technique of the ancient times? Fan thinks if it were not for the Bodhi Jade Liquid, I would not have shown this secret technique here in public. The most important thing now is to gain Chu Chu's trust. He comes closer to her and asks, I see that your palm is cold. So, I will give you this sun-warming pill. The girl answers, I appreciate your kindness, but a second-grade sun-warming pill is still useless to me. He replies, that is not necessarily true. How would you know if you have not tried it? The girl thinks, looking at him strangely, would it be that this pill was made using a special technique? It seems different from the other pills I have used so far. She puts the pill closer to her mouth and eats it. Afterward, she is surprised and thinks, what is going on? As soon as it entered my body, it felt like a small sun, glowing and continuously warming my entire body. Normally, a young attribute pill cannot contend with the yin qi in my body, but this still has turned into a hot gas which is different from the sun gas but even gentler and also better for healing veins. She thinks, the most key part is that it does not conflict with my energy so much, so I am able to absorb the entire pill. This is something I had not even dreamed of. Fan addresses her and asks, How is it, sister? My pill should be different from the rest. She replies, I did not expect you to be so extraordinary at alchemy at such a young age. I am sure in a few years, you will be famous all over the empire. Fan thinks, I am already famous all over the world, so sister, it is just that you don't know. He smiles and says, if you have any problem in the future, don't hide it from me. I will definitely come up with a solution. The girl looks at him and thinks, really? I urgently need a top chemist to help remove the poison from my body. It is just. Fan internally thinks, just give me the Bodhi Jade liquid, you piece of shit. And even if you don't have it on you, just show me where you have kept it, sister. Dong, along with Dan, comes to him and gives a laughter to say, kid, you finally showed up. I have been waiting for you here for an entire day. Everyone is surprised to see him. Fan thinks, damn it, just when she was about to tell me the whereabouts of the Bodhi Jade liquid, you dare to mess with us at such a moment. He angrily thinks, coding death. He says, well, never mind. Let me just keep being a good boy. The boy smiles and says, kid, I hear you're quite tough. Fan hugs Sister Choo Choo and says, sister, the one who bled me is here again. Help me beat them up. Everybody looks at him confusingly. The boy asks Miss Dan, is this really the guy you were talking about? The kid who dared to bully you yesterday. Does he not have any backbone at all? Miss Dan thinks, he was not like this yesterday. He was so proud and fearless, even when he met my master. Why has he turned into a small scared cat this time around? She says to Mr. Yen, that's the guy who played me yesterday, but he was very different yesterday. He replies, don't be scared. If it is this kid, I will vent out your anger for you today. He moves towards Fan and says, I don't care if you are a wimp a coward, or a real fool. You dare to offend my seventh family, and the fact that you severely injured Lin Tianyu yesterday is already worthy of my personal attention. She asks, you defeated Lin Tianyu? I thought you could not even defeat a third-rate family member. She looks at him and thinks, how can you say that a seven-layer bone refinement expert just fell down and hurt himself? Fan smiles and says, what if I said that he fell and hurt himself? Would you believe me? Dong is confused and thinks, Brother, can you at least be subtle while lying? How can you say that a seven-layer bone refinement expert just fell down 
and hurt himself. Sister Chuchu replies, If you admit that you lied to me from the beginning, I might still be able to forgive you. But when you said that, you were obviously playing me for an idiot. She moves away and says, You have made this mess on your own, clean it up yourself. Fan shouts to stop her and says, Sister Chu Chu, let me explain. She runs away when becoming furious and says, Both of you came neither sooner nor later. He looks at them and says, But at the exact time and ruined all my plans. The girl feels and Yen says, Well, he is one. He says, No wonder that Lin Tian Yu was badly injured. He looks at his hand and thinks, Such intense killing intent. Although he is just at the first level of the bone refinement realm, dot he looks at him and thinks, his killing intent is so intense that only the beast king of the whistling forest can exert it. He shouts, saying, It is a pity that you have met me today. I am Yen, the Medicine King Valley's vicious Medicine King Yen Song's first disciple, Yen Fu. I am not the same as that trash. That guy is an abandoned son of the Kwaihua who is just trying to please his wife. I am the next successor to be the Vicious Medicine King. Fan thinks, Vicious Medicine King. That title is something only the Medicine King Hall of the Seventh Imperial Family can obtain. The first alchemist, the Medicine King of the Medicine Valley, has to have not only the best alchemy skill in this world, but his skill in refining poison must also be unrivaled. It is said that he should be number one in the world, whether it is about killing someone or saving them. However, both life and death are in the hand. I am the true medicine king. He deeply thinks about what it means to have the title of the medicine king. Fan smiles and says, in other words, you are good with poison. He runs towards Yen to attack. It results in a big destruction while Fan is standing and asks, the next vicious medicine king. Everyone gets shocked at this. Fan goes closer to the lady and says, are you just going to rely on men? Even if another man comes along, it will still be the same. He laughs. Yen stands up and comes out saying, that was really fast. I am afraid he is already the first person to be under the heavenly profound realm. Fan replies, you can still laugh even after being beaten to a pulp. This is the first time I am seeing something like this. Yen replies, since this gentleman can laugh, it means he is sure of victory. Fan smiles and says, sure or within, I know about your medicine king palace. You guys are good not only at alchemy but also at using poison. But no matter what the poison is, you have to touch me to use it on me, right? Can you catch me? Yen gives a laughter and says, This mortal boy as respected you really doesn't have any sort of insight. My master is revered by the seven families. If his use of poison was still subject to many restrictions, why would the seven families be afraid of him? Fan looks at him and thinks, this kid is really unpredictable with his poison. I came into contact with his poison without even realizing. Yen runs towards him and says, Take that. This is the profound tear martial skill passed down from generations to generations within our Medicine King Palace. Fan is confused and thinks, The power of the Medicine King Palace lies mainly in using poison with either speed nor boldness. Therefore, their defense is considered the weakest. As soon as he uses the skill, he hides himself in the poisonous mist, making people afraid of approaching him. He smiles and thinks, but it is a pity that you have met me today. You won't get your way. He suddenly looks shocked and says, no, standing up for their disciple, they should be people from Huayu Tower. When did this kid manage to grab their attention? It seemed like this boy was avenging that little Miss Dan but he was actually let here on purpose by them to test my strength that he realizes that there is something going on here, exciting this kid to come here first. It seems that the owner of the Qinghua Tower is not sure about who I am yet. He smiles and thinks, presumably, now there are a good number of profound experts watching this fight. What a meticulous plan. Since that is the case, you really cannot beat me no matter what. Yen gives a laughter and says, I thought you were prideful of your speed, kid. Come in here and fight if you have the ability. Fan replies, do you think I am stupid to go in there and get poisoned? If you have the guts, then come out. I don't believe that you will be able to stay in there forever. I will just deal with you when you run out of stamina and chi. Yen gives a laughter and says, if you think that the colorful cloud palm is just a defensive martial skill, then you are very wrong. Today, 
This gentleman will show you what the most perfect martial art skill looks like. He runs towards Fan to attack. Fan is shocked at his speed. Yen gives a laughter and says, Look with your eyes wide open. The colorful cloud palm of our Medicine King Palace can be both offensive and defensive. No matter what you do, your death is inevitable. Fan looks at him and says, Close. The man who uses poison is both the strongest and the weakest. Once the power of poison loses effect, he becomes the weakest man alive. Basically, cultivators at the same level of cultivation won't give a shit about you anymore. Among the ten ancient imperial families, none of them were known as the king of poison. After breaking your poisonous palm and kicking your medicine king palace out of the seventh imperial family, it will be your turn to cry. For now, let's bear with it. Yen addresses him and says, Kid, just because you are better than the average person, don't you dare think that you can just bully the people of the seventh imperial family. Let me tell you, you may not care about the other families, but you have messed with our medicine king palace. Your death is certain. Fan angrily thinks, you fucker, when did I mess with your medicine king palace? You are the one who came here to pick a fight. The kid is too arrogant. I will teach him a lesson after he loses that he looks at Yen and realizes that he is tired. Yen looks at him and says, an opening. He gives him a blow of poison. Fan looks backward and runs. Fan gives him a hit on his chest, and he falls away. Fan says, you piece of shit, you are good at using poison, but I am going to kill you today. He gives multiple hits to his body, and blood comes out of his mouth. Yen sits on the floor and says, insane. You are just insane Dachua Fan is standing in heroic tone about to kill him. Fan gives a laughter and hits Yen on his face. He is saying, Indeed, I am insane since it's certain death for me. I might as well kill you before I die. This can be considered revenge for myself. He holds his face and punches him. Everyone looks on in shock, thinking that judging by the injury, Han Fu only has a flesh wound and a bit of trauma. It is not fatal at all. The lady is thinking that on the other hand, this guy is already so poisoned that it won't take long for him to drop dead from the poison. But in terms of momentum, he is torturing his opponent like a victor, and Yen Fu is like a loser, kowtowing and begging for mercy. She is left wondering how can it be. He is obviously a diamond, but even then, meeting his death scene still stands like he's the strongest man in the world. She has never seen a man like this ever before. She really hopes he survives, but it is oblivion portentous for anyone to survive the Medicine King Palace poison. It is horror that of Medicine King Palace. Fan holds his face and smiles, saying, Didn't you say that your Pill Palace martial arts are invincible? Didn't you also want me dead? Yen says, I will die with you today. Let's see if it is going to be you or me who will have a quicker death. Suddenly, someone pushes Fan back. Master Yen arrives and gives a pin to his disciple. Fifth Elder stands on the roof and watches all this, saying, They all say that they are afraid of being scorned, and those who are scorned are afraid of death. Don't tell me that this kid's separate fighting style is really the nemesis of the Medicine King Palace. He adds, If the other six families were like this kid, does parading against the Medicine King Palace, how could the Medicine King be so arrogant? I really like this kid's temperament. He gives a laughter. Beside him, Lin Zitin is standing and says, Now I understand why Qianyu was defeated. Having met such a disparate lunatic, it is hard not to lose when his strength is formidable. But now, not many people in the world can be like this young man even when encountering an invincible opponent to fight to the death. Most people think of running for their lives first, and by the time they react, it is already too late. So the Medicine King Palace is still to be feared. Fifth Elder replies, it is a pity. This kid has a strong physique. If he enters through my doors and becomes my disciple, he will become a great weapon in the future. But now that he is poisoned by the Medicine King Palace, he will be dying soon. He flies away, and Lin Zidin shouts, Fifth Elder, this boy is really not Shua Fan. Fifth Elder stops at his name and says, Zhao Fan is as treacherous as a fox, as cunning as a wolf, as sinister as a snake and as vicious as a tiger. But this kid does not look anything like Fan, and on top of that, he is an idiot. Even though he is not afraid of life and death, 
he is still far from being Zhuo Fan. He addresses Lin Zitin and says, listen carefully. Fan is a hundred times scarier than this kid. Lin Zitin thinks that the top five elders of Yuming Valley are the pillars of the valley, the strongest of warriors. A young man who could make even these five elders so afraid of him must have a terrible character. Miss Dong shouts at Shua Fan to call Song Yu. Her brother stops her. Master Yen addresses her and says, Little girl, you come take care of my disciple. Dan asks, Do you mean me? Yen shouts, Nonsense, my apprentice was seriously injured to this state because he stood up for you. If you don't come, who will? My disciple got so badly hurt for you. How dare you still dislike him? She comes closer to him, and he says, I don't care. I don't dare. Just don't dare it. It is only fair for my disciple to have fallen in love with you. If you ever wrong him, I will make your life worse than hell. He goes closer to Fan. Fan looks at him and thinks, I have been poisoned and I am dying, yet you are still coming this way. You are not going to finish me off yourself, are you? Even though I have the body of a fifth-grade magic treasure, that blow of a profound sky master still does a lot of damage to me. Even at the very least, that Yuan Force impact would have still shaken all my internal organs. If that is the case, I will be forced to do it. I will have to reveal my identity to protect myself. Here he comes. What the thundering? Could it be that kid doubt he is shocked to see that his ring is thundering? Medicine King chokes at someone laughter point two people come across him and give all after to say, the Medicine King Palace Elder, Yen Song, Medicine King. What a great character. Xie Tianyang, along with his master, is coming towards them. He addresses him and says, but it turns out you are just bullying the youngster one. Zhuo Fan watched as the situation unfolded, and he couldn't help but feel grateful that Xie Tianyang had arrived just in time. He think that kid couldn't come at a better time doubt he noticed that Elder Yen Song from the Medicine King Palace was still upset about the earlier confrontation and was ready to challenge Xie Tianyang. Medicine King addressed Xie Tianyang and say who is this brat what to meddle in my affairs. He angrily asked out however, Xie Tianyang's master intervened and advised him not to interfere, reminding him that is not Hu's concern. Xie Tianyang replied they were in Huayu City not the territory of the Medicine King Palace. Why should he afraid of him? The Eight Elder thinks since the battle at Qingming City this kid loves to fight against injustice. He think he is not being able to see anyone getting bullied. He thinks who did Shua Fan mess with here and away in a flash, and you represent the entire Jianhou Mansion why do you keep learning from that kid? He asks himself why do you want to mess with everyone, and why did you have to mess with the Medicine King this time? Then he come forward towards Medicine King and try to apologize. He say I'm Elder Jian Suifeng from the Jianhou Mansion apologize on behalf of their junior. They recognizing that they had offended Elder Yen Song. Yen Song realized that the person who had confronted him earlier was from the Jianhou Mansion, and he decided not to pursue the matter further, considering the face he was given. He say no wonder that is so bold and he say forget it this old man gave some face that is why he did not personally disciple that kid anyway since that kid has already been poisoned and by mild cycle and he will not believing for long. The eight elder internally think this old man shouted the word disciple so loudly you are just warning us to keep our mouth shut about the fact that you are indeed bullying the young ones. He is my land as he elder song is a great and famous teacher with an outstanding disciple how can someone ordinary person be your disciple's opponent this kid deserved to die for daring to fight with your beside he tried to please him. The medicine king look at Dandan and run away. The eight elder find this peaceful that elder Yen leave. Zay Tianyang get angry and say those bastards all they do is bully the weak every day they are disgraced to the seventh imperial family. Meanwhile, Tianyang felt helpless as he couldn't find a solution. Eight elder tell him that come on do you think you are that monster Zhuo Fan who can take care of everything do you think how dangerous it was just now the poison hand medicine king is so better than the seventh ghost at least that seventh boost used to cultivate everything when you encounter anything you must cultivate the games and losses and refrain from taking action right now. Say Tianyang confusingly listen to him and ask but this medicine eight elder interrupt him and say if he is this satisfied with someone and even if that person is from the seventh imperial family he will not hesitate to kill immediately on top of that it is impossible to different against him. 
say Tianyang surrender. Miss Dong is crying and asking him if you are the young master of Jianho Madison. She asked him to save Brother Song who is poisoned by Medicine King she is crying. Zay Tianyang asked it elder if there is any the elder reply it is the Medicine King Palace poison who in the world can cure it if it could have been cured rights and King Palace would not have been filled by 7 p.m. houses. He addressed Haymond as see this is none of your business. Zay Tianyang feels sorry and say I am sorry little girl I cannot help you I am sorry for your loss. They left. Dong is thinking in the end Brother Song suffered through the disaster for us let's send his body back to the city for a proper burial. From now on this Song family will be our closest family. However, Chu Chu stepped forward and expressed her determination to heal her brother herself. She enters in and say he was hit by the Medicine King Palace seven colored cloud palm which is very poisonous if you touch his corpse you will be get infected with the same poison. They both shocked to know this. Miss Dong asked then what should we do you cannot just let Brother Song body be exposed to the wilderness. She replied just leave him to me. She bring him with her and fly away she say I will heal him. They are thinking a poison that even the seventh imperial family and Jianho Mansion could do nothing about can Chu Chu a country girl cure it. These three poisons are the most poisonous in the world they keep with each other and the toxicity is constantly changing which is very strange. Expect for my celestial demon transformation technique, which can melt the poison in one go, an antidote of the Medicine King Palace is there any way to cure it? Shua Fan is thinking could it be? This is the daytime. The girl is standing in the house while Shua Fan is laying on the bed injured. Chu Chu holding a bottle and opens the cap. Shua Fan smell the liquid and say this is exactly what I have been looking for. A heavenly treasure Bodhi Jade liquid. He become happy. She give few drops in his mouth. He feels such a powerful vital energy his body wore up and he think it spreads throughout your entire body you cannot help but incredibly comfortable. He thinks but it is more than just comfortable. He say in shivered voice big sister you should have put that drop of Bodhi Jade roots on my egg. He is taking about his egg. He was lying on the bed, deep in thought. Three hours had passed and the medicine seemed to have nearly cured the poison in his body. As he woke up, he saw Chu Chu tending to him, using her profound skills to help him recover. He couldn't help but be impressed by the cold energy she was using to cleanse his body. Although he had already managed to neutralize most of the poison, he knew that the Medicine King Palace's poison was exceptionally dangerous, and removing it entirely was no easy task. He noticed that Chu Chu seemed to have a good understanding of this poison, which piqued his curiosity. However, he had to be cautious. He couldn't let Chu Chu discover his true intentions. Otherwise, his identity might be exposed, and the consequences would be dire. Chu Chu expressed her disbelief at how peculiar the pill palace poison had become, mentioning that she had to work hard to heal him. She finally moved backward and say I cannot believe this pill palace poison is getting weirder and weirder. She say I am disciple to this but I had to work work fan is thinking of course it's going to take a lot of effort after all you channel most of your energy into my body all of it has been devolved by me already he is smiles. Fan couldn't help but smile, knowing that he had absorbed most of her energy during the process. He wakes up and ask where am I he looks at her and happily say sister Chu Chu finally you are back I thought you were mad at me and were ignoring me. Chu Chu look at him and think unexpectedly that's the first thing that comes out of this silly boy's mouth after skipping from death he is glad not to be alive but to see me again. She say who said that I am not angry anymore you could beat that yen fu like that and still be a body tempering relam cultivator she angry say. You did to pretend to be weak in front of me tell me what is your goal. He smile and reply what other goal I would have you work quite cruel to me when I first met you that day. He say that but I knew you were a good person and that you are willing to take me in even when there are hard feelings so I wanted to get close to you to know you better and to be your friend. Chu Chu Essie come on who is even going to believe you she moves forward. She reveals that she was watching the battle behind between him and Yen Fu. She say you are fierce and foul mouth you are definitely not a gentleman looking for solace or comfort. She say would someone like you make friends with a stranger. He is thinking that this Chu Chu really has seen a lot of people she even knows that you can tell a person true character from the way they look in battle. He gives a laughter and sister Chu Chu do you really want me to tell you? 
He internally think Brother Dong I will be using your pickup technique this time as well. She asked what do you really have an ulterior motive for approaching me? He reply I cannot say what the purpose is all I can say is just I just want to get close to you. He reveals that Sister Chu Chu I really don't take the initiative to make friends but because you are exceptional. She is listening to him and feels some shy. She said you have not seen me before how do you know I am a beauty? He is thinking that by initiative has finally returned to my hands thanks again brother thank you for your experiencing at picking up girls. He say sister I said this is while ago as well your eyes are very beautiful so I came to the conclusion that you must be beautiful. She angry is a nonsense the way your eyes look has nothing to do with how you actually look. He moves forward and say who say it doesn't matter my mother said the pret the eyes the better looking the woman. She say your mother talk nonsense. He moves forward and try to remove her veil and say well let me see it then. Sister Choo Choo suddenly run and say don't touch me I am ugly and I don't want to scare you if you do something senseless don't blame me for being not polite to you. He replied Sister Choo Choo I cannot beat you what are you afraid of. She say well don't ever make that joke again whatever the purpose of your approaching me was I am leaving here soon anywhere. She say we may never see each other again in life and it doesn't matter. He shouts and say what you are leaving where are you going? He think where will I find the Bodhi Jade roots after you leave? She reply you don't have to ask and I will not tell you that this is the last time I will see you and we will not see each other again. Fan is thinking if I want to get the Bodhi Jade liquid this is the only chance to get it she is also a profound sky realm expert so a fight will be to no easy and it would definitely attract other experts that is not going to end well I will have to finish this with one move. Here on towards her and say sister Choo Choo don't leave I cannot bear you leaving. Choo Choo look at him and turns toward him. Fan's mine and think I will force her to hand over the Bodhi Jade liquid. If she defuses to give it to me then I will just kill her and find it her on. He is trying to attack on her and think even if it is afraid from a moment ago if they get in my way I am going to kill. Suddenly he stopped to see her face because her veil drop off. She is extremely beautiful girl. He is looking at her stunning beauty and forget his motive. She give him a hard slap and he falls away. She is crying and runs away. Shua Fan is laying down and thinking what just happened who am I where am I what I am doing. He is in extreme wonder. Fan is standing, lost in his thoughts. He's amazed by the beauty he witnessed earlier when he was with Chu Chu. He never thought he would encounter such mesmerizing beauty in the world. He admits to himself that he was teasing her before, but now he realizes that she truly is the most beautiful woman he has ever seen. Her drifting and cornered eyes make her stand out, and he believes that no one in the world can match Chu Chu's looks. He can't stop thinking about the jade liquid she mentioned, regretting that he didn't ask for it when he had the chance. Three days have passed since then, and suddenly Dong and his sister approach him with joy, relieved to see that he is safe and sound. Fan rushes towards Dong and greets him happily, but in a playful manner, he gives Dong a hit with his magical finger as a greeting. Fan thanks Yen Fu's deadly poisons combined with the cold Yin energy from Chu Chu, which helped him break through to the second layer of the bone forging realm. Now, he believes he can take on special profound sky realm masters who specialize in body refining. Dong playfully responds, acknowledging that Fan is from a second grade family and has come to visit his third grade humble abode, teasing him in return. Dong notices Fan's earlier injury and wonders why he couldn't enter a certain room feeling like something was repelling him. Fan explains that he was in seclusion for the past three days and put up defensive formations around the house to avoid disturbances. Impressed by Fan's knowledge of formations and alchemy, Dong playfully remarks that if he hadn't seen Fan's transformation, he would have thought someone else was standing in front of him. Fan credits his change to the influence of Miss Dong and Master Dong. He reflects on his past mistakes when he was young and greedy but is grateful for the enlightenment he received. Miss Dong, seeing Fan's achievements, feels a bit ashamed of herself, thinking that someday she should work hard too. Fan internally acknowledges that Dong has potential and, with hard work, he could become strong. He decides not to hit Dong this time. Dong asks about Chu Chu and is surprised that she actually saved Fan. Fan explains that he missed a great opportunity and now he regrets it deeply. Dong advises him not to wait for Chu Chu, 
suggesting that she might have moved on to someone else. He encourages Fan not to have unrequited love when there are plenty of other options. Fan becomes irritated, denying that he is infatuated or worried about love. He regrets not making a move and seizing the opportunity to ask for the jade liquid. Dong clarifies that he came to check on Fan's injuries and for the safety of their families, but there's also another place he wants to take him. Fan agrees to go with Dong, curious about the information he might gather. They arrive at a residence called the Qinghua House, on the first floor of the 15th floor of Huayu. Fan recognizes it as the place owned by Qin Kai Qin. Dong reveals that frequent murder instances are occurring due to the feud with the Mutin House and Xiao Dan Dan. He plans to ask the approachable master of the Qinghua House to help resolve the issue to avoid danger and annihilation. He is thinking that if that house master rally in 10D to help she would not have let that Dandan to run wild again, and about the purpose of her doing is it is just to test my identity. Fan sees this as an opportunity to test his identity after his recent battle with Yen Fu. He is thinking that but this is good to I would like to meet the master of the house personally let's see how much of the suspicious still remains after battle with Yen Fu Fan agrees to visit the Qinghua house with Dong, grateful for his thoughtfulness, and concern. He say our two families must be her a visit. He smiles like a evil. They arrive at Huayu House. Dong moves forward and asks the guard girls, please report to the owner that the Dong family's siblings and the Song family's son are here. It is an important matter that requires an audience with the owner of the Qinghua House. The girl replies, even second and third grade families want to meet our house owner, but how could it be that easy? Fan looks at her and moves forward, saying, You two girls, do you know Xiao Dandan? They look at each other and say, She is our senior sister. Do you know her? But even if you know her, she belongs to the Mutin house, and this is the Qinghua house. We are not going to give you a visit just to give her some face. Fan gives a laugh and says, I am not here to work through the back door. Maybe you have not got the news of it. She was stripped naked by a man on the streets. There was just one last piece of shade left. Both girls feel shame. Pan smiles and says, that man was me. Believe it or not, if you don't report this, I will strip you naked and throw you on the streets in the sun. Both girls become angry and shout, don't you dare, this is the Qinghua house. Fan replies, what difference does it make? She shouts and says, you just wait here. I will inform the owner. Dong feels bad about this act. Fan says, brother. Intimidation is more useful than any other way to deal with these people who look down on you. Dong sadly says, Oh my vice brother, he thinks, I only hope that the Qinghua house master is magnanimous and does not give us the benefit of the doubt. The owner asks the three of them to enter. They enter without saying thanks to the girl's point one girl gossips to the other. Didn't you report this kid's obscenity to the owner? How could the owner still invite them? Shouldn't they be upperhanded and punished severely? The other girl replies, Sister, stop it. It is useless. Do you know what the owner said? Just seven words. He is a lunatic. Don't mess with him. Both girls are shocked to see his face and shiver with fear. They all come in front of the master. Fan looks at her. Dong says, We have come to meet the owner of the Qinghua house. The master smiles and says, No need to be so polite. Three of you, please come take a seat. They respectively say, no, we would not dare. She graciously offers them seats and says, thanks a lot. The Dong family is shocked and says, what are you doing? This is Qinghua House, be casual about it. Do you think you are at your home right now? If you provoke the owner, it is not just your Song family that will be buried with you, but also our family as well. I was kind enough to bring you here to beg for mercy. If I had known you were going to be so presumptuous in front of the owner, I wouldn't have brought you here at all, dot, he says, my apologies, your honor. My brother does not know manners and is used to being reckless. Please don't blame him. The girl smiles and says, gentleman's song is temperamental. How could this owner blame him? There are two more places left. You don't have to feel so restrained. Please come take a seat. They both say, thank you. Now that the owner has said, sister, let's just sit down. They both go and sit. The master addresses him and says, this isn't the hell. You don't have to be so nervous. It is good to be like Mr. Song next to you, 
Song is eating grapes. Dong looks at him and says, Daring to be so presumptuous at Qinghua House, I think he is going to make us all lose our heads before he stops. That he looks at him but says, Rumor had it the owner was easy to approach, but I never expected her to be approachable. She didn't even mind it, but just made things a lot easier. Dot he says, Honor, three of us have come here to ask for something. She says, It's fine. Tell me, owner of a few days, ended Miss Danden of Huayu Tower so much that we have been living in fear for the past two days. I am here to ask the owner to become a peacemaker and help us resolve this. This Song and Dong family will never forget this great kindness. She replies, well, that girl has gone too far. I will teach her a lesson. It's just that I am a little curious. I heard that Mr. Song was hit by Yen Fu's seven-colored cloud fall because of that little girl. How come he is cured in just a matter of a few days? She gives a laughter and says, Gentleman Song, you had such a strong encounter. If it is not your destiny to die, there will be blessings in the future. Fan replies, Thank you for your kind words. Dong thinks that it seems fine, and he is wearing a storage ring. He addresses her and says, Honor, this screen is a small token of my appreciation. Please accept it since the owner will have to work hard on this matter. Fan thinks, this bottom line for this screen is at least one lakh spiritual stones. The master replies, I appreciate your kind gesture, but take it back. I will take care of Dan, so you don't have to worry. Dong insists, this screen is a small token of my appreciation. Owner, you must accept it, or else how will I be able to rest assured? He thinks, if you don't accept my gift, how can I relax? She finally agrees, all right, I will accept it. Come on, carry it. Fan says, now that the owner has accepted it, let's get to the matter at hand. She asks them to wait a minute and mentions that they have come a long way to be her guests and given her a great gift. She offers them a special brew from the Baiwa Qinjiang, which is the original brew of their tower and is very good for cultivation. She says, consider it as a return gift from the owner of the house. Dong replies, since it is the owner's hospitality, the three of us will have to drink it. Chua Fan looks at the brew, and Dong starts drinking it. Suddenly, both of them fall asleep. Fan asks if there is anything the owner would like to talk to him about alone. She replies, clever, there is indeed one thing I need you to do. Once it is done, you guys can safely walk out of the Hua City. If you cannot do it, not only will you not make it out alive, but your family will be buried with you. Fan asks, are you threatening me? She clarifies, it is not a threat, just a condition. I know you are a stunner and not afraid of anything. But didn't you come here to ask me to settle that situation with Dan Dan? If you don't do this for me, I will not care about what happens with Dan Dan. Given that girl's temper, either of your families will have anything to eat. Fan replies, what is the matter if I cannot do it? You'd better put an end to both of us. She thinks, madman, he is definitely a madman. How can he be so indifferent when he is in the face of danger? A person like him is really difficult to control. She says, I am not asking you to die. I am just asking you to be a thief and steal something for me. Fan asks, what is that? She replies, that treasure of our Huayu Tower, the Bodhi Roots. This shocks Fan, and he says, what is it? Say it again, Dot, he thinks, the Bodhi Roots contain the essence of life condensed from the essence of the earth, and the jade liquid is extracted from the Bodhi Roots. Never would I have imagined that after losing the jade liquid, I have a clue about the Bodhi Roots. My God is in my favor. He happily says, Why would the owner, who is the high-ranking member of the tower, ask me to do this? She replies, You don't have to ask about that. Just do as told. Fan worries, yes, but the tower is heavily guarded, so what about me? She reassures him, Don't worry about that. I have already made arrangements. I remember the layout of the inside of the Huayu Tower very clearly. She gives him a map and says, The patrol routes and shift change times have been marked as well. With your skills, as long as you are smart, sneaking is no problem. He thinks, This is the perfect opportunity to see the Bodhi routes. But if there is some sort of scheme, she might have set a trap for me. By the time I am done, more than a dozen Tangshuan masters might be waiting to ambush me from all sides. Even if I have wings, I might not be able to fly out. 
However, this is a really rare opportunity. She says, have you decided whether you are going to do it, Mr. Song? Let me make it clear. If you refuse to do it, this matter will be revealed, and if that happens, I will dig out your eyes, your tongue, your hands, and your feet. He replies, well, do I still have a choice? But the owner of the house, you are too vicious. If you are going to cut off everything, I would rather just die. She reassures him, I will not take someone's life without reason. It is only if you read the drawings and don't do anything to prevent the secrets from leaking. It will be only natural to be foolproof. After all, Mr. Song, you are a strange man. Who knows what you will do? What if you could write with your feet that he thinks? The women of this tower are truly unfortunate. This heart of the one is more vicious than the other. But in this world, we cannot survive without being vicious. A simple girl like Ninger, if she had not met a double like me, she would have probably already been refined by the Yuming Valley as a cauldron. She says, Mr. Song, then we have a deal. You will do it tonight. This shocks him, and he asks so soon. She replies, Mr. Song, there is something you don't know. The Bodhi roots are only stored in the treasure hall during the lunar months of the year. But during normal times, someone will keep it personally. That person is the chief owner of the Huayu house, or you could say the most beautiful woman in the world, who is Chu Qingqing. Zhuo Fan suddenly think about Chu Chu. Fan says Tianyu's first beauty, Chu Qingqing. He asks about her cultivation base. She replies, she is my senior sister, and her current cultivation should be at the third layer of the profound sky realm. Fan thinks, third layer of the profound sky realm, I should be able to deal with it. He says, okay, let's do it tonight. She says, just a word is enough. Dong and her sister wake up. Dong says, it is worthy of the name by Hua Qinjiang. What a strong tonic. It is the first time I have ever had such a tonic wine. I got drunk instantly. He laughs. Zhuo Fan brings out her bloody baby and says, I want to take a look at what kind of medicine the owner of the Qinghua house is selling. The bloody baby goes into Huayu house and he is shocked to see the girl sitting there. Medicine King Yen Song is also present that he is holding her shoulder and asking, Why did you do that? She replies, I feared that old man. After all, I am the owner of this house. If this plot gets revealed, how will I be able to stay in the Huayu Tower? And now I have got that stupid kid to do it for me. When I get the item, I will take care of him, and no one else will suspect me. Song Yen says, working for this old man and still thinking about your future. This kid is just at the bone forging realm. If something goes wrong or anything bad happens to this old man, I am going to blame you. He pushes her and continues, as a matter of fact, among the fifteen floors of this Huayu Tower, more than half of the owners are already under my control. This tower will soon become part of the Medicine King Palace and become the first of the seven families to be annexed. So, what if you get caught? He laughs and says, With me here, you can still deal with the owner of the Qinghua house. It is not just for the tower, but for the Medicine King Palace as well. She says, But you just heard what the kid said. Someone who can cure your poison has appeared in the city. If your raspberry is lifted and those honors are blackmailed by you again. He becomes furious and says, Have you been waiting for someone like that to come along to save you from the crisis of Huayu Tower? Stop dreaming, he lifts up his leg to kick her on the face and says, My medicine king palace's seven colorful cloud palm is made from seven of the world's greatest poisons. There is no cure for it. Today, it was lucky that he got to fight my people who are only trained in three types of poison. If I was the one to do it, even if all the alchemists in the world worked together, he would not be able to survive. He laughs again while she is crying and says, Bitch, when you get the item, you better take care of that kid. Otherwise, you and your sister won't have a need to join us. You can just obediently wait for your death. He moves away and smiles. A woman is a woman. You just need to be a man, bitch. He laughs and says, yet you are still trying to compete with men. What a daydream. She is crying while the bloody baby watches it all. Fan thinks that place. Everything, I can give it a go. The bloody baby comes back. And he thinks, anyway, when I get this Bodhi roots, I will just pat myself on the back and walk away from here. As for the Song and Dong families, sorry, 
but please take the fall for me this time. You are helping me withstand the thunder. Consider it a favor to me. He smiled like an evil and last. This is the night time in Huayu Tower. Guards are on duty. Fan sits on the roof, analyzing the map. He says, fortunately, Qin Kaiching is that traitor. Otherwise, how would I know that there are actually so many defensive formations here? Please come to an end. That target is close at hand, protected inside the Hubao Pavilion. Bodhi roots. He jumps on the floor and thinks, someone has changed the formation. The inner courtyard of the tower is guarded by a fifth grade formation. The heaven and earth shifting formation. Every corner of the courtyard will follow the function of the formation and move the heavens and the earth. I will change their orientation, not to mention outsiders, even the inner disciples won't be able to understand the terrains inside anymore. As Qin Kai Qin, tower master of the first floor of the fifteenth floor of Huayu Tower, naturally knew the pattern of each movement. He is sitting and looking at the map, so this diagram also indicates the location of various important places in the inner courtyard at this moment in time. For now, it seems like the position has been moved a long time ago, and it is no longer in the original position. He flies away and enters the tower, summoning his bloody baby. He thinks, it is getting more troublesome in this way. If I want to find the Hubao Pavilion, I will have to search each and every area. He sends his bloody baby across the house and is shocked to see an upper foundation Sky Realm expert sitting in a room and eating his meal. This person is the eighth elder of Jianho Mansion. Tianyang is also here, and the elder is asking him, you have been practicing very hard lately. I am sure it will not take you long to catch up with your big brother. Tianyang replies, My father said that my elder brother is a rare genius who has not appeared in Jianho Mansion for thousands of years. In the future, his achievements will be limitless, and I am afraid that even the gods cannot stop it. How can I even compare with him? He angrily thinks, As long as my strength catches up with that kid, I will be satisfied. The elder asks, You mean Zhuafan? Tianyang replies, Indeed, eight elder. I have not done anything I regret since I was a child. The only regret I have is when I was in Qiming City. I regret not working hard during my usual practice. I could not help Ninga when she needed it the most. I really hope that the next time she needs someone to protect her, it will not be Zhuafan. The elder sadly says, In this position, the family will not let you marry a woman from a second-rate family. Tianyang says, I know, but this time, that bastard fan taught me one thing as long as you are strong enough, there is nothing impossible under the heavens. You have always told me how powerful the seventh boost was and not to mess with him. In the end, he died at fan's hand, didn't he? The bloody baby is watching all this from the window. Tianyang says, as long as I am strong enough, I will make my own decisions about my marriage. Even my father cannot do anything about it. The elder asks Tianyang, where are you going? He replies, to practice sword. I have already mastered the fourth style out of the nine ethereal forms. It is time to practice the fifth one. The elder is shocked and asks, what? You have already mastered the fourth form. Tianyang thinks, seeing Zhuafan fight must have really stimulated him. If he keeps up this momentum, he will probably break through the profound sky realm soon. He thinks, unexpectedly, Zhuafan Fan considered me as an opponent he has to surpass. But that's good. Looking at that kid's high spirits, I can trust Ninger to him. The bloody baby goes back and Fan realizes that all the houses are identical. No matter how you move the Hubao Pavilion, it will be next to the main room on the 15th floor. It will definitely not be near these empty rooms. Where the hell are the owner's rooms? The bloody baby hears someone asking, Sister Dan Dan, just let me kiss you just once. He hears Mr. Yan's voice saying, Please don't. The bloody baby realizes that these are the voices of Dan Dan and Yan Fu. They go to the window to see if there are any clues. I in the room. Yan Fu is holding Dan Dan and saying, Your fiancé has already been beaten to a pulp by that kid. He cannot make you happy anymore, so you would better be with me. Fan realizes that Medicine King Yen Fu is truly worthy of being the number one alchemist of the Medicine King Palace. You can be saved even after being half beaten to death. Such a feat could only be performed by an alchemist at the seventh grade. Yen Fu smiles and says, Little beauty, 
Otherwise, you will leave me tonight. Dan Dan replies, A girl of Huayu can only give her body to her husband on the day of her marriage. Fan looks at them and thinks, Adulteress, adulteress, neither of them is good. Yun Fu says, Sooner or later, the tower will belong to the Medicine King Palace anyway. He asks, You still cannot let go of your fiancé. She says, No, no. He asks, Since that is not the case, what are you waiting for? Have an affair with this prince. Fan says, I don't care about you guys. I am leaving. Dan Dan shouts and says, Please don't. I still have to pay my respects to my master every night. The bloody baby stops and says, Excuse me, isn't her master the owner of the Mutin house in other words? Follow her, and you will find the Mutin house owner's residence. Fan smiles and thinks, In that way, the Hubao pavilion will not be that far away. I cannot pretend I did not hear it. He is happy to make such plan. Zhu Fan looks at Yen and thinks he is such a brute. He says, don't mess with my business. She still needs to go pay respects to her master. He holds Dan Dan tightly to his body while she cries. Suddenly, bloody baby goes into Yen's body, and he cries out in pain, clutching his stomach. Within a few seconds, he falls unconscious. Bloody Baby comes out and says, Oh boy, if it was not for the matter of drawing your master to me, it would not have ended with something as simple as getting your blood sucked and passing out. Miss Dan Dan goes out of the room, and Fan is still thinking about the main priority at hand, which is to find the clues to the Hebeo Pavilion. He follows her, and to his shock, he sees that the mutant house owner is right there in the boudoir, the unique scent of a woman's chambers filling the air. Bloody Baby notices that something is strange, wondering if there's something wrong in their doubt a beautiful girl stands in front of Elder Lin, asking him if he likes her. He blushes and replies, I like you, everyone likes you. You're beautiful and captivating, so I naturally like you. He moves closer to her. Zhuo Fan, as he observes the situation, thinks, how come everywhere I go, I only see this kind of scene doubt let's just keep observing for now. Elder Lin addresses the girl and says, I was just wondering, can you give me a glimpse of your beautiful face? The girl replies, if you want to lift my veil, you must become one of my people. Elder Lin happily agrees, saying, yes, yes, of course, I want to. She then asks, do you agree to my terms? Elder Lin seems confused and says, this, Mirin, don't embarrass me. Who in the seventh imperial family does not know how fearsome that vicious medicine King Yen Song is that you're telling me to deal with him, so you're asking me to send myself to my death? She shouts at him, you just said you would love me forever and would even die for me. Have you changed your mind so quickly? She continues, I can die for you, but I cannot be deceived so worthlessly. With anger, she punches the air and exclaims, all men are liars, she moves away, saying, go to hell out of here. Lin sadly thinks, I know the situation Huayu Tower is in, and I know what you are thinking. However, Huayu Tower was destined to be what it is now. No one is willing to offend the Medicine King Palace for you. If it's your future, you have nowhere else to go, he says sadly. He adds, please remember to come see me at Kwai Hua Forest. Dan Dan addresses her and says, Master, she turns around and is surprised to see Dan Dan. She exclaims, what is the matter with you? She asks, were you bullied by Yen Fu again? Did he do anything to you? She holds Dan Dan close while she cries. Dan Dan assures her, don't worry, master. He did not succeed. The master sadly says, I have wronged you. Dan Dan replies, master, I have not been wrong. It is you, master, who has been humiliated so much for the Huayu Tower. The master says, don't say anything, Dan Dan. Just remember, the men of this world are all nothing but tongue and teeth, talking about how much they love you and would sacrifice everything for you. But when it comes down to it, the only thing that comes to mind is their own interests. Don't ever believe a man's sweet talk. She deeply advises her. Dan Dan looks at her sadly and says, maybe there are exceptions. The master asks, what are you talking about? There are no exceptions. The men in this world are all thin-skinned. Lin Tiny was like that, and so was his master, Lin Zetian, even Yen Fu. She becomes angry and exclaims, They are only interested in your looks. Where can you really find love in our lives that you as women, after all, can only rely on ourselves? 
None of them can be trusted, Dan Dan, Juafan. Dan Dan then tells the master, I have heard that he made a scene in the city for a woman. He even killed the seventh elder of the Yuming Valley. He offended the entire Yuming Valley for a woman. Is it not love? The master is shocked at his name being mentioned. She replies, I have never met him, and I don't know what kind of man he is. Maybe he is an exception, but rumor has it that he is a murderous man known as Demon Juafan. It may be that he was not doing it for the women, but simply had a history with that seven ghost. Dan Dan retorts, but are not all those rumors coming from the Yuming Valley? This is clearly their deliberate attempt to discredit him. The master suddenly looks at Dan Dan and asks, Are you in love with him? Dan Dan shockingly gestures and says, No. Shua Fan ponders at her mention of him. Master addresses her and says, Oh, no wonder you have been acting so strange all this time. Seeing Lin Tainyu, it's like his nose is not his nose, and his eyes are not his eyes. And he often gets into trouble. You were not like this before. Dan Dan looks confused. Shua Fan thinks, could it be that Xiao Dan Dan's mischievous temper and her humiliation, Dong brother and sister, are all because of me? He questions himself. He shockingly thinks, I cannot believe I am so charming that only my name can make a girl swoon. Geez, being too good is a problem as well. El Mayo, he is on his high horse. Dan Dan replies, Master, don't make fun of me. This disciple was just thinking, if a man dares to offend the seventh imperial family, which is like the imperial himself, or a woman, then he must be true to his woman. So, this disciple wanted to meet a man like that as well. Master replies, so you have grown to despise that Lin Tainyu, right? Master pats her shoulder and says, silly girl, even if such a man exists in the world, how could you be so lucky to meet him? The women of the Huayu Tower aspire for those who never marry. They are only here to make peace with the major families and maintain the power of the Huayu Tower. This is fate, just accept it. She tells Dan Dan to inspect the Hubao Pavilion on her behalf since she's tired today. Dan Dan agrees. Shua Fan thinks, I just realized when did I start looking for someone. She decided to lead the way. Bloody Baby comes back to his body. Shua Fan thinks, just like being given a pillow when you are tired, it is all too timely. Dan Dan is here, and Shua Fan is looking at the place, thinking, around this giant tower, there is an invisible energy protecting everything inside. He hides and thinks, this restraint formation usually requires an internal technique to undo. If an outsider tries to break it, that will attract the surrounding experts. But if there was such a restraint, why did the Qing Hua House Tower not mark it on the map? I is she trying to bring me in, or is she not aware of the current situation? Dan Dan opens the door forcefully and enters, with Shua Fan right behind her. She goes towards a treasure box and says, No problem, the achievement is complete. Suddenly, Shua Fan taps her head from behind, and she falls down. He says, I will show you mercy since you admire me so much. Fan holds the box and opens it, but he is shocked to see that the Bodhi root inside looks different from what he expected. He wonders if it's a fake and it seems to lack the life essence that the real Bodhi root should have. He thinks, respect for the fact that they lack vitality. Obviously, this is countermade to guard against theft. But Kai Ching asked me to steal a fake. What is the purpose that he deeply thinks if it's to fool the medicine king? Since it's a fake, Zhuo Fan decides to give it to the Qing Hua house owner to see her reaction. He holds the box and suddenly hears someone saying, who dares to trespass in my tower Hubao Pavilion. He realizes it's a profound sky realm master. He tries to escape by breaking the wall and runs out with the girl following him. She is a beautiful girl wearing a mask and a purple dress. Shua Fan looks at her admirably and thinks, This Waiyu Tower really does have beautiful women all around. Unfortunately, I am here to steal treasure, not people. I don't have time for you. He runs towards her to attack. She looks at his attack and angrily says, Insolence, she attacks him with her hand, and Fan falls away. In the midst of the fight, Fan opens his feathers to fly. She puts her hand towards him, but he moves swiftly and holds her hand, saying, You fell for it. She becomes furious and flies into the air. 
Shuifan realizes that the plague girl has the same power as her master. He shouts, Big Sis Choo Choo. She looks shocked and asks who he is. Shuifan thinks, No footsteps. I cannot expose myself just yet. He decides to run away. Miss Choo Choo looks at him standing up. He thinks, I would like to see what that Qinghua housemaster is up to and what kind of person Choo Choo is. If she is hard on me and irritated, maybe I can fish in troubled waters and get clues to the Bodhi roots. He said to her, I became late after someone asked me to meet them here. He looks towards her and says, It seems that this Bodhi root is not required anymore. I might as well keep it for myself. Kai Ching's master arrives and says, Mr. Song, I did not expect you to be so impatient that you cannot even wait for a minute. But if you try to flee with this treasure, I am afraid it won't do any good, especially for bringing disgrace to your Song family. Fan replies, Of course, I know that. But you should also be aware that this thing is like a hot potato in the hands of a small third-rate family like ours. A last-minute move is even riskier. She replies, Mr. Song, you really understand. She asks him to hand over the treasure to her. He takes out the box and says, How could Song Yuching be so careless to keep watch on this one in person? He gives it to her and says, If something goes wrong afterwards, don't blame me for it. She replies, I cannot tell a brave man like Mr. Song. It's amazing how thoughtful you can be. She looks at the box and says, That's right. This is the treasure of our Huayu Tower, the Bodhi Roots. Mr. Song, you did a great job. Fan thinks she knew it was fake, but she still took it seriously. Then her intentions are obvious. It was not the real Bodhi Roots that she wanted me to steal, but this fake one. It is to deceive that old man the vicious medicine king. Someone enters and starts laughing. Fan looks at him and asks, Who are you? Vicious medicine king arrives and smiles, saying, When you fought with medicine, I only flicked my finger. Don't you remember that he smiles and continues, That's right. You were unconscious. Fan replies, You hurt me once. I get it that he shouts. Someone attacked me while I was beating up that little brat, Yen Fu. You are that old bastard. The medicine king gets angry. The girl intervenes and says, Old man, control your anger. Mr. Song is a man of character. You cannot say anything. You must not be angry. The king replies, You are going to die soon anyway, so go ahead and talk as much nonsense as you want. Stop laughing and give me that stuff. He holds the box and furiously breaks it along with the roots. She surprisingly asks, Why did you do that? The master replies, the stuff is fake. It is not the Bodhi roots. She exclaims, how is that possible? The roots were stored in the Hubao pavilion, and Ching Ching is currently in seclusion. There is no reason for it to get switched. She looks at Fan and says, could it be? Zhuo Fan understands the situation and thinks, here comes the drama scene. She addresses Mr. Song and says, I thought that even if you were ungrateful, you were someone who knew when to advance and retreat. I never expected you to do such a daring steal from us. Fan replies, Are you suspecting me that he deeply thinks that if this fake root could fool Yen Song, it would be good? If not, she can just lay all the blame on him, the one who passed the fake Bodhi roots. By doing that, she will be held responsible for her misuse of manpower but will be spared from severe prosecution. And all it took was a kid from a third grade family that he understands the whole situation and says, Isn't it such a great deal? But unfortunately, she overlooked a minor detail. What is the host of the first floor of Huayu Tower? What is the medicine king? All you are is just a woman and a weak old man who only relies on poison. It will not be easy for me, Zhuo Fan, to take care of those two, but it will not be too difficult either. She runs towards him to attack, and the king also attacks him. Fan stops to see blood coming out of the mouth of the vicious medicine king. She attacks the vicious medicine king with all her power, causing a blue explosion in the forest. He is hurt by the sudden attack. Angered, he addresses her, You dare to betray me. Zhuofan stands nearby, musing that this must be the owner of the Qinghua Tower. Wasn't she going to use me as a scapegoat? He ponders, Women's hearts are like needles in the ocean. One cannot see through them. The medicine king smiles and tells her, Don't forget, your life is still in my hands. You want to die, 
she replies, remember clearly, for I am Grandma, the owner of the Qinghua Tower, the best of the Huayu Tower, Qin Kai Qin. In China, the older you are, the more respect you earn, especially from children and grandchildren. Even if I have to put my life on the line, I won't let you destroy the Huayu Tower. Xuefan observes that the owner of the Qinghua Tower is usually so elegant. This is his first time hearing her use such coarse language. The owner of the Qinghua Tower has gained some of my respect today, he thinks to himself. The medicine king addresses her, just with the power of a mere woman, you really think you can kill me? She responds, let's see. You have been hit by my yin jade palm. With a damaged aorta and more than half of your veins frozen, there's no way you can use the Xian Ter skill, seven-colored palm of the skies. She adds, this day next year will be your death anniversary. Even if I die of poison without an antidote, I have no regrets. She rushes towards him to attack once more. The medicine king smiles as she falls. You fool, do you forget who I am? Look at your palm, he laughs. Her palm is poisoned. My name is the medicine king. My entire body is a deadly poison. You thought that only the seven poisons of the seven-colored palm of the skies could threaten the heavenly profound masters. If that were the case, how could I be feared by all the masters? Shuafan watches from behind a tree as the medicine king grabs her hair, saying, Foolish woman, you don't value your life. I'll finish you off now, so I won't have to worry later. He raises his hand to strike, and she cries out. Suddenly, a lady attacks him from behind, shocking him and causing huge destruction in the forest. The medicine king is sent flying, his hand now frozen. The lady is Sister Chu Chu. Shua Fan steps out from behind the tree and asks, Sister Chu Chu, why are you here? Dot he teases, Oh, I see, you've been stalking me the whole time. She responds, You stole the treasure of the Huayu Tower, and you thought I wouldn't follow you. Dot he asks, Is Chu Chu of the Huayu Tower as well? Are you one of the owners of the fifteen towers? He points at her and pleads, Sister, this isn't my problem. I was forced into it. She's the imposter. Take her, not me. Chu Chu pushes him back and retorts, Scaredy cat, you don't have the courage to face the consequences, yet you still do it. Even if I were to punish you, I wouldn't be wrong in any sense. She moves to assist the fallen master of the Qing Hua Tower. The woman cries out, Qing Qing Qing, I'm sorry. I betrayed the Huayu Tower. The medicine king, having recovered, stands and proclaims, Xian Tir skill, mysterious moon tactic, he smiles, so, the main owner of the towers, Chu Qing Qing, finally appears. He asks her, is your wound any better? Do you need my help? Chua Fan is shocked by the revelation that Sister Chu Chu is the main owner of the Huayu Tower. Chua Fan sadly thinks, I never expected that the plague girl from the slums would actually turn out to be the head owner of the Huayu Tower. He berates himself, damn it, how could I be so dense that she's known as the number one beauty under the heavens? Besides Chu Chu, who else deserves to have such a peerless face that I didn't even realize who Chu Chu really was? Did my IQ drop? He questions himself, but when did my IQ drop? Probably the moment I saw Chu Chu's true beauty. Even just thinking back to that scene now, I can't help but feel relaxed and happy. He looks at her and thinks, it's amazing what a woman can do. It's something I had never even dared to imagine before. She holds a bottle and opens it. Fan and the medicine king both stop to realize that this is Bodhi Jade liquid. She says, sister, I'm aware of your loyalty to the Huayu Tower. I'm sorry for being such an incompetent owner. I've put you through a lot. She puts the liquid into her mouth, and a sudden explosion appears. She falls down. Fan thinks, even though this is the first time I'm seeing the Bodhi Jade liquid, such a huge amount of life energy is still amazing. Not a drop was wasted. What a pity. Should I grab that bow right now? The Medicine King smiles and says, this Bodhi Jade liquid is truly an ancient elixir. It's truly miraculous. He addresses Chu Chu and asks, Let's make a deal, shall we? Now that the old woman has passed away and you are the owner of the tower, why don't you give me that Bodhi root and I will give you the antidote in return. I in this way, your Huayu tower will continue to exist. Chu Chu replies, The Bodhi root is the foundation of our Huayu tower. 
Without it, your Medicine King Palace will just do whatever it wants. Our tower will no longer be able to stand amongst the seven imperial families. Do you think I'm just a three-year-old to fall for your trick? Besides, you've earned Grandma's hatred. He laughs and says, That old lady didn't know the current affairs and deserved to die. Mr. Chu, this old man advises you not to repeat her mistakes. She gets furious and the master of Qing Hua House tells her, He has been injured by me and it is impossible for him to use any profound martial arts now. With the two of us, we can definitely kill this old man. Chu Chu replies, But sister, the antidote is for all the owners. For the future of the Hua Yu Tower, even if all of us fifteen floor owners have to die, we would not mind. Come on, let's do it. The master tells her, If we miss this chance today, we will never get another chance to kill that old man. If that happens, there will be no hope of avenging grandma's death. Chu Chu addresses Fan, Step aside and be careful. You could get hurt by mistake. Both women ready themselves to attack the medicine king. Fan thinks, just like the so-called snipe and clam competing for the fisherman's profit, it's a good time to watch and take advantage of the situation. He smiles and says it's best to let both sides fight. I'll just take what I can get. The medicine king tells them, owners, think carefully before you take action. Make sure you won't regret it. Both women step forward, old one, if I don't kill you today, I will regret it for the rest of my life. They both run towards him to attack, causing a huge explosion between both sides the medicine king and the women stop to see who it is. Someone enters, laughing. It's Master Jiu, the elder of the Qianlong Pavilion, along with his disciples. He enters and says, Have you already forgotten about this old man? She is shocked to see him. Fan thinks, Why are there so many people I know? The medicine king looks at him and says, God's eye. Long Jiu dot he replies, I didn't expect you to get your God's eye back. Long Jiu responds, It's been a while, vicious medicine king. Long Jiu gives a smile and says, Thanks to the good fortune of my little brother, I have once again recovered my title of divine I Long Jiu. There's no need to be wary of the next time we meet, vicious medicine king, in the future. Medicine king looks a bit angered. He thinks, why is God's I Long Jiu my natural enemy? He asks, are you trying to deal with this old man with those two little girls? Long Jiu replies, don't get me wrong. I am here to talk things over. We are all guests of the Hua Yu Tower. The guests should behave like guests and the hosts like hosts. If the guests and the hosts were to fight, what would it look like? The medicine king smiles and says, what elder said is quite reasonable. I am not someone who is unreasonable and unforgiving. This time, I will not further chase the matter of how rude these two little girls were. But if these two girls are not going to give up, this old man will have no other choice. Long Jiu sighs and looks towards the girls. The girl says, I will let you off the hook this time. I just hope you behave yourself and don't try anything in Huayu City. The medicine king smiles and says, it all depends on how the owner treats her guests. He flies away. Chu Chu addresses Long Jiu and asks, why did you stop you S.B.Y. letting him go? Have you forgotten about grandma's revenge? He replies, you have misunderstood. I must have saved our lives. The medicine king is from our generation. This old man knows him all too well. He's a character more terrifying than the seventh ghost himself. If you had rushed to make a move this time, you would have just died in vain. She replies, but I've already injured him. Haven't I doubt he answers, Chinger. Have you noticed the gourd around his waist? She looks surprised. He informs her, This old man has met him several times, but I have never seen him with a gourd. This time, a strange gourd suddenly appeared on his waist. There must be some sort of trick. This medicine king looks arrogant and cocky, but he's as sharp as dust. Not even the seventh ghost would have dared to set him up. You were too reckless today. It was too risky. She asks, but is there really no way to deal with the old thief? He replies, it will be difficult, unless. If only my brother was here, there would have been a way. They ask your brother. Fan thinks, is that me? Miss Long asks angrily, why are you mentioning that kid again? Didn't he just kill the seventh ghost? Doc? You've been praising him to the heavens for months. There are not many people in the entire Qianlong pavilion who don't know that you and that kid are brothers. Long Jiu asks her, are you jealous of him? 
Also, speaking of killing the seventh ghost, from your generation, who else would be able to kill that old bastard? Don't say that I should be his brother, even if I had to worship him as my ancestor, I would have no problem. Chu Chu asks, Uncle, are you talking about the person who has been causing a lot of uproar recently, the demon Jua Fan? Uncle, replies, even in the seventh imperial family, peerless geniuses like you are rare but my brother can definitely compete with a genius like you. Miss Long says, what genius thought he's just a violent maniac who kills wherever he goes. Little Jia interrupts her and says, you are wrong to say that. Whether you like it or not, you have to admit that his potential, qualifications, or strength are already above you and me. Also, he's a bit arrogant, but he's definitely a genius who is comparable to the six dragons and the phoenix of the seventh imperial family. Especially when it comes to killing people, it is estimated that no one can match the younger generation of the seventh family. Uncle replies, what you said is quite right. Little Kuei moves closer to Chu Chu and says, what patience, how can that kid be comparable to Qin Qing and the others? Xue Fan sadly thinks, yeah, it's not fair. All the time I've been in Huayu City for so many days, I haven't even shown my true face. How is that arrogance? Chu Chu asks uncle, do you think this Shua Fan is really capable of killing the vicious medicine king? He replies, this old man is not sure. I'm not guessing, but in the future, if the medicine king does die at the hand of one man, it will most likely be brother Shua Fan. This shocks Chu Chu and she says, so, I would really like to meet this unparalleled genius. They all move forward and say, now, let's move on to the Huayu Tower. Chu Chu addresses Shua Fan and drags him along, saying, you are also coming. They reach the Huayu Tower. Zhuo Fan is thinking, what is this situation point for women? Three of them are profound sky realm masters. He fearfully thinks, it's over. R.I.P. Brother Zhuo Fan. All the girls stand, looking at him, and thinking, why did the chief owner bring such an irrelevant man to the Huayu Tower? Zhuo Fan stands while Dan Dan observes him closely. Zhuo Fan abruptly asks, what are you looking at? Dot if you look again, I will gouge your eyeballs out. Dan Dan recalls in fear as the owner of the Huayu Tower bellows at him. How dare you? Where did this wild boy come from? How dare he act so bold in our Huayu Tower? Dot doesn't he know where this place is? Shua Fan replies, I don't care where I am. You cannot let a young girl look at a handsome boy like me in such an unscrupulous manner. The owner asks, What kind of look are you talking about? Dot he points towards Dan Dan and says, Look at the way she's looking at me. It's as if she can see right through me. I am wearing clothes, and she is still staring at me with such fascination. What else can you call it? This makes all the owners furious. Chu Chu addresses him and commands, No foul language. He responds, Okay, Sister Chu Chu. Chu Chu announces, All right, so you are the Song Yu who bullied my disciple. I have finally found you. He replies, Yeah. I am the one who bullied her. What about it? Chu Chu asks, bullying and dominating the market in broad daylight. Don't you know how corrupt your disciples' morals are? He retorts, you son of a bitch. Are you trying to see if I cannot kill you? She lunges towards him to attack, but someone restrains her hand. It's Dan Dan. The master addresses her and asks, did he not humiliate you twice? Why are you defending him? She shouts back, do you have a crush on this guy? The masters glance at each other, bemused. Fan shouts, Medicine can be taken indiscriminately, but words cannot be spoken indiscriminately. Even if you are the owner of the mutant house, you cannot just spread rumors and damage my reputation. She becomes furious and retorts, What reputation do you have that could get damaged? And why apprentice fell in love with you, and you act as if you are at a loss. Dan Dan addresses her and says, Master, that's not what I meant. Don't say anything. Then what do you mean? Dot she asks. She replies, I just think that this guy was willing to stand up for that girl and even defended those of us from the Huayu Tower. It's a rare thing in the world. I just don't want there to be one fewer good man in the world who can sacrifice for a woman. The master looks at him and asks, He is a good man. The blood rushes to his head, as if he has the rumored ability of Zhuo Fan. Zhuo Fan internally thinks, Sorry but I am really Zhuo Fan. He is not strong enough. 
Daring to challenge the seventh imperial family is simply seeking death. The master said it is a good thing that we are at the Huayu Tower. If it had been some other family, he would have had his head on the floor by now. If the chief owner had not saved him last time, he would have been killed by Yen Fu. Chinga replies, sure enough, the one who saved him last time was Ching Ching. Chu Chu replies, it was a coincidence. When I got back, I told the mutant house owner about it. I told her to restrain her disciple and not to go out and make trouble again. After all, our city is the only place in the entire empire where women are in charge. I just don't want there to be any more women embarrassing themselves out in public. Let bygones be bygones. The mutant house owner promises, of course, I will strictly discipline her in the future. Chu Chu replies, we have gathered here today because of the theft of the treasure from the Hubao Pavilion. Tonight, you too, tell us a little about the cause and effect of this incident. The two girls shout, no, that the senior sister is actually a traitor. Chu Chu replies, don't worry. She did not really betray the Huayu Tower. She knows that I carried the Bodhi roots with me, and she also let Song Yu steal it from the Hubao Pavilion. There must be something else going on. Sister, what is this medicine that you are selling? Say it quickly. Your sister is anxious to death. Chu Chu replies, to be told, just three months ago on my way back to Huayu City, I was injured by the old thief Yen Song's seven-colored cloud palm. The mutant house owner shouts and asks, What? You got poisoned by him as well. This way, almost half of our Huayu Tower owners are being controlled by him. Chu Chu replies, half. Out of the fifteen floors of the tower, there are fifteen owners who have fallen victim to the old thief's ploy and have to listen to his orders. I guess only you, Mutin, are still safe and sound. She is shocked and asks, What dot and no wonder that Yen Fu said that the entire Huayu Tower is his? Chinga says, If it were not for me being controlled by him, he would not have told me this great secret. At the time, I was thinking that it was better to get rid of him while I had the chance rather than have the Huayu Tower taken away by him. She says, so, I have been playing it safe. I didn't have a strategy until the moment he asked me to steal the Bodhi roots. Shuafan replies, that's why you let me steal the fake roots. Not to fool him, but rather to make him angry and put all of his attention on me. Shuafan tells the Qinghua house owner, it really was a good plan. She addresses him and says, Mr. Song, I did not expect you to be as smart as you usually are. He in return says I just guessed it. He thinks that thoughtfulness is not something Song is really built for. Luckily, he did not worry. The mutant house owner comes closer to her and says, Sister, it has been really hard for you. She gives her a steady look. Dan Dan then asks, Did you succeed in attacking the old man? Fan smiles and replies, Come on. I am already the kind of person who does not bother using his brain. I cannot believe yours is even messier than mine. He adds, if the Qinghua house owner had succeeded, you would have already started celebrating with her sisters. There is no need to cry here. Dan Dan looks sad. The mutant house owner angrily shouts at him and says, Can you read the atmosphere here before you speak? A dog cannot spit out ivory. I have not even shed a tear yet. Just hold it back in your stomach. Shua Fan looks careless. Chu Chu advises her, don't get offended. He is just a kid. She asks the chief owner, according to what the senior sister just said, our tower is in imminent danger. I wonder what should we do next? Chu Chu replies, dealing with the Medicine King Palace, I'm afraid we can't do it anymore. We will have to use outside help. Chinga asks, by outside help, do you mean the other major families? The seventh family has always been on its own. Even for Uncle Jio, who has a good relationship with us, the medicine king is something to be wary of. So who is going to stand for us? The mutant replies, that's right. None of the men are trustworthy. Chu Chu replies, others may indeed be unreliable, but he will definitely help us. All of them ask, who? Shua Fan says, the imperial gate in the family of Emperor Xiao the seventh dot he goes on to say, it can be said that everyone is proud. No one looks down on anyone else. But there is one family in everyone's mind which they recognize as the strongest. That is the family which has been at the top of the seven families for four thousand years, the Imperial Gate. I have heard of the power of the Imperial Gate. 
when being compared to any other family in the seventh, it's at least three floors above the rest. No other family can compare to it. Dot he thinks to himself. I didn't expect that people from the Imperial Gate would also come to this by Dan festival. I just don't know who will be coming and how strong they are. If the rumors are true, then I will have to be more careful. Today's Huayu city has many strong people. If there is even a hint of negligence, I am afraid it will all be doomed. I must act quickly. I must get the Bodhi Jade liquid soon. Otherwise, the more it drags on, the more dangerous it will get. Chu Chu asks him, you should come here, live in the tower as well. He thinks to himself, great, this is much more convenient. He asks, what? She replies, don't worry, I know you are afraid of the Medicine King's vengeance, but in the tower, he won't dare to kill anyone openly just yet. Mutin asks her to go. Chu Chu orders Dan Dan to arrange a guest room for him. Dan Dan says, understood. Shua Fan thinks, I am always thinking about how to steal her Bodhi's liquid. I even thought about killing people to take that medicine. But she is looking out for me in every way. This Bodhi's liquid, do I still want to take it? He questions himself. I in the morning, he wakes up and thinks, after a whole night of thinking, it has been truly decided to strike this very night. I must find a chance to be alone with Chu Chu and seize the Bodhi Jade liquid in her hand. He comes out and thinks, I am the demon magic emperor. Even if it means killing people and taking their medicine, I will never let a woman stand in the way of my progress. It would be best if I can just get it easily, but if something goes wrong, I can only apologize. While he is walking, he thinks, this is odd. Why are there so few people in the Huayu Tower today? It seems that even the guests from the other families have vanished. Suddenly, someone shouts, Make way, make way, it is Dan Dan. He looks at her. She stumbles and falls down. Who could be so blind? How dare you get in my way, she shouts. He replies, Didn't you just ask who could be so blind? She stands up and walks away. He thinks, Dan Dan is usually hot-tempered. But why has her nature changed this time around that he stops her by holding her shoulder and asks, Where are you going? Why is this tower so deserted today? Why is everyone except for a few gatekeepers gone? She replies, That is because they have all gone to see Prince Wang Pu. He asks, Did the imperial gate arrive? How could they be here so fast? She replies, Yes, and this time it is the second son of the imperial gate, Wang Pu Qinyun. I have heard that he and our chief owner are teenage acquaintances, sort of childhood sweethearts. Once he came, I guessed that Medicine King would not dare to be rude. Shua Fan thinks angrily, I just made up my mind to do it, and another seven imperial family experts are here. On top of that, he's Chu Qingqing's childhood sweetheart. What am I supposed to do with them? They will spend all day together while I don't give a shit. He angrily holds her hand and asks her to let go. I would like to take a look at what kind of good man this Mr. Huang Pu is. She says, good. How dare you to show disrespect to the son of the imperial gates. He does not reply, and she feels a bit shy. As they reach their destination, all the people are bowing their heads in front of him. Even the elders of the seven families are also doing the same. They have all gathered to welcome him. Shua Fan thinks, this imperial gate, do you really think you are imperial? So much so that even the seven imperial family members have come out to greet you. If it's not for absolute strength, there was no way that the remaining six families would do something so disgraceful. How strong is the imperial gate, the head of the seven families, that it could deter the six families to such a state? The prince walks in, and Fan is shocked to look at him. The four of them are all profound sky realm masters. They would have been elders in the other six families, yet they are carrying his palanquin. He thinks, this four experts have just broken through the profound sky realm. From this, it can be seen that the strength of the imperial gate is indeed astonishing. I'm afraid it's not as the rumors state. Their strength is more than half of the other six families combined. Huang Pu laughs and says, this youngster is nothing more than a yellow-haired child. How can I afford to be greeted by the elders of the six families? Shua Fan is shocked to realize that this is primordial spirit suppression. This kid is humble with his words but arrogant with his actions. 
Daring to display such a powerful primordial spirit in front of the elders of the various families was clearly a demonstration for them. He thinks, this primordial spirit strength is unmatched by anyone present here. Is this the power of the superior? Chu Chu says, Qin Yun, I have not seen you in ten years. I cannot believe you have reached such an astonishing level of power. I am afraid I am no longer your opponent. He laughs and replies, don't make fun of me. In front of you, I wouldn't dare to do that. He steps forward and moves his hand towards her. Fan thinks, a second layer of profound sky realm body cultivator. Body cultivators at the profound sky realm are much more difficult to deal with, and there is more than one. Well, that's getting more and more difficult. Dan Dan says, I cannot believe you are quite enthusiastic about this, and you were so worried about us too. But rest assured, now that there is Huang Pu Qin Yun supporting us, I guess that Medicine King will have to obediently hand over the antidote. He thinks, only a ghost would be worried about your face, besides this kid is no slouch either. Huang Pu addresses Chu Chu, does the Huayu Tower accommodate a man dot he looks at Chua Fan questioningly. She replies that he is the son-in-law of the Huayu Tower. Why don't you know we have a policy of marrying men into our Huayu Tower? He replies. Huayu Tower is very strict about finding a son-in-law. If someone can marry into it, I think he should be a dragon and phoenix among men. I just don't know if I will ever have the pleasure. She looks at him. Se Tianyang angrily thinks, this kid is too arrogant. He dares to leave us in the cold and flirt with the Huayu Tower owner. He shouts, with this kind of luxury, I might as well go practice with my sword. His elder stops him from going. Huang Pu looks at him and says, this is the second son of the Jianho mansion. My bad, my bad. The elder asks him, forgive me, your excellency. Zhe Tianyang is a spoiled brat. I am sorry for my lack of guidance. He replies, not at all. Mr. Zhe is a man of character as well. I would like to make more friends like that too. This shocks them. The elder shouts, Second young master, this young one likes a cheerful person like Mr. Zay the most. Otherwise, there is a lot of lottery going on, all around. I am tired of it all. He gives a laugh. The eighth elder addresses Zay Tianyang and asks, Why are you doing this again? Dot? I have told you long ago that the people of the Imperial Gate are the best at Imperial art. Whoever tries to best them will not have a good time. He replies, Eighth Elder, now I know how Ninger felt at that time. I didn't expect our Jianho mansion to have a day like this. He angrily looks at Huang and says, I will pay back this debt. One day, I will pay you back double. They both leave. Dandan looks at Jua Fan and asks, What is wrong with you? What is with that terrible look? Dot? He replies, It is nothing. He moves away and says, If your sister gets bullied, what would you do? She is shocked and says, it depends on who did it. If it is an ordinary person, I will take out my anger on them. If it is the seven imperial families, then I will report to the master and let her make the choice. He replies, what good would that do? Whoever dares to bully my brother, I will wipe out his entire family. He will never see the light of day. At the Huayu Tower, the elders make themselves comfortable. There seems to be an empty table. Could it be that the servants got the number wrong and left the table empty? Huang Pu asks. The medicine king replies, Second young master, that seat over there is actually for the Jianho mansion. I just don't know what is so important for them to be this late. If the second young master finds it an eyesore, why don't you just get it removed? Long Jiu thinks and speaks, adding fuel to the fire. You are obviously throwing stones here. Huang Pu replies, What Elder Yen is saying is correct. This table is taking up space. It really is an eyesore. Just spill it. Long Jiu shouts, Young master, Jianho Mansion is one of the seven families after all. Even if no one arrives, a seat should be reserved. It is really insulting for you to do so. I am afraid it will cause dissatisfaction with the Jianho Mansion. The Medicine King replies, If you are not satisfied, then stay dissatisfied. Is he the only person in the Jieho mansion? Do you have the courage to resist the imperial gate for a table? Long shouts, it is not a matter of having guts. It is a matter of the dignity of the seven families. There is no need to be this disrespectful to the seven imperial families. 
the fifth elder of Yuming Valley says, good point. Then, I would like to ask Elder Jiu, in whose territory did Yuming Valley die? He replies, if people don't offend me, I will not offend them either. Yuming Valley dug its own grave. Who is to be blamed? The fifth elder shouts, you blind, what did you say? Lin Qianlong Pavilion, nor Yuming Valley, is not a place for two people to resolve personal grievances. Even if you don't give face to the Huayu Tower, you should still give some to the second young master. They both apologize in front of him. The second young master laughs and says, that is right. The seven imperial families are one family. Why quarrel over a table? Besides, this is the Huayu Tower. Whether this table goes or stays could be decided by Qin Qing. She replies, Jianhou Mansion is a guest of Huayu Tower and deserves a seat as well. The young master smiles and says, all in accordance with what Qin Qing said. She is the real master. She replies, well, thank you. The medicine king thinks, all right, the meaning behind the second young master's action, you don't even understand it at all. You deserve to die with the entire Huayu Tower. The young master says, this table does not need to be removed. He looks around, someone is walking. But even so, it is not a good thing to leave it empty. He points out the two outsiders from the door who are Dandan and Song Yu. He points to them and says, How about you come in and have a drink with us? Zhuo Fan looks at him interestingly. They both enter into the hall. Zhuo Fan exudes confidence, while Dandan appears confused. The medicine king master and his disciples gaze at her, perceiving her as bitch. The second master observes, Sure enough, they really do make a very good pair both husband and wife. You too, introduce yourselves. Dandan, in reply, declares, from under the Mutin house, I am Xiao Dandan. She refers to the second young master respectfully. Xua Fan introduces himself as being from a third-rate family from Yeyu City, the Song family, named Song Yu. The second master comments, a third-grade family, that's rare. It's intriguing that the young master from such a respected family has become the son-in-law of the Haoyu Tower. He then directs, you two, please be seated over here. Fan, feeling shocked, wonders when he became the son-in-law of the Haoyu Tower. He looks at Dandan, who is shy and confused. Suddenly, Chu Chu protests, Qin Yun, you can't. That seat is reserved for the Jianhou Mansion. She expresses her irritation, how can we let these two juniors take their seats? Mutin also agrees, indeed, young master, the two of them are not qualified yet. She turns to Dandan and orders, What are you doing standing there? Get behind me. The second young master addresses Chu Chu angrily, I have already promised you not to withdraw the Jianhou mansion table. But you still won't let me invite guests to the table, which is a bit disrespectful of you. Qin Qing appears a little fearful. Xua Fan, on the other hand, is of the opinion that placing a third-rate family son and disciple of the Haoyu Tower on the table of Jianho Mansion is clearly a slap in the face to the Jianho Mansion. He believes this is a deliberate insult to the Jianho Mansion. Assessing which family can be welcomed and which can't, Zhuo Fan realizes the imperious gate's ambitions are larger than the other six. They want to unify the seven imperial families. He feels an urgent need to find elders to improve the strength of the Luo family. Otherwise, the seven families will unify, becoming a behemoth that even the Tianyu imperial family will find hard to challenge. With this in mind, Zhuo Fan advances and takes a seat at the table. The Qianlong Pavilion and Qi Qing stare at him angrily. They are amazed by his audacity to sit at the Jianho Mansion without permission, considering this an outright embarrassment for the Jianho Mansion. Master Jiu confronts him, saying, Kid, sit where you should not, and you will get yourself killed. He responds confidently, now that you have said this, beware of the danger of getting your family destroyed. This infuriates Master Jiu. The fifth elder of Yuming Valley looks at him and thinks about the nerve of this kid. How dare he threaten Long Jiu of the Qianlong Pavilion with such words. The second young master contemplates him and reflects, never in a million years would I have thought that a young master of a third-rate family would actually be able to guess my intentions and thoughts in an instant. Chua Fan sits there enjoying his meal, while Long Jiu acknowledges, Thank you, sir, for reminding me. Everyone in the hall is taken aback. 
They are shocked that the elder of the Qianlong Pavilion was actually scared off by the threatening words of a boy without a name or origin. Long Jio brings out his magical crow. Xuefan surmises that things that connect people's hearts seem to indicate that Long Jio has recognized him. He recalls a past dialogue when he stated, I am already a dead man and you are battling against my family owner. Are you not afraid, Jio Yi? He remembers that Jio Yi was the name he gave to Long Jio when they first met. While there are many who call him that, those who can speak to him in such an unrestrained tone of voice are probably very few. The second young master thinks it's strange that a boy from a third-rate family dares to speak presumptuously to the elder of the Qianlong Pavilion. He observes that it's surprising the elder of the Qianlong Pavilion seems to care about this. On the contrary, there are some hints of backing off. These peculiarities, coupled with the unspoken meanings behind the interactions of the two, truly astonish him. Just then, Zetian Yang enters the hall, shivering with anger. Everyone looks at him while the second young master appears calm. He declares, the Huayu Tower is really attentive to their guests. Even some of the lesser characters get a seat at the table. Now, they are all gathered in the hall. Qingqing shouts at him, who told you to sit there? Step back already. The second young master addresses her, did you forget already? It was you who invited them to the table, isn't it? A table without anyone sitting there is a waste. It is better for me to invite the two disciples to the table than for some people to occupy the toilet and not take a shit. This offends Zhe Tianyang and he retorts, since the second master cannot stand our Jianho mansion, then we don't have a reason to be here anymore. He moves backward, preparing to bid farewell. Qing Qing thinks that if he leaves so humiliated, wouldn't the Jianho mansion have to blame all the crimes on the Huayu Tower? She runs towards him, pleading, please stay. In such a time of crisis, we must not offend any family. The arrangement of the Huayu Tower was improper this time. Please forgive me. I am willing to set another table for you and apologize in person. Zhe Tianyang stops and thinks, Chu Qing Qing, the chief owner of Huayu Tower, is willing to lower herself and personally apologize. That act alone has already given enough face to the Jiehou Mansion. Feeling it is reasonable to stay, this situation should not be made too difficult. However, as he angrily thinks about the second young master, he addresses her, Master Chu, since you already have the imperial gate to back you up, why do you have to be so patronizing? They both leave the hall. Qing Qing is left thinking, the sarcasm, how can she not hear it? It's just that the Huayu Tower is now in a critical situation and can only rely on the imperial gate, but because of this, other families are left out. She wonders, is making such a decision right or wrong? The Huayu Tower is becoming more isolated. As a host, she cannot guarantee the face of the guest in her own territory. If the prestige is lost, who will support her in the future? The Medicine King looks happy. Fan observes the situation and thinks it's not good. This is obviously Qingyin's plan to isolate the Huayu Tower. If the Huayu Tower disappears, the next one in line will be the Jianho Mansion and Qianlong Pavilion. If those who didn't support him when the seven families are unified, the Luo family will not be able to get ahead. He addresses Zhe Tianyang, Brother, I still have some room here. If you will not reject, why don't we squeeze in here and join the banquet? He offers him a friendly invitation. Zhe Tianyang thinks, A third grade family who actually dares to call me brother, do you think you're worthy? Sitting at the same table with you is an insult to our owner. As one of the seven families, this Huayu Tower is too much. Even a third-rate character dares to shout at me. He does not stop dodge what fan shouts at him. Coward. Are you that afraid of sharing a table with me? Everyone in the hall is shocked and think, is this kid a fool or a lunatic? First, he threatens the elder of the Qianlong Pavilion with words, and now he is blatantly calling the young master of the Jianho Mansion a coward. Sankaini and the master angrily think, is this kid not afraid of death? The masters of the Huayu Tower worry. Elder Jio probably did not make a move due to a concern of seniority, but Zhe Tianyang is a hot-blooded young man. If you insult him in public, how could he possibly let it go? Even if he kills you on the spot, Huayu Tower would have nothing to say. Qingqing angrily thinks, this bastard is causing a scene again. 
I cannot wait to beat him up right now. The eighth elder of the Qianlong Pavilion shouts, Master Chu, even if the flower rain house backs the imperial gate, it is still too much. Do you really not put our Jianho mansion in your eyes? She comes forward, elder, please don't be angry. It's all a misunderstanding. He's just a straightforward man. This seat will be your satisfactory explanation. She addresses Xuefan, don't you want to apologize to Master Zhe Tianyang and the others that he does not respond, which offends the eighth elder. Zhe Tianyang moves closer to him. Chu Chu also approaches, pleading, please calm down. He's still a child. Please don't take it to heart. Dandan also steps forward to say, Mr. Zhe, he's my husband and a member of our Huayu Tower. Even if he has made a mistake, it should be dealt with by the Huayu Tower. Please don't be angry. Zhe Tianyang puts his hand forward and everyone is shocked to see that he gets a glass of water and drinks it. He laughs and says, good wine. He sits next to Zhuo Fan. Zhuo Fan asserts, of course. The wine at the Huayu Tower is brewed by young girls. It has a unique flavor. He addresses Zhe Tianyang. If you're a brother, sit down and have a drink with me. Everyone in the hall stops at this. Even the second young master is shocked to see that. The eighth elder also shouts, Since when did this kid's sex change? Zhe Tianyang addresses him, Eighth elder, you should sit down as well. Being at the same table with this brother will not insult your Jianho mansion. Their thunder rings are sparkling and Zhe Tianyang realizes that he is for fan. The second young master addresses Zhe Tianyang, asking, Weren't you unwilling to sit with this man just a moment ago? How come? Zhe Tianyang raises his hand, replying, I was indeed unwilling to sit with some of you guys, but this man is unmistakably like family, so I will not fuss about it. He toasts with Shua Fan. They both look happy while Qin Qing becomes worry-free. They start to enjoy the meal. Shua Fan looks at Qin Qing. The second young master shouts, Qin Qing. She replies, seizing this opportunity, it was not easy for me to gather witnesses from all of the seven families. Please do not bother young Master Zay anymore. He smirks, saying, Why would I bother him? After all, I came for you. Let's do this, shall we? With all seven families present, let us remove all ties Drifting Flowers Edifice has with the Pill King Hall. She thinks this is great. With the Imperial Gate supporting us, the old thief will be forced to give us the antidote. She claps her hands, saying, Today, with the seven families here, I want everyone to be witnesses to this. She angrily addresses Yen Song. Let's let go of all grudges between Drifting Flowers Edifice and you. He smiles, replying, What grudge? I don't understand what you mean. Unless it was I who did something unnecessary. She shouts back, Don't act stupid. Today, elders from all seven families are present and there is the second young master from the Imperial Gate here. There will be no discussion if you do not give us the antidote to the rainbow cloud palm. Then do not hope to walk out of here. Everyone is looking at the situation and thinking about what is going to happen. The second young master gives a smile, addressing Elder Yen, If it is true that you poison the disciples of Drifting Flowers Edifice, then why don't you give them the antidote? So, there will be no harm between the two of you. He stands up and smiles, You are indeed correct. I did hurt the owner, but the antidote cannot be given to anyone. Master Chu shouts, You have got some balls, not giving face to even the imperial gate. Do you really want me to go to the imperial and ask him to handle this matter? The second young master says, The imperial has to take care of millions of things every day. How will he have the energy to deal with the seven families' problem? Last time, the Veiled Dragon Pavilion and Hell Valley both received fifty beatings from the Imperial because of the matters in Wingay's city. No one benefited from it, and the other five families got a warning as well. And Wingay's city became restricted. None from the seven families were allowed to set foot in there. This frightens all the elders of the seven families. Zhuofan drinks wine and thinks, If the Imperial Gate truly has the intention to unite the seven families— then they will have to manage all the problems within the seven families with their own hands. If the seven families had any grudge between them, and they all went to the imperial, then being the head of the seven families would mean nothing. They were quick to assume authority. 
It seems like the Imperial Gate does have the ambition to unite the seven. Qingqing addresses the young master, saying, You are correct, but this thief. The second young master interrupts her, Leave it to me. He says, Elder Yen, not even giving me face, do you not respect the Imperial Gate, or do you not respect me? The Medicine King replies, Second young master, you are mistaken. The antidote truly cannot be given. What kind of people would have their things stolen? and then have gifts given to the thieves. The young master asks how so. He replies, Owner Chu, don't tell me you forgot about Chu Chi Tian. This shocks Qin Qing and the entire hall. Such killing intent. This is my first time seeing Chu Chu lose control of her emotions. Shua Fan looks at her and thinks fearfully. The Medicine King says, Drifting Flowers Edifice sent Chu Qin Tian to join my sect and to become my disciple. I saw that he was smart, so I taught him everything I had all my skills. In the end, he stole the formula for the antidote to the rainbow cloud palm. Sadly, he was not capable. He died because he tried to make the pill and failed, poisoning many in the process. He say in the end because of his own weakness he failed in refining the anti-road and diet while also causing many honors to get poisoned. He asks, do you blame this on me as well? Yen Fu steps forward and says, yes, he was my sect brother. He could have become the next in line. Regrettably, not understanding the grace given to him, and being arrogant, he thought he could make the pill by himself. In the end, he lost his life. You cannot blame others. He say the only thing I admire about my senior brother is his talent for alchemy as for his character he was to go to egocidical. This sect brother of mine. The only thing I admired about him was his talent in making pills. But his personality. He was too full of himself. Yen Fu say it can be said that you didn't measure it up. I in the end, he did something terrible, harming everyone in Drifting Flowers' edifice. You can only say he was incapable. Ching Ching shouts, shut up. Everyone is shocked at her anger. The Medicine King addresses the second young master and asks, if you were to put the imperial gate in our shoes, would you make an antidote for a spy? The young master replies, that does make sense. Lin Yuming of the valley also thinks. Ching'e steps forward and says, second young master, there were reasons for that. The Pill King Hall tried to harm the owner first. Who in the seven families does not hold a little grudge against another? The medicine king replies, does that make it justified to send someone as a spy? If we go by what you said, are not those in Hell Valley part of the Veiled Dragon Pavilion? He questions, and all those of the Veiled Dragon Pavilion, are they spies of Hell Valley? The fifth elder of the Yuming Valley thinks that what he said is correct. Even if there are grudges, fights with spears and blades are one thing. Sending spies to the other family, on the other hand, is low. It degrades the name of the seven families. The second young master shouts, enough. Since the elders from each family and I are here, let me make a judgment. He says, with all the elders here as witnesses, let's let go of the grudge between you two, all right. The medicine king yields to his judgment, while Master Chu watches him. The young master says, good. I hereby announce my judgment. Elder Yen will give the antidote to the rainbow cloud palm, and there will be no exceptions. Ching Ching becomes happy. The second young master adds, but drifting flowers' edifice were in the wrong first. For the sake of justice, Elder Yen can pick anything from drifting flowers' edifice as compensation. This shocks everyone. Drifting flowers' edifice did not want to give out their treasure, which is why they have yet to get the antidote, otherwise, they would have traded with Yen Song. Shua Fan thinks that his judgment seems fair but is most beneficial to Yen Song. It is a trap. These two have planned it already. The medicine king tells the second young master, Your judgment is fair, I have no problem with it. In that case, I will take the Bodhi roots. Ching Ching shouts, No. That treasure of drifting flowers edifice will not be given to you under any circumstances. The second young master addresses her, You invited me to judge. Now that I have made the most just judgment, you take it back. He shouts at her angrily, Are you trying to make a fool out of me? Qin Qing is frightened. So, this is why it looked as though Qin Yun came because of Chu Qin Qing, but really, it was for the Pill King Hall. The fifth elder of Yuming Valley thinks, with this excuse, 
the imperial gate has successfully intervened in their dispute. With the imperial gate involved, no other family will want to help drifting flowers edifice. Say Tianyang also thinks this, Qingqing sadly thinks, but the last resort, a childhood friend, has brought the most cold-hearted betrayal. She cries out, traitor. Fake prince. The second young master addresses her, calm down. This is for the good of drifting flowers edifice. Mutant shouts, without the Bodhi roots, what else does drifting flowers edifice have? The second young master replies, if they have nothing left, what would you have them do? In any case, we have settled this. I have made my judgment. Now act accordingly. The word of the imperial gate is not something you can ignore. He shouts at him. Shua Fan says, young master, if I heard you right, you said you would judge and the elders would witness. Now that you have judged, it is then the elders turn to discuss this. Right and wrong. The second young master is taken aback by him. Everyone in the hall is shocked. The elders are thinking, what nerve? How dare he challenge the imperial family at such a time? The second young master says this is an issue between the Huayu Tower and the Medicine King Palace. Who gave you the permission to interfere? Fan replies by holding the hand of Dandan and says if I am not qualified to comment on Huayu Tower affairs while being the Huayu Tower's son-in-law, then who the fuck are you to talk shit here? This makes the second young master furious. He runs towards him to attack, saying, presumptuous. At the same time, Master Chu stops the hand of the second young master with her rope of cloth. The second young master looks at her and asks, What do you mean by this? She replies, Do you want to openly breach the contract? Song Yu is right. The second young master has already made his judgment. It is time for the elders to witness whether your judgment is fair or not. You will not go back on your words, right? The second young master unties his arm and says, Fine, let the elders bear witness whether my judgment is fair or not. He moves towards his seat and asks, Tell me, was my judgment just now fair or not? Everyone thinks and becomes fearful, no one daring to speak a word. The fifth elder of the Yuming Valley thinks, Now the ball is in our court. Wouldn't it be a complete offense to the imperial family if we just said no? He gives a laugh and says, The second young master's judgment of the two families just now is very fair. I have no problem with it. The medicine king laughs and says, The fifth elder is indeed knowledgeable and the second young master. There is nothing unsatisfactory with this. Now, it is Lin Zetian's turn. He says, I am convinced of the fairness of your judgment, and I have no complaints whatsoever. Mutin shouts at him with anger. The second young master says, Next, ninth elder of the Qianlong Pavilion, please express your opinion. Ling Jiu is now in trouble. He says, Second young master, I also think that your judgment is fair. Qing Qing looks upset. Shua Fan addresses him, Jiu Yi, speak clearly. This frightens Ling Jiu. This kid is actually threatening the ninth elder of the Qianlong Pavilion again. The medicine king thinks, even if at first, Ling Jiu was not bothered by the fact that he was a junior, but the second time it was too much to bear. How dare he speak disrespectfully to Ling Jiu again and again? Who the hell is this kid? Long Kue and Long Jiai also think that if Ling Jiu does not do something to teach this kid a lesson, then isn't the reputation of the Qianlong Pavilion completely wiped out. The fifth elder addresses him and says, Getting insulted twice by a junior and not taking any action, you really have a good temper. Ling Jiu fears what he thinks that he shouts, Second young master, I think your judgment is unfair. Although the Huayu Tower was at fault, you asked them to take out the treasure of the house. It is simply going to kill them. What is the difference between this and destroying the Huayu Tower? This one sentence is tantamount to completely offending the imperial gate. He thinks, but Zhuo Fan has never been wrong with any decision. I want to believe in him. The medicine king and the fifth elder think, who would have thought Ling Jiu would say such a thing for the Huayu Tower? Isn't it obvious that it is a confrontation with the imperial gate? The second young master angrily looks at him and thinks, a single sentence changed the decision of the nine elders of the Qianlong Pavilion. Who in hell is this guy and where did he come from? Hung looks at him and says, How can you have more influence than the second young master? Inside the Huayu Tower, everyone is waiting for the decision. 
They are a bit fearful, dot the young master asks. What about the Jianho mansion? He seeks their opinion. The eighth elder begins to reply, but Zay Tianyang addresses him and says, This matter is up to me to decide. The eighth elder advises, This is about the future of our Jianho mansion, you must. Zay Tianyang replies, I know, I know. Have I not known since long ago? He addresses Zhuafan, Are you really the son in law of the Huayu Tower? Zhuafan replies, Yes, I am. Zay Tianyang smiles and says, Then kiss your wife and prove it to me. He points towards Danden, and she blushes heavily. Zhuafan asks, What do you mean? Are you looking for a fight? Zay Tianyang replies, I know you want me to stop your words, but if you don't do what I say, I don't know who I am going to vote for. The eighth elder shouts. He thinks, How can this kid act so playful when the future of the family is being decided right now? Zay Tianyang tells the eighth elder, Believe me, I know what I am doing. The elder thinks, I have never seen Zay Tianyang as serious as he is right now. I believe that he will not play games with the family business. Zay Tianyang addresses Xuafan and says, Hurry up. Xuafan smiles and kisses Danden. Xuafan addresses Zay Tianyang and says, What do you mean by that? If you want to play with a woman, go play with her yourself. Don't make fun of me. Qingqing says, Since the second son's judgment was not agreed upon by the seven elders, the judgment has become invalid. The second young master shouts, who said that the judgment is invalid. Have you forgotten about the existence of our imperial gate? Xuafan says, This is the first time I have heard that the judges can also vote. From the beginning, imperial gate, what has been invalid? The second young master angrily thinks, It's you again. If it wasn't for you, the Huayu Tower would have already surrendered. You are the only one whom I must kill myself. Xuafan says, If you are not satisfied with this result, I have another suggestion to make. Why don't we each take a step back? Let Elder Yen hand over the antidote, and then he can choose any one of the treasures. The Medicine King says, No, I don't want anything other than the Bodhi roots. Fan replies, If you want the Bodhi Jade roots, it is not something that is totally impossible. It's just that you cannot take the treasure of the tower for free, you will have to take it with your ability. The Medicine King asks, What do you mean? Fan explains, It's very simple. The Baiden Festival is coming up soon. You can take the Bodhi roots as a prize. The winner of the festival can naturally be justified. The Medicine King laughs and says, Then let's see who can compare to me in alchemy. Who can compare to the poisonous pill king in alchemy and treasure snatching? It's worth a shot. The second young master happily thinks and says, All right, let's do that. Xinqing says, Wait. The second young master replies, Enough, I am tired. Let's stop today's banquet right here. They begin leaving the hall. Qingqing addresses them, Wait a minute. She asks. The second young master looks at her and says, I gave you a chance just now, but you did not take it. Now it's all about family interest and neither you nor I can change that. If only you had been a little more obedient, it wouldn't have come to this point. He moves away after saying that. The medicine king addresses her and says, You have got it all wrong this time, owner Chu. In contrast to our pill palace, the one who really wants the Bodhi Jade roots is actually the imperial gate. Owner Chu is shocked at this reveal. She can't believe it. The medicine king smiles and says, Didn't you hear the old woman mention that the imperial gate had already asked her for the Bodhi Jade root? She was just too squirmy and wouldn't give it up. Therefore, now that we have come to this point, there's no harm in telling you another secret. Do you think I could have ever really hurt that old woman with my strength? After all, she was the owner of the Huayu Tower and was assisting the third generation of the tower. Our dignified expert at the pinnacle of the profound sky realm. This shocks Qingqing. The medicine king continues to smile and says, That's right. The first one to gravely injure her at that time was the master of the imperial gate. Silly girl, you think you're relying on the imperial gate to stand up for you, all by virtue of your relationship with the second young master during your childhood. But in reality, you're just leading the wolf into the house. He leaves laughing. Qin Qing breaks down, crying, and thinks, What have I done? Zhuo Fan and Dan Dan are standing together, while Long Jiu and Zai Tianyang along with others are looking at him. 
Shua Fan goes forward and asks Dandan, Why are you following me? Go play. Dandan says, You just did that to someone and now that they're yours, you're just mean to them. Shua Fan says, What did I do to you? I just kissed you once. What's the big deal? This was just to get the Jianho Mansion's help to save the Huayu Tower, all right. He angrily tells her, Don't mention this in the future ever again. I have nothing to do with you. She sadly looks at him and asks, Song Yu, are these people here for you because you insulted them at the banquet? If that's the case, then let's get out of here and stay away from them. He replies, Yes, but this is a man's business, so stay out of it. Also, stay away from me in the future. He moves forward, and she stands there sadly. Chua Fan goes forward and shows off his sparkling ring, saying, Long time no see. Zay Tianyang asks, Is it really you, that kid? If you hadn't called me a coward, I wouldn't have believed it was you. He teases him and says, By the way, where's my sister-in-law? Shua Fan replies, Scram. Long Jiu comes forward and says, Brother, I wanted to ask you, are you aware of the fact that just now we completely offended the imperial gate? Long Kui shouts and says, Brother, are you Shua Fan? The eighth elder and Long Jiu are also shocked to know he is Shua Fan. Zay Tianang asks, What do you mean by that? I'm sure you have your reasons for doing this. Zay Tianyang fearfully asks, Don't tell me that you have sold me out again because we agreed on living and dying together. Zhuo Fan replies, Both of you are people I trust the most. If not necessary, I would never involve you in such a dangerous situation. However, since you're already in danger, you might as well plan ahead. Zay Tianyang asks, What do you mean? Zhuo Fan replies, Can't you see? The imperial gate is obviously going to unify the seven families. This shocks everyone, unification of the seven families. How do you know that? Fan explains, I don't really know about it. It's just a guess. He continues, when Huang Pu Qingyun got out of the palanquin, he gave Zhe Tianyang, who refused to accept, a good beating. If this is an arrogant child's character, then the subsequent discussion about the table is a true imperial heart technique. On the surface, it looked like he used that title to deliberately humiliate Jianho Mansion and vent out his anger for himself, but in fact, he achieved two separate goals. First, he managed to weaken the status of the owner of the Huayu Tower and provoke the relationships between the Jianho Mansion and Huayu Tower. Secondly, he found out that there were three types of families present, the obedient, the unsatisfied, and the wall grass. Obviously, Yu Ming Valley and Medicine King Palace were considered compliant, while Huayu Tower, Jianho Mansion, and Qianlong Pavilion repeatedly opposed his decision. Naturally, they are unfit. As for the Kuaihua Forest, it's completely filled with wall grass and insult, calling the Kuaihua Forest an easily deterrable family which does not oppose the Imperial Gate's decision. It's pretty much a useless wall decor. Everyone thinks about it and says, The Imperial Gate. Fan concludes, to put it bluntly, the imperial gate intends to unify the seven families, and you have been put on the list of those who must be eliminated. Rather than getting beaten passively, it's better to draw the line right now and fight back to the end. Everyone now thinking, so that is how it is, now I understand, Zay Tianyang admits. Long Jiu thinks the reason why the young master did all those pretty and rude things that the children of big families would consider vile and disgusting. It turns out that he was not being arrogant or something. Instead, he was just choosing the next family to deal with. Eight Elder also agrees with him and thinks the strongest out of the seven imperial gates will declare war on us and eliminate us one by one in order to achieve the great goal of the unification of the seven families. Long Kui says, however, all of us, this is just a guess on your part. If this case is not as you have guessed, then we are in trouble with the imperial gate for no reason at all. Zhao Fan replies, that is true, but you can think about it yourself. It is better to act surprised than to get caught, oh God, by them. What is the harm in fighting them? Even the two events have the right to take the light. If it was up to me, as soon as they show even the slightest indication, I would wipe them out. This kid is ruthless and decisive, a true talent to be an overload, they think. Zay Tianyang says, when you cannot be too careful— if the imperial gate has already been eyeing the seven families, then it doesn't matter if it is the mess of Huayu Tower or not. 
But since you ask us to support the Huayu Tower, it would not cause an early war with the Imperial Gate. Eight Elder looks at him and thinks this kid finally knows how to think about his family. Fan replies, the Huayu Tower is indeed the weakest of the seven and is already on the verge of collapse. That's why the Imperial Gate took it first. He says if the Huayu Tower collapses, who will be next for the Imperial family to deal with? This shocks them all while Fan says the Huayu Tower is a door for you, and if the door gets broken open, the Imperial Gate can march right in and take over the other great families. In addition, with the Huayu Tower, we can know the direction of the Imperial Gate's attack. If the Huayu Tower collapses, we will have no way of knowing the Imperial Gate's next goal. Everyone thinks about it, Say Tianyang says, so what is in it for you? From what I know of you, you would never do something that does not benefit you. Xue Fan addresses Long Kui and asks, Do you remember our ten-year contract? She replies, You mean the contract in which it states that in ten years— the Luo family will surpass the seven families. He replies, not bad. The benefit I want right now is to slow down the pace of the Imperial Gate's conquest. Within ten years, the Luo family, when the time comes, it will be hard to tell which family is the best in the world. Eight Elder thinks what a big mouth. Long Jiu says, it seems that in order to protect the safety of our two families, this time we can only work together to save the Huayu Tower. However, it would have been better to say it yesterday. Now that the two families have reached an agreement, there is no reason for us to interfere. Say Tianyang says, you brat, if you insist on competing for treasures instead of giving good advice, you will be playing right into the palm of the vicious medicine king. Fan says, do you think I want to? How else would they have stepped back so easily and left the Huayu Tower with a chance to survive? Besides, you don't need to worry about it this time around. Just as long as you help me in the future and don't let the Huayu Tower get swallowed up. He shouts and says, since we don't need to worry about this one, does that mean you already have a plan? He says, it is just alchemy. I am going to meet the vicious medicine king. Say Tianyang says, what? The poison hand peel king are a seventh grade alchemist, are you? The seventh grade is already considered one of the best in the entire empire and the vicious medicine king is the number one alchemist in the medicine king palace. He is an absolute master, estimated to be the number one in the Tianyu empire. Long Zhou thinks, could it be that Zhuo Fan, at such an age and with such cultivation, already has such an achievement? He thinks, what kind of master is this guy? Both alchemy and formation are unique in this world, and they have such amazing strength. Only a handful of the younger generation have managed to reach it. Also, I knew that Zhuo Fan's alchemy techniques were not simple. I did not expect this kid is already a 7th grade alchemist at such a young age. Zhuo Fan says, don't think too highly of me. I am just going for a meeting, and I may not have a chance to win. Alchemy requires at least three conditions, cultivation, techniques, and fire. The cultivation determines and helps control the size and duration of the fire. The technique is the secret of each alchemist, and the flame determines the degree at which the herb gets refined. I don't know what that green flame was, but it is strong enough. With the power of the green flame, I should be able to make a seventh grade pill. Long Jiu addresses him and says, What if you fail the contest? He replies, Then I will have to openly provoke them with the Bodhi Jade roots in my hand. The Imperial Gate will definitely turn their attention towards me, and with that, the Huayu Tower will have a chance to breathe. Long Jiu shouts and says, if you do that, what you will be facing will be the pursuit of the three great families. He gives a laugh and says, so what if we are going to be enemies sooner or later, you might as well disrupt their plan before it is too late. As long as I have their attention, all three of you will be able to put a plan in action. This is tantamount to using one's life in exchange for the preparation time of the three families. No ordinary person would dare to risk their life for a guess that might be wrong. Eight Elder appreciates him and says, Good boy, you have got guts. Say Tianyang puts his hand on Zhuo's shoulder. Mutin along with Dandan reaches them, and she shouts to say, Mr. Zay, be merciful. She moves forward and says to everyone, This kid is just rash. Although he offended all of you just now, please, for my sake, don't be so harsh on him. Mutin get irritated by her love for Zhuo Fan. 
She say please give me some face and don't be so mean to this kid. Long Jio and Zai Tianyan look at each other and give sharp smiles. Long Jio addresses Zhuo Fan. Your life is spared this time, so make sure you're cautious from now on. He walks away, leaving with a laugh. Zhuo Fan watches him, looking confused. He thinks angrily, did that old man just take advantage of me? Zai Tianyang steps forward, smiling, boy, be careful. Next time, I won't let you go. You know, I'm more handsome and powerful than you. Even though I called you brother earlier, don't get too big-headed. He also leaves, laughing. Shua Fan thinks angrily, what kind of brothers did I make? I was just showing brotherly love earlier, but now, watch how I deal with you too. Dot Long Kue confronts him. Hey, what are you looking at? Like this girl here, you are nothing but a junior. Learn to behave properly the next time you meet Uncle Gio. She comes closer to him and says, Don't be so rude, and don't act like you are uneducated. Shua Fan thinks angrily, even this little girl is taking advantage of the situation to retaliate. If not for the presence of the people from the Huayu Tower, I would have already pulled your pants down and beat you up. Long Jiu looks at him, while Zhuo Fan gives him an evil glare. Dandan interjects, just now, it was really dangerous. Fortunately, I informed my master in time. That's the reason why I could come to your rescue immediately. Otherwise, Zhuo Fan angrily interrupts, who asked you to come? If it wasn't for you, could they have found such an opportunity to humiliate me? The master angrily addresses him. Don't think you can rely on the chief owner to support you while you bully my disciple. She continues, just now, if she didn't rush over to beg me, I wouldn't have cared about whether you lived or died. She takes Dandan's hand and pulls her away. I told you, men are no good, their conscience has been eaten by dogs. Let's go, this kind of man is not worth your effort. Dandan sadly looks at him. Dao Chua Fan thinks that this is the time to show his cards to Chu Qing Qing. Using Bodhi Jade roots in exchange for the temporary peace of the Huayu Tower should be a good deal. He enters the hall of the Huayu Tower and is surprised to see that Chu Qing Qing is sitting there. He speaks up, Chief Owner, I have something I want to talk to you about. It's about the survival of the Huayu Tower. I believe you will be quite interested. She doesn't answer. He goes closer to her and says, What the hell? Even with the heart of a strong, profound Sky Realm Master, the respected owner of the Huayu Tower couldn't withstand the blow. Can a man's betrayal really make her despair like this? A woman's heart is simply too fragile. But elder sister, even if you want to give up, at the very least give me the Bodhi Jade liquid first. If I had met her in this state a day ago, I would have probably laughed out loud, but now it's a different story. If Chu Qingqing, chief owner, encounters any failure then the Huayu Tower will collapse. Wouldn't that line up perfectly with the Imperial Gate's intention? That means, now I can't take the Bodhi Jade liquid by force. I can only ask her politely that he goes closer to her and says, Owner Chu, the Huayu Tower. I ensure you won't be disappointed. He thinks there's no other way. Once a person locks their heart to escape the blow of reality, no one can wake them up except for themselves. He says, Sister Chu Chu, why are you? She wakes up and asks, What did you call me? He happily says, Sister Chu Chu, you woke up. He speaks into her ear and she wakes up and says, It turns out to be you, thank you. He says, No, I'm glad you woke up. By the way, I have one thing to. She interrupts him and says, There's no need to say anything, nothing matters now. She continues, The Huayu Tower has come to this point because of me and I will take the responsibility. I must do one last thing for the Huayu Tower. As a matter of fact, you can't be completely blamed for this. And also, the Huayu Tower still has. He tries to tell her, but she interrupts him again. She says, when you don't have to say any more, I understand. I know you want to comfort me, but that's not necessary. I've already figured it out completely. Now there's still some time before the Baidan Festival. I hope you can do something for me. She drags him along with her. He says, sister, can you let me say something? But he she is not listening. They arrive outside away from the tower. Now she brings him to the backyard cliff of the Huayu Tower. Standing outside, she announces, a disciple of the Huayu Tower requests to see Aunt Tao. 
The door opens. Someone responds, Choo Choo of the Huayu Tower, since you can enter here at will, why bother asking for permission every time? She replies, and Tao is the owner of this palace. Even if I am the owner of the tower, I don't enter without permission. Fan sneezes and realizes that it is too cold. He observes, for even my diamond body to feel the cold, there must be extreme mean treasures kept for safeguarding in this cave. He looks at an old woman and thinks, this old woman was poisoned so deeply that her body has already hardened. I cannot believe that she can still ignore the restrictions and emit sound. One must have a really high level of cultivation to do that. He comments, I never expected this. Does Huayu Tower really have such masters? A an old woman from the other side addresses him and says, Silly boy, that's all. Leaving that, the ears cannot hear, the mouth cannot speak, and the body cannot move, so how could it lift the restrictions? She declares, Everything that you just saw and experienced was my doing. Chu Chu defends him. His cultivation is very low. He only has brute force. It is normal for him not to be able to sense you, so don't blame him for not finding you. The old woman smiles and says, Choo Choo, I have never seen you defend a man like this. Could it be that this is why? Have you shown him? She questions. Shua Fan thinks, shown what? Treasure. Choo Choo nudges him and says, This is the chief alchemist of our Huayu Tower, Aunt Tao. Go, pay your respects. He wonders, why did she bring me to see her chief alchemist? Did she want me to learn alchemy for her? Forget it, I will teach her instead. He greets her respectfully and thinks, but it depends on whether she is qualified or not. He realizes that the old woman has a seven-colored cloud palm. She addresses him and says, What did I tell you? She gives a laughter. He thinks, This is the work of the seven-colored cloud palm. And Tao retorts, Not all of the women of our Huayu Tower are beautiful. Ching Ching shouts at him, Don't be rude. Quickly apologize to Aunt Tao. He refuses, No. He adds, Also, it looks like the work of the seven colored cloud palm, but this was not caused by it. She replies, Good boy, it seems that you are quite knowledgeable about this pill poison. It is true that this is not caused by the seven colored cloud palm. It was caused by alchemy when I was trying to break down the antidote. He asks, Were you refining pills or poison? She laughs and says, Well said. I have no idea about what it actually is. It's just that for the past three years, the more I studied this pill, the more I felt like it is like a pill but it is not a pill, and at the same time it is like a poison but it is not a poison. Vicious Medicine King, you really do have the skills. I am really ashamed of myself. Dachua fan shocks and realizes, that is human skin. That is. It is the formula for the antidote of the seven-colored cloud palm. He deeply thinks, how could this be? Each of the seven medicinal herbs is an incompatible treasure under the heavens. He is looking at them and thinks, but this refining technique. Is it actually a pill or a poison? He looks at the old woman's dead body and analyzes. He goes closer to it and checks its wrist if it's working. He thinks, sure enough, she was also poisoned by the seven-colored cloud palm. That was the sole reason she became like this. Just like Chu Ching Ching, she also has seven kinds of poison in her body plus the jade liquid restraint. With the help of this ten-thousand-year-old ice bed, this life can be saved. The only difference is that the poison in Chu Ching Ching's body is still meager while the poison in this living dead has already covered all parts of the body. If not for the ten thousand years old ice bed freezing her whole body, she would have already died. He smiles and thinks the formula is correct, but there is something fishy going on here. And Tao addresses him and says, that's right. This pill is the untold secret of the Medicine King Palace. I have been studying it for several years but I still cannot understand it. Even if you have some achievements in the art of alchemy, how can you possibly find the mysteries behind it? Zhuo Fan looks at her dot he addresses Chu Qing Qing and asks, Could it be that you are here to ask me to keep an eye on this kid for you? She tells An Tao the whole story. An Tao shouts, What? Even the imperial gate is involved in this. She says, The fate, the fate. She asks Chu Chu, What are you going to do? Are you going to let them destroy the Huayu Tower? Qing Qing says, I would like you to make a sacrifice. 
She say to her that you will come and fight them to death. Fan thinks about what sacrifice. He looks at her shockingly. She calls him an idiot, holding his hand. She declares him now officially a member of their Huayu Tower. Next, she's going to take him to meet her family. She brings him to a grave, and he is shocked to see what seems to be a pill-pouring sky. He muses that even if the vicious medicine king were seated in a well, looking at the sky, he would never dare to have such a grand tone. She replies, asking if he also thinks it's arrogant. She reveals this is her brother Chu Qingtian's tomb, and the cloak she's wearing, she made it from him with her own hands. Xue Fan remembers Chu Qingtian. Wasn't he the kid the Huayu Tower sent to the Medicine King Palace to study under the vicious Medicine King? Unexpectedly, it turns out that he is the younger brother of Chu Qingqing from the Huayu Tower. He wonders why she would send her own brother to do such a dangerous thing. The Huayu Tower seems to be in dire straits, devoid of talent. Chu Chu tells him that ever since he gave her a fruit in the slums and fought those people for her, she thought he was very similar to Qin Tian. Especially during his desperate fight with Yen Fu, his astonishing strength made it seem like they were cut from the same mold. Xue Fan ponders over this. He had always assumed that the reason he was able to get close to Chu Chu was due to his pickup techniques. Turns out, he was being regarded as a surrogate younger brother. He exclaims that it seems Chu Chu regards him as a younger brother. She retorts, asking if he had forgotten that she told him to drop the sister moniker. He realizes that she sees him as a stand in for her brother, yet she doesn't want him to call her sister. She confesses that initially, she saw him as a brother. But that has changed. Her parents were ordinary disciples of the Huayu Tower, but in the end, they both fell to the cloud palm of the Medicine King Palace. Since childhood, she and Chi Tian had vowed to seek revenge. Their grandmother saw their potential and chose to instruct them personally. However, Qin Tian was a man, and in the Huayu Tower, men have only one role to marry female disciples and perpetuate the Huayu lineage. Qi Tian, possessing exceptional alchemy talent, did not want to lead such an ordinary life. He rebelled against the Huayu Tower and marched straight to the gates of the Medicine King Palace. Xue Fan is puzzled by this notion of rebellion. He asks her if Qi Tian went to work as a spy, why does she use the term rebel? She admits that they didn't know that at the time, and even wrote him a letter of severance. It wasn't until three years later when he returned to the Huayu Tower that they finally understood. It turns out, everything was orchestrated by their grandmother in the first place. She continues, stating that Qin Tian didn't fail his mission. He managed to steal the antidote formula for the Medicine King Palace's seven-colored cloud palm. Because of strict rules at the Medicine King Palace, he etched the formula onto his body with a special potion. Normally, it's not visible but can be seen with a unique potion. Xue Fan exclaims in realization, asking if the human skin in that case belonged to her brother. He reflects that Chu Qin Tian, originating from the Huayu Tower, was really desperate. It was necessary to use human skin to bring out the formula, showing how dangerous and difficult that task was. This incident inspires him, giving him the idea that he should prepare something similar when he returns to the Luo family. He should plant agents in the major families to prepare for the future. There are nine unique mysterious techniques that are definitely more advanced than those of the Huayu Tower. But this technique is cruel, not to the enemy, but to their own people. In order to deal with the seven families, they have to be cruel. She continues, saying that Qingqian's return caused excitement throughout the Huayu Tower. After all, with the antidote to the seven-colored cloud palm, they no longer had to fear the Medicine King Palace. In the midst of all this anticipation, Qin Tian and Antao began to refine the antidote. But the pill formula was too weird. The antidote made was given to the poison owner, but as a result, the house owner died on the spot. Even the two refiners were both struck by a poison similar to the seven-colored cloud palm. He asks if her brother died due to the poison. He thinks that being able to participate in the refinement of a seventh-grade pill formula at such a young age is truly impressive, something to be jealous of. But she refutes him, saying no, her brother didn't die from the poison. He was beaten to death by the owners of the Huayu Tower. Zhuofan shouts in disbelief, 
asking why they would do that when he was the one who brought the formula. He realizes the harsh reality. The most difficult thing in this world is to become an unsung hero. He smiles and thinks that when a pig looks into a mirror, it doesn't see a human, either inside nor outside. She cries, saying that the sisters suspected him of being a spy for the Medicine King Palace. They thought he deliberately used a fake formula to poison everyone, so they took advantage of the absence of her two sisters, Qinghua and Nidin, and beat him to death. By the time they returned, it was already too late. This is the scandal of the Huayu Tower. They could only claim that he was poisoned. Only Ed Tao still believes that the pill formula is true and is tirelessly studying it. Shua Fan tries to console her. She explains that due to Qing Tian's identity, he couldn't be buried in the cemetery of the Huayu Tower. Therefore, she buried him here. Fearing someone might desecrate his grave, she dared not inscribe his name. Afterward, she moved the graves of her parents here. She holds her hand, and with a sad smile says that this can be considered a family reunion. She turns to him, asking Song Yu that if she dies one day, she hopes he can find her bones and bury her here. Shua Fan is taken aback. He thinks to himself, wondering why she's talking like this, as if she's uttering her last words. He reassures her, telling her not to worry, she will be fine as long as he's there. She reacts angrily, stating that he's getting ahead of himself. She chastises him for calling her by her first name, and now he's calling her a silly girl. He responds, stating that Brother Dong said that doing so can make a woman feel safe, and asks her if she doesn't like it. She replies that his brother is a rascal and he shouldn't associate with him in the future. She then announces they should head to the last place. She grabs his hand and starts to drag him along. They finally reach the plague girl's place. Here, she tells him, is where he will become the chief owner of the Huayu Tower. She replies it could not be helped. Because of the Qintian matters, I went down to find Yen Song in a fit of rage in hopes of settling the scores. But I got injured and present but I did not dare to let people know in fear of affecting the stability of the Huayu Tower. She says so. I lied saying that I was in seclusion, but in reality, I was here to borrow the power of Moon Yin to suppress the poison ant injuries. Then came the rumors of the plague girl. She puts her hand on his shoulder and says, I am running out of time. I hope you can replace Ching Tian and let me feel the warmth of home again. He smiles and says, so you still want me to pretend to be your brother. She goes closer to him and hugs him, saying, I said it before, you are not my brother. She looks at him and removes her veil saying, Song Yu, Qin Tian once said, I am a smile to the city, and he is a pill to the sky. I hope you can help me relive our childhood life. She looks at him and gives a lovely smile. Shua Fan is fixing the roof of the house, and she says, And so, the two of us were in the middle of the slum, living the life, farming male and weaving female. For three days in a row, it was the same life. It made me feel a sense of peace like never before. If it was me from a while ago, I could not have believed it. How could I live such a vulgar life as the demon magic emperor he is sitting under the tree, thinking, but in the past few days, there has been no trace of sadness. It is as if I have entered the paradise. The second young master is looking at them. He flies away and reaches the Huayu Tower. He enters, while all of the seven elders are already there. He gives a punch to the wall with anger. The medicine king asks, Second young master, what happened replies with anger, that bitch, she actually took off the veil, for the kid. He flies away with anger. Shua Fan is looking at Chu Chu, who is sleeping and thinking, going back to the Qing Qing childhood life, these few days, it was like ordinary people are during the day and sleeping at night. Although there is no skin to skin, relying on each other makes me feel essence of peace. This feeling, for me, a devil with no relatives, is unprecedented. Maybe this is the warmth of a family. This peerless appearance of Qing Qing is simply a disaster for the country and the people. It seems like as long as I can live with her like this, I can ignore everything else. It doesn't matter how great one cause is, or if he is in charge of the world, how can it compare to a beautiful smile? But having these thoughts is called depravity. He looks at her and asks, But what about it? I am willing to fall like this. He gives a smile that he goes closer to her 
and tries to give a kiss. When he is so close, suddenly she opens her eyes. She gives him a push and comes out. He says angrily, Damn it, I just finished the house and you ruined it. Huang Pu Qingyun arrives at their place. Zhuo Fan fearfully looks at him and thinks, I have not even lived in my cozy hut for more than a few days and it is already ruined. That he looks at him angrily and says, You fucker, you are bullying people too much. You don't think I have a reputation, do you? She says, Song Yu, hide behind me. Zhuo Fan thinks, I cannot make a move right now, otherwise, it will give the Imperial Gate a reason to attack the Huayu Tower. In that way, all of my plans will get ruined. That he says to Qing Qing, then I will leave it to you. The second young master addresses her in anger, saying, The way you call her sounds so affectionate, you pair of adulterers, I will make sure you die today. He angrily shouts, intending to kill him. She angrily addresses him and say, Keep your mouth shut. Who are the adulterers here? He shouts and he retorts, Do I need to say it out loud? Chu Ching Ching, you vowed that you would lift your veil for me, but now this kid has become the first to see your true face. She shouts and replies, You are the one who betrayed my trust in the first place. Why would I lift my veil for you? Zhuo Fan interjects, Wait a minute, that is a matter between you guys. I am a little confused. You are willing to kill just because she lifted the veil. Even if she is your childhood sweetheart, we cannot stop people from looking at her. Also, it is not like I grafted your wife, is it? This enrages the second-year master who punches and says, Brat, Stop pretending to be confused. Today, I will first send you he charges towards Zhuo Fan to attack him with a fire blow. Zhuo Fan finds it surprising that he can send his internal energy over such a long distance, as if it has a physical form. Even if he goes all out, the chances of winning are not more than 50% as his physical strength is not comparable to that of an ordinary person. Qing Qing warns him to watch out and holds him to ensure his safety. The second-year master addresses her and says, You can see it. This kid will only hide behind you and you will need to protect him at critical moments. How can a man like this be worthy of you? She retorts, So what? I am willing to be with him. Either way, are not all the men in the Haoyu Tower like this? Zhuo Fan addresses her and says, Well, although I don't want to oppose your words, you have to know that I am really not a soft eater. He thinks that as a demon magic emperor of the generation who has the most face, this is a matter of honor. It is best not to be sloppy. She retorts, shut up. If you don't speak, nobody will take you for a dumb person. The second year master laughs and says, well said. If you are really a man, stop hiding behind a woman. Come out and challenge this son. Zhuo Fan says, you and I will have a duel but not today, unfortunately. If you really want to die, you can just wait a few more days. This shocks both of them. Chu Chu thinks that it is too bold to make such a bold statement. But that Huang Pu Qingyun is a second layer profound sky realm body refining cultivator. Even in the profound sky realm, there are only a few people who would be his opponent. On the other hand, Song Yu is a third grade family young master who has just broken through the second layer of bone forging but the look in his eyes doesn't look like he is faking it. It is as if he could really do it at that time. The second-year master laughs and says, I really didn't expect that I would be denounced by such an unimpressive character. Good, good. This is simply the absurdity of the barren world, the slander of the world. He thinks that this kid just got out of the ravine and does not know the power of the imperial gate. He just showed his hand in front of him, but he still dared to put up this big talk. He says, you don't have to wait for a few days, kid. Here he lunges towards him and says, today, this young master is going to kill you. Ching Ching counterattacks on him to save Shuo Fan. This causes a huge explosion. The hand of the second year master gets frozen. He angrily addresses her and says, for this kid, you actually used the Xian Yu tactic of the Haoyu Tower to stop me. Since that is the case, don't blame me for being ruthless. He brings out his fire dragon. Zhuo Fan is shocked to realize that Dragon Vein's body refinement. His physique is far stronger than the average body refining cultivator. And that is because of the use of Dragon Vein during body refinement. With the use of the essence of the earth to refine the body, the nature of the body is like that of a high mountain range, the strongest of them all. 
If you take the earth essence body refinement and compare it with my diamond body refinement, it is more or less the same thing. Also, I am superior to him in body refinement. I am a bit lacking in terms of cultivation, therefore, if I fight, I will still suffer. Ching Ching shouts and says, The Imperial Gates Xian rank martial arts skills, Imperial demonering body technique. The second year master angrily says, I advise you not to be a shield for this kid anymore. Beware of losing your life. He attacks them. Ching Ching counterattacks him with her power. But the second year master opposes it and hurts her. Now the second year master approaches Shua Fan. Shua Fan thinks that there is no other way. It seems that exposing his identity and sharing a fate of life and death with this kid is the only way. He confusedly thinking. The eighth elder of the Jianho mansion shouts out, Nine stances of void splitting the void. Long Jiu calls forth, purple lightning golden eye. Ching Hua declares, cold jade palm, and Nidin claims, Nidin finger. They all gather up against the second young master Da Chua Fan and the second young master are both shocked as they see all of them attack him. This causes a massive explosion. However, they are all shocked to find out that even the four best moves of their respective unique martial arts techniques didn't leave a scratch on his skin. They recognize it as the imperial gate, imperial dominating body technique, indeed the best among the seven families. Further shock ensues as they notice the arrival of the eighth elder of the Yuming Valley, Lin Zetian, and the Medicine King to protect the second young master. The Medicine King laughs and says, You guys have a lot of nerve. How dare you make a move against the second prince? He then raises his voice and declares, If you lot still want to fight, this old man and others are willing to accompany you. The fifth elder and Lin Zetian look confused. Long Jiu and the 8th elder of the Jianho mansion think that one Huang Pu Qingyun is already powerful enough that even with the four of them together, they might not be able to defeat him. Adding the Medicine King and the others, it will be really hard. The second young master interrupts, saying wait. Qing Qing, have you really chosen him? She looks at him and says, yes, I have never been so certain. This makes him furious, and he says, all right then, I will not force you anymore. I wish you guys the best 100 years of good company. Let's go. As he walks away, he addresses Zhuifan, saying, There has never been a man in Huayu Tower. Zhuifan replies, Who said there has never been a man in Huayu Tower? And mentions the name of Chu Qin Tian. Even though his actions were foolish, he did what a man should have done. Zhuifan thinks about how Chu Qin Tian worked undercover for Huayu Tower for 10 years only to be killed by the people of Huayu Tower. This wasn't just foolish, it was stupid. However, he admires Chu Qingtian's loyalty. The second young master replies, If that's your definition of a man, it's better to be a woman. He laughs, and the medicine king chimes in, Qingtian was my disciple. His talent in alchemy was excellent, but he was arrogant and never put anyone in his eyes. He wanted to make the antidote all by himself, and save everyone in the Huayu Tower. Truly, such a man is a fool. This world belongs to men, but also to the smart. Fools and women who get involved can die, they deserve it. He laughs and walks away. Long Jiu angrily says, That damn medicine king. Ching Ching is angry. Long Jiu asks Shua Fan, Brother, have you talked to Chu Chu Girl about the alliance between the three of us? Shua Fan replies, There's no need. This is your business. What I'm going to do is show that arrogant kid what it means to be a real man. He is standing in killing intent. The medicine king asks the young master, Why did you let them go just now? With our strength, the few of them are definitely going to be helpless. He replies, What a fool. It's easy to kill those few people, but what about afterwards? That action will inevitably start a war between the seven families. Even if we win in the end, we will definitely reach our dead end. The fifth elder asks the second young master, What do you mean? He replies, Do not forget, under the heaven there are not only the seven families, but also the four pillars. Everyone shocks at this. Lin fearfully thinks that it turns out that the imperial gate's ambition is so huge, they are actually aiming for that seat. The second master says, In short, Huayu Tower is now falling apart. As for Qianlong Pavilion and Jieho Mansion, 
There's no need to force them to jump the wall. This time, I've understood. They're all thorns and sooner or later they have to be dealt with. They appreciate him by saying, the second young master is very wise. The fifth elder thinks, our old rival, Qianlong Pavilion, has finally hit the iron plate of the imperial gate. Longjiu, you have a day too. Fan is standing outside. He looks towards the pond and thinks, if it weren't for Huang Pu Qingyun causing trouble, I'd still be in that hut with Chu Qingqing right now. I follow her, she follows me, but even with our yesterday's incident, after one day will come the day when the Bai Dan festival will be held. So, it's also time to make a move. That rural life is not the place to be. Qingqing Qing reaches him and drags him to follow her. There's Dandan Dong and his sister looking at them. He looks at them and thinks, why are these guys here? Chu Chu tells him, you've met grandma and my family so it stands to reason that I should go see your father and mother, but it's a long way to go, so I'll have to meet your friends first. They move forward. Dandan is thinking, why is the chief building owner here with him early this morning? My master ordered me to bring the Dong. It was the chief building owner who wants to meet us. Dong is thinking, I met this little witch as soon as I arrived here this morning, and I thought that the Haoyu Tower is looking for us to finally settle the accounts. That's why I was on high alert the entire morning. But now I'm here, looking at my brother and the chief owner of the Huayu Tower holding hands so affectionately. My view of the entire world has collapsed completely. How did a third-rate family's young master manage to get someone from the dignified seven families? On top of that, it's not just anyone, it's the first beauty of Tianyu Empire, Chu Qingqing, chief owner of Huayu Tower. Miss Dong says, sister, I did tell you to start early. Now look, you don't even stand a chance anymore. Brother, how could I have known that Brother Song would get associated with the owner of the Huayu Tower? Dandan is thinking, I finally fell in love with a man, and my love rival is actually the topmost boss of all bosses. They all give a sigh of sadness. They enter a room. Ching Ching asks them, Have a seat, don't be nervous. They are having a meal. They all are seated. Shua Fan is eating, and Ching Ching is caring about him. Dong feels jealous and thinks, What kind of luck did my brother accumulate in his last life to actually get the favor of the Ching Ching, owner of the Huayu Tower, in this life? Miss Dong looks at them and thinks, in contrast to such a captivating appearance of Qing Qing, I'm not even close to being good. They all are eating along. It's night time. Qing Qing says, all right, it's getting late, and it's time to part ways. Xue Fan asks about it, and says, isn't the Bai Den festival being held tomorrow? What's the point of parting ways right now? She looks at him, holds his hand, and says, come with me. They all reach a jungle. Shua Fan sees that there are the elders of the Dong family and the other masters of Huayu Tower standing there. He thinks, why are they here as well? Qing Qing asks him to go and says, you guys, get out of here overnight and don't ever come back again. Everyone shouts at this. Shua Fan looks at her what she is saying. Dong shouts out, asking what's happening and why they're being driven away. He asks if they've wronged the edifices in any way and they're kicking him out. Qing Qing replies, apologizing and stating it's her fault, not theirs. She didn't mean to involve them but she fears Huang Pu Qingyun, a heartless man, might hurt them. Dong, in fear, shouts out about the regent state, stating they've done nothing wrong to them. Xue Fan interrupts, stating enough that the Dong family is yet to be erased so there's no need for crying. He tells Qing Qing not to do anything drastic as there might still be a chance for recovery. Qing Qing comes closer to Zhuo Fan, gently dabbing his cheek and explaining that she knows what she's doing. She has a few things she needs his help with, including taking care of Dandan, who might be the only disciple the drifting flower edifices has left. Dandan wants to protest, but Qing Qing forces her to accept, stating it's her last wish. Qing Qing hands over something, telling them to bring it home with Song Yu, but only to look at what's inside once they've arrived. She tells Dandan to take care of her husband and to not be so ignorant anymore. Mutin, seeing the danger they're in, shouts that there's not much time left. They need to leave before those people find out, or none of them will be able to escape. Everyone runs to escape, 
with Schwafan considering he should go along with them for a while before returning. He tells Dandan it's time to go, leading to Mutin shouting at him to take care of her disciple or she won't let him go. Schwafan retorts that Mutin's disciple is mature and can take care of herself. As they depart, Mutin yells out in anger, declaring all men to be trash, noting how quickly Schwafan left without a second thought. Ching Hua questions Chu Chu about leaving their reputation and integrity in the hands of a man like Shua Fan, to which Chu Chu tearfully replies that ensuring their safe escape is all that matters. They head back, with Ching Ching ruminating on the situation and Shua Fan thinking that he just has to escort them for a while. He decides to head back, causing Dandan to protest, telling him he can't just go back and throw all of Ching Ching's hard work away. In their conversation, Zhuo Fan learns about the tradition of the flower owner and realizes that Chu Chu must have recognized him as her husband. They also find the Bodhi Jade Sap, which Dandan explains counts as Chu Chu's dowry. If he takes it, he has to accept both her and Qing Qing. In a shocking twist, Zhuo Fan finds a memorial tablet for Chu Chu, leading to the revelation that there was a plan to bring down the vicious king. Holding the tablet and the bottle, Zhuo Fan smiles promising to himself that he will never leave a favor unreturned, and flies away. Dandan shouts out, Not good. Husband won't be able to return. Let's go after him. Miss Dong turns towards her brother and asks him what they should do. After a moment of contemplation, he decides, Let's go. I can no longer let my brother be alone in the face of danger. Meanwhile, in Huayu City, Ching Ching stands tall in the hall. Ching Hua dresses her and informs, everything has been arranged and is ready. Now we just need to wait for the old thief to enter the jar. Ching Ching acknowledges, good. Even if the Huayu Tower collapses, that old thief shall be buried along with it. It's time to pay the debt of blood. She then instructs Ching Hua to leave. The two ladies remain in the Huayu Hall, awaiting the arrival of the others. Ching Ching asks, that old thief will not be aware of the things that have been arranged. Right. Mutin assures her, rest assured. I found the most credible and trustworthy people and a captive dragon array has been laid around that display platform. As long as that old thief steps in, he will never come out again. Ching Ching responds, good. The question of Huang Pu Ching Yun arises. Ching Ching queries, where is Huang Pu Ching Yun? Mutin allays her concern, don't worry, I have also set up a restraint on the west side. If Huang Pu Qingyun tries to intervene, he definitely won't have time to help. We have plenty of time to settle the score with that old man. Chu Chu worries aloud, then I can rest assured. But senior sisters, that old thief is not an idle person. Even if the three of us join forces and manage to kill him, we will soon be poisoned to death by his poison. It is not a beautiful way to die. But to let you senior sisters accompany me in my grave— Ching Hua interrupts her, Ching Ching, you don't have to say it. When the two of us sisters promised Grandma to assist you, we swore an oath saying that we would follow your lead. Now that the Huayu Tower is about to fall, it is better to let it fall with vigor and let the world know that forcing us women will not yield any sort of good fruit to eat. Their conversation is interrupted by the raucous laughter of the Medicine King. He enters the hall, Owner Chu, are you looking for them? He brings in several ladies with him. Recognizing them, the women shout, You guys, they realize they have all been subjected to Yen Song's poison. No one thought that they would openly stand by the side of the old thief. Ching Ching moves forward and says, I understand your difficulties and I don't blame you. I just hope you will take good care of yourself in the future and stay away from this place of right and wrong. The ladies respond to her sadly. The medicine king laughs. The chief owner is so forgiving. However, I wonder if you can still be so forgiving when you see a few more of them. He claps his hands and more ladies enter the hall. Recognizing them, Mutin shouts, Owner of Chunyu Halls, you have the most seniority in Huayu Tower. How could you do such a thing? She sadly replies, The Huayu Tower has already lost its momentum, and this owner is just looking for a place for herself to live again. I advise you to also find a good home for yourself and stop thinking about achieving things that are outside of your reach. Mutin looks at Ching Ching in fear. She informs her, I asked her to do the formation. Ching Ching is shocked. Someone enters and says, Old man Yen Song. 
It's not that easy to take away the treasure of our Huayu Tower. The medicine king smiles and replies, I was wondering who it could be. It turns out to be an old woman. Aunt Tao walks into the hall addressing the medicine king. Everyone is shocked to see that it is Aunt Tao. Aunt Tao moves closer to Ching Ching and says, Girl, there is no need to cry. We have not lost yet. The medicine king replies, This is just big talk. When I met you twenty years ago, you were just a sixth grade alchemist, but I have long been a seventh grade master. Twenty years have passed, and even if you can refine seventh grade pills now, you are still far behind this old man's power. She retorts, That's not necessarily true. As the saying goes, for three days, take a good look with admiration. As long as I am here today, you will not be taking even a piece of the Bodhi Jade roots. The Medicine King replies, We will see what happens, old woman. I want to see just how much you have grown in these years. Then they leave the hall. Ching Ching asks San Tao, Is there no one in the Tianyu Empire who can beat him? Sadly, Ching Ching says, That means we really don't have any hope left. And Tao replies, that is not the case. No matter how strong the alchemist is, alchemy can fail at times. As long as the alchemist gets distracted during alchemy, the pill he is refining will be ruined. Even though he has practiced alchemy for decades, he will never be able to escape such a predicament. Mutin asks, does that mean there is hope for you to win against him? And Tao lowers her face, thinking, the medicine king has decades of experience in alchemy. During the competition, his focus and mentality are at their peak. How could he make such low-level mistakes? She thinks to herself, My estimate is that while I might fail at times, the medicine king will not ruin the pill even once. She replies, I am going to prepare. Don't be discouraged. We still have a chance. A as she leaves, she thinks, I, an elder of the Huayu Tower, can only offer some words of comfort to this group of young girls who don't even believe in themselves. Even the subject of their last hope is just an old woman who came here with the idea of certain death. Meanwhile, the city is preparing for the Baidan festival. Everyone is sitting in the hall, waiting to see what happens. The second young master and all the elders of the seven families are also present. Zetian Yang is thinking, why hasn't that boy Zhuafan appeared yet? If he does not show up, who will deal with the medicine king? People are looking around, asking, if it is not Master Huang, are you competing as well? That goes without saying. The Baiden Festival at Huayu Tower is a once-in-a-decade event. How could I miss such an opportunity? Someone else asks, isn't that Master Zhang? Another replies, be quiet, it's Master Chen. Such an honor. People are enjoying the spectacle. They are shocked to see an old man and ask, Aren't you the head alchemist of the Zaim clan from Chomping City, Master Luisian? Another says, That's right. Who here does not know of your ability? You earned second place at the great alchemy tournament in the imperial capital. You were but a step behind, only to end up losing the first place to the Medicine King Hall's genius disciple, Yen Fu. The old man smiles. He says, You are already well known. So why have you come to this competition among us nameless juniors? That's right, you are a fifth grade master. You should give us a chance as well. The old man replies, Even though I have a small reputation in alchemy, learning has no end. My visit this time around is just to discuss with you colleagues and has absolutely nothing to do with fame or wealth. They think to themselves, as if, you clearly came here looking for a chance to enter the Huayu Tower. Someone announces, everyone, please be quiet. Agar starts hosting the festival and says, Hello everyone, I would like to welcome the representatives of all the families to our Huayu Tower Baidan Festival. She introduces herself as Shioya, the judge of the competition. She announces that in this competition, every alchemist will be accompanied by a disciple of our Huayu Tower. People are thinking, so there will be someone to monitor the alchemists every move. This ensures that there will never be any fraudulent behavior. The old man says, Great, the Huayu Tower is worthy of being one of the seven families under the Imperial Palace. It is really atmospheric. With a beauty as my companion, I won't get tired of making pills. Very good, very good. He gives a laugh. The judge replies, Everyone has different specialties, and alchemists are no different. These twenty cauldrons here are for the most outstanding alchemists. 
From the left to the very right are the first to the twentieth cauldron. She continues, If you have confidence in yourself, please stand on the corresponding platform. The old man smiles and says, Alchemists may appear to be refining pills on the surface, but they are actually refining their minds. If you don't even have a little bit of confidence, what kind of pill will you be able to refine? People say, Master Lu is right. We don't know how many of us can be considered the best, but he is definitely someone who can stand among them. The master says, It is not that I am conceited, but rather only confident in my alchemy. To refine the best of pills, one must believe that he is the best alchemist in the world. He shouts and says, As such, I will not shy away from my duty. Suddenly, someone comes and pushes him aside, saying, Get lost. Don't block my way. The old man pushes away by him badly. Yen Fu, demanding the old man move, states, Get out, don't stand in my way. The old man thinks, Damn it, how could this brat be here as well? Isn't he already in the Medicine King Palace? What does his presence at the Bide and event of Huayu Tower signify? A boy exclaims, Hey, isn't that the genius who won the first place in the last alchemy competition in the imperial capital, Yen Fu of the Medicine King Palace? Why is he also attending the Bai Den Festival of Huayu Tower? Addressing the old man, another interjects, Master Lu, your old rival is here. I wonder if you should. The old man replies, that kid is indeed a rare alchemy genius who appears only once a century. He managed to win against me last time. Yes, I will let him have the first cauldron while I take the second one. The boy appreciates him and says, Master, you're really open-minded. I truly admire your modesty. However, Master Lu internally fumes, that little bastard, he took my top spot in the Imperial Capitals competition, and now he has followed me to the Baiden Festival as well. Are you deliberately targeting me? And Tao also comes and pushes him, saying, Are you not going to move out of the way? A boy asks, Who is that old woman with such a frightening face? Is she also an alchemist? The old man shivers in fear and asks, Why is she here? The boy inquires, Master, do you know her? He replies, How could I not know her? Thirty years ago, when I was still just a second-grade alchemist, Saint Han Medicine Queen Tao Dananang made a name for herself as a fifth-grade alchemist throughout the Tianyu Empire. She is just as well known as the Medicine King. They are known as the Southern Shek and Northern Poison. But hasn't she already become the chief alchemist of the Huayu Tower? Why did she come to the Huayu Tower Bide and Festival which is held by her own family? The boy shouts, with such a huge backing, another attempts to comfort the master, don't be down, even though the first and second spots are taken, isn't there a third place? Master, you're bound to be the third best alchemist of this grand event. Master Lu asserts, that's right, I may not be the first or the second, but winners always come in threes. Even in third place. I won't be the least bit lacking compared to the first two. The boy thinks, Master Lu, you really know how to comfort yourself. What a way to bend and stretch. The medicine king also arrives and shouts, Don't block my way. Everyone looks around, filled with fear. He thinks, I never would have thought that even the chief alchemist of the medicine king palace, the medicine king, would attend. Moreover, he's participating as a competitor in the festival. Isn't this simply bullying? The boy addresses him and says, It seems like you won't be able to keep your third place. The master shouts, All of you are already famous. Why are you all taking part in this competition and stealing my seats? You're going too damn far. The boys look at each other and think, Isn't it the same for you? The judge announces, Everything is ready. Next, I will officially start to explain the rules of the Biden Festival. The judge explains, the Biden Festival is divided into three rounds. Each round will eliminate a corresponding number of alchemists. The alchemists who get the top 20 places in each round will be able to occupy the corresponding ranked alchemy platform in front of me. This will continue until the very end, when a winner is decided. In other words, Huayu Tower only values the first top alchemists. The competition is so fierce. The judge further explains, this event has attracted many well-known alchemists in the Tianyu Empire. As such, our Huayu Tower has also prepared the most coveted treasure of alchemists as the grand prize for the champion of this event. 
she reveals that it will be the Bodhi Jade Roots, causing everyone to gasp in surprise. The second young master addresses Elder Yen, saying, You must get your hands on that thing. The Medicine King, looking at the end, thinks, That's the real thing. As soon as I win, the Bodhi Jade Roots will undoubtedly be in my hands. And Tao addresses the Medicine King, saying, Old thief, with me here, you will not get away with it, he retorts, With you here, are you worthy? Old Master Lu thinks, the Baiden festival held by the Huayu Tower has attracted these two towering figures in the field of alchemy in the empire. Both of them have come here for this treasure. Forget about winning against these two. Even if I can really win, who would dare to take the competition prize? If you want something that is being fought over by two tigers, wouldn't you just be looking at death? The judge announces, now then, the goal of the first round of this competition is very simple. In the first round, the goal of the competition is going to be refining the lowest level of pill, a first-grade pill. Everyone gasps at this, and Tao also readies herself for the challenge. At the Baiden Festival, everyone is shocked by the appearance of a first-grade pill. They are happy in saying a first-grade pills everyone shocks at. They say refining offers grade pill is too easy who or would not be able to refine one if you don't even know how to refine a first grade till what is the point of coming to the Baiden festival. Nevertheless, everyone is excited and ready to compete. The medicine king smiles confidently. The judge explains that although refining a first grade pill is a simple task, efficiency varies greatly depending on the method used. The alchemists must make a first grade pill in the shortest time possible. The fastest first hundred will be shortlisted, while the rest will be disqualified. This announcement shocks everyone, realizing that most of the thousands of participants will be eliminated, leaving only the fastest hundred. They question the necessity of such cruelty. The judge introduces a bell system, with each participant having a bell and a female disciple from Huayu Tower. The round will begin with the sound of the bell, and when a participant finishes refining their pill, the nearby female disciple will drink the bell to signal completion. With that, the competition commences as the bell rings, and everyone starts refining their pills as fast as they can. Yun Fu observes that this round is not just about speed but also tests one's mental composure. Even third-grade alchemists might struggle under such intense pressure to refine a first-grade pill. The medicine king looks at Aunt Tao and taunts her, claiming he will only use half of his skills— suggesting she won't be able to beat him even then. He thinks highly of himself, believing his skills are extraordinary. He demonstrates exceptional control and efficiency in separating and refining the herbs compared to the other top 20 alchemists. And Tao is determined to do her best, despite the Medicine King's provocation. She tries to focus, but his presence distracts her, making her question her abilities. She admits that she might not be as good as others. I in the hall of Huayu Tower, Long Jio and others approach Chu Chu and ask about the kid who was with her. Chu Chu explains that she made him leave first to keep him safe from the danger. Long Jio and Zai Tianyang express their concern about facing the medicine king now that the kid has left. Mutin is angry and suggests forgetting about facing the vicious medicine king. Everyone is shocked that Xuafan has run away and they feel that they are left to take the blame. They had formed the alliance because of him and even offended the imperial gate, but now he has disappeared without a word. Say Tianyang is angry and thinks, did that bastard sell me out again? Dandan, along with the Dong family, enters the hall and says, Sister Master Ching Ching, we have a problem. Chu Chu looks at her and asks, why are you back again? Dandan replies, husband left us behind and rushed back. I wanted to ask you, have you seen him? Chu Chu says Song Yu is back again. Zai Tianyang says happily, So you mean that kid did not leave and came back here? He gives all after and says he did not lie to me. Where is he? Where is that brat? They are shocked to see that the medicine king is almost done, and the pill in that old thief's hand has already started taking shape. In a few seconds, it will completely become a pill. Chu Chu becomes worried and asks, What about Aunt Tao? Mutin replies, It will take her about a minute also. Everyone looks worried. Long Zhou thinks, Who would have thought that Tao Dananang would not even come close to the medicine king in terms of refining a first grade pill? Chu Chu closes her eyes with sorrow and says, 
even this last hope is about to fade away. Yun Fu says to the medicine king, Master, you really are the best under the heavens. He replies, naturally, the Bodhi Jade roots, I will definitely take it. Suddenly, he is shocked to hear a sound of a ringing bell. All look around and say, Who is it? Medicine King says someone's alchemy speed has surpassed the Tianyu Empire's number one alchemist, the vicious Medicine King Yen Song. One pill to overthrow the heavens. Yun Fu is surprised and shouts, Chu Qin Tian. A boy appears and smiles. He is probably Zhou Fan. Chu Chu standing unbelievable and say Qin Tian. Long Jiu addresses her and say Chu Chu you are wrong that is not Qin Tian. Say Tian Yang informs her that it is that kid he is back. Everyone surprises to see that Yu Song family young master Song Yu has successfully refined a first grade pill. Which family is that how come we have never heard of it everyone say we have either heard of the family nor the alchemist. Everyone is shocked to see a boy from Song family here. Yet in the first round of the competition he has managed to step over the best alchemist medicine king and has stolen the top spot. Shua Fan enters in with a smile. Dandan happily shouts look at his husband. Chu Chu look at him and think this Brad I did not make you leave as soon as possible just so that you could come back running how did I however even in such a disparate moment he is still willing to come back to spend like and death with me she happily think at least it proves that he is not that heartless of our person. Second young master get angry to see him. Fifth elder S say does young master want that kid life it is really simple matter. When we get the Bodhi Jade roots the second young master will not have to take any sort of action I will deal with him personally. Second young master think at the banquet this kid was going against me every time he got the chance but killing him myself is beneath my standing the most critical think is that killing him will incur the resentment of Chu Chu Qin Qing. But now that I have someone to do the deed for me naturally I could not have asked for more. Fifth elder of Yuming Valley think I cannot believe it Medicine King this time I will be staying your chance at getting a favor from the Imperial Gate old man. Shua Fan come closer to the Medicine King and smile. He say one of the seven families Medicine King Palace Elder Yen has finished refining the first grade pill. The Medicine King angrily shouts and say you little brat what the hell are you staring at? You want to die. Zhuo Fan reply are you threatening me do you fucking think I am afraid of you or something what are dimwit? Everyone shops and think where did that kid came from where does he get the nerve to insult and talk to the medicine king of the medicine king palace in such a tone. Think my goodness what is the real origin of the young master his manner of speaking is too wild. The medicine king get furious and he think I cannot let my impulsiveness ruin my plans I must hold back. He say you brat you came here to pick a fight with me if you cannot give me a valid reason for doing so then do not believe me for being ruthless. Shua Fan say a reason. What the fuck do you need a reason for he come closer to him and say give they old man I am the number one now. The girl come closer to them and smile to say please excuse me elder Yen by meaning this round of the competition young master song has earned the right to the table so your rank is going to be one step behind his. Shua Fan addresses him and say here that he pushes him with his kick. The medicine king get furious and get back he say your petty gains are but a momentary coincidence if I have to move I will move what is the kicking I will be coming back in the next round anyway. Shua Fan reply I kick my own cauldron it is none of your business and you old bastard you are so broad minded. The medicine king get furious and say this brat tongue is too sharp there is no end to talking to him let's stop here once it is all over I will settle the score with this kid. He say today's generation and their lake of morals I advise you to behave properly. Girls behind saying that why did the number one alchemist in the empire get into a verbal argument with the young man that's right isn't that beneath his title. A boy standing behind say wrong just now also the two of them seemed to be arguing for the first place table, but as matter of fact it was a battle of attrition. They were taking the advantage of the argument to wear down each other's mind. He say with the most exquisite of alchemist technique if the mind is not nibble or stable refining the pill becomes very difficult the medicine king was already irritated enough by that young master arrogant attitude but the soon found this out and as a counter method try to surprise the anger that is in his heart. He say the same angle that was about to disturb his stable mind worthy of being a master of alchemy for a many years. A boy comes closer to him and say so you were lazying around over here. He drag him. 
He shouts to say let me watch the competition before we leave. The judge announces that the hundredth place has finished refining the first round of the competition is over all the chemists who will not be able to successfully refine the pill have been eliminated next up. The medicine kings say wait a minute I call for judgment it is hard for me to believe that there is anyone who can surpass this old man's speed at refining pills I have doubt that is this kid was cheating. Zhou Fan looks at him with anger. He states, I think the kid is cheating. It could be that the kid is cheating, someone says. The vicious pill king is the best alchemist of Tianyu Empire, and there is someone who can surpass him, another person shouts. That is impossible. He is just a kid, it has not been long since he got off his mom's milk, and he is this skillful already, the crowd exclaims, expressing disbelief. Test the pill, restore justice. Test the pill, restore justice. Everyone wants justice that they chant demanding to see proof. The girl addresses him and says, Young Master Song, is it possible for you to recreate another pill to show them your speed? He replies, No. Everybody claims, See, he is scared. It is just a first-grade pill, yet he is not willing to create one in front of us. I knew there is something fishy about him. How could he beat so many great alchemists? That kid is done for. He dared to cheat here. The drifting flower edifice will not let this slide. Antao looks at him and thinks. Also, he had the heart to help the drifting flower edifice being caught cheating while creating the pill. Not even the drifting flower edifice can cover for him. Kid, keep your heart pure. Stop thinking of evil and crooked schemes, as you will be the one to suffer. She addresses the judge and says, Remove him from the first place and let the others replace him. The medicine king speaks up. Hold it. We have cheating during the hundred pill ceremony, and the consequences are simply being removed from the match. Since when were the drifting flower edifice's rules so lax? Antao gets angry at him. Ching Ching is angry, thinking, this kid really knows how to make someone worry. He even let the medicine king catch him red-handed. This time, it is hard not to help him. How smart is he, and how could he make such a mistake? Shuafan smiles and says, who said I was cheating? I just said I will not create one again. Yun Fu says, You don't want to create one, that means you have a guilty conscience. Zhuo Fan retorts, A bunch of idiots. It is not like you guys didn't know the situation. There was a beauty beside me the entire time. How could I cheat? He continues, As soon as you hear what pill I made, you will understand why I could make it in such a short time. Gorgeous girl, please read out loud the name of the pill I made. He addresses the judge and says, so they can learn what actual skill is. The judge addresses the girl, saying, Xiao Lian, no need to be nervous, just say it loud and clear. The girl looks frightened. Aunt Tao looks at her and asks, what is it? Just say it. The girl lifts the pill and says, the pill young master song refined is an appetite pill. Everyone is shocked to see this and bursts into laughter. They say, you call that a pill. This kid was truly trying to get by. I can make a few of those in a minute. I am not convinced if he wins like that. The judge gets confused and thinks, what to do? I made the judgment. What do I do if they want to take responsibility? I hate this kid so much. The appetite pill is one pill everyone knows how to make, the most basic. Why did I pass him? Ching Hua says that kid must have used bewitching whispers. Dandan fell for it too and Xiao Lian is just a young girl in the third layer of qi condensation. Mutin shouts angrily, this kid only knows to be sly. She then scolds Dandan, damn kid, you are so enraptured by him, your soul is gone. You got hit by his evil art too. Dandan replies, master, senior aunt, he did it for me. Actually, if he did it to me one more time, I think I would enjoy it. Mutin replies, I don't understand what charisma this kid has to make my disciple want him like this. Choo Choo whispers, whether or not it was bewitching whispers, it doesn't matter. What matters is that Song's champion title for around one scene has been lost. The medicine king's spirit should be blessing again. The only difference is that it went from him cheating to Shaolian's mistake. The judge apologizes. It was a mistake made by the drifting flower edifice's disciple. Soda placement for the first round are now. Shuafan asks her to hold on and says, Judge, my appetite pill is not a first-grade pill. 
Yun Fu laughs and says, Appetite pills are pills. Xuefan replies, Oh, then let's have the best of the Pill King Hall, the vicious Pill King's most proud cycle. The great Yen Fu, attend me as to what an appetite pill is. Yen Fu starts to say, It is, but Da Xuefan interrupts, What? Cannot say what it is. Then let me tell you, pills have twelve grades. The lowest is the first grade. As long as I put herbs into a yuan fire, what's destroyed then it is at least a first grade pill. He proudly says I am first. Everyone again shocked to see him at first place. Everyone is shocked to hear this revelation. Zhou Fan is proud. Yun Fu is thinking that the definition of a pill states that as long as the herbs and materials are refined and not destroyed, it qualifies as a pill. He deeply thinks the highest pill grade is twelfth, and the lowest is one. Since this is the case, the appetite pill fits the requirement of a first grade pill. The judge is thinking, but in the hundred pill meeting, winning such a low grade pill is too insulting. He is thinking that it is just too ironic to you with such a low grade will to win the first round of the festival. If we give him the first spot, then all the other alchemists. Judge says, Mr. Song, even if till that you have refined passes that test first place is. Mr. Song interrupts and says, It is mine. The medicine king shouts, Kid, don't throw away the chance to save face. You are already on the fence for taking advantage of the gray areas in the question. Don't go too far. Even if an appetite pill is found to be a first grade pill, it is the worst of the worst. It does not even count as a low grade first grade pill, Zhuafan retorts. Then is it a low grade pill, not a first grade pill? Then it was announced clearly to create a first grade pill, but it is also a contest of speed. You idiot just did not listen. You just had to create a high grade one. Who is the one to blame now? You want me to give the first place? No way. Other alchemists think angrily, why didn't I think of this loophole and that kid did? If I did, and I created an appetite pill, I would definitely be faster than him. The worst thing is, there is no way to argue back. Dammit Dachwafan says, as the saying goes, not being a target of envy, have no talent. Seems like I am too talented. Everyone gets angry and thinks, this kid is too aggravating. Too many shameless people but it is my first time seeing someone else as shameless as you. Xuefan says, what shamelessness? It is called a steadfast heart. Were not you all testing the heart? I, for one, am definitely the most steadfast. I take no shame in being first. Someone says, you are such a freak. Another master says, this kid has no talent and relies on crooked ways to get first. He will be eliminated next round for sure. The master thinks, that kid is not simple. Being able to tell that the test was truly a test of one's heart, and not speed, and immediately being able to create a pill according to the requirement. To think that in the empire of Tianyu, where is another genius besides Yen Fan? One that is an unfathomable genius in terms of alchemy. Heidi, please think now. Don't even talk about being in the top three. I will not even make it to the five dot the judge reluctantly announces. All right. Although I don't want to, I must announce Mr. Song as the champion of the first round. Everyone dislikes this decision, and someone says, I will let you have it easy this round. Next round, I will make sure to get you out of it, Fan replies, do you have the skills it takes? Look, you are the vicious pill king, but I can topple the heavens with one pill. The medicine king retorts, you think that wearing the cloak of another person will make that person watch over you. He laughs and says, even though Ching Tian, but in terms of alchemy, he would never have surpassed me. Saying these things only proves her naive and immature. He was too bad, he died due to my formula. And Tao shouts and asks, the formula, is it real or not? The medicine king replies, if it were real, then would you have become like this due to alchemy? He smiles and says, that kid was not powerful enough and thought about stealing my formula. In the end, it took his life and a bunch of others as well. Too bad, the people of the flower edifice beat him to death, and Tao is angry and says, I studied it for three years. In the end, it was a fake. Chu Chu stands up, looking worried. Long Jiu thinks, seeing your enemy shaming your brother after his innocent death, who could endure that? Zhuafan says, but now here I am, in his cloak. 
The medicine king looks at him and angrily thinks, a better invitation. This is a battle invitation. Shuafan thinks, you scum, wanting to surpass me in the place of Qin Tian and become the best alchemist. Chu Chu looks at him and says, thank you, I understand. All of it was for me, for a sister that could not fulfill the will of Qin Tian. Is just a young master of a third-class family, but he is willing to give everything up for me. It was a wise choice to give this man the last of us. The second young master laughs and says, For someone to declare war in such a bold way, it is probably a first for Elder Yin. I think he is quite angry now. The fifth elder of Yuming Valley laughs and says, Yen Song, in his eyes, was the best. But today, he was humiliated by such a kid. This is comic relief. The second young master replies, Elder Yen seems like we will not have to do anything to the kid. After Elder Yen wins against him with his anger, he will finish him for sure. Lin Zidin's master says, This kid will no longer be alive after the second round of this pill contest. And he was the one to anger Yen, so he puts an end to him. The drifting flower edifice will have no reason to blame it on Elder Yen and the second young master. Then Lady Qingqing naturally will not hate the second young master anymore. Elder Yen is angry and says, Kid, you want to challenge me in Chu Qingqing's stead. Shua Fan says, Old man, you for real. Me challenging you. He flies fast and goes closer to him and says, Look closely, I am the one in the first place. He says, Look carefully, you are the challenger naturally. He trying to provoke Medicine King. Medicine King is shivering with anger. The medicine king furiously says, You little brat, I did not expect you to be even more arrogant than that Chu Qin Tian. He shouts and says, Those who are full of themselves will never have a good ending. Shua Fan replies, A good or bad ending is not determined by one's arrogance but rather by the amount of power he has. If you can force me down from this platform today, you will truly become Tiny Empire number one. Elder Yin says, This old man has been number one from the very start. Shua Fan points at him and says, Then let me add one more condition. If you can take me down, I will cut off my head and offer it to you. Everyone is shocked at his announcement. Master Sale says, Now it is going to be easier to justify that brat's death. Long Jio and Chu Chu are shocked and say, Why is that brat putting such a dangerous bet? Knowing how cautious Shua Fan is, he would not use such arrogant words that easily. Ling King smiles and says, Brat, this is what you wanted yourself. When that time comes, you better not be crying and begging for forgiveness. And Tao shouts and says, Kid, don't overestimate yourself. That elder Yen is an elder. Just apologize to him and take back what you said earlier. He might forgive you. Shua Fan replies, No matter what I say, I always keep my words, and this does not apply only to this old man but rather to every person present here. I will keep all of you in my mind. No matter who it is, as long as you can take me down, I will offer you my head. Everyone shouts and says this brat wants to become Tiny Empire number one alchemist. The vicious medicine king fights for that position, but what does a snot-nosed brat like you have to back up those words? This is clearly a declaration of war against all the chemists in the Tiny Empire. The medicine king replies, you are simply courting death. And Tao helplessly says, acting so recklessly. The second young master says, he is clearly seeking his own demise. He will not live long. Newton says, that rotten brat, why is he acting so damn arrogant? Shua Fan looks at Chu Chu and smiles. Chu Chu starts crying. Ching Hua asks Ching Ching, what is wrong? She replies, all along, I was the one who was wrong. Newton asks, what do you mean by that? Ching Ching says, I always thought that Ching Tian's last wish was getting revenge and surpassing the vicious medicine king in terms of alchemy, but I was completely wrong. From the start to the end, he had only one wish, and that was to achieve the one pill to overthrow the heavens and become the best alchemist under the heavens. I made that cloak myself, but I never truly understood Ching Tian's heart. Instead, it was Song Yu who was able to tell at a glance. As an older sister, I am really incompetent. Qing Hua and Miren shout to say, Song Yu is doing this to fulfill Qing Tian's return. It is obvious that men are unreliable, but right now, there is a man who is daring to defend the entire world for the girl he loves. In such a way, he is really unreliable. Miren thinks, 
that brat fulfills Ching Tian's wish, but now he is on a road of no return. Say Tianyang smiles and says, that kid really knows how to draw hatred. So you are saying that he is doing this to fulfill Ching Tian's wish. He firstly humiliated that old man, and now he plans on taking his head. He wants to ruin his refining and then intends to fly into a rage, using his failure as an excuse to take his life. Long Jio says, that brother is cunning. I presume he has what it takes to win. Long Kei says, uncle, you expect too much from him. He may be able to win against others, but that is the number one alchemist of the Tianyu Empire, the vicious medicine king. How could he possibly win? In my opinion, the kid is afraid of losing in terms of alchemy, so he will most likely use the opportunity when Yen Song will be busy refining and take his life. In this way, he will not be losing in alchemy and manage to save his face. Long Zhu thinks Zhuafan has always played his cards out of order and done despicable things. It is not impossible for him to think like snake attacks and backstabbing. Zai Tianyang says that does make sense. Nyudin angrily says I thought you guys. She addresses Jio and says I thought you had a good relationship with our Huayu Tower. Who would have thought you would be gloating over here while our people are fighting for their lives down there? Zai Tianyang tries to say it is a misunderstanding and tells her to look carefully and not get surprised. He says don't think of him as the same good boy he is in front of you. As a matter of fact, he is the real devil here. He is no less than the vicious medicine king. In front of him, he is smiling. All of them look at him. The judge announces that up next is the second round of the Baidan festival, and the objective of the second round is the refinement of a third grade pill. All the alchemists become happy and say, refining a third grade pill is a good objective. Who here would not be able to refine a third grade pill with ease? The judge says, for the refinement process, please use the medicinal ingredients provided by our Huayu Tower. Don't mix personal ingredients while refining, otherwise, you will be punished for cheating. They say, what? All of these are ingredients for a second-grade pill. Was there some sort of mistake? Hey, judge, you gave me the wrong medicinal ingredients. These are all second-grade medicinal ingredients. How are we supposed to make a third-grade pill? The judge says, in this competition, the first priority is the quality of the pill, following the speed. She announces that the top 50 are going to be finalists in the third round, while the rest are going to be eliminated. Fan says, now, this is a bit troublesome. There are too many pills. Which one should I choose? He says, what would be great is to get the vicious medicine king on the ground with broken convictions. He is trying to make next plan to win the round. He says, this is a bit tricky, too many formulas. Which one to choose so that the pill king will admit defeat without losing his temper? Third grade pills are mostly made from third grade materials. However, a lot of second grade materials can be refined into a third grade pill throughout the refinement process. Every interaction between the herbs must be considered and taken advantage of so that they can be used to their fullest to create a third grade pill. This tests the number of formulas an alchemist knows. The boy, say from the crowd, thinks formulas like these, the top 20 alchemists definitely have, but the rest are dumbfounded and can only believe in the drifting flower edifices for giving out the wrong materials. Two girls again look at him and think, why is this dude here again Fan is thinking, too many formulas to choose from. Which one should I pick so that the pill king will admit defeat without a fight? The judge addresses him and says everyone else has started refining their pill, but you, as the champion of the first round, have yet to start. It cannot be that you cannot refine a third grade pill. The medicine king smiles and says the kid is not that I think. He is wondering why he has been given second grade materials. Everyone gives a laughter. Antal looks at him and thinks, in the end, I am the one who has the complete confidence against the vicious medicine king. Fan gives a smile and says, I just felt that as the champion of the first round, I would give all you newbies a head start. But if you wish to lose so eagerly, then I will let you guys see. He joins his hands and says, what is the true meaning of pill refining? He performs the advanced technique of refining, the secret refining art ninth heaven warring dragon claw. Everyone is shocked to see the secret refining technique. It instantly refines all the herbs and materials. 
Shua Fan says, newbies, don't tell me what to do when I am refining my pill. Compared to me, you will all still have a long way to go. While he is performing the secret refining technique, the medicine king looks at him and thinks, how can a stupid kid like him know such a pill refinement technique? Even I, the best alchemist, do not understand that technique. Yun Fu asks him, Master, what is this technique? He replies, Go refine your pill. Why do you have so many questions? He angrily thinks, This kid has not truly threatened my seat as the best alchemist in Tainyu. He must die. Dajua Fan addresses him and says, If you don't hurry up and refine your herbs and materials, then I will not wait for you. The champion of round two will be mine again. The medicine king looks at him surprisingly. Chu Chu is shocked to see that. She thinks, even the vicious pill king cannot do anything about the harassment, and can only stay silent. That only proves one thing, he admits defeat in his heart but will not say it with his mouth. Ching Hua says, I am not dreaming, right? That kid can make the vicious pill king feel despair. Mutant also surprisingly says, exactly. I gave him too little credit. Sister, come pinch me. Let's see if I am dreaming. How can that kid possess such skill? Ching Hua says, Ching Ching, is it that you knew he was not ordinary, so you picked him as your husband? She pinches Mutant's face and says, otherwise, why would our head only marry a third-class family young master? Mutant replies, sister, stop it. I just saw emptiness and hopelessness, and only wanted to die with the drifting flower edifices. But I fear being alone and having no one to pass everything to. I saw that he was similar to Qin Tian, so I gave myself to him. Even though I have seen his extraordinary ways in alchemy, I never thought he could leave the vicious pill king speechless. They both look at her surprisingly. Qing Hua says this kid hit it well. Tao can save the drifting tower edifices from this situation. Qing Qing hopes to see Zhuo Fan. She thinks, this is what it means to lean on someone. The second young master, with rage, asks, which one of you can tell me where this kid came from? Why did even Elder Yen lose to him in terms of alchemy? The fifth elder says, Second young master, relax. With Elder Yan's skill, how will he let the kid continue his arrogant show? At this moment, he already has a plan in his heart. After the round is over, he can let him be such a threat. Life, I am afraid that he is more eager to make a move than we are. The medicine king looks furious. Lin Xin looks at them and thinks, Fuck, there isn't anyone decent here. Elder Wu seems to be calming Huang Pu Qinyun, but in reality, he pushed all the responsibility of dealing with Shua Fan onto Yen Song. He thinks if he does a good job he will get rewarded but if he fails he will have to take the blame for such vicious scheming. Succeeding is expected, but falling means taking the blame. He carefully thinks that in the future I must be careful while hanging out with this group of people. Such deceitfulness is truly evil. Staying around these people means I have to be more and more careful, or I will not even know when I will be betrayed. He thinks otherwise I might get sold without even realizing it. Shua Fan looks at the medicine king and thinks, he is able to calm down. As expected of the best in Tianyu, his heart and mind is really steady. But not enough. He addresses him and says, your refinement speed is so slow. Why don't I wait till you finish and give you another head start? He say how about I wait for you three breaths will be enough for you to catch up. The medicine king is shocked to hear this. And Tao shouts and says, Kid, you are already in the lead. Hurry up with the refinement and take the champion's spot, or else the longer you wait, the more mistakes you can make. The judge addresses him and says, Yeah, Mr. Song, oh no, Grandmaster Song, everything can change in an instant on this stage. Please respect every opportunity. Shua Fan addresses her and says, Miss Judge, do you know what pill I am making? She asked, Is Grandmaster trying to quiz me? Looking at the herbs and materials you just refined, most of them are soothing and yang ingredients. The formula is probably a yang pill. Its main purpose is to dispel the negative energy inside your body and soothe the meridians. It can raise the cultivation of a qi condensation cultivator by one layer. Shua Fan gives a laughter and says, Miss Judge truly knows her pill, but you know, that is I refined this pill as a gift. She gestures to say no. Shua Fan says it is a gift to you because you have a very vile mouth, 
so you must have too much negative energy. I will fix that for you. She gets frightened. Chu Chu says, how can he have such an uncaring heart to the point where he has to shame a young lady? Say Tianyang replies, head on, Chu, indeed is correct. That dude does have an uncaring heart. That girl simply looks down on him and taunts him. He does not let that slide, so it is best for us to not anger him in case he seeks revenge. Mutin looks at Dandan and thinks, why are you finding pride in that? Chu Chu shouts to say, he dares. Dandan gets silent and shy. Everybody gives a laughter and says, Chu Chu is such a directive wife. Xue Fan is shocked to see that the medicine king is ready with his pill. He addresses Haymut, saying, Grandmaster Song, I have finished condensing the pill into a liquid. Soon it will become a pill. That head start you are talking about, you don't need to give it to me. Save it for yourself. He gives a laughter. Xue Fan realizes that he is loaded down on purpose to treat him. He asks, What did you just throw into my concoction? The medicine king replies, Though I would never disturb another person when they are making their pill. I just accidentally split some of the concoction, and it considered landed in your own concoction. But it was an accident. Please don't mind it, Grandmaster Song. Xue Fan thinks, An accident. The best alchemist in Tianyu, seventh grade alchemist, how can someone like that make a mistake like this? Clearly, this was on purpose. Eventually, he realizes that this green python scale concoction. Everyone is shocked at this. The judge says, scale concoctions, this is too bad. The boy with golden hair says, he is making a yang pill, and so all the herbs and materials are warm and of yang. The concoction is refined from a piece of the second level spiritual beast, the green sky python scale. It is a cold and yin object, and with its negative energy, every respect of it clashes against the yang pill. He states that once it enters the pill, due to the yin and yang in the pill, it will decrease significantly. Don't talk about a third grade pill, you can probably only make up a first grade pill with this. Too bad. The medicine king smiles and says, Kid, still remember your promise. As soon as you leave the spot, hand your head over. I will be waiting here. He gives a laughter. Antal looks at Haymont and thinks, although he has an amazing refining technique, his heart was not steady. Too bad. The second young master shouts and says, Truly, Elder Yen had something up his sleeves. Mutin shouts, This kid cannot keep up with the compliments. We just complimented him on how he will save the drifting flower edifices from their predicament, and now he has been tricked by Yen Song. Go on and be arrogant, why don't you? Now all the advantages you build up are gone. Qinghua says, Yeah, that kid cannot let people relax. If things continue like this, don't talk about how he can save the drifting flower edifices. We will have to think about how we can save him. Chu Chu says he came to take the place of Qin Tian. Is it wrong to be a bit arrogant? If Qin Tian were here, he probably would have done the same thing. Dandan shouts and says, Master, please save husband. Mutin angrily addresses Zhe Tianyang and Long Jiu and says, You guys seen that? You are similar with Song Yu. What are your thoughts on it? Zhe Tianyang says, Save who? That kid needs us to save him. Long Jiu says, I think that kid pissed his lungs or about to explode. Zhe Tianyang says, Someone as clever as him was tricked by someone else first. It would be strange if he can hold it in. The Dong falls down with fear and reveals that. That kid is not my brother Song. Everyone is shocked at this. They are looking at him. They ask, who is he? Zhou Fan is standing like a evil and ready to compete. Zhuo Fan and the medicine king stand in front of each other. Qinghua looks at him and thinks, he gathers all his killing intent all in his eyes. Even people like us who have reached the Taimchuan level cannot do that. I always thought he was just a light-headed reckless and young boy who almost lost his life because of carelessness. If we did not save him, he would be a dead body already. But right now, I am deeply impressed by the potential he possesses. He is strong. She deeply thinks, you need to be cruel to kill a person. The stronger you are, the crueler you are. A light-headed person like Song Yu being able to gather this killing intent is so unexpected. Even the medicine king, who is sensitive about the environment, cannot notice that. 
What is more, the killing intent in his eyes is enormous. Even people like us, who are at Tiamchuan level, feel threatened. How many did he kill to form that kind of killing intent? He cannot be Song Yu. What does this killing intent come from? She asks, who is this guy? Why would he dress himself up as Song to show up here? Long Jiu replies, Chu Chu, he will bring luck to us. Long Kui says, that is right. Although he is not a good guy, he is the only one here who can save the day. Everyone looks shockedly at her. She confusedly says, why are you staring at me? I am just being honest. He looks strong. Long Jiu thinks, I have to say, Zhuo Fan is quite amazing. Even people who hate him are impressed by his powers. Zai Tianyang smiles and says he is going to do it. Zhuo Fan stands calm. Zai Tianyang shouts to see that. What is wrong with him? He refrains. That is not his style. Zhuo Fan lifts his fingers and blows out a dragon. Master looks at him, realizing that he is going to start making pills in the furnace. The medicine king replies, boy, your pill is done for now. It does not matter if you use the furnace, you cannot produce the third grade pill. Just face your default. Shua Fan replies, my ability to produce pills cannot be understood by a mortal like you. Pay attention to this. You are only the medicine king, while I am the medicine god. It is impossible for you to compete with me. Everyone looks shocked to see that and shouts, look at this. Master Song is going to do that. It is coming, he is going to do that. He finally gets the pill done. Everyone in the crowd is greatly shocked by it. Everybody screams, what is happening? Master Song, he is spitting at the furnace. Why is he venting his anger to the pill? Why should he do this in front of us? This is unbelievable. Say Tianyang says, what is he doing now? Is he planning to humiliate us at first and then kill us? Miss Judge addresses Zhuo Fan and asks, What are you working on? He replies, Making pills, of course. I still have enough time. He addresses the medicine king and says, Now I am going to show you the difference between our skills. He is performing and says, The golden chilin cannot be restricted in the pond. When the wind comes, it will become a dragon. A huge fire comes out. He is holding fire and says, Yin becomes yang, snake becomes dragon. Rise to the sky. Again, a huge giant dragon of fire comes out. Master is shocked to see that and says, I have been making herbs for a few decades, but this is the most spectacular scene I have ever seen. The medicine king is surprised and starts his process. Shua addresses him and says, Old man, it is too late. The champion for the second round of pill refinement will still be me. The dragon has its triumphant and turns its head, it turns into the fire and the pill is done. He holds the pill and says it is a third degree pill. The long young pill is done. B is holding a golden pill in hand. Zhuo Fan is holding the third gray pill and says, Yang dragon refinement complete. Fire smoke is around him. The other alchemists are shocked, saying, was not Grandmaster Song's pill destroyed? How did he manage to refine a third gray pill? Miss Judge addresses him, Grandmaster Song, are you sure this is a third gray pill? He replies, you are the judge, so of course you decide. If you cannot tell with your eyes, I don't mind if you take it. The judge thinks, he is clearly screening with me. Just from the ingredients only, even if it were a seventh gray pill, there would be no way I would eat it. Everybody says, hurry up, hurry up with the judgment. She holds the pill and says, this pill not only does it not have the residual heat from the furnace, it does not even have a fragrance. It looks like a mud ball. You cannot tell its grade. This cannot be. He used such a big formation. It is not possible that this is not even a fourth grade pill unless there is something special about this pill. She apologizes. Grandmaster, this dragon young pill that you made, forgive my blindness. I cannot tell its grade. Everybody in the crowd is shocked. People say, but if it is a pill, it should have a grade. How is there a pill with no grade? Or can you not tell it is great because it was made from a bunch of leftover herbs? Zhuo Fan says, why don't you take it and see what grade it is? She gets scared while everybody is saying, eat it, eat it. She cries and thinks, what do I do? It would be okay if this were a pill. 
Otherwise, would not it be the same as drinking his spit? The master addresses her and says, You don't need to ingest it to give it a grade. You can split the pill into two and tell its grade. The problem is, she eventually becomes happy and says, What problem? We will do it according to Grand Master Lu's suggestion. She splits the pill into two halves. A huge golden explosion appears all over the ground. Everybody is shocked and says the strength of this pill is too strong. It was not even ingested, but it made the Yuan Qi in me surge. What happened if you ingested it? The judge realizes that this pill is definitely not a third grade pill, but it is a fifth grade pill. The master is shocked and thinks he used second grade herbs and made a fifth grade pill. Grandmaster Song, just who are you? She says, wait a moment, this feels just downgraded. Now it is a fourth grade pill. One alchemist says, it is interesting. Never heard of a downgrading pill. She says, now it's a third grade pill, second grade, and now first grade. She shockingly says, I am not seeing things right. The pill has disappeared. These are just the herb scraps. Everyone in the crowd looks frightened. How can there be a pill that just disappears and leaves its outermost layer of scrap behind? This is too strong. This pill is not a living thing. How can it run away? She says, Grandmaster Song, what is this? He replies, I told you to eat it, but now, even if you want to, it is long gone. The medicine king says, it was still a step too late, but if I was not. The judge holds the pill and says, as expected, this is a subgrade pill. Being able to refine second-grade herbs into a sub-fourth-grade pill, it is clear that Elder Yan's alchemy skills are marvelous. Everybody says, don't care. She asks, what's up with you guys? It is still undecided what grade the pill Grandmaster Song made is. Master Lu replies, What do you mean undecided? Even if no one else is sure, the top ten standing here clearly know the strength of that pill. Girl, you are still young. Even if you can judge our pills, you are not able to make a judgment on the value of the pill Grandmaster Song made. Everyone agrees on his point. She looks at Elder Yen, and he nods. She gets frightened to see that. What is this? Is he fighting against Grandmaster Song? Why is he speaking for him? Zay Tianyang says, I did not see anything wrong, did I? The vicious medicine king admitted defeat in front of this many people. Is this the elder Yen caring about his reputation? Chu Chu thinks, being able to make the soul admit with his heart and his mouth, this is truly not simple. This fake song, just who are you? Nidin addresses Zay Tianyang and asks, Master, do you really know that fake song? In my eyes, you don't even know him. He replies, who said I don't know him? I have been through enough hell with him. She asks, then what is his name? He shouts to expose, but suddenly gets silent and says, I will not tell you. Just enjoy the show. Long Jio is thinking, I cannot believe this kid has these ancient formations at his disposal. Even alchemy techniques have some ancient techniques. What kind of person is he to have so many treasures on him, a handyman of the Luo family? Is that even possible? He is in deep thoughts. Miss Judge is confused and thinking, what should I do? There is no doubt that the winner is going to be Master Song or Medicine King. I don't have a reason for Master Song to win, but I cannot tell the top ten alchemists that Medicine King is the winner. She is holding the pill in her hand and thinks, the pill I am holding is indeed a fourth grade pill. However, the pill from Master Song disappears at the moment it is done. How should I judge? She asks Master Lu. I wonder if you can analyze Master Song's pill. He comes to Zhuifan and pays respects to him. The judge looks at him and thinks, he is doing the courtesy which is only for the best alchemist. Master Lu is one of the top ten alchemists in the empire. He will not even do it for the medicine king. In their minds, this person's ability to make pills is much better than theirs. They are not at the same level. Chuafan nods. The boy sitting in the crowd says this nod is very important in the study of alchemy. The formula of pills is hereditary, and the consequences of leaking the formula are very serious. If a person gets found out leaking any of the formulas, they will be kicked out of the family. He says, so the courtesy means respect, the nod means acquiescence. The tied boy asks him, will you untie me? 
Master Lu says, little girl, just let me tell you how great that scene created by Master Song was. Did you know the skill Master Song just used was the secret method that was gone for a century, Shenlong Ying? Everybody shouts and says, the missing method appears again, and displayed by such a young alchemist. The judge thinks, that is why the great medicine king lost the contest. There is no method that can be compared with that method, she says, but master, why would the pill disappear? He replies, it never disappeared, it was consumed by all of us. Everyone is shocked at this, and Master Lu says, when it comes to the even the perfect pill, they just extract 50% of the essence of the herbs. However, the Shenlong Yin can abstract 100%. Once it is consumed, it will spread all over the body. The golden gas emitted by the pill was the essence of the pill. If it were only taken by one person, the effect would be better than a fifth-degree pill. But since it was consumed by all of us, therefore the effect is even worse than the first-degree pill. I am not regretting my decision of cutting the pill in half now. The boy says, that is why I told you I feel much fresher after the pill disappears. She says, so, Master Lu, how does the pill lower the degree itself? He replies, well, I am not sure about that. Since this Shenlongin disappeared from people's sight for quite some time, the reason for that, I think, only Master Song can tell us. Everyone looks at him with curiosity. He replies, do you want to know? Then kneel before me and beg me. The judge gets frightened. She says, you must be joking, Master Song. He says with anger, kneel and beg me. Everybody in the crowd shouts and says, beg him, beg him, kneel and beg him. The second young master fully and really thinks, I never thought he is going to do this, making the audience on his side. This is the smartest way of ruling. He says, we need to vanish him as soon as possible. The crowd is saying, kneel and beg him. The judge is crying and thinking, what should I do? Do I have to kneel and beg for his forgiveness? Suddenly, Chu Qingqing appears and shouts angrily, saying, Song Yu, enough. He eventually changes his tone and says, Just kidding, I am actually a nice person. The judge is crying. He says, Absolutely not. The reason for me to use such a secret skill, I need to thank the medicine king. He addresses him and says, You accidentally leave a drop of green python scale liquid into my pill. This shocks the vicious king. They stand in front of each other. Elder Yen says, Master Song, are you still blaming me? Master Song replies, How come you have my thanks? The secret skill Shenlong Ying, which means, Dragon's magic, then the pill must have something related to a dragon. The ingredients for the Wenyang pill don't have it, but Python has the spirit of a dragon, and just because the liquid you dropped, I've then got the chance for that secret skill Elder Yen says the python has in property, but the Wenyang pill only has yang property. But the pill that Master Song made, he didn't find any in property in it. Master Song replies, Ancient secret skills, how can you guys understand it yet Yin and Yang are conflicting, they can't leave each other. All the reasons for me to turn the python with in property to Yang ingredient are just my spit spit came from water, which has in property but it came from the mouth, which came from the stomach, the center where all the breath of yang comes from, then goes to the lungs, and adjusts the fluid throughout the body. Therefore, it becomes yang property. He only used this spit to turn snakes into dragons and turn yin into yang. My pill has included all the medicinal properties from the furnace, and he added the pure yang power of dragon's breath. That's why he only used ingredients for a second-grade pill to make a fifth-grade pill but the pill is split in half, the power of it vanishes. So as the breath of dragon, that's why it degrades from fifth grade. They happily shout. That's what it is. Master Song is awesome, Elder Yen says. That's what he expected from Master Song's skill. He admits that he lost this round, but seriously, I'm convinced. However, Master Song has an inherent disadvantage. He would definitely win in the next round. Master Song watches him shockingly. She thinks he's gonna be limitless in the future. But he really does have some inherent disadvantages. If it continues, although he is inevitable in alchemy, he still can't beat the medicine king. She has to find some way. There's no way to let an outstanding young man be destroyed. She says loudly. In this round's competition, 
39 people have promoted, 11 people forfeit. The champion is still Song Yu, Master Song they shout loudly. The second place is Sir Yen, the Medicine King. She says loudly, Great, we had won another round. They both watch each other. Dong and Miss Dong watch them. Dong says, Ms. Chu, sorry to disturb you. He is pretty sure this guy is not my brother. Miss Dandan shouts, Does it matter if he is the real Song Yu or not no matter who he is indeed, he is my husband. Chu Qingqing says, Tian Ba Dong, you must be frightened by the killing intent from him, therefore didn't hear us talking earlier. Gongzi Xia had already said it. That guy is his friend, but not Song Yu. Dong shockingly shouts and says, Where is my brother Song Yu then? Xia Tianchang says, Of course he killed him. If not, how come he just easily uses Song Yu's identity and came here? My sister in law is really good at controlling your husband, then that guy is all yours. Just don't let him out to hurt anyone, especially me. Chu Qingqing says, Gongzi Xia, what the hell are you talking about? Xia Tianchang says, I'm serious. That guy will take revenge for any enemy, but he just gave up to fight back just because of your words. This shows how important you are in his mind. Only you can let him calm down, then he will treat me better. Chu Qingqing getting shocked and says, He is really that scary Xia Tianchang watches Long Ji. They both watch him nervously. Chu Qingqing thinks, If such a frightening person can change himself for me, then he must be true to me, my ideal husband, the hero that anything would do for me. It seems like I found him today. She slaps the ground and says, How can we lose the second round again? And in this round, even Sir Yen was convinced of his failure. Do you still think, Huang Puqin Tian, getting angry and says, he has the chance to get the root of beauty, and that guy's head they both watch him scaredly. Lin Zitin says to the second young master, you don't have to worry. Master Yen is the best alchemist in Tianyu. He's known as the medicine king. The only reason he lost is because of his carelessness. This won't affect the result at all. I believe he'll have a plan to deal with it. The second young master asks, really, it seems that you are pretty confident about Master Yen's talent. So if he loses again, you'll take responsibility. Lin Zitin appears frightened. The fifth elder thinks to himself that Lin Zitin doesn't seem to know how to flatter people at all. The bell rings again, and the judge announces that the test for the third round is their skills in producing pills. They need to produce a fifth grade pill. The judge announces that the faster they produce the pill, the more experience they have, and the first one to successfully produce the pill will go to the finals immediately. She announces the start of the competition. Aunt Tao starts making her process faster. The medicine king looks confident. Chua Fan looks at his hand, appearing concerned. Long Jiu looks at him and shouts, Not good. Looks like he's in trouble. Mutin asks, What happened? He has a good back. Then why isn't he making a move? Long Jiu replies, He's being tested by his weak point. They ask, What weak point? Long Jiu explains, That's right. The reason he won two consecutive tests and beat the medicine king is all because of his secret method. His method of producing pills is the best here, indeed, but we ignored that his fire element in hand is the most common one. What's worse is that we pointed out that he's only at the second level of Dinagu. Long Jio continues to explain that usually, people at Shua Fan's level can only make third-degree pills but he has already been able to use the material of second-degree pills to make a pill that is close to a fifth-degree pill. Now that he has to use the material of the fifth-degree pill, which cannot be refined by the type of fire element he has, it looks like this is his limit. Long Jiu predicts that before the materials are refined thoroughly, Zhuo Fan would fall because of the lack of Yuan force. Dandan shouts, asking if the master will be executed if he loses and pleads for him to be saved. Zay Tianyang thinks that Shua Fan is not the kind of person who gives his life into others' hands. It would be lucky for them if he does not take away their lives. Besides, if he loses, he will just go back to his first land, kill the person, and take the pill away. Shua Fan thinks to himself that one Luo family is enough, and he doesn't want to be burdened by Chu Qingqing and Hyo Manluo as well. He deeply considers if it is time to use the mysterious cyan blue fire but decides that now is not the right time. 
Though the plan is not so promising, he must go with it. He rubs his hands and starts. Everyone looks at him, thinking that finally, he moves with this mediocre fire element and method. It seems bad, and his weak point is finally revealed in the third round. The judge asks what happened to Master Song this time, as it's different than before. The Medicine King replies that Fan has already reached his limits and will not be able to produce any nice pill to impress them. The judge questions what he means, and the Medicine King explains that Fan does not have the ability to refine high-level materials. There are wind fire and woof fire, and at his level, it's impossible for him to maintain woof fire for too long. That's why he cannot make any pill higher than the fifth degree. The judge asks about the fifth degree long yang pill Fan made earlier, and the medicine king replies that he just barely improved the efficacy of the second degree pill close to the fifth degree. It's not a real fifth degree pill. But he admits that Fan's method was indeed spectacular, and had he not needed to produce a fifth degree pill, he would have innovated them to seventh degree pills. He holds the pill in his hand, addressing Fan and calling him out on his weakness. The crowd feels sad for Fan. Some shout in support, telling him to do his best. A woman even exclaims that she wants to have a baby with him. Suddenly, Fan raises his hand, silencing everyone. He thanks them for their support, and tells them that though he may lose, his pride will not disappear. Everybody is supporting him and yelling his name. They say he deserves respect. The crowd starts yelling encouragement, showing their love and respect. Fan enjoys the moment, feeling the support of the crowd. The medicine king addresses Fan, saying that persuading the crowd to be in his favor is of no use, and even if he persuaded those trash to save him, they would not have the power to do so. The medicine king, already finished with his pill, laughs with pride, proclaiming that the first place for round three, and Fan's head, is his. Everyone becomes very worried, saying it's not good, while the second master and fifth elder look happy Fan calmly retorts that it might not be the case. Suddenly, the medicine king loses his pill, and smoke fills the area. Everyone looks on in shock, and the medicine king cannot believe what has happened. Fan apologizes, saying that he has recently been catching a cold, implying that a sneeze caused the medicine king's pill to fail. This enrages the medicine king, who calls Fan a damned brat and runs towards him, threatening to butcher him. Just as he is about to approach Fan, Chu Ching Ching intervenes. She tells the elder that this is the hundred pill meeting of the drifting flower edifices and stops his hand with her power, warning him to leave if he wants to cause a scene. The medicine king argues that he is not the one causing trouble, it's Zhuafan, who disturbed him while he was refining. Zhuafan feigns ignorance, and the medicine king shouts in anger that he was just about to finish his fifth grade pill, only to have it ruined by Zhuafan's sneeze. Zhuafan playfully claims that it was just an accident, and that he's been catching a cold recently. The medicine king responds incredulously, finding it absurd that a bone forging cultivator would catch a cold. Fan retorts that if the seventh-tier alchemy grandmaster can spill his concoction then he can catch a cold. The medicine king seethes with anger, realizing that Fan had been waiting for this opportunity to use his excuse against him. He acknowledges that Fan's timing was perfect, right on the flame, during the final step of the pill-making process. The pill, under the disturbed fire, was not able to condense and instead exploded. He compliments Fan saying it's fitting for an alchemy prodigy, but his words are filled with bitterness and frustration. The medicine king sarcastically admires Fan, stating that even a sneeze from him can be so accurate. Fan jokingly responds that as both of them are grandmasters, it's not impossible for them to have a special bond. As the medicine king continues to look vicious, Fan makes light of the situation, claiming that the medicine king spent his concoction while he was catching a cold. The medicine king interrupts him, shouting in frustration, demanding that he stop saying he has a cold. Chu Ching Ching, referred to as Chu Chu Bai Zhuo Fan, addresses him as her husband, causing him to think irritably that there must be some misunderstanding. Zhuo Fan tells her that they'll discuss it later and turns his attention back to the medicine king. Chu Ching Ching looks at Zhuo Fan, wondering why he's so different from other men and if she doesn't attract him in any way. 
Chuafan, deep in thought, reminds himself that women and morale are stumbling blocks for the strong, and he is determined not to be swayed. He approaches the medicine king, who asks why he has come back. Chuafan replies that he has returned to refine a pill. The medicine king acknowledges Chuafan's mental fortitude and smiles, telling him that despite destroying his pill, Chuafan's speed means there is no way he will advance. He mocks Chuafan's arrogance and shouts that even if he can't finish refining, others will. The crowd is shocked as the medicine king laughs, imagining himself chopping off Chuafan's head and advancing to the final round. Chuafan calmly retorts that if he says he will always be on this spot, then no one will have the chance to even think about taking it from him. He holds fire in his hand, defiantly stating that the medicine king cannot take his spot nor can anyone else. His confidence and determination are evident in every word, leaving the situation tense and charged. Fan attacks with a fiery whoosh of power. Medicine King starts laughing and says, Boy, you're just messing up with yourself. You won't hold the fire too long with just your body, just messing up with your body. Fan retorts, Ignorant, let me show you. He generates his fire power in his hand and confidently states, the true difference between us. There's too much fire in his hand. Fan closes his eyes, then suddenly opens them and grabs the fire. Everyone is shocked. Chu Chinchin asks, What just happened? Medicine King continues to laugh, saying, I thought you would do something weird. Just, it turns out that you just ruined the material. Fan smiles and says, Old man, don't use your mundane perspective to judge me. Just look at this carefully. Joe Fan opens his hand and proudly declares, The fifth degree pill is finished. Everyone is shocked and shouts, How's that possible? It can't be alchemy. Did he just make this up? Fearful, everyone watches him. Medicine King is shocked and thinks, Is this truly alchemy? How can it be this boy? Shua Fan explains, Old man, this is the ancient skill, Yizhang Qian Kun. Do you know that? Medicine King is fearful. Fan confidently says, Now you see, old man. This is the difference between you and me. Yi Dan Qin Tian and Medicine King are not on the same level. She says, Hey, sorry for my incapability. I can only make a high-level fifth-degree pill. Fan smiles and says, I'm afraid I'm not able to make a perfect fifth-degree pill, but I hope it won't affect my ranking. She says, Song. Master Song successfully made the fifth degree pill and became the champion of this contest. Shua Fan smiles and happily says, As long as I am in this position, there will be no second person here. Everyone shouts, Master Song, Master Song, Master Song, Master Song. Xie Tianxiang says, No matter where he goes, he will always be in the spotlight. He will be the king if the chance comes. He muses, hmm, Even if there's no chance, he will create one for himself. Everyone in the hall shouts. Master Song, Master Song, Master Song, Master Song. He says, I knew he was somebody, but he still surprises me every single time. She says, I can't even measure the potential in him until now. I found only this man I can trust and rely on. She shouts, Please quiet down. While everyone is shouting, Master Song, Master Song. Shua Fan raises his hand and loudly says, Everyone, since the other alchemists are still working, can you guys quiet down for my sake? She thinks, What does he think he is just look at that leadership he's shown? Huang Puchintian gets angry and thinks, The more reputable he is, the harder the assassination would be. I can't let this happen. If I want his reputation to fall, I would need someone to beat him in alchemy and the only one here who can do that is the medicine king. She shouts, Tao Dan Yang finished her fifth degree Yan Fu's fifth degree pill. She made it to the finals. And Tao watches her. She again shouts, Yan Fu's fifth degree pill is also finished. Shua Fan comes to medicine king and says, Sir Yan, did you say you would be the champion? I'm afraid you can't even make it into the top three completely. This time, today, I'm going to kick you out of the contest completely. Medicine King becomes afraid of him. Say Tianyang laughs and comments on Zhuo Fan, admitting his admiration for the way Zhuo Fan has managed to best the Medicine King, a major character. 
He say that is what I expected from him. At least the medicine king is a famous celebrity he trick him such miserably dot he give laughter, and say I have even started to pt the medicine the girls look at each other, and ask dot he even feels a bit bad for the medicine king. Mutant asks Uncle Gio to stop speaking in riddles and asks who the fake song really is. Could he be from a prominent family or a disciple from a sect? Long Gio smiles, dismissing the family notion, saying it can't even be compared to a firefly. Regarding a sect, he's never heard anything, claiming there are many unsolvable mysteries surrounding Zhuo Fan. Ching Hua asks why they trust Zhuo Fan so much if even uncle doesn't know who he is. Zay Tianyang clarifies that he doesn't trust Zhuo Fan, warning against fully trusting him. He describes Zhuo Fan as someone who can call you a brother one moment and betray you the next. He adds his memories of Zhuo Fan's betrayal, painting a vivid and chilling picture. Dandan shouts in defense of Zhuo Fan, accusing the others of slandering her husband. She asks if that's not betrayal too. He insists he's only speaking the truth but admits he admires Zhuo Fan for not wearing a mask. Mutin asks how they can still be friends with someone like that. Long Jiu and Zai Tianyan look at each other and laugh, asserting that it doesn't stop them from being friends. The girl finds this contradictory. Zai Tianyang explains that to trust and to entrust are different things. He doesn't entrust Zhuo Fan as a friend, but he trusts him as a brother, all because of Zhuo Fan's power. He poses a question, if that untrustworthy friend had not appeared, how would they have dealt with the old man? The girls are shocked. He makes them more safe. If it were not for him, Zay probably would have lost the love of his life. That favor is something he cannot return in this life. During the last meeting, as soon as he talks, Zay shuts his mouth. While bearing the idea of bringing destruction to the sword war, he speaks in favor of the drifting flower edifices. Chu Chu thinks and cannot believe that the drifting flower edifies one of the seven families and cannot compare to a sentence the kid has said. If Zay's grandmother were still alive, with her temper, she would die again from how angry she would be. Dachua Fan sneezes again, thinking that the old man is probably cursing him in his heart and talking behind his back. He thinks, just you wait until I kick you out of the competition, then I will take your life. The medicine king thinks about what to do, he's behind by a few pills, and catching up is impossible. Will he die here? He irritably beats his head. Zhuo Fan suggests silver needle acupuncture, thinking even if he doesn't disturb the old man, he will not make it in time. Zhuo Fan says, Grandmaster, fifth grade pill refinement complete, ninth place. He thinks the old man won't make it. Blood comes out of the medicine king's mouth, and he raises his pill in the air. Zhuo Fan looks at him, thinking he will refine with blood essence. The medicine king makes a great effort to bring his pill and announces a fifth grade assignment is complete. The judge looks at him. Zhuo Fan thinks he cannot believe how far the old man is willing to go to advance. Even using his blood essence to refine a pill, he is fighting with his life. Judge announces that Elder Yen has finished his low-grade pill and will advance to the final round. Zhuo Fan thinks, by using silver needles to steal your meridians, and using your blood as a catalyst, your Yuan Qi is now damaged. Even if you made it into the final contest of the Pill King, you will not be able to refine again. Must be weak and about to paint now that he would not be able to make pills in final round. He address he man say old guy I guess you should have your funeral now. He smiles like evil. The judge announces that the ten who will advance have been determined. The rest will be eliminated. A main alchemist asks, are there not twenty spots? Why is it that only ten people? She replies, I never said twenty people would make the finals. I said only that there would be twenty top quality cauldrons. Zhuo Fan understands her and thinks she was clearly trying to deceive people. But he thinks there is nothing wrong with that. After all, what are morals and rules? They are just back doors for the strong. Someone says, hold on, judge, Elder Yen and I were only seconds apart, but I refined a high quality grade pill and he made a low-quality one. Logically, I should be the tenth person to advance. Zhuo Fan shouts and says, Shut up, did you not hear the rules? This is a contest of speed, not quality. You don't even understand the criteria, and you went on your way to refine your pill. Sucks to suck, man, and you still have the audacity to be here barking like a dog. 
Don't even mention if someone finished before the other. Even if you both finished at the same time, the old man was the first one in his competition. It counts as the old man's victory. This shocks the medicine king and all the people in the crowd. The judge thinks that Grandmaster Song hated the old man so much he was about to kick him out, but now he is speaking in favor of the medicine king. Zhuofan says, I know what you are thinking. I wanted to kick that old man out of here, but that old man used blood essence twice to refine the pill and lost a chunk of his life and advanced in the end. That means my schemes failed. I got nothing to say about that, but in the next round, I will still be the victor. But between now and then, I will not allow this old man to be disqualified because of some stupid reasons. If that were to happen, it would be a shame on my part as an alchemist. This shocks the old man. Everyone in the crowd appreciates his decision and claps for him. They shout and say, The Grand Master of Refinement, Grand Master Song, is an upright man, unlike the ordinary man. Everyone shouts his name. The judge looks at the old man. Say Tianyang, Longjiu, and Fan think that Fan is downright despicable, and there is no evil he will not do. They cannot say he is nasty, they can only call him evil, but this evil is heroic, even like that of an anti-hero. The second master says that man is truly ambitious, and he does not compare to him. Lin asks if the second master sees some use in the kid and wants him for himself. The second master shouts to say no, and adds, as an ideal goes, a mountain cannot hold two tigers. If he is ambitious, how will he bow down to others, therefore, it is best to get rid of him early. He says, no matter what happens, even if I don't get the Bodhi roots today, that kid will be removed. I have a feeling, he says angrily, he will become a formidable foe to the revenge estate in the future. They are frightened doubt a person says, Grand Master Song is correct. I should not be in the top ten. Just for those foolish words I just said, please forgive me for them. I have felt the charge of Grand Master Song today, and I am ashamed. The judge says Grand Master Song has made others submit with his act of righteousness, and she admires him too. He looks at her and thinks, make others submit with an act of righteousness. I would rather make them submit with my fist. The judge announces to all those who advance to the final round contest of the Pilled Gates, congratulations, you will have the chance to get the final reward from the Drifting Flower Edifice, the ninth grade spiritual material, the Bodhi Roots. Now may everyone go to the stand with respect to their placement. Aunt Tao addresses the medicine king and says, Hey, old man, when it is time, give your spot away. He replies, Why the rush? It was not you that pushed me down. He addresses Fan and says, I have refined countless pills in my life and have never met a rival. But today, he smiles and says, I have gone around the continent for decades and have never admired anyone. But today, our battle will be legendary. Let's see who is the best alchemist in Tianyu. Aunt Tao is shocked. She tells the kid that the old man made him his rival. This is his approval of him. Fan angrily says, I need his approval. Old man, you lost a good chunk of your life in the previous round. If you continue, your life will be done for. The old man replies, my life, my choice. No matter what, I will defeat you at least once today. Fan looks at him and thinks, this old man has the spirit of a real alchemist. He amazes me. He say kindly feels and talk like a real alchemist now let me see you will do. Yun Fu addresses the medicine king and asks, Master, how are you? How are your injuries? Does it hurt? The medicine king gives him a hard slap and says, Your teacher didn't finish his pill yet, and you finish yours. You don't know that I was inches away from elimination, right? He is in great anger Yun Fu says, Sorry, master. I am in the wrong. I never considered that the kid would. He stops, saying with fear. The medicine king asks, that the kid would what? The kid would make a fool of me. Yun Fu fearfully says, I don't dare. The medicine king says, don't dare what? I was indeed turned around by that kid. Whether it was in refinement or schemes, I lost miserably. What is wrong with that? Even that kid admitted he failed when he did not kick me out in this last round. I lost miserably from the start till now, what is there not to admit? Yun Fu surprisingly looks at him and says, Master, you seem different. He replies, I have not changed, I just went back to who I was. An alchemist should focus on alchemy. 
Success and failure, it's all normal, nothing to cover up. Addressing Yun Fu, he says, my disciple, do you know why Master hit you back then? Yun Fu replies, yes, it was because I completed my pill before Master did. It was disrespectful. The medicine king gives a laugh and says, what nonsense. I just blamed you for taking another spot because I almost lost the chance to have a legendary battle. He adds, a chance like this probably will not happen twice in life, and gives a huge laugh, moving forward. Yun Fu shockingly looks at him and thinks, Master seems different from now. Could it be because of that kid who spoke in favor of Master? Judge announces that in the final round, there will be no instructions. Everything will be decided by them. Quality will be considered more highly than efficiency. The highest grade pill will receive the hundred pill ceremonies reward. Antal looks at Fan and thinks, the kid is after all in the bone tempering realm. He was having trouble refining the fifth grade pill. How will he defeat the seventh grade chemist, the medicine king? The medicine king thinks, I lost three rounds to this kid. I can finally say he is not someone you can predict with common sense. Even though he is in the bone tempering realm, he still refined a seventh grade pill. It is unfathomable like the vast night sky. But hey, if it's this kid, who knows, the judge announces, for fairness reasons, the drifting flower edifices will provide a sufficient amount of high-tier materials for the alchemists to use. The crowd looks at the materials, and there is happiness as they see an array of various materials from grade 1 to 7, and even 8th grade material. The judge says, now, all the alchemists and masters, come and get the required material. The judge sets the rules, saying that everyone can choose their materials, but they must not be greedy. Everything taken has to be refined on the spot, or else there will be consequences. As everyone chooses their material, the judge is surprised to see that Grandmaster Song is taking everything. She addresses him and asks, What are you doing? He replies, What, did you not say all these materials are for us? The judge explains, Grandmaster Song, I think you did not hear me clearly. Everything you take has to be refined on the spot, or else there will be consequences. He looks at her and thinks, so what, wait till I get the Bodhi Jade roots and run away. Who will be able to stop me then? I will break all relations anyway, so it would be a shame not to take the materials. He says, how do you know I will not refine them all, just you wait. I will refine them all. He smiles and asks for another storage ring since his is full, but she replies that the drifting flower edifices do not provide storage rings. He says, so much for being one of the seven families, so stingy. Zay Tianyang comments on his brother's personality, saying, TSK TSK, there won't even be an inch of grass left wherever he goes. Miss Kui says, what a greedy man, if he sees a needle on the ground, his eyes will light up, indeed. Ching Hua and Niren are angry, thinking that this man deserves a thousand slashes. As a husband of the drifting flower edifices, he has not held back from taking things from his mother's side. Chu Chu angrily says, Damn brat, you've got to give it back in the future. The judge looks confused but then announces that the final contest of the pill game will now commence. Zhuo Fan and the Medicine King look at each other, both aiming to win. Master Lu is shouting, drawing everyone's attention. He is crafting a high grade pill, and Zhuo Fan thinks that the old people are finally bringing out the real stuff. Judge is surprised. But Master Lu says, excuse me, after all, this is the final round. I had to bring out what is at the bottom of the chest. If I wronged anyone in any way, please forgive me. The judge notes that the flame in the Grand Master's hand must be from the fourth level spiritual beast, the sky blazing python's heart fire. She says that by using this flame, Grand Master shows he has the confidence to be the pill king. The master smiles, acknowledging her knowledge, and says, but when talking about alchemy, besides the flame, you also have to have intricate refining skill. The title of the Pill King is not something to be sought after carelessly. Holding the dragon in his hand, he adds, and bringing out this flame, I mean to just increase my chance by a bit. Others look at him and think him a hypocrite. Yun Fu is also crafting a high-grade pill and dismisses the flame from the python. Master Lu looks at him, confused. Yun Fu creates a bright blue flame, shocking everyone. Bajaj says, that cannot be. Is that from the fifth level spiritual beast, the beast's flame from the fire swallow? 
Yun Fu smiles and confirms, mocking the old man, saying, Dog water, you think you are the only one that has a special fire in this world. The judge asks how Yun Fu acquired the flame from the fifth grade spiritual beast, as even radiant stage experts might not be an enemy to it. Yun Fu replies that the flame was awarded to the most talented disciple in the Pill King Hall, and Tao looks at Yun Fu as he explains that his fifth-level spiritual beast fire, the Sorello flame, has water and fire and fire and water, forming yin and yang. He states that it's the most suitable flame for alchemy. Yun Fu proclaims that only the Pill King Hall can understand the value of the flame and sort it out, and only the Pill King Hall can produce a Pill King. As he speaks, he turns around and is shocked to see what Antao is doing. She is performing a harvest and claims that the fire swallow beast flame is the most.